If your pain hurts and it hurts real bad, or if you have feelings that are making you sad, then it's okay, it's okay to cry. My oh my, what is a SJW to do on the 4th of July? It's not like they're going to get together with friends and family and go to a barbecue or take in a fireworks show or go to the parade or the carnival or the fair. That would be, that would be giving in to the patriarchy, the systematic oppression of minorities. After all, the 4th of July celebrates enslaving black people and genociding noble Native Americans. It's well known, it's an established fact, that everybody that celebrates the 4th of July is a racist. So as a social justice warrior, being in tune with that, you'd never celebrate it. You would you'd barricade yourself in the house. You'd lock the doors and close the blinds and just cry yourself into a cup of whatever shit you bought at fucking Starbucks the night before. But then again, if you're on a roll, why stop when you're ahead? I mean, it's only been two weeks since the massively successful hashtag campaign on Twitter and Father's Day. We all remember that one. And all those feminists and social justice warriors really took it to the patriarchy and didn't look like complete fucking retards for walking into an obvious trap. Not at all. The only people that would say that would be racist, homophobic, transphobic bigots. It was a success. And Father's Day is done with. So if you're riding high on something like that, why just lock yourself in the house on this horribly oppressive holiday? No, you need to one-up yourself. You need to take the fight right to the fucking heart of the patriarchy, to the most misogynistic shithole on the internet that you possibly could. 4chan. Why not? Let's go after 4chan. What could go wrong? It's never been done before. Nobody's ever tried to go after 4chan before. And it's obviously guaranteed to be successful. I mean, look at how well they did with End Father's Day. Clearly, this is a brilliant idea. And that is exactly what they decided to do. Now, you're taking a look at uh, a little image macro that was floating around for two to three weeks, maybe a month before the 4th of July. And uh, this was put up on Tumblr. Obviously, the HQ, the headquarters, for every SJW on the internet at this point. They use Twitter, but they live at Tumblr. That's like their home base. And look at this useful information. What's happening? There's this place called 4chan. They call themselves anonymous. Literally one of the worst places online. They're racist, misogynistic, and pure evil. Very bad people go there to shout hate speech. Elliot Roger and Zimmerman were 4chan users. Literal Nazis literal, not figurative, literal Nazis and far-right racists use brainwashing. They tell lies about homosexuals and always use fag. They erase every identity in the name of white supremacy. They have killed people with trolls and discuss terrorism often. July 4th, hashtag shut down 4chan. This has good idea written all the fuck over it. I mean, I'm going to be honest here, it's a shameful part of my past but I've been to 4chan before, and I know the kind of boards that fucking hellhole has. Let me tell you something. Boards like CK are dedicated to talking about how horrible black people are. All they ever say is the word nigger. That's all they discuss at every thread on CK. CK is a terribly racist board. And for those out there that don't really understand it, each of the, the boards is represented by an abbreviation. So CK stands for child killers. They think that's edgy. It's really, it's fucking terrible. It's just as bad as toy, which is troll old and young alike. I don't know why they didn't put the A on the end. They don't give a shit. They're too busy talking about bombing government buildings on that board to really care about anything else. By this point, it's a pretty well-established fact that every single board on 4chan is just rife with anti-Semitism and racism and homophobia. You've got boards like GIF, right, which is Gay Intifada, G-I-F. It's, it is horrible. All they talk about is murdering trannies and gay people. So I get it, Tumblr. I understand, as the brave social justice warriors you are, why this would be a brilliant idea for you, especially after End Father's Day, which was another brilliant idea you totally had and came up with. And of course, with such a brilliant idea, it couldn't possibly fail. It went just like you would expect it to. <laughs> Get you, bitch. Now, sure, you might say, well, wait a minute, their raid only lasted 30 to 40 minutes. They went to poll and to B and to V, and then they fucked off back to Tumblr. What happened? 
Well, they learned a valuable lesson. You can't out shitpost a professional. And if 4chan is anything, it is comprised of professional shitposters. The amount of shit flinging that takes place in threads on every board is monumental. And Tumblr found that out pretty quickly. But it's an A for effort. I mean, they stood up to the bully, they went to the patriarchal homeland, and they said, hey fuckers, you're not gonna, you don't intimidate us, we're not afraid of you. And we all know that when you stand up to something like 4chan and tell them you're not afraid, they're gonna back off. They, they can't handle that. They'll, they'll run with their tails between their legs. That is the strategy that works on the internet when you're being harassed, is to confront the person harassing you and tell them to go fuck themselves. So all is well, right? I mean, Tumblr did its raid and they showed those fuckers and, well, here we are, right? It's a successful celebration of putting down those misogynist pigs. Uh, except for this small fact that after Tumblr decided to leave, 4chan thought, maybe we'll follow them. Maybe, maybe we'll go to Tumblr and see if we can have some fun. Let's have an intellectual, honest discussion because I want to be educated about how much of a shitlord I am. So let's take a look at some of those post-victory Tumblr posts. Let's let's see them gloat about how much they showed those fuckers as 4chan comes to Tumblr, you know, to beg for forgiveness. Uh, here's a good one. This is what I woke up to this morning. Okay, 4chan, first it was annoying. Now it's destructive and cruel. This is not a raid. This is destroying self-esteem and making people feel like shit. And also, threatening rape? I'm 13, and this makes me want to wretch at the behavior these dunderfucks are showing. They purposefully want to disrupt people and make them feel uneasy or make them go into a fucking panic attacks. I'm taking this as well as all sorts of shit, because this is so wrong. Also, I'm sorry about the 4th of July post, Sill. I need to clean out the queue. Hashtags 4chan, 4chan raid, abuse, and suicide. Here's another one that uh, has a screen cap of the definition of cyber terrorism from Wikipedia. At the top of it, followed by this. Hey, 4chan, do you mind reading that out for me? Because I'm not sure it's clear enough. Oh wait, now I get it. This is exactly what you're doing here, on Tumblr. Cyber terrorism. So I sincerely hope you enjoy having a record with the FBI, and for any of you wondering, 4chan has decided for quite literally shits and giggles to raid all of us here on Tumblr with the intent to cause mass panic attacks across the board using triggering content, such as extreme real-life gore, rape images, animal cruelty, etc. So please... So please, guys, avoid the tags for now and report this shit to the officials if you know how. Hashtags SNK, Feminism, Feminist, AOL, Free. Here's a post with 87,000 notes. 4chan is planning on hacking accounts. If you see this somewhere on my blog, this means I'm not a 4chaner. If I start to post gore or porn, that is not me. I have been hacked. If you want to reblog this, take a screenshot of it on your blog so that you have solid proof. Here's a post from Thoughts That Fly. This 4chan shit, I'm over it. Basically, every tag I go through is filled with awful things, or irrelevant cute things. Don't get me wrong, I prefer cute things, obviously, and I understand we jewel flood the tags. But there's no longer anywhere to have relevant feminist discussions because the tag is filled with kittens. So Tumblr... <laughs> wow. So Tumblr isn't serving its purpose at all, and I'm annoyed. Hashtag just marry ableism 4chan fuckers ugh. Here's one from calling out bad feminism. So, I just got off the phone with the FBI. They are already investigating 4chan and have found Photoshop porn of a minor selfies, which means arrests will be made. If you are raiding, stop. You could face arrest. If you are supporting the raiding, stop. Number one. Hashtags 4chan raid, 4chan, signal boost, and feminism. And another from Rebecca the Fallen Angel. Petition to shut down 4chan. And there's a link to a whitehouse.gov petition. Everyone, it is imperative that you sign this petition. It could shut them down and stop the hate and bullying they spread. They've already tried to ruin Tumblr with their filth by using our tagging system. They've already tried to ruin Tumblr with their filth by using our tagging system. Now they're hacking accounts and posting as the user. Sign the petition, reblog the post, and signal boost. These people need to be stopped. Hashtags signal boost, bullying, petition, and Tumblr. And 24,000 notes! That must have an immense amount of signatures. I bet if we went to take a look at that petition right now, it would have so many signatures on it, Fort Moot's going to have to shut down the website. Well, here's the petition at whitehouse.gov. Uh, shut down 4chan. There's a faction inside the 4chan community that is in favor of pornography, child gore, and non-consensual abuse, bullying, and other crimes against human and animal rights. If there are not enough reasons to put these people in jail, at least we could prevent them from spreading hate and cyberbullying. 
I say that site should be shut down. And it's got a whopping 192 signatures, reblogged 24,000 times, and it's got 192 signatures. Boy, Tumblr, you don't fuck around. When social justice warriors say they're going to get something done, that's really what they're just going to do is say it, because they sure as shit aren't actually accomplishing a fucking thing. The only way that could be more embarrassing is if somebody on 4chan started their own petition that got more signatures. Oh wait, they did! A petition on change.org that's asking that all users of Tumblr be labeled as mentally handicapped land whales, and currently has 2,159 supporters. It's like, what, 20 times the amount that Tumblr had. Here's another totally not worried post by Celestial Agender. If you have selfies in the tags that were spammed trying to clear it up, delete them now. They are planning on putting not safe for work things on them and sending them back to you with your real name and such. Please, for the love of God, delete your selfies. Hashtags rape culture, patriarchy, other kin, and social justice warrior. Things are going well, I have a feeling at Tumblr. They've really got this on lockdown. Those those 4chan assholes don't they don't know what they're dealing with. I mean clearly, clearly, 4chan is trembling at the onslaught they faced at Tumblr and the brave front they've put up in resistance to these bigots. It's not like they're compiling image after image, mocking and deriding them, and taking pleasure in their tears. They would never do that. I mean, just take a look at this defiance. Listen up. Please, 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 listen up. If you are in the feminism tags, Supernatural, Sherlock, John Locke, or other popular tags, get the hell out. 4chan is trying to take over Tumblr, and they are posting disgusting things gore, rape, fat shaming, and other horrors. I just went through one blog alone and I'm in legitimate tears. There are also rumors for anime such as Free, SNK, and others that will be taken over. Please, 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 if you have trigger warnings like the ones listed above or even others like anxiety or suicidal thoughts, I beg you to stay out of those tags or even Tumblr for the next several days. If you find a blog like this, add it here, and let's get them removed. I found one. PrivateCupcakes.tumblr.com Hashtags Trigger, 4chan, Please, Signal Boost, Feminism, and John Locke. Oh, these social justice warriors, they're so brave. They're so strong. Getting the word out there and telling people to run for the hills and not look at Tumblr or use the website. They've really circled the wagons. They're putting the information out there. Such as this. 4chan Raid. Do not go into any tags for the next few days. There is gore, rape, etc. in most tags. Do not post selfies. They are taking selfies from tags like hashtag selfie, face, and me, and photoshopping them onto porn. This is illegal, especially if you are a minor. Change your password and do not log out. They are hacking accounts and making disgusting posts. Take down your submit page, especially if you have conversed with one of the spammers. Do not send spammers any messages. Block, ignore, etc. them, but please, for your own safety, do not send any message or contact with them in any way. Oh, these poor snowflakes. God, I really hope, I really hope one of them doesn't kill themselves because of this, because this is so triggering, you guys. I would just, it would be a shame if somebody threatened suicide. Oh, wait. I wasn't always a fallen angel post. Please read. I was up all night with people who were triggered by the 4chan raid. A lot of them didn't realize that they were having panic attacks. I want you all to know that this raid is real. To everyone specifically, the 4chan bastards, I want to tell you that one of my followers committed suicide last night. I talked to her before, and she was the sweetest girl you could ever meet. She saw two gifts that triggered her to the point that nothing I said helped. I have her phone number and talked to her over the phone. I told her to call the suicide hotline. She called me back and 20 minutes later and told me that she'd taken an entire bottle of pills. She died on the phone with me. This is real, you guys. Please stay away from the tags. There are still posts around. They are apparently planning another raid in August. Please be careful with your selfies and pictures of loved ones. They are collecting them into pornographic material. If this happens, write down the blog name, the URL, and save the image. Contact the police immediately. These guys can be charged with slander, defamation, and pedophilia if you're a minor. As for guys from 4chan, I hope you know you ended at least one innocent life last night. You are the Earth's lowest scum, and I hope you burn in the deepest pits of hell. Hashtag female feminist supernatural Dr. Who locked Dr. Who Whovian and Sherlock. 
clearly the people in the Doctor Who community on Tumblr desperately need to know that people are dying over gifts on Tumblr. God, those, those evil 4chan bastards, how could they do this? Well, mission accomplished social justice warriors. You really showed 4chan who's boss. I mean, sure, your raid didn't really work, and they turned it around on you, and now you've been driven to suicide and hysterics as you run away from the website you love so much. But don't worry, I'm sure threatening to call the police is going to have a, 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 an immediate effect. Well, I remember one time where something similar happened. Okay, you guys, this is Jesse Slater, and you I know just what? wanted to say that you guys have ruined my life. For I'm going to tell you right now, dad. this is from her father. You bunch of lying, no good punks, and I know who it's coming from because I've backtraced it, Jeez. and I know who's emailing and who's doing it, and you've been reported to the cyber police and the state police. Right. So you, you better write one more thing or screw with my computer again. You'll be arrested. You End of conversation from her father. You write it yeah. fucking gonna come and beat her ass. And if you come near my daughter, guess what? Consequences will never be the same. You lying bunch of pricks. And it worked out so well for these people. She's a drug addicted whore now, and he's dead. So this was a great idea. I only see positive outcomes from this. Why, you're going to be able to to list your name up there with those other sites that have successfully shown 4chan who's boss like Gaia Online or Ebombs World uh, you know the real the real high tier stuff 9gag you know all those sites that really taught them a lesson about who's boss good job smart decision now if you'll excuse me I've got to go put myself into a medically induced coma and wait two weeks until I can look at all that great Doctor Who lock stuff again on Tumblr without being triggered to kill myself. Sex for favors, secrets, cover-ups, corruption. I've heard things that'll blow your mind, and now I think it's time you get the whole story. I'm Jesse Ventura, and this is Quinspiracy Theory. The video I was originally going to upload tonight is gone. I've scrapped it, it's deleted. I've decided to do something different because of this. What you're looking at is a copyright claim against a YouTube user by the name of Mundane Matt on a video called Hell Hath No Fury Like a Lover Scorned. That copyright claim was filed by Zoe Quinn, the person who is the subject of the video itself. Now in the copyright claim, she had stated that he'd used a still image of her game, Depression Quest, which she's a creator of, and that she had ownership over that, and that's why the video needed to be pulled down, because it was infringing on her intellectual property. But the truth is, it had nothing to do with that. The image Matt used in his video, and it was just one image. I want to show you his typical format. This is a typical video that Mundane Matt will put up. You have a still image in the background, you have a transparent barrier on the left-hand side with a title, and he talks over it. And that is exactly what Hell Hath No Fury was. It had a still image in the background, a transparent barrier, title, and he talked over it. Now the image he used was a publicly available image. This game is out on Steam. You can see these images. They've been used in news articles, they've been posted on websites, they're publicly available through the company on Steam itself. So her copyright claim had nothing to do with him using her intellectual property. What it had to do with was suppressing information from getting out. And that's something that's been going on now for the last three days since this began. Sites like Reddit and NeoGAF and even 4chan on certain boards have suppressed this from being talked about because of the implications it has in the gaming industry. Now what started all of this off was a WordPress blog called The Zoe Post. This was put up by a man named Aaron who is Zoe Quinn's ex-boyfriend. In the entirety of the blog post, which is extraordinarily long, he goes through a laundry list of complaints as to why the relationship failed and why he's upset. Now these all seem to be valid to me, things like lying and manipulation and infidelity. However, at face value, it's nothing more than that. Why, why would that be interesting? So is she taking videos down because she's embarrassed about it? No, she's taking them down because of the people she slept with, that she cheated on him with during their relationship, and who they are, and specifically what they can do for her as an entrepreneur. Gaming journalism has reached a low point over the last five years. It started with pieces that had nothing to do with gaming or game reviews, nothing to do with software or hardware, nothing to do with events or expos. It started to travel off into the 
areas of social justice and feminism and opinion pieces and op-eds that had nothing to do with gaming. It started to have authors who were writing pieces condemning the gaming audience as being sexist and misogynistic, as being racist and bigoted, as being overly violent rapist. This has been seen on Kotaku, on Rock Paper Shotgun, on Destructoid, on The Escapist, on any website you can name this has been transpiring for the last five years. It seems more and more these outlier pieces have become the standard and that the narrative put forward in them has become cohesive and refined, like a talking point targeted at us as the audience. And there's a reason for that. And Zoe Quinn and what's happened over the last three days helps to point that out. That is why this is important and it needs to be talked about. This has nothing to do with her as a person in a relationship. I don't care that Zoe Quinn fucked five guys. I don't care that Zoe Quinn cheats on people she's in a relationship with. That's on her. That's her own personal accountability. Her ethical and moral failures as an individual are for her and her partner to deal with. However, when the people she's having an affair with, when the people she's cheating on her boyfriend with, happen to be able to help her career through their actions related to the industry that she's in, then it becomes a piece of public discourse and it becomes important because it helps to highlight a massive flaw in the Fifth Estate. Now, if you're like me, you've grown up watching mainstream media, television media, die a death. And it didn't just die this death because of the invention of the internet. It died because of its lack of ethical standards. I'd be surprising no one by telling them that Fox News and MSNBC and CNN and every other mainstream media source you can name is corrupt. We've seen this happen and we've seen the result of their reporting afterwards. Backroom relationships, money changing hands, manipulation, uh, illicit acts have slanted old media to the point where it's unreliable and no one trusts it. So when the fifth estate emerged, when we had internet journalism, we felt like we had something we could believe in. We were going to report to each other. We were going to be the honest people. We weren't going to let other outside factors influence truth. But it has not happened that way. And what took a century to kill old media has taken mere years to undermine new media. So let's start at the beginning and see what the hell is going on here and why this keeps being pushed down and why nobody's talking about it. Now, Zoe Quinn's notoriety extends quite a ways back. As I stated earlier, she's an indie developer. She released a game on Steam called Depression Quest and reading the description it states, it is a flash text-based adventure game about a person living with depression and how situations affect them. Who doesn't want to play a game about being fucking depressed? I rank that right up there with gems like I Have the Chicken Pox and the hit sequel I Have Shingles Now. Oh, God, does it hurt? Yet this is a game she pushed through Greenlight. How did she get it through Greenlight? In fact, how did this game even get on Steam? Well, if you trace this back to its origins, when she was originally developing it, she started to get a lot of press because she was harassed. She was the victim of a sexist campaign by evil denizens of a website called Wizard Chan. Now, Wizard Chan, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this website, is a image board dedicated to the movie Hocus Pocus. They are Disney fucking fanatics over at Wizard Chan. But apparently, they have an issue, they have a major issue with Zoe Quinn and her game. And she went to Twitter, and she went to social media talking about how she's being persecuted and harassed, how people are calling her house and showing up in real life, how it's unnerving her and how terrible this is. And what do you know, the gaming journalist, gaming press, jumped to her rescue. Sites like GamerRanks and Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun all talked about how brave she was. Even other people with notoriety in the gaming scene right now were sending her messages of encouragement, like Anita Sarkeesian and Dina from the Project Mighty Number no. 9. Another person who, might I add, fucked her way into a position at a company. Now that sounds all fucking well and good, except it's completely untrue. And I can prove to you that it's untrue with the link in the description. Go check that out. It's an Imager album. And it is a chronological explanation of why Zoe Quinn is full of shit and why this website Wizard Chan didn't target her. Now this is important because it helps to establish her character. And we're going to be getting into that in a minute. But what you really need to glean from this is that she was supported by the gaming press and by other certain indie developers and other notorious people like Anita Sarkeesian against these hordes of horrible trolls that apparently were trying to keep her down because obviously a video game about depression just is too much for a troll. Now if you fast forward a certain amount of time, the game finally gets through Greenlight and it gets up on Steam despite numerous people saying they didn't like the game, they didn't think it belonged on Steam, the community voicing their opinion against it, different websites dedicated to video games saying that it shouldn't be on Steam, it doesn't make sense, that it's a non-game, 
a similar argument that's been raised for other indie developed titles that were supported by the gaming press, like Gone Home and others. Yet, she got it through, and the game got up on Steam. And that is where our WordPress blog, The Zoe Post, comes into play. Because now we get to see from the perspective of somebody who knows her personally, namely Aaron, and their relationship. Now, the interesting thing about the Zoe Post blog is that it chronicles and has captures of interactions on social media. And we get to see what kind of person Zoe Quinn is. And we get to see how she's a liar and a manipulator. And how the people at Wizard Chan who put together that album that's linked in the description weren't really bullshitting you when they said she's fucking making it up. Now, at the heart of the Zoe Post, aside from all the things that Aaron wrote down about her, aside from her white lies and her omissions of truth, besides the uh, deceitful behavior and manipulation, is the infidelity. And he names specifically three people in his post. He omits two names. Of course, due to technological wizardry of other people, those two names have been found. And so this is a list of five guys. And again, I'm not putting their names out there because I think it's wrong she cheated in a relationship. I'm putting those names out there to show you, or to start to show you, how corrupt gaming journalism and game development have become. These are the five guys. Now, to start with, on the very far right-hand side is Joshua Boggs. Now, he was her boss. She had sex with him while she was in a relationship with Aaron. The interesting thing is, Joshua Boggs is married. So not only was she having sex with her employer, she was having sex with a man who's married. This didn't cause her a crisis of conscience, even though she's made statements in the past on social media, saying how wrong it is to have affairs, how terrible it is to cheat on somebody when you're married. But again, as a liar, she says one thing and does another. Some other names that are listed there are Robin Arnott and Kyle Pulver, both indie game devs. You have Brandon McCartan, multi-award winning indie game dev prodigy for Fez and Aquaria. That's interesting on its own for some things that happened just yesterday, but I'll get to that in a minute. But really, the biggest fucking issue that we're looking at right now is the name in the middle. Nathan Grayson. Who is Nathan Grayson? And why is it important we talk about his and Zoe's relationship? Nathan Grayson is a video game journalist. Nathan Grayson is somebody who wrote for Rock Paper Shotgun and currently writes for Kotaku. Nathan Grayson is somebody who has published positive pieces about Zoe's game, who has given her publicity and who has marketed her product while having sex with her and not disclosing it. Now, there's a word for people when there's a professional conflict and they need to step back from what they do as a job because of conflicting things. It's called recusing oneself. Nathan Grayson not only did not recuse himself from writing the articles that fluffed up her product and promoted her, he went so far as to hide the fact that they had a relationship. Here you see an example of just two pieces he wrote this year, one on Rock Paper Shotgun and one on Kotaku, talking about her product and her specifically. This starts to show a pattern of behavior in game journalism. These people have no professional barrier which exists between their relationships. It's not just that game developers and game journalists have friendships or that they communicate or that they cooperate and do things together. They are having illicit sexual relationships which benefit one another. Nathan Grayson has benefited by being able to write an article that will get him clicks and thereby ad revenue. Zoe Quinn is able to get publicity and make money. It is a disgusting relationship and it is the opposite of what journalism is meant to be but it goes much deeper than that it's not just that they have relationships where one hand washes the other it's that they bolster up positive public publicity and also suppress negative publicity what I'm going to show you now is a screen cap from a subreddit that was talking about Zoe Quinn this was posted just a few days ago and the subreddit I believe tumblr in action this is mind-blowing and it starts to show you just how fucking sick and twisted and corrupt game journalism is. So here's the post in question, and this is by Silly Slater. I'm going to read this verbatim, and I really want you to take in what she's saying, and then I'll focus on the really disgusting part of this. So, Silly Slater posts, She fucking doxed me, ruined a production for women, refused to contact us, and is currently taking money for a game jam with no start date, no location, and no judges. Okay, here is my story. 
we ran a group that literally said, any woman, come up with an idea for a video game. We'll give you concept art so you can pitch your game, and we'll put all the pitches online. The internet will vote on the best one, and we'll make that game and give the profits to charity. If you get a lot of interest online and want to make the game on your own, you can leave the contest at any time. Literally, everyone that was in the top five didn't have programming experience, so they couldn't make their own game. She was like, why do you expect women to work for free to make games? We said, well, they get 8% of the money as royalties, and they just have to give an idea. Other people will make the game, and the profits go to charity. Doesn't matter. It's oppressive. She started a fucking Twitter storm, crashed our website, got my personal information doxxed, got us banned from Twitter. We email reporters, what's up, and they're like, duh, if Zoe says it's oppressive, it must be true. Maybe you should give her money for Rebel Jam, which has no start date, location, or any other information, but totally isn't a scam. This happens at three other major publications. We literally said we'd pay her to consult on future projects, and we'd close down the contest if she would explain to us what exactly is offensive. No response. No response at all. Unless a reporter contacted her, and then she's the victim. All this information is fucking online. The pitches are online. We did everything we said, but no online journalist will publish the story. Please vote. Even if we don't raise enough money, if we show there's enough interest, we can get a winner a grant to make their game. I'm literally making no money on this contest. I just wanted to focus on something other than women being oppressed. I wanted to show that they made good games, and everyone said that's not what women in games want to talk about. So I don't even know where to start about what fucking disgusts me the most about this. We have heard time and time again over the last two to three years from every gaming journalist outlet that women are oppressed, that they uh, aren't allowed in the industry, that they can't make games, that people are holding them back, and that they just need an opportunity, just one opportunity to get out there and show what they're made of. And here a person puts together something that gives them that opportunity. Here's somebody saying, if you have a good game idea and you want to pitch it to us, we'll fucking make it for you. Show people that women can make good games by making good games and we'll help you do that. I don't see what's not noble about that. I don't see what the fucking problem with that is. But here comes Zoe Quinn, the professional victim, the social justice warrior, who will lie and manipulate like she did with Wizard Chan, like she did with Aaron, her boyfriend. She comes in, she shits on these people trying to do a good thing for no profit. She doxes them, destroys their ambitions, fucks their company up. But the worst part of this, and this goes back to her relationship with Nathan Grayson, a writer at Rock, Paper, Shotgun, and fucking Kotaku, that because that relationship existed, these people couldn't get the story out. It's not just that Zoe Quinn is having sex to get good publicity, it is that Zoe Quinn is using sexual relationships with writers and reporters to suppress bad actions. I want you to try to imagine this sort of thing happening in old media. Uh, imagine Watergate. What if Nixon had driven down to the post and taken Woodward and Bernstein aside and said, Hey, if you don't post that whole scandal thing, I'll give you both a blowjob. How, how about a Hummer in the fucking printing room? Just uh, don't publish anything. And yet it goes deeper. Remember how I mentioned Brandon McCartan? And also Robin Arnott. Take a look at this. Now, yesterday, Phil Fish, a indie game dev who made Fez, went on a fucking tirade on Twitter defending Zoe Quinn and saying that people who were targeting her were bastards and cowards and that you shouldn't attack a strong, brave, independent woman. Basically parroting all those fucking ideas that we've been reading in news articles that get swirled around their little social media circles. And he's saying this to all these people who are raising questions about journalistic integrity. But yet, he's making that argument. And why, you know, why is that interesting? Well, she fucked Brandon McCartan, and apparently he has a connection to Fez. And better yet, somebody comes forward and says that they were sexually harassed at a wedding. Sexually harassed at a wedding by Zoe Quinn. And Phil Fish goes on a tirade against him, basically making him back down. Saying, don't you fucking dare bring that up publicly. If you do, we're going to come after you. And the guy backs down. And oh, look at that. Look who favorited what Phil had to say. Robin Arnott. So just so we're really clear on this, a woman who has repeatedly made social justice and feminist statements about strong, uh, independent women, about equality, who says things like men, uh, specifically gamers and trolls, are terrible and they're sexist and misogynistic, is somebody who uses sex to get favors, and on top of that, is willing to sexually harass people and then cover it up using industry friends with larger fan bases. Is that, is that, do I have that right, Zoe? You not only fuck for publicity, you fuck to suppress stories, and then you also fuck people to make anybody who criticizes you go away. Well, I'm not afraid of Phil Fish. 
the fucking one-hit wonder indie game dev. Yeah, by the way, Phil, that's why you're not making Fez 2. It has jack shit to do with pressure or you not liking your fans. It has to do with the reality that you know you can't make another game. You are a one-fucking-hit wonder. And if you try to make another game, you're gonna fail. So go on your Twitter tirade talking about Fez 2 never happening. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares, Phil. You are just an ugly, mutton-chop, sideburn-having motherfucker with your little fake hipster glasses that runs your fucking mouth about what game development is. You are a dipshit. And you're also a dipshit that doesn't have any fucking standards, apparently, when it comes to people you know. Now, how do I know? Maybe Zoe Quinn fucked Phil Fish. They seem to have been at a wedding together. Phil Fish seems to know her quite well, and judging by Zoe's behavior and the favor she's curried, it's not really that far out of the ballpark for me to say that perhaps Phil Fish is defending her because of a relationship. Hell, what about Patrick Klepik? Remember those conventions they did together and the speeches, Internet is Serious Business? Uh, who knows, maybe Patrick slept with her. In fact, given that this is the reality of how these people behave and that they have no separation as professionals, let's say that Steven Sotillo of Kotaku had sex with Anita Sarkeesian. Why not? You're letting somebody on staff at Kotaku who has a sexual relationship with somebody he writes about, and you don't have any problem with that. So judging from that, I guess you wouldn't have a problem doing it yourself. So maybe Steven is having sex with Anita. Maybe that's why Kotaku keeps writing those articles. It all makes sense now. We have now reached a point where it has become blatantly obvious in gaming journalism where relationships are influencing what gets published and what doesn't. It is no longer about reporting or journalistic integrity. It is about who is fucking who and who profits from it. And believe me when I say, Zoe Quinn profits from it. Her game may be on Steam for free as a free download, but her Patreon sure isn't free. Her Rebel Game Jam sure isn't free. Her begging people on Twitter from suspicious muggings to help pay rent isn't free. She is making money off the back of publicity gotten through sex. And game journalists have no problem with this. And of course, it's all the more hypocritical of them, given their stance on social justice, on feminism, on sexual equality, on gender equality, on sexual equality, on color equality, on all the buzzwords and hot topics they use to clickbait people into coming to their articles their high-handed morality and their ivory towers as they look down at us, the peasants, the filthy, disgusting, immoral peasants, and tell us what is right and wrong. And yet, right in their headquarters, right in their home, in their nest, they are doing all the things they condemn us for. They have ruined our hobby. They have shit up an industry. And it's not only us fans that suffer because of this. Look at Xseed. Somebody gets offended a day or so ago about a translation that they did, and all of a sudden they're getting flack left and right about that word because it's problematic and it offended a snowflake. So what is Xseed going to do? They're trying their best, they're trying to appease these people, but nothing is ever good enough. And it is perpetuated by these hypocritical cunts at gaming journalist sites that don't mean anything they print and they just do it for money. And Xseed is just one of the recent examples. I mean, here's another. Here's a journal entry that's up on DeviantArt called Save the Boob Plate. Now this is written by somebody who worked on a game. They worked on Divinity Original Sin. Look at that second paragraph. This journal entry is all about judgmental journalism, offended by design opinionators, and the fearsome white knights that the first two bring in their wake. And this person's talking about what it's like to try to create a game when you're bombarded by these assholes that are constantly shoving their fucking message down your throat. And what makes it all the more worse is that this person suffers, not because these people actually believe in the shit they peddle, but because they make money off of it. It's, they don't care, it doesn't matter to them. Their actions speak volumes about their character. So now, at the close of this video, I really want you to think on this. We've seen what happened to mainstream media, to old media, as corruption destroyed it. Now we have online media, new media, facing the same thing. We watch as the fifth estate burns in front of our eyes because of hypocrites and the corrupt. It is in our hands to call them out on it, to bring them to task for it. If we sit idly by, and we don't, we have lost. Appeasement does not work. Burying your head in the sand does not work. It is not just us as customers that suffer as these people sling shit at us, telling us how terrible we are, and telling us what kind of content we should like. It is developers and publishers and artists and musicians that suffer as well because they misrelate a message from us to them. They preach about morality and social justice. They talk about ethics and an end to sexism and racism, and their personal behavior is abhorrent and completely contradictory to the things they print. They are in bed with each other, 
They communicate on Twitter with each other and other social media platforms constantly. There is no professional separation between a subject and an author. There is no decorum or acumen for any of these people. And you've just seen a taste of what's happening. Mundane Matt gets his video pulled down by a false accusation. Websites refuse to let this be talked about. And I guarantee you, we're going to see articles published by the likes of Kotaku and GamerRanks and others that are going to ignore these kind of accusations, and they're going to focus on how poor Zoe Quinn is just a victim, or she's being slut-shamed, or whatever buzzword they're going to pull out of their ass to dodge the bullet coming at their head. Don't fucking let them. Call them out. Call their asses out. Are you not sick of this shit? Have your games not been tampered with enough at this point? We as consumers, as gamers, have a choice. We either back the people that make the games we like, or we let these assholes dictate to us who's going to be popular in 10 years. Do you want a, an industry that's filled with nothing but Anita Sarkeesian's and Dina's and Phil Fish's and Zoe Quinn's? Because I sure as hell don't, and I hope you don't either. So I encourage you to talk about this on different websites, on different social media. Talk about it non-fucking-stop. Don't let them sweep it under the rug. Don't let them avoid the fucking issue. Call them to the fucking mat on it. We have a spotlight on this corruption and on their fucking hypocrisy. Make them answer for it for once. Make them be held accountable. We, the fucking fans, the gamers, over the decades, have raised our hobby up into a billion-dollar worldwide industry. Not these assholes. They make money off our interest, not the fucking other way around. We hold the power here. They don't. And it is fucking time that gamers sent game journalists a very clear goddamn message. And that fucking message should be... I'm going to pull the whole thing down. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's got to be biblical. Sex for favors, secrets, cover-ups, corruption. I've heard things that'll blow your mind, and now I think it's time you get the whole story. I'm Jesse Ventura, and this is Quinspiracy Theory. If these past seven days have taught us anything, it's that the Streisand effect is a very real thing. The harder you try to suppress information to censor it and prohibit conversation relating to it, the further it's going to spread. In fact, you would have been better served had you ignored it or allowed people to speak their mind in the first place. Yet, for the past few days, we've seen multitudes of examples of suppression and trying to prohibit people from talking about this. We've seen biased narratives put forward on websites with headlines such as the anti-feminist internet targets depression quest game creator Zoe Quinn, or the sexist crusade to destroy game developer Zoe Quinn. We've seen websites which are wholly dedicated to discussing gaming, to discussing the industry and all the events and information that surrounds it, having threads where private correspondences are mocked by the administrator, where dissenters are banned, and where conversation is closed after the groupthink is allowed. On Reddit, one of the larger subreddits which exist, R Gaming, had a thread with over 25,000 comments in it, thousands upon thousands of which were deleted outright by a moderator who had claimed to the user base that Zoe Quinn wasn't relevant, that the information wasn't important, that there's no conspiracy going on, that they just want to maintain uh, order and decorum. And yet, that very same person is seen on Twitter having conversations with Zoe Quinn while deletions are happening. In fact, they happen to know people in the game journalism industry. They're talking to people like Patrick Klepik about getting together and having a cup of coffee and how great it is to be a moderator on Reddit. And when people decided to try to reach out and get something done about this, they were told by other people in positions of authority to fuck off. We've also seen examples of people who work in the game journalism industry and who are related to game development come forward and relate how Zoe Quinn and corruption in game journalism is a taboo subject, that it isn't allowed to be talked about, and that if you bring it up, your career is in jeopardy. Some examples of this would include this particular Tumblr blog by a game journalist who says, I brought up this whole thing with coworkers at the site I work at, and they just dismissed the issue. When I pressed the issue, the implication quickly turned from a dismissive hand wave to a very threatening, talk about this anymore and you will be fired. Another similar example is found on the subreddit RPC Gaming, in which somebody posted a conversation they had had on Facebook, and the person responds to them stating, Yep, also, if you're ever interested in pursuing game development further, you really don't want to be a dick to Zoe, or any other game developer really. That's just not a good idea. If you decide to do that, do it on your own wall, seriously. 
And yet, despite these efforts to put forward a united front, to tell those that are interested in trying to look into this, that there's nothing to see here, that it's a, a non-issue, there's no conspiracy, there's no corruption in game journalism or the development scene, the internet isn't buying any of it. In fact, it's created a bizarre, strange sort of alliance between websites which hate each other, whose user bases mock and deride each other on a daily basis, which have never agreed on anything except this one thing. When you see websites like Tumblr and Reddit, 4chan and GameFAQs, and even Funny Junk all saying with one voice, we're not going to fuck off, we're not going to be mocked and told to go away, we are going to talk about this, there is something going on. Despite their differences, despite the hatred those user bases have for one another, then that should tell you something about how bad game journalism and game development in the indie scene is. Now, ever since my first video went up three days ago, there's been a flood of new information in regards to Zoe Quinn, game journalists that she knows and has relationships with, different game developers, and the potential motivations behind those relationships. And one of the first things I wanted to touch on was a statement made by her ex-boyfriend Aaron about two days ago, in which he states, Guys, you seriously don't want to go around making YouTube videos claiming the two names you uncensored are actually correct. First names are not sufficient to establish identity. At the very least, make it clear those two are speculation. Now, the two names he's referring to are Kyle Pulver and Brandon McCartan, two of the people that were listed as the five guys that Zoe Quinn had relationships with to help her career. Now, both Kyle and Brandon have both stated on Twitter that people are wrong, that they're not involved, that they have the wrong people, and that the information gathered is incorrect. And while Aaron's statement doesn't come out and outright say you have the wrong person, I'm going to lean on the side of what Kyle and Brandon are saying. I think that at this point, if it had been them, there wouldn't be any reason for Aaron not to just simply state, yes, it is them. And I do think the information that's out there that states that these are the two people, that the names have been uncovered and uh, decensored and have been linked in various ways, are incorrect. And so what that means in relation to Zoe Quinn is there are still five guys. It's just that three of them are known, not five. Now, outside of statements that Aaron's made in the last few days in regards to his relationship with Zoe Quinn and his thoughts on her relationships with different game journalists and people in the indie development scene, we finally got a response from Kotaku in regards to the allegations that Nathan Grayson, a writer at Kotaku, had a relationship with Zoe Quinn, a game developer. Now, Steven Totello first went to Twitter and then on to Kotaku itself to address this. Now, this is important for a few reasons, but I think the, the most important one is the fact that this is a third party who, through their conversation with Nathan Grayson himself, can establish that the ex-boyfriend's account of him and Zoe having a relationship is in fact true. Steven states that Nathan did admit that both he and Zoe did have a relationship. So it takes an element of pure speculation out of the ex-boyfriend's account. If it was completely made up, if it was completely fabricated, Nathan Grayson would have no reason to go on record and state that this did happen. Now, Stephen in his release statement says on Kotaku, On March 31st, Nathan published his only Kotaku article he's written involving Zoe Quinn. He quoted blog posts written by Zoe and others. Shortly after that, in early April, Nathan and Zoe began a romantic relationship. I have no reason to believe any further action needs to be taken. Well, I'm so incredibly grateful, Stephen, that you think no other action needs to be taken. That these timetables seem to be so uninteresting to you. That the fact that Nathan Grayson hadn't told you beforehand that he's romantically involved with somebody he's written about, and that may cause a conflict of interest later on. That you had to confront him after this information came out. And that you think there's nothing else to really be looked at, and that Nathan really doesn't need to be, uh, I don't know, persecuted uh, by you or others, or us as the, uh, the gaming public. Now, this entire thing started off with a sex scandal. Right? That's, that's what began this all. You know, Zoe Quinn and the five guys. Zoe Quinn has alleged relationships with different people in the industry, and these people may or may not have uh, helped her career out. And you and others have remained quite silent about that. Well, excuse me if that comes off as incredibly disingenuous. Excuse me if that comes off as seeming like you're covering your ass and you don't want to have to really look into things. Now, I want to start off by establishing the bias that Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun have when it comes to sex scandals. Now, many of you are probably familiar with somebody by the name of Max Temkin, the creator of Cards Against Humanity. Recently, a woman had posted on Facebook that Max Temkin raped her in college. Now, Max later went on to make a statement saying that he had not raped anyone, but that he understood she might have misinterpreted their relationship and is now seeing things that weren't there or that maybe he acted in a way that made her uncomfortable, but he had not raped her. Now, Kotaku and Rock, Paper, Shotgun both ran articles about this. Uh, I'm going to show you some. Now, Patricia Hernandez had written one where she essentially said that Max Temkin 
shouldn't go and establish his innocence, that he should use rape allegations against him as a way to talk about rape victims. That makes sense. Somebody accuses you of rape, but you shouldn't deny it because that might hurt rape victims. Instead, you should stay silent on that and talk about how bad rape is. How insane is that? Even stranger still is John Walker's position on this. Now, in the original article that was released on July 15th on Rock, Paper, Shotgun, written by Robert Florence, these uh, lines struck me as being interesting. Max Temkin, co-creator of the game, has been accused of rape. Temkin has addressed the accusation and asserted his innocence. The article then goes on to say, so it's weird not to talk about it, right? Why is no one talking about it? Follow on. Now, it's suspicious that they had no problem talking about this. And then John Walker, when the Zoe Quinn allegations start popping up, posts this. For the avoidance of doubt, anyone who posts on RPS anything about the private lives of anyone will be instantly banned. I am so horrified by the treatment of Zoe Quinn and the despicable hypocrisy of these foul bigots who pretend to care about ethics. Well, fuck you, John Walker. You want to talk about ethics? Let's talk about ethics. Zoe Quinn and Aaron had a relationship. Zoe Quinn, like Max Temkin, is a game developer. Max Temkin was accused of rape and denied the allegations. Both your website, Rock Paper Shotgun, and Kotaku decided to run articles about Max Temkin, but you both have remained silent about Zoe Quinn. I find that interesting because in the records that are provided by the ex-boyfriend, Zoe Quinn admits to raping him. This is a screenshot from the blog post, The Zoe Post. Look at article number four. I'm going to read this to you. I've highlighted the really important bit, but I'm going to read the entirety. Views on the ethics of infidelity, which she maintained is inherently wrong even if the person who was cheated on never finds out. Because aside from willfully endangering their partner by the way of increased STD risk, if the unfaithful party then has sex with their partner, they are doing so under false pretenses, and therefore without their partner's consent. That is, sex with a partner who doesn't know you've cheated on them is sex without consent. Now follow that up with this. This is a conversation between Aaron and Zoe. Aaron. You lied so much, Zoe, and you made me feel so terrible about even entertaining the idea. You demanded that I don't trust logic and demanded that I blindly trust you, and you worried about me cheating on you, like I was the one at fault somehow. Zoe. No, I was worried because I didn't want to fucking lose you again. It wasn't about fault, and it wasn't about you. I wanted to start over, and I guess I never thought I'd ever cheat on anyone. And then you made me feel like legitimately anyone could. Like if I could, anyone could. Aaron. And your spiel about consent? Zoe. I still agree with that, and I fucked up. I hate myself for it. Aaron, and so you had sex with me without my consent. Zoe, I'm going to barf. So John Walker and Stephen Totillo will greenlight articles talking about Max Temkin denying rape allegations that are made against him because they think it's so interesting and so important when a developer of a video game is accused of rape. Yet, when they are presented with evidence that Zoe Quinn willfully admits that she had sex without consent, that she raped someone, they don't think that's worth talking about. They don't think it's an ethical double standard? You don't think there's a journalistic question of fucking integrity? I want to remind you that Stephen Dotillo has a fucking master's in journalism. Stephen, of anybody involved in this, what in the fuck? This goes to prove that there is an agenda-driven purpose behind editorial pieces that are put up on these websites. They have no problem doing this to a man, but they will not do it to a woman. A man is accused of rape and the man denies the allegation, they run the story. A woman admits to rape and they refuse to run the story. And you're telling me there aren't ethical questions involved. Now this isn't the first time, Stephen, is it, that this has happened on Kotaku. I want to play a clip for you. A clip that is available on Ben Kuchera's SoundCloud account. This is a clip from David Jaffe, the creator of God of War and Twisted Metal. Take a listen to this. I feel terrible about saying it, but nowhere in that sentence do I say, the only way you're going to get sex is underhanded trickery. That is your reporter bringing her own fucking agenda to the table. And you fucking know it. This is her analysis, and she's going a little further than, than, than what you said. Perhaps. And you know what? That's okay if you're writing about sort of benign shit, but when you're basically accusing someone of something really fucking awful... The last is that a girl or woman, could, woman couldn't actually win a co-op match on her own. Again, not literally what you said. This is how she's interpreting what you said. And there are, She's not the yeah. only person to have come up with these things, oh. David. And she's putting this in context. Crude vulgarity mm -hmm. that puts men in positions of manipulating women for sexual gain is misogyny. Dude. Okay, she, first of all, it's not misogyny. Misogyny is distrust or hatred of women. That is misogyny. 
Not that's what I'm saying. You you don't get to just fucking make up your definition and say, where where show me that. So manipulating women for sexual gain, you don't think might possibly be related to hatred of women? You don't think. Well, that are, what the fuck are you people? Are you a fucking therapist? Yes. Any action that you do, you could travel it down a certain psychosis or psychology psychological path to get to some conclusion. Absolutely. But to, to say that as a statement of fact and to bold it and to say this is misogyny, you got your fucking mind, you that's Bush League and you fucking know it. And it's her second fucking week or her second day and you don't want to fucking call her out because you make feel like it's a fucking bad hire. That's the truth. She's not a bad hire. She's an excellent hire. Well, and not every story is going to make people happy. And some stories... Dude, you know why? Give me a break. If you, if you said Twisted Metal is shit, it's not relevant, it doesn't play well, that won't make me happy, but I, man, it's your opinion. You have a right... To not only call someone something awful like a misogynist, or to imply that they're a misogynist very clearly, but to get the definition of misogyny wrong, and then on top of it to basically get your facts wrong, where in there did I say the only way to get sex from a woman is to be underhanded and manipulator? Where did I say that? Never. She's talking about the tone of the interview and what you're saying in the act of Dude. promoting a game. Where, where do you want this to go, David? I don't want to go anywhere. I want to go. I, I'm, I'm respecting you because you keep reading shit. I'm happy to be done. Trust me, I'll be done with you. I'll be done with your site. I mean, it's bullshit, dude. It's bullshit. It's Bush League. It's bullshit. And you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a fucking real journalist. I've always respected journalists. That's bullshit. You know? Fuck Gawker, man. Fuck you guys. We're done. We're done. Don't fucking write about what the fuck you want. But we're done. Hey, dude. Now, the article that David Jaffe is referring to was one that appeared on Kotaku on February 7, 2012, and was written by Kate Cox. I want to read some of this to you. Most trouble doesn't actually come from villains, and it doesn't come from people who actively stand around shouting, I hate women. It comes from the thoughtlessness. By framing his statement as, let her win and she'll give you a blowjob, Jaffe said a few things he may or may not have meant to. The first is that only straight men could possibly develop an independent interest in playing his game. The second is that the best way for a man to get what he wants is to come up with some underhanded trickery to apply. Crude vulgarity that puts men in the position of manipulating women for sexual gain is misogyny. Why is it that it seems time and time again when it is a male developer on your website, Stephen, you have no problem allowing people to post editorial pieces and read more into it than may be there. Yet, when a female developer openly admits through her own definition that she has committed the act of rape, you don't post anything about it. Because there's there's nothing more to this, is there? I mean, Nathan Grayson's a great guy, and Zoe Quinn's a great gal, and Kotaku doesn't need to talk about this. John Walker, you're going to sit and lecture me on fucking ethics after you ran the Temkin piece, but for some reason you're not going to talk about Zoe Quinn? So protect their identity when they're a woman, and throw them under a fucking bus when they're a man. Are you people for real? Steven, did you get your master's in journalism from the fucking University of the Twilight Zone? Because this is crazy town you're living in. So I just want to go over the, the standards. What are your standards exactly, Steven? Or uh, John Walker, or any of the people at any of these video gaming websites? What the fuck do you adhere to? What are your ethics? Apparently to you people, having sex with writers is okay. That doesn't create a conflict of interest. As if somebody at fucking CNN or the Washington Post could cover politics, let's say, and have sex with a, I don't know, a candidate. But, oh, no, it's okay because after they wrote uh, an article praising the product uh, or the candidate, they started having the sex. So that's okay, even though it's a little weird, right, because, you know, that article came out on... 331, but they didn't start having sex till 4-1. You know, because that day difference, that's a, that's a big deciding fucking factor. Like, people couldn't think, oh, maybe it's a little lie by degree. Maybe somebody wanted to cover their ass a little bit. I mean, shit. You know, just because Nathan Grayson and Zoe Quinn were in a bed together after a GDC with a bunch of other people, there's nothing There's nothing untoward about that. That doesn't say that they have a close friendship or sexual relationship. I'm, no, I'm sure Nathan Grayson decided he wasn't going to have a romantic relationship with Zoe Quinn until after he wrote that piece. That's, that's fine in your mind. That, that doesn't matter. Uh, to all you people, you think friendships and sexual relationships, that's who's, not a big deal. We're fucking game journalists. We don't have to have standards. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody looks at us like we have a real fucking career. Nice master's degree, right? Like, who gives a shit? We'll write whatever the fuck we want. We'll call ourselves a blog when we get people flinging shit at us, but when we want to get into a, a backroom conference or we want to interview somebody at Sony or get a, a demo kit or something sent over to us, then we're suddenly fucking journalists. Then we suddenly have integrity. Hell, at this rate, why not let our, uh, I don't know, let our journalists financially support people too? Oh, wait, you already do that, don't you, Stephen? I mean, there's nothing wrong with Kirk Hamilton paying Zoe Quinn money. 
And especially since this was going on since fucking July. Hell, why limit it to Kotaku? What the fuck? Let's get other journalists involved. How about everybody pay Zoe Quinn money? I don't know. Philip Collar? You want to do it? Over at Polygon? All right. Oh, hey, there's Ben Kuchera. Say it to my face, Ben. Hey, glad to see you're donating too. This is all okay. We're going to give money to developers we write stories on. We're going to fuck developers we write stories on. This isn't an ethical quandary to you? Are you people insane? Do you live on planet fucking nuts? Like, what is going through your head to justify this shit and the cartwheels that you all do to jump? Like, I don't understand it. I don't believe that somebody can be this intellectually fucking dishonest. It is apparent in your articles that there is an agenda-driven bias. It is apparent that you people have a relationship with certain developers and that when they're in the in-click, when you're all communicating on your social media together and exchanging phone numbers and having romantic liaisons and financially supporting each other, that you will protect them at any cost. Even if that means disregarding people coming to you with a news tip saying that particular person that you're friends with, you're fucking, and you're financially supporting may be doing something illicit or underhanded. Right? I mean, that is the, the argument I seem to be getting from your fucking camp and all these other websites that are saying this is a non-issue. NeoGAF, it's a non-issue. To you, this doesn't, none of this, this is all okay, NeoGAF. This is all okay. Financial, sexual, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Game journalists are a fucking joke, right? Who cares? Let it be corrupt. What do we care? It's just video games. Aren't you upset about Ferguson? Why aren't you paying attention to Ferguson? That seems to be the big dodge right now. Anything to not look behind the fucking curtain, huh? At this point, it's fairly certain that none of you really care about keeping your house in order. I mean, does, is there anybody out there that might care about that? Well, I mean, maybe this guy. Maybe Maddie Lessam would care. I mean, he was one of the focal pieces of that article that Nathan Grayson did write about on March 31st of 2014, the indie game reality TV show that went to hell. You know, the one that sourced Zoe Quinn and Robin Arnott? Two people who, by the way, had a relationship as well. But not like that matters. I mean, sure, Robin Arnott was on the, the chair of the Indie Arcade Selection Committee, from what I understand. And Zoe Quinn does proudly display that she is the winner of that on her Steam page, on her product page, but I'm sure nothing's going on there. It's not like these, it's not like these people have pre-existing relationships. I mean, what exactly did happen to, um, to Maddie? Oh, that's right. He got fired. His career got fucked over. You know, all those articles talking about him, all the buzz about how he fucking sunk that show and how he was accused of all these terrible things, so he got fired for that. I mean, we have all these articles. Uh, there was one on IndieStock, uh, How the Most Expensive Game Jam in History Crashed and Burned in a Single Day, from Jared Rosen, again, March 31st, 2014. It's interesting, some of the things he says in that article, huh? Under the section, uh, Day Zero, where he talks about how uh, Zoe Quinn and Robin Arnott described the incidents of Day Zero because he wasn't actually there. What is clear, however, is that the pair fought a fairly bitter battle over their contracts. And of course, later on he goes to say, And Zoe pulled me aside with Baby and Tom as she demanded Maddie's head on a stick. There's nothing untoward here. I mean, it's not like you could do a who is domain check and find out that Zoe set up rebelgamejam.com on the very date these articles ran. And that on this website for this game jam that has not happened and no information has been posted about, it states that Rebel Jam is currently being headed by Zoe Quinn. And that if you want to help out, please donate here. And where is here exactly? Well, it would be this particular PayPal account, the Quinspiracy. And whose PayPal account is that? I mean, is that the, the game jam? I mean, it's headed by Zoe, but obviously this must be a group endeavor. So whose PayPal is that? Oh, that would be Zoe's PayPal, the same PayPal she links to from beesgo.biz, right there at the tip me portion. That's weird, isn't it, that somebody would have a game jam uh, donating directly into their normal PayPal account where they take tips. How do you separate that money? How do you keep track of it? One could almost argue looking at this that Zoe is taking money for something that's never going to happen into her personal account and spending it and not putting up any information to update anything on. So I wonder what Maddie would think of all this. I mean, from his perspective, he's looking at a person who wrote an article about him, Nathan Grayson, who's confirmed to have a relationship at some point, a romantic or sexual relationship with a person he sourced in a story, Zoe Quinn. The other source in that very same story, Robin Arnott, also is alleged to have a sexual relationship with Zoe Quinn. 
on the very day these articles ran talking about how badly he fucked up this game jam, Zoe Quinn establishes her own game jam with a PayPal that directly links into her own private account where she takes money and doesn't post updates. That would look rather fucking suspicious, like perhaps there's collusion going on. Perhaps there are pre-existing relationships which are altering the truth of the event. Perhaps maybe some of the key players intentionally fucked up a $400,000 game jam for this sole outcome. Who knows? I mean, hell, he could pick up a lot of things, like the phone number to his lawyer, and a good court to drag Gawker's ass into since they're the parent company of Kotaku, who all these people are associated with in some weird, vague way. All these different journalists and developers, and they all seem to have these relationships, and don't mind putting out bad press about certain individuals and apparently profiting from it. That would be my guess as to what Maddie would think in this particular situation. It's now been seven days since the Zoe Post blog first went up online. In the time since then, numerous new allegations along with pieces of evidence have come forward showing different kinds of relationships that have existed between the gaming press and different developers. These relationships have run the gamut from close friendships to sexual and or romantic relationships to even financial support. There have been allegations that have been mounting that there's favoritism shown and that there's bias in the coverage. And yet, throughout it all, the gaming press refuses to address any of it, instead insisting to call the people that are interested in finding out the truth misogynistic or sexist or nutcases and idiots. If you want to demean those people that are looking at you right now with a critical lens, go right on ahead. But you are not going to be able to keep ignoring the mounting evidence that there is something seriously corrupt in your particular industry. If you want to wear the moniker of journalist, you'd better start fucking acting like a journalist. It's well and high and mighty to say that you have ethics and standards, but if you don't put those into practice and actually walk the fucking talk, they mean zero. And with every single blog post that you write saying you won't negotiate with terrorists as if labeling us like that is somehow going to make us go away, you just prove that you don't know what you're up against. So let me remind you. What are you? I've got some reckoning. It and the borrowed time you've all been living on. You are pure evil. I'm necessary evil. Sex for favors, secrets, cover ups, corruption. I've heard things that'll blow your mind, and now I think it's time you get the whole story. I'm Jesse Ventura, and this is Quinspiracy Theory. It has now been two weeks since the Zoe Post blog first went up online, and in the span of 14 days, a lot of things have happened. One of the most striking of which would be the pushback on the part of gamers. It is a pushback against a corrupt gaming press, and believe me when I say they are corrupt, that is exactly what they are. When this first started coming to light, they originally tried silence. They simply sought to ignore it and hope that it went away, but it didn't. When that failed, they moved on to censorship, censorship which we can show, which evidence exists of, and yet that did not work. It just spread it even further, thanks to the Streisand effect. When censorship failed, they moved on to what they're doing now, which is mockery and attacking. And it will fail just like the past two attempts did. What they are not taking into account is people have had enough. And a prime example of that is the fact that we're even still talking about this. That we are on day 14 with a fucking hashtag Gamergate. That we are on day 14 with people in the movie industry, the television industry, the fucking music industry commenting on this. We are on day 14 where websites have some of the largest threads in their fucking history dedicated to this very thing. It is not going away, it is not diminishing, and it is not dying. And that speaks volumes to what is happening, because the internet is a place where things happen in quick succession. You are lucky if you can keep the internet's attention for a day, let alone two entire weeks. And yet, still, the gaming media, the gaming press, these supposed so-called journalists, are trying to act as if there's nothing here, that there's no corruption, that nothing needs to be addressed, or that anything that has been addressed as a result of the sustained pressure is not a big deal, that it's really not as big as you think. There's no conspiracy, there's no collusion. You're all just deluding yourselves and thinking that things are taking place and they're not really happening. But we, the game journalists, we have your best interest in mind, so just shut the fuck up and we'll tell you what to think. Now, it's been hard to keep track of all this because so much shit has come to light. So many different pieces of evidence and links and connections between different individuals because, I'll, I'll say this right out front, I, I think perhaps the biggest fault outside of the blatant fucking corruption, 
would be the arrogance of these people. The gaming journalists that exist are some of the most smug, arrogant fucking people you will ever meet. But that works to our benefit. They think they can't be held accountable. They think that their faults and failures don't need to be addressed. And they are arrogant and defiant in their behavior. And because of that, they have dragged their asses across social media to such an extent that massive amounts of connections and evidence just sits there. Now, because of the scope of things that have taken place, uh, I want to scale it back. I, I want to ask a simple question. Before all of this happened, who would you have listed if I'd said, name me a reputable game journalist or a website that you trust? Well, I, I think most people would have answered Forbes, and I think most people would have said Eric Kane. He's somebody who people looked up to. He's somebody that we held as an example of somebody who we thought had our best interest in mind, even if we disagreed with him, because we had seen his ethical standards and practice. Now, Forbes and the people I'm going to be talking about have not in any way been connected to any of this. None of their names have been brought up. None of them have ever been shown to have been in collusion with anybody else. It's just a site with two guys talking about this. But I think it speaks to an issue of the disconnect between them and us, between the gaming media and the actual consumer. Now, the first article we're going to look at is by Paul Tassie. It's called The Truth About Video Game Journalism, and it was published on August 22nd, so roughly a week from when the blog post first went up. Now, in his article, he mentions that there's a scandal going on, but he's not going to mention anybody by name. He then further goes on to explain that this isn't really an issue, that uh, games journalism is fairly mundane, that they're not going to jump on a dog pile to slander an innocent woman, and that he feels uncomfortable calling himself a gamer now because of the toxic mentality of these people, you know, uh, of gamers that are curious about this, that want this to be addressed, because the bias is on our part and not the gaming press's part. It's our fault, not theirs. And while this article tries to come off as neutral and uh, objective, it's quite clear it's not. Now, Tassie, as I said, he doesn't address any of the concerns. Instead, he says that she's innocent, and that's, that's how he addresses it. He doesn't look into any of the evidence or any of the allegations. He doesn't want to jump on that dog pile. Now, you, you could look at this and say, all right, well, maybe that's his opinion. But then look what he writes on Twitter directly after publishing this. This is from August 23rd, from Paul Tassie on his Twitter account. All this, but doesn't this raise questions talk, reminds me of people being mad at the media for failing to prove Obama is a Muslim. If I had to guess, I'd say there's some overlap in those crowds. Now, that's ironic coming from Paul Tassie, because in his article he states, ideally, we'd like to do so without being insulted. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be insulted as a gaming journalist. He's just trying to do his job. Even though he's going to spin a narrative that anybody questioning this is toxic and that the woman in question, who he won't name, is innocent and being dogpiled on by horrible individuals. Apparently those that think Obama is a Muslim. So it really throws the objective nature of his article out the fucking window. That's not really journalism. There's no investigation taking place. You're not addressing anything. You're just putting up a smokescreen. You're not, you're, it's, it's, a, it's an article that doesn't talk about anything. But it's not Paul Tassie we're interested in, is it? It's Eric Kane. That's, that's the guy we look to. That's the guy that's held up as the example, as the fucking example of what game journalism should be. He's the guy we trust. So let's take a look at his article. It was Sex, Lies, and Video Games, and it was published on August 26th, so it's four days after Tassie's was put up. Now, while Kane's article does go slightly farther than Tassie's did, again, it's another non-piece. There's no real investigation taking place. It says there was a scandal. It mentions some partial details, but that's about it. And instead, it, it veers off. It veers off to talk about something he says echoes Jim Sterling's earlier statements about... Um, how journalists have a tough job and maybe it's hard to keep relationships separated, but let's not go into any specific detail. He even outright states in his third paragraph, let's gloss over the details. Then going on to further state, I've done the research, i followed the various threads on the various forums, listened to the YouTube videos, seen all those little immigrant sleuth pics, and while a deeper look at the nature of the media industry relationship is warranted, this affair only serves as a leaping off point, not as the story itself. That is a sentiment we've heard echoed repeatedly since this began. They will not talk about this. They refuse to talk about this. And again, this is a publication that's not connected to it. And yet, it presents an image of a gaming press that will not keep its house in order. It won't talk about the objective failures of other game journalists. They, they won't do that. You can't 
talk about that. That's not acceptable. It's ironic that his article's talking about the closeness of relationships when it demonstrates the thing he's talking about by refusing to address the allegations made in relation to the scandal. And that is what it is. We're talking about a scandal related to relationships between indie developers, Zoe Quinn, and people in the gaming press. It was the catalyst for what has set everything else off. You could no more remove Zoe Quinn from corruption in game journalism than you could remove Richard Nixon and Watergate from corruption in politics. It is the focal point, it is the starting point, it is the catalyst. By refusing to address it, you're hand-waving us off. Now, one of the things I find concerning about this is that very statement, I've done the research. What does that mean? What do you mean you've done the research? You're a journalist. If you're a journalist, this is my understanding of what a journalist does. They investigate. They do interviews. They make phone calls. They look into possible connections, financially or otherwise. They actually get out and do the legwork. Watching YouTube videos and reading forum threads is not journalism. That's what bloggers do. That's what I do. That's what everybody on the fucking internet does. Journalists take it a step further by investigating and looking into the allegations, uh, possible statements or connections. They do the legwork. So I find it disconcerting that that's your research and that then you go off and to talk about these vague things without addressing the specifics. Again, just like Tassie did. Now, later on in the article, you state, under this whole social justice warrior thing is a mess, just a complete mess. A fairly substantial set of gamers is absolutely obsessed with the so-called SJW, the White Knights of Games Media. And you talk about how you don't really understand that. You don't, you don't understand what an SJW is, and you're questioning, are you one? Because you believe in uh, ideas of equality. Now, I find this supremely fucking funny because of something Eric Kane posted on his Twitter. This is from August 28th. I'm saying Divinity Original Sin is best game of the summer. What's yours? Putting aside the differences we may have in what a journalist does in regards to actual research before they publish an article, you stated, I've looked at the pics, I've followed the links, I've watched the videos, and you don't understand the whole SJW thing. Then you go on Twitter. <laughs> you go on Twitter and you say your favorite fucking game of the summer is Divinity Original Sin. Here's a fun fact. If you go back and look at that first video I put up, you might have noticed this blog post talking about hypersensitive journalists, white knights, and social justice. In fact, this person, this particular person, talks about how it interferes with their ability to do their fucking job as a creator. Do you know what game they worked on? Divinity Original Sin your favorite game of the summer. You don't understand social justice warriors. You don't understand how this entire thing that's been going on for two weeks is important and you want to hand wave it off, but you've done the research. You've looked at the videos and yet the videos, mine and others, cite this as a fucking source. And then you go onto Twitter and talk about this very game when somebody who helped create it is telling you these people are fucking with their career, but that's not newsworthy. Now, if you'd done the legwork, if you had contacted them, and maybe set up an interview, you'd have a better fucking idea for what people are talking about when they say agenda pushing, when they talk about social justice warriors, and when they talk about the impact that has on not only the consumer, but the developer of games. It is just frustratingly disappointing that the people who are perceived to be the better of game journalism fall into the same fucking pitfalls of refusing to look into things when people bring them up and circling the fucking wagons because you don't want to fling shit at your other fellow professionals, do you? That's what it feels like. So when you have all these different gaming sites putting media blackouts in place, refusing to talk about shit, and covering each other's backs, why do you think there's a notion of conspiracy? Well, how do you think that makes you look, Eric? How do you think that makes your profession look? Go check out the fucking, uh, you know, hashtag Gamergate. Maybe go do some more research, read some fucking tweets or something. Hell, at this point, I may as well become a contributor at Forbes. Why not fill out an application? Because obviously, the bar has been set really, really low. Uh, you know, why not? Why don't I get a job as a journalist there? And I'll read some fucking tweets and then whip up an article about it. Because that's apparently what research is nowadays. But you might be saying, wait a minute, Jim. You're a giant asshole. There's no way you could be a journalist. Well, I beg to differ. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these journalists and what they've been writing recently. Oh, here's one. Uh, somebody asked, what does gamer even mean to you? And the response from somebody who's written articles for Polygon and other sites, uh, shit person who cares way too much about video games. That's, that's great. Good idea to insult the demographic. When I think Polygon from now on, I'm going to think 
people who think I'm an asshole and don't like people who play video games. Oh, here's another classy game journalist. Uh, my Twitter is full of wound up nerds proving my point all day. I, I love that as somebody who plays video games. To have the people who purport and claim to be fans of gaming and who want to write about gaming and work in the industry insult me. That, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Nerds, geeks, shit people. That's, that's a really smart decision and it doesn't make you all look like a bunch of bullying assholes. They may be saying, but again, Jim, you're a giant dick. That's true, but I'm not going around claiming I'm a fucking journalist, am I? You don't see my name slapped up on Kotaku. I didn't go get a master's degree in journalism, did I? But these people, these people want to play pretend. They want to write on video game websites and pretend to be game journalists and then go and behave in abhorrent ways. No, maybe they're just a little bit salty because, you know, somebody, don't want to name drop them because they've been really pissy at them lately, uh, tore them a new asshole so fucking large that you could drive a semi-truck through it. And they are very angry about that because it's not somebody they can just push around. It's somebody bigger than they are. They don't, they don't like that. They don't like the idea that somebody in a position of power wants to take a shit on them like, you know, they're taking a shit on us. But no, I, I really do think, uh, I, I think I'm going to become a game journalist. Uh, I, you know, I, I'll even come up with my own agenda because agendas are okay now. Maybe you all haven't heard of this yet, but having an agenda and being a journalist are not mutually exclusive things anymore. It's totally okay. Take this article, for example. Announcement readers who feel threatened by equality no longer welcome. Now, maybe you've never heard of this website, but it's apparently big in Australia, as they claim we've also built one of Australia's most popular gaming news and review sites. And that, that funny little line under that, most experienced journalists. Well, let's see what, uh, what kind of statements they make. As long as I am in charge of this ship, I will happily admit to pushing an agenda. Oh, and comments are closed on this article. That's another common theme among all these very brave journalists who like to um, go on Twitter and mock gamers. They'll immediately block them, and then they'll publish articles mocking them and close the comments because they are such brave professionals who are so open to honest feedback that they run away like cowards. Which makes you wonder, is there any redeemable quality to these people, to their profession, to these websites? Over the past two weeks, we've uncovered a treasure trove of things they didn't want to talk about. And throughout the course of it all, they kept telling us there's nothing to discuss, there's nothing to address. Take uh, Polygon, for instance. Here's a, a statement they released this past week about Patreon support. Patreon, again, is a service that's like a monthly stipend. You're not creating a product, you're just getting paid to exist. That's what Patreon is. Uh, think of it like the Kickstarter for people, except they never start anything. They just sort of lazily lay about because you're fucking paying the rent. Why would they get off their ass? So here's Polygon saying that they see no issue with their reporters financially supporting people. So think the likes of Kohler or Kuchera. That's okay. We, we can't see any foreseeable bias that might emerge from you investing in people in an industry you report on. This is like uh, black magic to them. They don't, they don't get it. It's hoodoo. It's all mystical and shit. But then again, this is Polygon we're talking about. It's not like they have ethics in the first place. I mean, after all, these are the people that allowed somebody to review a game who had a relationship with a developer. That's a real class act, Polygon. You're really lighting the fucking way to the future of uh, journalism with your ethics and behavior these past two weeks. Now, Polygon wasn't the only one to release a statement. Kotaku did as well. Editor-in-chief Stephen Totillo released a statement about uh, Patreon as well. His was different. He said they did find that there were conflicts of interest with people who report on an industry donating to people in that industry. So that will no longer happen to Kotaku. Now you might say, isn't that great? Look, here's Stephen Totillo taking a stand. And in fact, didn't he also address that Nathan Grayson thing? I mean, it seems like Stephen is actually stepping up to the fucking plate. Yes, it seems like that. I'll, I'll grant you that. It seems like that. If you go back a little bit, you'll remember his statement. Uh, this is a, a part of it that he put up on Twitter before he had a chance to actually write something for Kotaku itself, talking about Grayson. My standard has long been this. Reporters who are in any way close to the people they might report on should recuse themselves from reporting about those with whom they're close. If they must report about them, disclosure is mandatory. Readers deserve that. Well, that sounds really good. I mean, that's a, a position we as gamers should be able to agree with. If you know somebody, you have a relationship with somebody, whatever it is, 
whether it's a friendship, a very close friendship, or a sexual or romantic relationship, or financial ties, you should recuse yourself from writing about them because it creates a conflict of interest. And I mean, here he is making all these public statements, so obviously he, he genuinely cares about this. Except for the fact that Kotaku has tried to very quietly smooth over some rough edges without making too public of a statement. Now, what would that rough edge be? Well, none other than Patricia Hernandez. Buckle in for this one, because it's going to be, it's really going to be great. Hopefully Eric Kane's still watching. I, I really think you should pay attention to this next little bit. It might be educational for him. Now, Patricia Hernandez had a couple of interesting Twitter conversations that got people looking through some things. Here's one she had with uh, Christina Love. Patricia writes, The neck region is kind of one of the best regions, period. Christina responds, Gosh, I had no idea you felt that way. To which Patricia responds once more, How are you supposed to play that off when you've dated me? Ah ha 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 ha. And just who is Christina? Why, she would be a game developer. A game developer Patricia Hernandez wrote about. She did more than just write about her. This isn't a little positive press. She recommended you buy the games and put links into the article directing you to the fucking store page. Oh, but it doesn't end there. No, one conflict of interest, that would just be amateur shit. Let's, let's bump it up a little bit. Let's bring in some friends, too. How about uh, Anna Anthropy? You know, another person Patricia personally knows has a relationship of sorts with, maybe lived with, uh, as you can see in this conversation that took place again on Twitter. And what do you know, Patricia wrote articles about her as well, giving her positive press and talking about her games and how interesting and insightful Anna Anthropy is. I also like those little updates on the articles, you know, that address this. Uh, oh, by the way, I know this article's fucking a year and a half old, but kind of had a relationship. Hopefully, if anybody stumbles on this in an archive somewhere, they'll uh, be all right with that. But they sure as shit didn't know at the time, did they, Patricia? So it comes off as slightly fucking disingenuous, Stephen, when you'll make public statements when you're pressured to and address ethical problems when you're pressured to, but when you think you can kind of slip by it, you just, you do something like this. You put a little addendum on there, and you don't address it in a upfront fucking public way. Which really begs the fucking question, what is it exactly that's going on here? Is it that Stephen Totillo doesn't know what his reporters are doing? Is he incompetent and oblivious to their ethical violations that are happening seemingly all over the fucking place? Whether it's financially, sexually, relationship-wise, press-wise? Or is he totally aware that these things are going on, but doesn't see a problem with them unless people pressure him about that? Because he's only responded to all of this shit ever since that blog post went up. So when I see other reporters saying that this is a non-fucking issue and a non-story and Gamergate isn't a thing and we don't need to talk about Zoe and all that related shit, I, I, I don't believe it. Hell, just in Kotaku alone we have multiple examples of ethical breaches. And time and time again we're met with the most bizarre responses. Which makes me, like I said, wonder, what exactly is going on? Are you unaware that your reporters are out of fucking control? That they're having sex with people and relationships and reporting positive press in their favor? They're linking to their store pages and promoting their products? Were you unaware they're financially donating to people in an industry they cover? Are you covering it up? Are you only responding because there's criticism against you? Do you genuinely believe in ethical standards for a reporter, for journalism? What exactly is going on at fucking Kotaku? What is going on at Gawker Media? Now, hopefully Eric Kane did listen to this portion, because it leads me to this point. By being sloppy about how you investigate things, this is what comes about. And believe me, Stephen has been led down this road. Here's a statement from him two years ago in the comments of a Week in Kotaku article. This is regarding Robert Florence and corruption in gaming. Look at what he wrote in response to that. I don't think it's an important story. But that would take actual reporting to find out, and I just don't care enough about the latest supposed media scandal to ask my reporters to look into it. How pervasive is this attitude in your industry? No wonder none of you want to look at Zoe Quinn. It's not just that you have connections to her. It's not just that you're corrupt. You're fucking lazy. You don't want to be bothered to do the work. That requires effort, and who wants to do effort? You're just glorified bloggers. And apparently, people in the industry see right through you. They, they know exactly what you're up to. They know exactly how you operate. And they're just not going to be bothered with your bullshit. But now it's the customer. Now it's the reader. Now it's the consumer that's come around to that. Now, when the Zoe Quinn story first broke out, when this entire shitstorm first erupted, we were constantly told it was of no interest. 
They didn't care that she had been in relationships with people in gaming journalism, and this has been confirmed by Stephen Totillo himself after interviewing Nathan Grayson. This is his own statement, that yes, we did have a relationship, but the timeline doesn't line up. That's something that Eric Kane said in his article and other people have speculated on and stated, and yet there's evidence that's floating out there that shows that's actually not correct, that they've had conversations about taking trips together, that the Las Vegas trip itself skews the timeline, and that there's more going on to it. But you don't want to investigate that, because that's reporting, and that takes work. Just like I'm sure you guys didn't care about the fine young capitalists getting their shit kicked in by Zoe Quinn, having evidence of this taking place, you, you don't care about that. Who cares? It's just somebody trying to support women in game development. You don't care about women in game development. You care about putting on a false face to make a profit. You clickbaiting cowards. I mean, my God, right now, at this very moment, there is a, a, a plethora of connections and information relating to this entire thing. Here's a tweet to Zoe Quinn back in February. We exploded their site, oh my god, us. To which Zoe Quinn responds, oops, we DDoSed something by accident. Now, if you look at the entire conversation, it's them talking about harassing the fine young capitalists, it's them talking about going after the fine young capitalists, and throwing out criticisms that are frankly untrue and have been proven to be untrue. Now, who exactly is that that's making that tweet to Zoe? That's kind of interesting. I wonder, do they have any connection to any of this? Why, that account, that Twitter account, is owned by Maya Kramer. Well, who is Maya Kramer? Well, Maya Kramer would be in PR. More specifically, Maya Kramer happens to have connections. She works for Silver String Media. And guess who happens to be an advisor on Silver String Media? Anita Sarkeesian. Well, what a fucking coincidence. But hey, that's not the only coincidence. You remember that Indie Arcade Award that... Uh, Zoe got on Depression Quest and the people that are responsible for selecting the games that get uh, chosen for awards, the people involved with that organization, it wasn't just Robin or not, it was also Maya Kramer. Correct! She's involved in that too. You know, speaking of Anita Sarkeesian, what has she been up to? Well, that's an interesting tweet. Video Games, Misogyny, and Terrorism, A Guide to Assholes at BadassDigest.com Well, let's go take a look at that article. Well, that looks like a, a wonderful article about good, positive gamer culture. I'm sure it's not spinning a narrative at all. But Badass Digest, why does that sound so familiar? Would it... Wait a minute, do I know the... Who is the editor... No, I'm sorry. The Badass-in-Chief at, at Badass Digest? Oh, that would be Devin Ferrasi. You know, the guy who doxes women on his Twitter account. Don't, don't worry about it, though, Anita. It's not like you're a feminist or anything. And besides, he has excuses. It's just this stupid fucking woman. He doesn't care. He'll put her information out there. You know, doxing women on Twitter, giving them harassment. You know, he's got justifications. Oh, who cares? It's a temporary email account. What's going to happen? It's not like they'd get threatened or harassed. But Devin Ferrasi, why does that... It still sounds familiar. What, what else do I know him from? Oh, he was the guy that was making jokes saying that he respects ISIS more than the people who are against uh, Zoe Quinn. Now, wasn't ISIS the terrorist organization that kills real journalists? I'm, I'm stunned. Why would Anita Sarkeesian, a feminist, be linking to a website run by a man who doxes women and supports terrorism? That's fucking crazy. That's almost as bad as being an advisor at a PR firm that has relations to a person that destroys game jams dedicated to women. Now, Mr. Ferrasi here likes to uh, compare people that are interested in Gamergate to ISIS, as in saying that we have a, a jihad against them, that this is some holy crusade. Well, he would be wrong. It's not a jihad, it's not a crusade, it's not even a revolution. It's a reformation. We are walking up to your front fucking door, and we are nailing our edict on it. Because we have seen what you've been doing to the thing we consider holy. You've been shitting it up with your corruption, and your close relationships, and your financial ties, and spinning narratives that basically desecrates the thing we love. And when I say something like spinning narratives, that's exactly what I mean. See, ever since this Gamergate thing broke and people started calling out all these websites on the shady, underhanded shit they've been engaged in, that's been verified by people at these websites, whether they've excused it or admitted to it. We suddenly got this. A barrage that took place between the 28th and the 29th of article after article after article, one after the other, non-fucking stop, all saying the same thing. The gamer identity is dead. Gamers are horrible people. Gamers are terrible. They're misogynistic. They're sexist. We need to get rid of them. Well, excuse me for being a bit fucking incredulous here, but when I see 10 fucking articles all drop on the same day saying the exact same fucking thing, it almost feels like 
I don't know, a PR company might be involved. Like these independent journalistic websites aren't really independent at all. Like maybe they're colluding with one another to put forward a, a narrative, a message, a talking point, or an agenda that they want to shove down the throat of the consumer. It almost seems like a hissy fit, like tantruming children that are upset that they've been dragged into the fucking daylight where they get exposed. And hell, this video has gotten so long, I've talked about so much of this shit at this point because there's so many fucking examples of it that I can't even get back to the Max Temkin thing. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, Zoe Quinn's ex-boyfriend posted more information in relation to Max Temkin's rape apology that he posted online. Apparently, guess who wrote that for him? Zoe Quinn. And why did she write it for him? Because he was going to financially support her game jam and she didn't want bad PR, so she wanted to craft a message she thought would appeal to people. Are you fucking kidding me with this shit? Does it ever end? Is there a bottom? Have we reached it yet? I can't tell anymore. I want to drop a fucking nickel and listen to how long it takes before it starts bouncing off something. For the past two weeks now, we've been repeatedly told that this is a non-story and that nobody's interested, and yet all the information we have says otherwise. Site after site has repeatedly talked about it. Some of the biggest threads that have ever appeared on forums are about this very thing. Websites that are repositories for information have been accessed hundreds of thousands of times. Google searches half a million fucking times. It gets bigger and bigger by the day. If you think attacking us and trying to spin this on us is going to work, you are sadly mistaken. And I think perhaps the craziest thing about this all is that somebody needs to get a hold of Jeff Keeley and tell him to say thank you to Kotaku and Polygon and Rock Paper Shotgun and all of the others because they've made him look good. Guess whose name hasn't been connected to any of this shit? Jeff Keeley. Guess what website hasn't been connected to any of this shit? IGN. He may be the fucking Dorito Pope, but at least he's clean in my eyes. Because after all, popes are celibate. And that's how I know he sure as shit ain't one of the five guys. All right, hey guys, uh, just getting shit set up here, so just give me a second. Hopefully the live stream is going up on the channel, I don't know though. Hate this technology shit. Uh, let's see. Is it fucking working? And of course not. Oh, fucking YouTube, man. Come on. Oh, let's see. Well, I hope it's showing up. I'm, I'm looking on my channel. It's not showing that it's live, but it's it's telling me it's live because Google fucking hates me. Every single fucking time. Just give me a second here. All right. Okay, cool. It looks like uh, we're good to go. I have it set up so you can ask <clears throat> you can ask questions on Twitter. Uh, I, I don't know. They apparently fucked up how this works. It used to have a live chat room, and now it's gone. I don't know why that is, but it's what I got to roll with. All right, let's see. What the fuck, Google? What the hell are you doing to me here? All right, I'm just trying to get this set up. Sorry, I'm a dick. I'm fucking terrible. I'm technically inept. Get this going in a second. Okay, fuck. All right, we're good. We're good. I'm sorry. I got the uh, chat working now, so... I'm sorry for being a retard. We're good to go. But I thought I'd set up another stream to let you ask 
whatever the fuck you want. There's a lot of shit going on, and it's really hard to keep up with. I did a couple of shitlord streams before, so I figured I'd do it in the same vein. So whatever the fuck you want. Go to Twitter, see some questions. It looks like the actual YouTube chat's working, so I won't even really need to fucking use it. What do we got here? Nothing. No questions. It's sad. Uh, I fucking hate social media so much. This is why I don't use Twitter. Set it up for the last live stream. It's a fucking nightmare. I much prefer Ask FM. Don't have to deal with any of this crazy shit. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, the chat's moving quickly. If you guys got any question, man, uh, feel free to ask him. It's what we're here to talk about. Whatever the fuck you want. Gamergate, doesn't matter. I'm being called a shitlord. Yes, I am a shitlord. I'm very fucking privileged. I'm a horrible cis male oppressor. That's what I do. Uh, somebody's asking, what did the fine young Turks want? Uh, they just contacted me on Twitter and wanted to talk for a few minutes. It's up to them if they want to publicly announce what they wanted to talk about. Unlike uh, unlike certain journalists at uh, unethical unethical websites, I, you know, I, I try to have a modicum of fucking respect when people want to talk to me. So I'm not going to just turn around and start saying shit. IRC logs uh, leaked, discussed what happened. I don't know. I've seen posts about it. I haven't really been paying a lot of attention. From what I understand, the IRC she was in, <laughs> it was comprised of people fucking about, is one thing I heard. <clears throat> Other things I've heard is that she edited the fucking logs, apparently, and that the person that was running that particular IRC released all of them. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I have no idea. But it's a, just, it's a tactic. It's a last fucking desperate tactic to try to divert attention away and to try to shift blame and kill momentum. I mean, that that's what it is. It's that spectrum of going from not talking about shit to censorship to attacking and saying gamers are dead, gamers are horrible, into just fucking confusion and diversion is essentially what it is. And I'm sorry my voice is jacked up. i am got a fucking cold right now. Uh, hey, Jim, why are you such a misogynistic shitlord? Uh, I don't know. I think all men are, apparently. That's what I've been told. When I read Kotaku or Polygon, they tell me because I have a penis, I'm a horrible human being. So it has to be true. I mean, they're journalists. They can't be, they can't be biased, can they? Uh, sis shitlord, did you see Zoe contacted the FBI? What What is she contacting the FBI for? Is she trying to get a hold of the U.S. government to say, hey... I made this really horrible fucking HTML game. Maybe you can use it as a form of torture on terrorists. Maybe you could, like, pass it off to your friends in the CIA or the NSA and, like, you know, force the terrorists to sit in a fucking chair and play Depression Quest until they tell us where all those leaders are. You know, they had to shut down all their other programs, but this is the new psychological warfare. Really horrible HTML games. How, do, or how long do you think this will last? Are you talking about Gamergate? I, I have no clue. It's been going on and on. It seems like people are angry, and I don't, I don't blame them. I'd be pissed off, too. Our guests on the way. Yes, I'll probably pull people in as shit goes on. I don't know. It just depends what people want to talk about. <laughs> Do I drink Coke or penis? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a choice. You know, I mean, both are just so great, right? Which do you like? I'd probably go with Pepsi, though. Neither, see? I think outside the fucking box. <laughs> uh, God, this shit goes really fast. Fuck. I, I I want your babies. They're not for sale. I'm sorry. I don't uh, I don't sell them. They're too precious to me. Give a blowjob or two, and they're I can't. I, God, fuck. This goes so quickly. <laughs> oh God, this is a fucking disaster already. What is your opinion on Anita? I've already given my opinion on Anita. You can go watch the uh, one of the previous videos I did. I I don't I don't buy into it. I think it's a con job. It was one hundred sixty thousand dollars to do a series of videos. It was supposed to be finished by what was it August or September of twenty thirteen, and released in DVD box set. At the rate she's going, when she finally releases a completed series, I'll be able to have my robotic hover dog 
bring over the fucking hologram because that's what it's going to be printed on because it'll be the year 2045 by the time she's fucking done. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, how's Marco? I don't know, I haven't talked to him lately. He's been busy, so I'm not sure what he's up to. This chat is insane. Yes, it is. It's going really fucking fast. Talk about DARPA. Are you talking about the DIGRA thing? Yeah, I, I, I saw people posting about that. I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it's interesting, the fact that there's a connection to it, but what, is, what would that even mean? So you've got people that are, manip you know, you've got a government program that's essentially aimed at what? manipulating people through social media and seeing if you can get them to react a certain way and that's somehow playing a part into this if if that's if something like that were real let's say they would probably just be collecting data points they would be watching something like this and saying okay well this is how people on social media react to a shitstorm so let's just observe and see what's going on i don't know if it goes beyond that people have to look into it there's there's so much shit going on you can't keep track of everything it's fucking impossible. Talk about Eric Kane. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to come off as fucking harsh in the last video, but it was true. I mean, I felt like, listen, I like Eric Kane. I'm not gonna lie, I do. I, I, you know, I love when he stood up to Ben Kuchera. I thought that was great. You know, I, I respected him. I respected his writing, and it just felt like, from the perspective of a gamer, you know, somebody who likes to fucking play video games like the majority of other people. It just felt like he left us out to dry. Like he fuck us hung or he hung us out there. He just didn't give a shit. It just felt kind of like a fluff piece. Like I'm not going to really focus on it. There's nothing really there and it just it hurt. It felt shitty. So I I don't know what his motivation was to go back and to re-examine it. Uh even though it it still comes off as a pretty down the road neutral piece that he put up recently, but uh you know, I I don't know what to tell you. It it was it was hurtful. It was hurtful that he didn't take it more seriously. Uh, when is this SJW shit going to end? <laughs> well, man, you gotta you you have to understand what that is. Uh, let's let's just you know sidetrack. Let's talk about what social justice warriors are, because I've noticed there's a lot of fucking confusion and people related to the Gamergate thing don't seem to really understand what that is. They think it's a, an attack on people that are I don't know activists or people that believe in shit. I'll tell you exactly what a social justice warrior is and why they exist. So you've got this generation, right, millennials, and they grew up right as the PC era began. And it's important to understand that because in the PC era, education took a new track. And when they looked at kids in school, they said, hey, you know what? Instead of addressing behavioral problems, we're just going to ignore them. So from now on, everybody's a winner. Everybody's going to get a trophy. Everybody's kid is special, they're, they're beautiful, they're elegant, nothing they do is wrong, they should never be held accountable for any of their actions, okay? And this is this thing that these kids grew up hearing day in and day out. And a large majority of them, once they became adults, became extremely narcissistic because they've been raised on this idea that they are special. Look at all those trophies they've got, that must mean something. I mean, sure, they're all fucking participation trophies, but they're fucking trophies nonetheless. So they grow up hearing this, and they, they get this ego, they get this narcissism, that they're the center of the fucking universe. Now, when you combine that with technology, right, with all these smartphones and tablets and laptops, and then social media services like uh, Twitter and Facebook, it just adds fuel to the fire. Because now that person that thinks in their head that they're super special and that everything they do is really important can now tell everybody about how important and how special they are. Because absolutely everybody has to know that I just took a shit so I better tweet that out. Everybody absolutely has to know that, you know, my fucking favorite color is blue. Let me go on Facebook and tell them. The world needs to hear this shit because I am the center of the fucking universe. So that's what you've got. You've got these group of people that are super narcissistic and they've got the technology that just adds fuel to the fire, right? And then here comes these really crazy social justice warriors. And they tell these people the one thing they really want to hear. And that one thing is, nothing you do is wrong. The reason your life is shit and the reason you feel unfulfilled and things aren't going your way is because somebody out there is oppressing you. If you're gay, it's the straight guy. He's oppressing you. If you're a woman, it's a man. Man, you know, men are oppressing you. If you're transsexual, it's those it's those horrible cis people. Are you a minority? Are you a black guy? Well, all those white people, they're holding you down. So now you have a narcissist who's essentially been told that, oh my God, all the things in my life that are wrong aren't a result of my shitty fucking personality. 
Instead, I'm being oppressed by everybody. And now it never ends. Because if they ever admit to themselves that the bullshit they've been sold is untrue, it means they have to look at themselves and say, holy shit, I'm a dick. And that is why it's grown fucking out of control. And, and these groups of people, these social justice warriors, they're not activists. You look at the groups they've infested and destroyed, and there's a long history of it. Go look at the science wars. Go look at somebody like Sokol, who was talking about all these you know, postmodernists coming into STEM-related fields and wanting to write articles about how chemistry is racist and how gravity is sexist and all this crazy shit. And here's this, these people in science are like, what the fuck are they talking about? This is insane. But it, it was another example, kind of you know, pre-internet, of these people doing what they do best is they infiltrate, they co-opt, and they fucking destroy something. You can see examples of that happening all over the place. Go look at Occupy Wall Street. What is it? It's a movement, right? And what, was the, what did it start off as? Real simple fucking message, right? We don't like corruption. Who the fuck is going to disagree with that? Who's going to say, no, no, I want my politicians to be corrupt, and I want to get bent over a table so I can get fucked by a bank. That sounds super fun. That's the platform I'm going to run on. Like, nobody would be against that message. So you would think these people would have an opportunity to really connect to mainstream America. But what you see happen is social justice warriors see this going on, and they're like, oh, hey, I can latch onto that and fuck it up because I'm a narcissist who doesn't think anything I do is wrong. So they join this group, and instead of being about you know getting corruption out of politics and making bankers be fucking responsible, they change it into shit like Native American rain dance rights and no rape zones and really bizarre shit that really doesn't make any sense. And then they introduce something called the fucking progressive stack. Go look up that video on YouTube if you really want your fucking mind blown. The progressive stack introduced at Occupy Wall Street. It essentially tells people, we don't care what the merit of your idea is or what your argument is. All we care about is where you rank on the oppression scale. So, white guy, you're going to speak last because you're white and you're a man. But the transsexual midget in a wheelchair, that's the person we want to hear from because they're the most oppressed here. Sure, they may be completely fucking retarded and nothing they say is important or makes any sense, but they're more, you know, they're more oppressed, so we have to hear from them first. And so it started to drive away people. It drove away people that were passionate about it. It drove away people that were moderates about it, and it left all these fucking crazy people, and it collapsed on itself. Look at um, atheism. Look what fucking happened to them. You know, all fedora jokes aside and all the you know, bananas up the ass jokes aside, you have this group of people that say, hey, we're logical and reasonable, we don't believe in God, yada, yada, yada. We have our own little conventions we go to and tip fedoras at each other until the fucking you know, sun comes up, whatever. And they've got their speakers, they have their prominent figures that they really love. You've got Dawkins and other people like that. But what happens? Well, somebody says, hey, atheism's not good enough. You need to be atheist plus. You need to be atheist plus a feminist, plus a progressive, plus a social justice warrior, plus this, plus that, plus that. And if you're not that, we're going to tell you you're sexist and horrible. So all these atheists are like, what the fuck are you talking about? This has nothing to do with any of that shit. It's just about religion. That's it. That's all we're really here to talk about, you know? So they come in and they, they fucking wreck it. And they shit up the community. They attack people like Dawkins. Dawkins, who was a figurehead of this fucking movement, who they all respected. You know, whatever your personal opinions of him aside, they liked him. You know, that was kind of one of their guys. They liked him. And so he asked the woman for a cup of coffee in a fucking elevator. And now, you know, the Atheist Plus community is like, what a rapist. Are you kidding me? So it completely fractured the community. And they had to fight against that to pull it back together. That's what's happening in gaming now. You're seeing a narrative being pushed by extremists, and that's what social justice warriors are. They are not activists. It's not you know, the LGBT, it's not the transsexuals, it's not the feminists. Social justice warriors will fuck you up no matter what you believe in. They are narcissists, they don't care. They are liars and manipulators, and they will use you to make a profit. That is what they are out to do. That is all they care about doing. And it is a tactic a lot of people have seen. Look at this Gamergate thing and not your shield. Look at the people who've jumped in and talked about this. You've got the most hardcore of conservatives who've been watching this happen and have jumped in and have made commentary saying, this is kind of fucking retarded what the gaming press is doing. You've got, you know, different minorities. You've got gay people and transsexuals and you've got the straight white male dude bro kind of shit. You've got people far left leaning. You've got anarchists and communists, you know, people that are in capitalism, people that aren't. It's all these different people. And they're all saying the same thing. We're fucking sick of you pushing this shit on us. Stop. You know, the people you're blaming for ruining everything are sick of hearing it. We just want to play fucking video games. And all those minorities and groups that you say you represent 
are sick of being used as a human shield to deflect away criticism. Like, it, it, social justice warriors use the very thing they're saying they're standing up for as nothing more than a token or a prop. They're the most racist fucking people you'll ever meet, the most sexist fucking people you'll ever meet. They don't give a shit about any of that stuff. They don't care what your cause is. They just want to be able to hold up the black guy and say, you can't say anything to me or I'm going to call you a racist. They want to grab the gay guy and say, you, you're going to say something about me? You're a homophobe. That's how they operate. And that's exactly what you've seen this past two weeks. It is exactly what you've seen this past two weeks. That is their tactic. That's how they shut people up. Anytime you criticize them, they're the good guys. They're, they're fighting for social justice. That's why the moniker stuck, and that's why it shouldn't fucking disappear. They, they want to use it, right? When you say the phrase social justice, who's going to say that's bad? That sounds like a good thing. But it's a complete fucking con job. These people are con artists. They're using the newest buzzwords to make the most amount of money. And then you've got the extremists and the narcissists that really buy into the bullshit and drink the Kool-Aid, and they go and they fuck up anything they can touch. And that's what a social justice warrior is. Social justice warrior equals EA Games. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know about that. I think EA Games, you know, and some of their subsidiary companies, the people they bought out, um, have bought into the bullshit. They've been marketed to by the people that are attacking us and attacking gamers everywhere and been told that, hey, your games are bad because we say so. They're not enough, you know, quotas. You need to have a checklist of how many fucking characters you need to put in. That's not how art works, right? I can't be the only person that thinks that, can I? If Think of the fucking movies you like. Think of the comic books you like and the music you listen to and the games you play. Does When you're looking at those th those pieces of fiction, those creations, are they really worse off because they don't have a checklist of certain fucking aspects to them? Are, are you going to tell me that Shakespeare's Hamlet would be a hundred times better if one of the characters was transsexual? I mean, how does that... That, that thought doesn't make sense. You're putting in a token character. I mean, if, you're, if your fucking goal in life is, is you really believe that there isn't enough representation in gaming, go and make a game. Go make a good game. Make a character that it's fucking centered around and make them fit into the universe. But don't shoehorn them in. Don't go change Thor into a chick, you know, for no fucking reason. You know, oh, we're retconning and all oh, what happened before. And what, I, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comic books has gone to shit. A lot of industries have gone to shit because these people infest whatever they can. It is the new fucking money-making scheme. And that's the craziest part. You've got the, the people who really believe it, and they ruin everything. You've got the narcissists, and then you've got the entrepreneurs that see all these psychopaths, and they're like, we can make a dollar off of that. These people are fucking crazy. Let's bilk them for as much money as we can make. All right, let's see what we got here. To the window. Wow, this is going fucking quick, man. Ah, uh, oy vey, indeed. What's my job? I'll tell you what my job isn't. I don't sell myself out on the internet to make a dollar. That's what my job isn't. I don't pretend to be a journalist and then sell my integrity to make a quick dollar. I don't write at a news site and then turn around and open up a press agency and a PR firm and use my contacts in the industry to fuck other people over. That's not how I make my money. I've got a little bit of fucking integrity, just a tiny bit. I'm an asshole. I don't, I don't deny it. I make fucking stupid videos on the internet. That's, that's my thing. I enjoy doing it. It's a, it's a stupid fucking hobby. And I'm not shitting on people. Like, Listen, I, I know there are people that make good money off putting internet videos out. Fucking great for you. Good, if you like to do that. It's not something that interests me. It's not, not shit that I do. Have I received threat or have I received threats? Yeah, of course I have. Who who doesn't? Is it Milo or Milo? I don't know how to say his name because I'm retarded. Remember, I say hyperbole instead of hyperbole, so you've got to forgive me. But the guy who wrote the Breitbart article. Did you see his tweet? That was fucking badass. Uh, somebody was like, yeah, you know, I've received double digit death threats, and his response to that was the thing you're not going to see me do, whine on the internet about it, call the police and start a Kickstarter. And he's fucking right. Welcome to the internet. You're going to have people calling you the worst shit in the world. You're going to have people threatening you for the most mundane of shit. That is just how the internet functions. It is full of crazy stuff. You can go into Google right now and find a picture of Kermit the Frog getting fisted in the ass by Miss Piggy. Welcome to the internet. Glad you could join us for the digital age. 
tell you a bedtime story. I've got no interesting bedtime stories. I'm sorry. I ramble too much. At least this one, you know, this live stream should have decent audio. I'm sorry about that interview. I was nervous as shit. My spaghetti was flying everywhere. I, I freely admit that. And the sound quality was terrible, too. That's what happens when you call in on a cell phone in a thunderstorm. Everything goes to crap. I'm looking through here. I'm trying to pick out questions. What do you think about getting 800,000 views on a video? Let me tell you the reality of YouTube. I mean, that sounds great, and I'm not, I, like, I get it. There are people that put out videos, and they really are happy to get views, and that's awesome. I'm glad for you. I'm glad you're invested, and you like it, and you put together great content and cool for you. But the reality is, you could go find a fucking 30-second video of a cat walking down the stairs that has 8 million views. 800,000 doesn't really mean shit, and it doesn't mean anything about the quality of the content. That's just YouTube. You find a fucking dolphin shitting in the water. It's probably got 10 million views. You know, it's fucking YouTube. How old am I? Take a wild guess. People have been asking me that shit on Ask FM. Those, those are the two biggest questions, by the way, that I get on Ask FM is, how old are you and how big is your dick? I don't know why those are the two things that people focus on, but those are the burning questions, apparently. 2 plus 2 equals 5. That would be incorrect, I'm fairly certain. I don't know. I don't have my calculator out. How do I even check my black straight male privilege? Well, you look in a mirror and you remind yourself that as a straight black male, you are responsible for all the terrible things in the world. And that even though you're black, so you're technically not white, right? So you're a little higher on the oppression scale. I mean, I'm sure the majority of you heard of the oppression Olympics. That's the big thing. And that goes back to that whole narcissism thing and uh, you know, being told that nothing you do is wrong and everybody's oppressing you. That's where the term special snowflake comes from. That's the whole point is now they want to be the center of the universe but all the other people around them do as well. So how do you become the most special of snowflakes? You've got to be the most oppressed. So they come up with shit like headmates, and they self-diagnose themselves with 48 fucking conditions, and they create new genders. There's a new gender every day, just like there's a new fucking pronoun. It sounds like some old English rhyme, you know, fee-fi-fo-fum and all this shit. It's hard to keep track. And then when you don't, you know, respect their made-up bullshit, you're suddenly listed as an oppressor because you don't want to call them Zertox you know, the Almighty, that's their new special name. And they've got 48 multiple systems in their head, and Saturn's talking to them while Doctor Who and, I, I don't fucking know, Space Captain, Falco, fuck around. Uh, these people are insane. They want to be the most opp oppressed. They want to be the most special of snowflakes. Will you do another kin video? You bet your ass I will. That is a whole fucking bag of crazy. I, I'm jumping into that at some point. Who is my waifu? I don't have a waifu, man. I, I, I'm not picking a waifu. I get shit on no matter what I say. If I answer yes, I have a waifu, and then I tell you what that waifu is, I'm going to be the world's biggest faggot, according to somebody. And if I say I don't have a waifu, I'm still going to be that. So I'm just going to say I don't have a waifu. Can you tell us some of the new genders? Uh, if you want to play the ism and ist game, just pick a fucking word and stick it in front of ism or ist. And that's how it works. It doesn't even have to make sense. It's the same with genders. Just put something in front of the, you know, the suffix, make sexual a suffix, and put something in front of it. I don't know, let's make up a new gender right now. How about wood sexual? You know, uh, I'm wood sexual. I bet you tomorrow somebody will come out and say, well, wood sexual is too oppressive. I consider myself more of an oak variant. Oh, and look at, he's uh, cherry redwood. The cherry redwood uh, sexual and oak sexual think that wood sexual people are oppressing us. I need to make a Tumblr blog about it and tell everybody how horrible it is. Let's find a fucking uh, question now. See, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. I'm looking at the chat stream go by really, really fucking quick, and, like, shit's getting pegged off as spam, but I don't know how that's happening. It, it, I think it's some, like, automated program. If you say something specifically or if you link something, it automatically makes it spam, so I'm not 100% sure. Kekism. Yeah, there you go. Make that something. Kekism. I'm being oppressed by laughter. That's that's your new fucking thing. Congratulations. Go, go trademark it, and Tumblr will pay a million dollars. Do I think Gamergate is losing momentum? No, I don't. Uh, listen, Gamergate works because people are fucking interested in it. <clears throat> There's nobody at the helm of it. There's nobody directing people. They're self-directing, you know, that's, that's their thing. People are interested in it, so they're making it keep going. 
If people had no interest, it would be dead right now. The reason it works is because people are interested. At the end of the day, people just want to play fucking video games. I just want to play good video games. Is that so much to ask? I'm sick of being told I'm a piece of shit because I don't buy into your crappy fucking propaganda. Just leave my video games alone. Fuck off. Go away. Go pick something else to shit up. Leave my video games alone. It's really fucking simple. But no, it, it's not losing momentum. My only suggestion to the people that want to see some kind of resolution to all of this would be to stick on point. To pick a fucking one or two hashtags and just keep it in that. Not your Shield Gamergate, those work fine. But if you start to split it off, it's going to make each of them look smaller and smaller. And it's going to make it look like it's losing momentum. So don't, don't split them off. Say what you got to say. Keep it Gamergate and keep it fucking uh, not your Shield. It's working just fine. The longer this goes on, the more they lose. They thought it would go away in a day. It didn't. It's almost fucking three weeks at this point. And I guarantee you, the people with the money, the marketers and the advertisers, are watching this. And they're watching what people are saying. You don't think that uh, people at fucking Pepsi are, are probably laughing their asses off about this? They're probably asking themselves, well, fuck, how do we win this? How do we appeal to gamers? We mock them all the time, right? The whole you know, Dorito Gate shit. But really, they're pretty fucking benign. Uh, what, what's Pepsi's biggest fucking plot to date? They want you to eat Doritos while you play Halo. You know, it's pretty fucking benign, if you ask me. So they want to know how to appeal to us. I, I'll, tell, you know, I'll tell you how an advertiser is not going to appeal to us by going to a fucking website that's telling us we're pieces of shit. I'm not going to go to that website. I'm not going to look at your fucking advertisements. Uh, why would you associate with that? Why would you associate with somebody that's shitting on your target demographic? It makes no sense to me. Why is Newegg and Amazon and PepsiCo and all these other companies, why are they tolerating it? Why is Walt Disney tolerating it? They bought Maker Studio. You know, they have a fucking investment in this whole stupid Gamergate shit because at the fucking heart of it, the game jam that Zoe fucked up was under, if I remember right, is under Maker Studios. So that, go look at the dates on that if you really want your mind blown. Disney put in their fucking bid for Maker Studios, I believe, a week ahead of time before those fucking articles dropped. And they had some kind of clause in their contract for the buyout stating that it would vary between $500 million and $950 million. So, for all we know, those articles written by Grayson and, er, and Rosen fucked up Disney's buyout offer on Maker Studios. I mean, you could go anywhere with it. But as these large corporations are looking at this shit, the, these people, these game journalists, are fucking with their money. And eventually, if it keeps going and it keeps on point, it's going to force their hand. That's what they don't want. They don't want to have their hand forced. Pepsi sexual? There you go. You are Pepsi sexual. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the whole doism thing. What is it? Um, I saw something about Anthony Birch. What a fucking moron that guy is. If I was the head of Gearbox, that is the last person on earth I would want running around Twitter right now is Anthony fucking Birch. What the fuck is he doing? You're getting your ass sued by Sega, and this idiot's running around talking about how destructoid. Uh, you know, how he's buddy-buddy with all these people and they suck his dick and give him great reviews. If I'm fucking sitting at Sega and I'm suing because Gearbox fucked up marketing and then I see Anthony Birch, a guy who worked on one of their proprietary, you know, pieces of intellectual property, whatever, uh, going around saying that, hey, yeah, if we develop something internally, it's going to get great reviews because we bribe and we're friends with and everybody's going to, you know, because of nepotism and cronyism, going to give it great reviews. And I'm Sega and I put that in your hands. I'm going to be like, why didn't you do that for me, you fucking cunt? Why, why didn't you, you know, make that game get great reviews if it's so easy for you? Oh, God. They're just asking for trouble later on down the road. That is not the guy you want running around talking right now. Let's see. Can you check your Twitter, please? All right. I will check my Twitter. See if anybody's asking anything. Oh, where the fuck is this? All right, let's see what we got here. How do you respond to people... Uh, this one's from <laughs> Rock Punch Groin. How do you respond to people saying your videos are long-winded? Uh, they are. L listen, I make videos that appeal to me, and you know what kind of videos I like? I like long videos. My shit's white noise. You put it on in the background while you're doing something else. That's, that's what I do. I like videos that are like 20 to 30 minutes long. I could take a different approach. I could make videos that are four minutes long and upload 20 of them a week. That's so fucking dumb. Why would I do that? I mean, I get it. If you've got advertisements kicked in and you're making money off of views, sure. But 
I'd rather just make a video that covers the shit I'm interested in and be done with it. That's why they're long-winded. But no, I'm not. I'm. Not, I don't disagree. Right, yeah, they are long-winded. That's how I intentionally make them. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, from Cody Rogers, what do you think of right wingers who don't care about games co-opting Gamergate? This is my thought on why you're seeing conservatives get involved. Putting all their politics aside and all their personal viewpoints, I think a lot of people in politics probably deal with the same shit we're seeing right now all the time. <clears throat> they probably get hit for having an opinion, and then the person that's hitting them, you know, doing the hit job or going after them, hold up, you know, just like these social justice warriors do, say, oh, you're a misogynist, you're, you're a racist, you're horrible. And that's not just on the right, that's on the left too. I think there's a lot of shit flinging in politics, and a lot of it is pretty similar to what we're seeing in gaming, and we saw in Atheism uh, Plus. And that's probably why they're interested. They're like, oh shit, I remember when that happened to us. Well, let's see what else we got. Political, uh, that's another politics question. Don't touch me, you filthy casual. Sorry, I'm horrible. Is Moot a traitor to 4chan? No. Listen, think about the reality of this. If Moot wanted to sell that fucking website, he could. And he could get a buyer and he could get a lot of money. He went off and he did his own thing with venture capitalists to do Canvas. And it didn't work out. So then he went off and he did his own, you know, what was it, an app on the iPad? If Moot wanted to make money or sell you out, he would have done it already. He has no reason to not be upfront about it. That's the thing. If he wanted to fuck you, believe me, he'd be upfront about it. He wouldn't give a shit. He's the one guy who has continually said, and almost every single instance I've heard him speak at different venues, that he's for free speech, and he thinks being anonymous on an image board lets you fucking do that, and he thinks that's good. I, I don't really see him as a traitor. I don't. I just I don't I don't see it. Maybe there's evidence out there for it, but as far as I'm concerned, he's a good guy. He's a good guy that likes anonymous conversation because it entertains him. He likes going on the boards and fucking with people. You know that's just how he is. What video games am I currently playing? Nothing right now. I'm doing a fucking live stream. Uh, let's see what else we got here. From Sam uh, Metcalf, uh, what do you think of the scare the devs have been getting from SJWs? That's a reality. I mean, here, here's how it is. When this broke, right, when, the, when Aaron put up his blog first and it was focused on Zoe and then it moved on into all these other instances of corruption and game journalism, um, it was, there's a risk. If you're a developer or if you're a reporter and you come out and you tell everybody, yeah, shit's terrible and I've got evidence that shit's terrible and they suddenly lose interest, you are fucked. So you've got all these developers and all these other people that I really do believe are out there and want to come up to the plate and say something, but they're fucking terrified. They're terrified people will lose interest and the second they actually step up to the plate, their ass is going to be screwed because nobody's going to be there to support them. So again, the longer it goes on, the more safe and comfortable they'll feel coming out and saying, yeah, I, I can tell you, I can give you evidence of how bad these places are because here you go, here are chat logs or here are conversations I've had with people and positions that are doing things. It, you've got to, at one point, too, be willing to support them. That doesn't mean you go out and buy their game or even market it, but fucking talk to them. Don't make them feel like they're out there in the wilderness alone. If SJWs and all these other crazy fuckers are you know, intimidating devs and telling them we're going to fuck your career, Go talk to them. Like, yeah, I'm here, man. I'm a gamer. Don't worry about those assholes. Nobody gives a shit. They're fucking idiots. That's how you make a difference. What are your favorite video games? Man, everybody asks that question, and every time it's a different answer. There, there are too many. That's a great thing about this hobby. There are too many fucking good games. Think about movies or books or comics. There, there are lots of great books, movies, and comics, but I think when you compare any of those hobbies or those interests in entertainment media to video games... It's worlds apart. There's so many fucking good games. You can't just pick one. They're just, they're too fucking many. They're too many. From every generation and from every system. I mean, I get it. I like console war shit. I think it's funny watching people argue, but I, I, I would put out the statement that the majority, 90% of every fucking piece of hardware that's ever been released has had some good software on it, some really memorable shit. That's what's great about this hobby. There's always something good. Somebody's always making something entertaining. Uh, let's see, somebody's asking, what does it mean to even lift? I'm going to guess that probably means you don't fucking lift. And you probably drive a rascal scooter around. That's, that's my guess. Uh, why do you care so much about journalism? You seem so passionate. 
I like my hobby, and right now journalists are screwing with my hobby, and I just don't like the idea that these people. Uh, how do I explain this? I think everybody here, in the majority of gamers on the fucking internet right now, have always assumed things are a bit corrupt on some level in video games. We think of these massive advertisers, you know, luring people with money. But at some level, we understand that because these are big companies with lots and lots of money, and these are the little journalists, right? And how are they ever going to handle that? But what's been so fucking screwed up about this Gamergate thing is they're not big companies. We're not talking about, you know, Pepsi going to Steven Totillo and saying, hey, man, we want you to tell white male gamers they're horrible people, and here's 40 bags of Doritos and 100 bucks. It's these little small-time journalists and all these people starting up with their PR companies. They're, they're doing it themselves. That's what's so fucked up about it. They're not being bribed. They're going out and asking for bribes. That's what's fucked up about it. And to watch them all run around and say they don't understand, they're trying to play this game like they don't get what ethics are, fuck off. You damn well know what it is. Don't act like it doesn't fuck you up. You can't tell me that somebody in politics could get away with it or somebody in any other kind of journalism could get away with it. They fucking could not. There have been instances, many instances, of journalists getting shit-canned immediately for much lesser offenses. So don't try to pretend like Patreon is Kickstarter. It's fucking not. You're paying people monthly in the industry. And if you don't see why that's a problem, you're an idiot. One, it will make you want to give them favorable coverage. Why would you, the argument is, why would I give them favorable coverage? Asshole, why are you giving them 100 bucks a month? That's my first question for you in fucking response. You, you obviously like them enough to pay them fucking money, so it wouldn't surprise me that you'd give them positive fucking press. But the other thing is, just imagine a situation where you've got a group of reporters paying a sp specific individual, a specific, uh, you know, just one particular game dev, and somebody comes to you and says, hey man, that game dev, um, they, they did something horrible. They're, I mean, really, really bad, and I've got evidence of it. You're not going to report on it, because that's your friend. That's the guy you decided you wanted to spend money on every month. So fuck the person telling you they've got evidence of some horrible thing. You don't give a shit. And I mean, that, that ideology is ingrained in these people. Go look at, again, Stephen Titillo's response to the Robert Florence Eurogame thing. He, didn't, he couldn't be bothered. He couldn't give enough of a shit. He didn't care. I, I, fucking reporters going out and doing their job? No, that's too hard. We're just bloggers. But the moment E3 comes around, they're suddenly journalists again. Fuck that. They can be replaced. That's the honest to God truth. There are enough small... I agree with... Um, what was it? Total Biscuit put out a video about games media. And I think he mentioned something that was fucking very true. We're reaching a point right now with the internet and how it facilitates people that you can create a bridge between the people that create something, you know, the developers and the publishers, and the end user and the purchaser. You don't need anybody in the middle at this point. You've got shit like Metacritic. You've got shit like YouTube. So really, when we're looking at all these sites that are, you know, so fucking corrupt and you've got all these ethical issues going on, do we need you again? Why, exactly? Oh, because you get access to certain things. That's when you're using your journalistic uh, credibility, right, to get behind the scenes. But if it is like people, you know, who was it? There, there was some guy in Destructoid who left a comment <clears throat> who basically said, nobody at Destructoid calls themselves or thinks of themselves as a journalist. So they're just saying that they're bloggers. If it's a popularity contest of who gets the most page views, I have bad news for people at Destructoid and Polygon and Rock Paper Shotgun and all the other sites. People like fucking PewDiePie outclass all of you. You could combine all your fucking site traffic and the idiot screaming at a camera going, Ooh, has more views than you do. So if it's a popularity contest, guess who should be going to E3? Fucking YouTubers should be going to E3. They're the ones that should be going to E3 and interviewing people and testing out beta fucking hardware and getting people to send them game demos. Fuck you. You don't serve a purpose if you're just a blogger. And if it's just a popularity contest, you'll be eaten alive by people who have a thousand times the following that you do on other fucking websites. So I, I just, I don't buy their logic and their bullshit. It's crap. It's fucking crap. Right, let's get a couple more questions. I'm going to go back to the chat on YouTube. Uh, let's see. What will be happening in the future in different industries? That's kind of a that's a big fucking question, man. I, you got what industries? Are, I mean, are you talking about in relation to this, or is that just like a fucking out there question? 
you, you want my opinion on where you should look in the future? If you're interested in, I don't know, business opportunities, go look at Western Africa. Do you think the Chinese are building ghost towns over there for no reason? At the same time that companies like Monsanto are working on fucking seeds that'll grow in really horrible uh, conditions and bad weather. So you've got this labor force, all these Chinese that are going to be over there that'll work for nothing. And you've got companies that are going to make seeds that'll grow fucking anywhere. There's your business opportunity. There's your fucking uh, industry. Go go work on desalinization. Go work on turning ocean water into fresh water because you've got a labor force and you've got a food source. You need to water it. I, I, again, I don't know what you're asking. That's, that's a lot of shit, man. There are a lot of industries. All right, so I'm going to go back to the chat. Is Patreon tax evasion? I don't know, but you could look at it as money laundering. If people were committing a crime or if they're in collusion with one another or if there was some kind of a racket going on, what better way to move money back and, you know, back and forth between people than using a service like Patreon? And don't get me wrong, I'm not shitting on Patreon, right? As a site, it's a cool idea. But in relation to journalism, they, these people shouldn't be playing a part in it. Let other people donate. You're a journalist. You don't need to be a part of that. It's a, you, know, it's just, you don't need to be a part of that. You should stay the fuck away from it. Ebola. Yeah, Ebola's still kicking strong. I don't understand that. <laughs> what in the fuck, man? They already have one instance of it leaping countries because somebody got on a plane. If you know that you have this disease that's spreading amongst groups of people that don't take it seriously, like there were stories of people fucking destroying quarantine zones and ransacking hospitals and saying that, you know, cures and medicine were terrible and they wanted to go to, you know, more tribalist approach, like a witch doctor or something like that. I mean, you know that's the mindset of the group of people that are being infected with the disease at the moment. Why aren't you quarantining off these areas? Why are you allowing air travel in these areas? And I, maybe they are. I don't know. I This fucking Gamergate shit has been so absorbing. I, I haven't even had a chance to really focus on the Ebola stuff. And that was scary. It's scary watching a disease spread like that that quickly. <laughs> Good luck, Ebola. I love that picture, Ebola-chan. That's fucking great. Oh, let's find a question. See if I can scroll through here so I'm not rambling about shit nobody cares about. What's my opinion on NeoGAF? Here's my opinion on NeoGAF. Fuck NeoGAF. That's my opinion on NeoGAF. When I saw that fuck, what is it, Evil Lord, the admin, whatever, when he started that, what a dick. So you're saying that you're the big source for gamers on the internet. And, you know, you've got all these, that's your special appeals. I'll look at, we got all these industry uh, insiders that come to our website. We're such hot shit. And you're going to have people that report on games, and you're going to have people that make the games, and they've all got accounts. Maybe they're anonymous, maybe they're not. And you've got all these gamers. So it's focused on that. And then he starts a fucking thread by basically throwing away people's privacy and putting out their emails and mocking them and setting the tone as all his little mods come in and just echo his fucking opinion. And anybody that speaks out gets banned. That's the logic of NeoGAF. Go look through some of those threads sometime. You see when you don't go along with the group think on NeoGAF. You think Reddit's bad? You know, where you saw the fucking people getting, you know, shadow banned and comments getting deleted? It's nothing compared to NeoGAF. If you dare go against the grain on any of their policies, you're fucking gone. That's why I don't like forums. That's why I prefer shit like 4chan. You're just one of the anonymous assholes. Nobody fucking cares. You can put out any opinion you want. That's great. Unfettered free speech is awesome. That's why 4chan is great, and that's why I like Moot. What do you think about the new new 3DS? I don't know. I actually uh, I, I buckled and I bought a fucking uh, handheld again. I used to have a, a, a DS and I used to have a Vita. Uh, my friend's girlfriend at the time broke my fucking Vita by dropping it on the floor when I had, I think it was Final Fantasy Crisis Core. She wanted to borrow it and fucking destroyed it. And then the DS got busted in kind of a similar manner. So I, I haven't had like a handheld in a long fucking time. And I finally buckled. I had a, I had a gift card. And there was a sale on a, a 3DS XL or whatever the fuck it is. So I went out and picked that up and I got Bravely Default, um, Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, and what is the other one? Pokemon X. So now I can be a Spurg. You know, all I need now is like a giant leather trench coat and a fedora and a cane and maybe like a Sonic t-shirt. And I, I, I probably won't have, I'll have to make sure not to bathe for like a week. 
and then I'll be that picture that you see posted on V when people make fun of gamers. What is my opinion on Jim Sterling? I don't know. I, I know he's released a couple videos talking about the shit, and I know that people were really pissed off about it. And I know that, you know, going back to kind of like the escapists and stuff, I know Yahtzee's spoke a little bit about it. In my opinion, the escapist comes out looking better than the rest of them at this point, simply because they let a fucking thread go on. When this started, nobody would talk about it. The Escapist was the only forum that let people actually openly talk about it. Um, and Tito, their editor-in-chief or whatever, came out and said, yeah, we didn't fact-check anything. We just took her word for it. And I disagree with what he said, you know, how he has an agenda and he wants to help people and he doesn't care, he's going to push a narrative, that kind of shit. And again, he said that was his own opinion, whatever. And I disagree that, you know, that's his opinion and that's his stance. But I respect that he had the balls to at least come into the fucking thread where people were screaming about this shit and say, yeah, yeah, yeah this is this is a reality. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know with that site and its personalities. I haven't, I haven't paid that much attention. There's, there's too much shit going on to pay attention to specific individuals. I will say fuck movie Bob, though, right? Fuck Bob Chipman. I, I haven't liked that guy since he tried to get a teenage boy arrested because he disliked his YouTube video. So fuck movie Bob. My opinions on Ferguson... I've got no opinions on Ferguson. I'm focused on Gamergate. Uh, GameFAQs. Were you asking, I guess, what I think of that? I don't know. GameFAQs had their own threads going, too. A lot of websites, like, it's really weird when this shit started. Reddit talked about it. 4chan talked about it. You had stuff like Funny Junk talking about it and GameFAQs talking about it. I don't know why those sites in particular gave, you know, had the opinion of, fuck them, let's talk about it openly. And other sites didn't. I, I don't understand what's going on. And I know Reddit's still got issues. I know people still are getting fucking shadow banned. And I know there's some weird shit still going on. And, you know, that's their own fight to, you know, that's their own battle to fight, I guess. But I, I don't know. I don't use GameFAQs. I couldn't tell you if it's a good site or not. But bully on them for at least having the balls to have a threat about it. People running the site obviously aren't pussies. Oh, let's see what else we got here. What's my opinion on Gamergate over? I'm going to guess that's some counter hashtag. Like, I'm imagining there's some hipster fuck wearing plaid with his black rim glasses and his, you know, fucking torn jeans and his shit from the 1990s that he thinks make him look, you know, like hipster cool, right? Sitting at some secret meeting with other people like, how can we stop him, these fucking gamers? I know, let's, let's make a new tag. That's how you stop them. That's how disconnected these idiots are. They think that they're going to stop the momentum that you see Gamergate and people calling for some fucking integrity in gaming journalism. They think they'll stop that by using social media in a different way. Like, they, they're that disconnected. They don't understand. Video game, you know, like, people that are into games, we're all spurgs on some level. Our autism will not let us stop. That's what they, they are underestimating our autism. That is their critical fucking error. Uh, is that... Oh, that went too fast. Have I performed fellatio? No, I'm sorry, I have not. I have not performed fellatio. Phil Fish, are you asking what I think of Phil Fish? I, I gave my opinion on Phil Fish in that first video. <laughs> He's a dick. Phil Fish is a dick. Is anybody really in disagreement about that? I mean, that's something people have known for a long time. Anita CP. I'm guessing you're talking about the person that was tweeting shit at her? I, I, I don't know. I think it's just... I think you've got a big shitstorm going on right now. And I think it's attracting a lot of outside interests. And I think some of them think, hey, maybe we could jump in and stir the shit a little bit by doing really crazy stuff. So in my opinion, that's probably what it is. It's probably some troll that thought, oh, this will be funny. And I'll, I'll, you know, tweet this shit at. I've never really seen or heard that before. I've never heard of somebody actually using Twitter to send kitty porn to somebody. That blows my mind. So I hope they're not an idiot. Because I'm pretty sure the fucking feds will be looking for them. I can't imagine you could do something that publicly and not have a van parked down your street with a couple guys in black suits be like, yeah, that's the fucking moron that did it. Let's go arrest them. What is the best fetish? I'm not touching that question. <laughs> I'm not touching that question, man. No answer I give to that is going to be good in anybody's opinion. I'll piss off somebody, or somebody will be like, no, no, man. Uh, well, no, what did I say earlier? Wood sexual? 
Obviously, wood is the best uh, fetish to have. You can't look at a tree and not be aroused, right? Welcome to the new age. What's wrong with stirring shit? I, I never said it's wrong to stir shit. I just think that what they did was fucking dumb. And, I, you know, it, they're going to get... <laughs> you can't do shit like that. You just can't. And think that you're going to get away with it. It just doesn't happen. There are going to be vans parked down your fucking street. You know, all these people who think, well, I hide behind seven proxies. That really helped Lulsec, didn't it? You know, hiding behind all those proxies really helped them. They turned Sabu like that in a fucking week. Had him as their little puppet dancing around. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Am I hungry? A little bit. A little bit. I'm sorry I'm taking a minute here to try to look through shit and answer stuff. Do I think game journalism will ever get its shit together? I don't know. It depends. Do I think these sites are redeemable? I, I think there are maybe some decent people that are on these sites and probably don't like what's going on and probably are embarrassed by it. I, I don't know if they're so deeply entrenched right now into their own bullshit if they'll ever change. But there are sites out there that aren't like this. And there are little guys, too, that really did try something. I mean, you had people like, what was it, Games Nosh and Tech Raptor. Those were, you know, two of the sites talking about shit at the very beginning. And I haven't, you know, I haven't really had a chance to check out either of them, which sucks. I mean, they should get some fucking attention, shouldn't they? I mean, they took a stand. They got hit for taking a stand. You know, if those are the kind of people I'm thinking that are going to, if anything, potentially save gaming journalism by having some fucking shred of decency, by being able to say, you know what, fuck it. If there's a story going on, we're going to fucking report on it. Dashcon? Dashcon was fucking great. Who was the guy that uh, uploaded the fucking videos of him <laughs> of him walking around mocking people? That was fucking funny as shit. And then somebody pissed in the ball pit. God damn, was Dashcon a disaster. That was funny as hell. Poor Tumblr, man. They just they can't catch a fucking break. Their, their convention turns to shit, they get hustled out of money, somebody pisses in their ball pit, and then they try writing 4chan and get their shit smacked around. And that site, it just can't catch a fucking break. Oh, let's see. Fuck it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back to Twitter for a second. <laughs> At least that's going slow. can answer fucking questions easily there. Uh, somebody said, just said, gamers are all autistic. Our autism won't let us stop. That is correct. We are all ridiculously autistic. I don't think any gamer is going to deny that. You can't play a game for 5,000 fucking hours. I mean, <laughs> you know, you can't catch them all if you're not got a little bit of the tism in you. Uh, is IGN the lesser of two evils now? I don't know. Uh, from what I understand, didn't they release one of these gamers are dead kind of biased spin articles? But for the most part, they've stayed out of it. I think IGN's at a point where it's large enough, where it's corporate enough, where they don't want to deal with this stupid shit. They don't want the reporters making them look bad. So I don't know. At this point, yeah, I, I would say IGN is lesser of uh, the evils when compared to shit like Kotaku and Polygon for fucking, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say that. <laughs> what do you think of Jen Frank supposedly quitting? Either Jen Frank told the truth or she didn't. So she puts her article up, and then she gets called out on having financial ties to Zoe Quinn and Maya Kramer, two people involved in the story. She wrote a positive piece talking about how they're harassed and gamers are terrible. And then after that goes up, people find out the Patreon thing. First off, it's sloppy. Secondly, it's stupid. That's one of the things that, bog that boggles my mind more than anything else. These people are so sloppy about it. They're so arrogant and stupid about it. It would take you five seconds to cover your tracks, but you're just that full of your own shit that you just don't think nobody's going to catch on? I, I, I don't get that. So anyway, she, she gets called out on it, and then she says, oh, well, I talked to the Guardian ahead of time, and they said, you don't need a disclaimer, that she wanted to put one in there. Now, I will be fair, if she honestly had that discussion, and she wanted to put it in there, good on her. But from the perspective of the Guardian, bad on them, because there's no way they should have fucking greenlit that. They should have some fucking standards. That's ridiculous. You're going to let somebody report on a story when they're financially tied to it? Are you fucking kidding me? 
that's just bad. So I, I don't know what to tell you about Jen Frank. If she quit, if she got fired, I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes with that. But the Guardian sure fucked up, I'll tell you that much. What do I think of Violation saying Anita Sarkeesian is right about the Saints Row series? <laughs> if you want to, if you want to pander to that, go ahead. See how well your game sells. You're going to. This is what I don't get. You've got these people coming in, criticizing games and saying stupid shit about why they're bad and how they need to be changed. Like, we've all heard the rumors about what's went on with Mirror's Edge 2 and how she advised and said that, you know, oh, the controller's a barrier for women, so we need to make the controls easier, right? Or, oh, this issue is bad, you need to change this. You're fucking with the formula. The reason these games were liked is because the people that bought them enjoyed them. The gamers liked them. They appealed on some level to them. So if you're going to go fuck with that and you think that you're going to gain more than you're going to lose, you're, you're mistaken. That's a bad business decision. It is a bad business decision. You don't shit on the people that support you. Anita Sarkeesian's not buying Saints Row. Why the fuck are you taking her advice on anything? Oh, uh, let's see. How can people fight corruption and censorship successfully? I don't fucking know. Like, I, I have no clue. You gotta fucking talk about it. I guess that's the that's the easiest answer. If people want to shut you up, you need to talk. That's the, that's the simplest thing to do. Because if they're trying to keep you quiet, that obviously means they're afraid. So the more you talk, the more fucked up they get. Um, what do you think about the alleged faking of Not Your Shield? Is it bullshit? Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Uh, again. Look at the people using Not Your Shield from their perspective. And again, like this Gamergate thing, you've got all these different people. We'd never get along. Let's be honest. We always shouldn't, you know, fling shit at each other. You're, you've got all these different groups that just don't get along. But they're all kind of focused on this one thing because it bothers all of them that much. So with this Not Your Shield thing, you've got all these people saying, stop fucking using us. You're, you're shit. Stop using us. We're not, you're, you know, an excuse for your fucking corruption. I don't think it's fake. I think those people are genuine. I think the people doing Not Your Shield are fucking completely genuine. And I think it's eye-opening for them because they get to see what social justice warriors are like. You know, these people that pretend to really care about those causes don't give a shit. They're, they're, they're ten times worse than the people they are pointing their fingers at. So, no, I don't, I don't believe it's fake. Not one bit. What do you think of Ego Raptor? <laughs> the one Jew from Newgrounds who ran or runs Game Grumps. I don't watch Game Grumps. I don't know much about Ego Raptor, and I, I really don't know much about JonTron either. I, I couldn't give you an opinion. I mean, it's not it's not shit I watch. I'm a boring person, man. When I watch YouTube videos, probably not shit that you would think. Uh, question: How long until Bob Chipman has to backpedal? I don't know. Somebody should fucking sign him up for the Olympics, though. He's going to be you know fit and in shape to do it. The motherfucker is backpedaling all the time, giving half apologies and stumbling over his own fucking words. Uh, let's see. In an aristocrat, how do you feel about big names like Thunderfoot and TV siding with 4chan because of Games Reddit article? Well, I'll tell you this right now. I think Thunderfoot, this is my own opinion, but I think Thunderfoot would have sided with it regardless of a specific article. Again, you know, you, you, People like him saw what happened with atheism and atheism, you know, a atheism plus. They they know what's up. They really fucking do. As far as TB, uh, I what didn't he release a statement right on Twitter that started him getting a bunch of shit? And wasn't like the essence of the statement he fucking released essentially, if corrupt, if these allegations are true, corruption, you know, took place. That's bad. And he had people attacking him for that. For that statement, really. When you boil it down, what he was saying is corruption is bad, and people attacked him for it. That's nuts. There's nothing wrong with saying corruption is bad. That's, like, I don't get that. So he took shit over it. But yeah, I know. I mean, I, I think it's good. I'm glad people are sick of it. Whether they're big or small, it doesn't matter. The more people that are tired of it, the more effective getting these people to stop doing it will be.
Uh, how are developers supposed to maintain artistic integrity when politics insists on overshadowing it? You got to put your fucking foot down. You know, I, I talked about it in two of the videos uh, about the guy from what was it, Divinity Original Sin? I mean, go read that fucking blog. You can you sympathize with them. They just want to make video games. They want to be left the fuck alone. Let them make what they want to make. Can, you know, if if the game is good, consumers will support it. That is really the reality at the end of the day. Don't let people come in and tamper with your art. And I can I understand it, man. I it would piss me off. Think of your profession, whatever it is you fucking do in life. You don't want somebody coming in and telling you how to do it because of some bullshit outside influence, like you know if it's PC or not, or all this social justice shit. It just leave them alone. Let them make their fucking video games. Stay the fuck away from them. What is the best form of shit posting? I don't know. I'd have to swing by SP and ask him. They are the masters of it. What happened to something awful? <laughs> I don't know, man. Something awful used to be <clears throat> really good because it had it had a really don't give a fuck attitude, which was well charming, really. And the humor built around that attitude was really great. It was a fun place. It was a funny fucking place. But things just went downhill. Go, go. If you want a better insight into what's going on with something awful, go talk to fucking people that were goons for years and years and left. Go, go read shit on, you know, I was going to say sass, but that's not around anymore. Uh, go read shit on something sensitive about the fucking moderators at that place. That'll give you an insight into what's going on there. I don't know. It just it feels like it lost its sense of humor. It got too, too SJW, too up its own ass, and it forgot what funny was. And that sucks because goons are funny people. And the shit that came out of that forum, that website, was fucking great for a long time. And it just, it just went down the toilet. It just disappeared. Uh, play the original Ace of Spades with me, shitlord of coon. <laughs> what is this? Shit, Lord Dorito Kin? Sorry. I, I, you know, I'm fucking stupid. I play a lot of Ace of Spades. I don't know what it is about that game. I'm just... Again, that's like a white noise thing. It's You know how you have that one game where you want to play video games, but you don't want to get invested in something, or you don't really know what you want to play, so you just default to playing one specific title because it doesn't take any effort. You're not really even paying attention. You're just going through the motions of pressing the controls and kind of fucking about. That's what Ace of Spades is for me. Pepsi or Coke? Pepsi. What do I think about V's whole donation thing? Are you talking about uh, the fine young capitalists? Uh, listen, you know, I know people are like, oh, they've got all these you know, ulterior motives for why they're donating. Well, yeah, of course, 4chan is not a fucking hive mind. It's an anonymous place you can go and fling shit at each other. Not everybody is thinking the same thing as you. No board is like that. At, you know, the, well, the majority of the boards aren't like that. I don't know about lit. Fuck you, lit. But um, the majority of the boards aren't like that. Uh, and so they're donating, and there are all these different reasons. But I think at the end of the day is, what did the fine young capitalists really want to do? They wanted women in game development. Now, you can laugh and piss and moan and talk about feminism not being in gaming and everything, but look at the approach they took. This is the key point. This is the fucking difference, and this is why they got money from V and other places. They didn't come to people and say, woe is me. Women are oppressed, and everything in this life is terrible for us, and you'd better give us money because we're victims, and if you don't give us money, you're horrible pieces of shit, and you must be sexist misogynist. Instead, they came to people and said, just give us a fucking chance. Give us a chance to show you that we're not fucking morons. That we can actually make something good. And then judge the game on its own merits. That appeals to people. Well, you got an idea you want to do? Fucking put it out there. Don't guilt trip them into doing something. Just fucking be open about it. Be like, give us a shot. You know, Let us die or live based on how good our product is. That's why I think people donated to the Fine Young Capitalists. Because they went forward to people and they said, we just want to make fucking video games. And yeah, we're focused on this specific aspect of it, but we're not guilt tripping you. We're not telling you terrible people if you don't donate to us. We just want to show you that we're not terrible and that women can make decent games. That's why I think people donated. Uh, all right. How do you feel about people using the word conspiracy to dismiss the info you put out? 
listen, the whole conspiracy theory title for the videos and stuff, and you know the Jesse. And, uh, I I thought people would have picked up on that being a joke. She Zoe Quinn uses conspiracy as her Twitter handle, and uh, you know Andrew, the guy I know, does a Jesse Ventura voice. So that's why I called it conspiracy theory. That makes it was too good to pass up. He can do Jesse. Jesse hosted a show called Conspiracy Theory, and her handle is conspiracy. It fucking was magical. That melded together perfectly. As for the people that are like, oh, it's a cons you, you're conspiracy tinfoilers, and the stuff you're saying doesn't matter. Look at it this way, you know, people have this idea of conspiracies being this this plot, right, where everybody gets together in a darkened room and talk about how they're going to do terrible things. There's such a thing as a serendipitous conspiracy where people have similar goals, but they're not colluding with each other from the very start. They're doing their own thing. They have a goal in mind. And then one day they happen to notice that, hey, look, this other guy is doing the same thing I'm doing. Maybe we should work together towards a common goal. So I, that, that's, I guess, how I would describe it. I don't know. I think Silver String Media is playing a bigger role in all this than people probably realize. And if you go read those fucking blog posts, that, that shit is crazy. Those people are bonkers. And his whole... I love the marketing talk, by the way, um, if this ever gets back to Silver String. I like your marketing talk. It's very interesting how you create new buzzwords like you do. The whole transmedia thing. But let's be honest, it's marketing and PR. And I know they've tried to, not, or to deny that, but there are YouTube videos of the CEO of the company saying, we will do anything for money. Those YouTube videos are up. They're on accounts with like 13 views. I don't know if he's taken them down yet. But he basically says, you don't have to make video games. I don't give a shit. Just give me money, and I'll get information out there for people to look at. That's what transmedia is. It's marketing. It's PR. It's putting something across all social uh, media, essentially. That's what he does. So I, I think that company plays a bigger part in this, and Maya Kramer's you know, attached to that company. I know they uh, edited their fucking website, and I think they took the COO off. After the, um, the video from... Uh, Fuck, I'm blanking on it. The IGF video, the one that showed, you know, the connections in that video. If you look at the video, you'll see the COO is listed on the, um, or the CCO, whatever, is listed in the video. But if you go to the website now, he's gone. If you go on the Wayback Machine, it's still on there. So people are trying to disappear now. They're trying to erase their connection to this fucking company. There's something there. There's, there is something there. I don't know what it is, but there is something there, and they just don't want people digging, I guess. But you've got to go deeper. All right, let's go back to the YouTube chat and see if anybody's got any questions. Ask whatever you guys want. It doesn't have to just be the Gamergate thing. This is just like the first two uh, shitlord streams. Whatever you're interested in talking about. What is the earliest example of SJW interference I can think of? Oh, in gaming I can think of? Oh, fuck, man. That's a good question. I don't know, actually. Off the top of my head, I honestly don't know. Somebody should look into it. I bet if you went to all these websites and you looked really, really far back, you could create like a timeline that would show you exactly where they started going off the rails. And if you lined up all the websites and you took those points where they started going off the rails, it might be interesting to see if it coincides with each other and what events might have been taking place at that specific time. Shrek caused the Holocaust, so that's what he's been doing after the movies. Just couldn't, uh, couldn't handle the death of his uh, stardom. Oh, fucking hell, man. This is going so quick. I can't I can't keep up with the, the chat. I'm going to have to jump back to Twitter for a second. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm slow. What can I say? Uh, last question. Do you watch any Chinese cartoons? Uh, well, when I'm doing it for free, I do. I've got a large backlog of Chinese cartoons I need to catch up on. What do you think about the whole DMCA part added to 4chan? The DMCA. Are you talking about after the celebrity leaks? <laughs> I'm guessing that's what you mean. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Moot's a person, man. He probably got a fucking knock on his door. What was it that happened at Something Awful where somebody posted that they were going to you know, go after the president, and then Lotax got a knock on his door by men in suits who told him, are you out of your fucking mind? 
and he had to take action. It's probably something similar to that. Not as extreme, because they weren't in relation to the fucking president, but probably something similar like that. What's my favorite genre of video game? RPGs. I like RPGs. They're long. You can spend a lot of hours in them. I enjoy them. But to be honest, I, I like all kinds of video games. There's nothing... I can't think of a specific genre I don't like. Could you remind people to keep sending emails to the advertisers? I would suspect most people are probably still doing that. I mean, uh, it's an effective measure. If you email the advertisers, if you email the people that are financially supporting the websites that are doing this shit, and they start getting... Again, look at the amount of tweets that went out under Gamergate. Or look at the amount of views combined on all the videos related to the subject. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. If, if I was an advertiser, if I was the marketer in some company, and I woke up one day to 20,000 fucking emails, you can bet your fucking ass so I'm going to start paying attention. It's not just sending emails. You've got to send them in bulk. You have to have enough people send them at one specific moment that nobody can ignore it. If some guy at Kraft or Newegg or Amazon <laughs> goes into work one day and he's got 100,000 fucking emails waiting for him, I guarantee you that business relationship is going to be over. They're going to say, fuck that site. That is way too many goddamn people. Uh, let's see. I heard Funny Chunk was building a game journalism site. What's your opinion on this? Mm, I, I haven't heard that. I mean, if they are, good luck. You know, why? Why not? I, I know a lot of people are doing it right now. The more, the better. Listen, it's the free market, man. If you put more options out there, people can go to those other options. Why not? Uh, you know, I, I wish Funny Junk luck. Or <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm a little tired. I wish Funny Junk luck if they're doing that. Why are young people so faggy? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that, Maul. Um, <laughs> it's the side effect of the internet. We're all, we're all a little bit faggy. That's what happens when you use social media. It's one of the side effects. What are your thoughts about the fappening? So, <laughs> here's my thoughts on the fappening. Don't fucking upload pictures of yourself. Don't save fucking pictures of yourself naked or getting screwed and put them on any service. You're asking for fucking trouble. What are you doing? This is internet shit 101. Nothing is secure. There's nothing that exists. There's no computer system. There's no service. There's no cloud. There's no storage service that is secure. There is always going to be a weakness. That is the fucking reality. And if you're dumb enough it, just don't do it. Don't put your... It, it, this is common sense shit. Don't put your name on stuff. Don't put your fucking address and phone number out there. Don't upload naked pictures of yourself on a service, even if you trust the company. It is a bad idea. If you want to take nude pics with your friends and your lovers and whatever, fine. Use a fucking Polaroid camera. Put it in a fucking uh, desk drawer. Why are you putting it on some service? You're asking for fucking trouble. Am I Ben Zyklon? No, I'm not. Uh, ben Zyklon Garrison? No, no, I'm, I'm not. He's a dangerous man. who will probably murder me for even mentioning his name. I'm victim blaming. Oh, you're talking about the fappening thing? Yeah, I, I, I guess you could say that I'm victim blaming. That's terrible. <laughs> I just... If you learn anything from the fappening, if that's what people are fucking calling it, don't put your shit on the internet. You are fucking going to get screwed one day for doing that. It's just a bad idea. Don't put naked pictures of yourself out there. Don't put your personal information out there. There's no reason to do it. You're, it's just a risk. I'm telling you it's a bad idea. And this recent event illustrates that. And as bad as the, the, the hacker or whatever fucking happened that got the information is, you, you know, explain to me how it is Deadspin has no problems putting up nudes of celebrities right after that happened. Where's, you know, fucking gawkers integrity there as they tell everybody how sexist and horrible gamers are? They've got no problem showing some chick posing naked with her boyfriend just because he happens to uh, be a sports celebrity. That's fine for them. Are you a big guy? For you, yeah. Do you like Fallout, the video game series? Yes, I do. Oh, let's see. 
the god, this shit's going so fucking quick. That looked like an interesting one. What was that? And I already lost it. It was something about altruism. Fuck it. It looked like a good question. I'm sorry, man. Am I a neat? No, God, no, I'm not a neat. If I were a neat, I wouldn't be doing a live stream right now. I would be posting on JP in between pissing in Coke bottles and eating five-day-old pizza. That's what I'd be doing if I were neat. Can I fix Australia? Ah, uh, probably not. Just I'm just an idiot on the internet. <laughs> Check Twitter, please. Because it's slower, I guess that makes sense. Oh, let's see. What's your opinion on Vivian James? I think Vivian James is fucking heads and shoulders above. What was that fucking thing Reddit came up with? Didn't they have their own creation? Vivian James is obviously superior. They should make it a game where Vivian James and Reddit is little characters or a little sister, and Vivian James just kicks the shit out of her for the entire game. That would be entertaining. Make it a female version of Super Mario Brothers. Neat shaming. Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm horrible shaming those poor neats. Now they're going to cry while they piss into their Coke bottles. <laughs> it's, it's bad. What's my view on Twitch streaming? Listen, I, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't make money off of this. I just do it for the fun of it. If somebody wants to go and do Twitch streaming and shit, whatever, go ahead. If you're going to make money off it, fine. I, I have no opinion on it. Go, knock yourself out. If people like your shit, great. What is my opinion on Iceland? I have no opinion on Iceland. There are many countries I don't have an opinion on because I don't know much about them. Uh, let's see. Did somebody ask about Adam Sessler? <laughs> isn't Adam Sessler, isn't that the man that's fighting off 4chan while jacking off? Is that the guy we're talking about? Adam Sessler. So he goes from games journalism and a TV host to he's running, what is it, Theory Head Inc.? So that's a consulting company, or what exactly does his company do now? I mean, it doesn't really look great when he's talking shit from a bar with Zoe Quinn as everybody's talking about journalistic integrity. Makes him kind of come off like an asshole. That would be my opinion on Adam Sessler. Is it too late for Canada? Oh, you guys got... There, there's some fucked up shit going on in Canada. I don't know. Don't worry, though. America is going to burn right alongside you. We'll go down together. Internet aristocrat, what do you look like? I am. If I were to walk down the street and walk past you, you would not even give me a second look. I am the most typical, average-looking person you could imagine. Normal, well, I'm t uh, 5'11", 6 foot, uh, normal weight. I, I don't know, I got a little heavy set recently, so I'm like 180. Usually I like to be like 170. That, well, At least in my opinion, that's heavy, is gaining 10 pounds. I'm just, I'm average. I'm blonde hair, blue eyed. I'm just a normal fucking guy. There's nothing spectacular about me. There's nothing defining about me. I'm your typical fucking normal person. Am I an atheist? No, I'm an apatheist. Which just means I'm so fucking stupid and uninterested in the debate between whether God exists or not that I'm just not going to throw my hat into the ring. That's what an apatheist is. Besides, I'm more interested in other shit, man. You know... I, there are other things that I find more fascinating. I like math. I like I like working on math, and that's a hobby of mine. I'd rather conduct, you know, I'd rather focus on shit like that. There are smarter people than I am on both sides uh, that can go and debate bigger questions like that. I just, I'm going to stay out of it because I'm an idiot. How often do I check my privilege? Every day. Every fucking day. <laughs> Aryan Manlet. Yeah, by fit standard, if you're below 7 foot 5, you're a fucking Manlet. I, I sadly I am, yes. I, I you know if I met a normal citizen, I'd probably have to stand on a stepping stool just to look at their navel. That's how short I am. <laughs> normative privilege. Yeah, you could call it that. Why not? I've got normative privilege.
what do I think about the correlation between games journalism and third wave or third wave feminism? You know, I've said before, um, Tumblr's like an end result, right? What you see on Tumblr with like social justice warriors is like an end result. And I kind of explain with the narcissism thing what these people are. But um, I'll tell you what fuels it, in part what fuels it. Uh, our colleges, uh, specifically soft science departments, and specifically certain segments of sociology, really, really fuel it. Uh, when you're kind of comparing games journalism, you know, they probably go to college and they get filled up with this bullshit and then they leave and they spot it off. I think that happens to a lot of things. I, I think a lot of social justice warriors are around, I don't know, I'd say between 18 to 28, and I think it heavily influenced from a specific segment of academia. And that's not just me saying that. You want to see something really interesting, if you really want your fucking mind blown, go look up an uh, organization called Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, FIRE. So this organization was started to protect students' rights on campuses. It was started by, like, imagine, like, your typical, like, if you were thinking of a stereotype, like, you know, a New Yorker, like, a kind of an older Bronx Jewish guy, right, named Silverglade, if I remember right. So he started this organization called FIRE to defend students. Now, he is a liberal. By his own definition, Silverglade is a liberal. He is left-leaning. But what you know, he was in the '60s, and you know, he was part of the whole movement of, "Hey, man, you know, you should let us have the rights to speak on campus." But when you listen to interviews with him, the shit he says is really interesting. He says, "We were fighting so that the establishment in colleges at the time would let other people with differing viewpoints, you know, give them the right to speak." But what he found out, the reality of it was, they weren't fighting for free speech; they were fighting for their speech. So when they got in positions of power, they silenced the other side. So it was a shift. You know, it, you know, if you look at the 40s and 50s, it was conservatives kind of making it so liberals couldn't say what they wanted on campuses. And Silverglade thought they were going to go fight the good fight and everybody could talk. But what happened was once those left-leaning kind of liberals got into position, they shut everybody up. So here's Silverglade. He runs this organization for students' rights. And he is a liberal. And... Um, they think he's a conservative. Like the people I'm talking about when I'm talking about specific segments of sociologists, they would define him as being right, right wing, even though he's not, because they are so far off the charts to the left. So I, I guess if you compare, you know, compare that to third wave feminism, I, it plays a part. College plays a part in a lot of this shit. I'm just going to be honest, specifically sociology. That's why you got to go STEM, man. Facts and uh, facts and reality. Has there been a sharp decline in viewership on Kotaku, etc.? There have been uh, graphs that have been out there right now showing that a lot of these sites have a downward uh, trend. Now people are arguing that this is a normal, you know, this is a normal dip post E3 and post all this other shit, but the reality is PAX just took place, so shouldn't their numbers be up? Really, when you're thinking about it, they just had PAX happen, so shouldn't all these sites have tons of viewers going to hear about all the great news about all those fantastic fucking panels talking about the stupidest shit on earth. <laughs> I don't know. Weren't there dick wolf attacks at PAX? Weren't there, you know, roaming fucking packs of dick wolves attacking innocent women as they were running around PAX? Isn't that usually what happens every year? So I don't know why their numbers are down. So yeah, I'd say I'd say there's a decline taking place. <laughs> will Hillary win? <laughs> no, Hillary will not win. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know who will win, but it ain't going to be Hillary. What do I think about Putin? Putin, okay. You can look at Putin, right, and say, I don't like him. I don't like the policies that he has in place. He suppresses speech, and he controls the newspapers, and he does things that I find underhanded. But the thing to remember about Putin is he is the kind of guy who, when he walks into a situation where somebody's bigger and tougher than him, he doesn't say, oh, well, I can't win this fight. Instead, what he says is, I'm going to get a bigger stick than the one you have so I can come back here and kick your shit in. So here's Putin, this ex-KGB guy, who gets power in Russia, and you've got these oligarchs, these really rich assholes that control everything. And what did Putin do? Knock their shit right out of the ballpark and take power from them. So I admire that. I like a guy who goes into a situation, or a woman, doesn't matter, who goes into a situation where somebody's bigger than them, 
and they kick their ass in. That's an admirable quality. You can't tell me that that's not an admirable quality. Kirk or Picard? Uh, Picard. I like Picard. I like I like Picard. What do I think about North Korea, Iran, and Russia? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I think, again, if you look at Putin, it's really important to understand his viewpoint. He liked the prestige. He liked the idea of power that Russia had when it was the big bad Soviet Union. And I'm not saying that he wants it to return to a communist system, but I think he wants Russia to be much more than it is. So when I think of Russia, I think of a man who wants to expand his borders and wants to take back territory that used to be theirs, whether by force or right, doesn't matter. Uh, North Korea, I think, is becoming a problem for China. I don't think... They don't have a value at this point. I think China's got better interest elsewhere. I think North Korea is going to see a decline in its support from China as it focuses on other things. And besides, they're all starving to death, right? I, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that country. As for Iran, I don't know much about Iran. I couldn't tell you. I, I really, really couldn't. Um, I know, what was it, the Sudnex thing that uh, fucked up their nuclear research program that you know, it, it is alleged to have been made by U.S. or Israeli intelligence sources to get into their, what was it, their computer systems and it fucked with certain equipment so they couldn't do nuclear research and... Why are you poking a bear? Why, if you, you know, if the U.S. views Iran as a problem, why are you fucking with them? You're just asking them to do something. Now, Paul would probably tell you exactly what's going on, but um, those are my thoughts. Jesse Ventura versus, oh, well, I, that went by too quick. I didn't see who he was versing. What are my thoughts on Bitcoin? You know, I've had conversations with a guy who's big into Bitcoins. Uh, I'll tell you what my thoughts are on this. I'm probably not the guy you should be listening to when you want to know about Bitcoins. Go to G. Go talk to G about that. Or go to Biz and listen to their opinions on that. But as for my opinion on it, you have all these competing cryptocurrencies. You have all these secondary markets opening up, right? But nothing's secure. I, I, that's, I don't feel like there's any security in any of them. It's not like I can transfer money into Bitcoins or some other one and go to an ATM somewhere and then take it back out. And without that kind of security, what, what am I buying with Bitcoins? I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's great and it's got all these uses and people are speculating and they're using the market to try to build fortunes. But there's like, to my knowledge, one fucking ATM in Canada where you can use Bitcoins to get coffee. whoop de fucking do I'm not going to take a plane trip to fucking Canada to get a cup of coffee with my Bitcoins. I'd rather use, you know real fucking fiat currency or a credit card or a checking system at least to me that's more secure but again like I said I'm not the guy you should be asking there's smarter people that could give you better opinions I'm from biz biz is fucking empty well see okay remember that people always go to moot and say hey make a fucking board I want a history board I want a business board I want this board or that board and then the board gets made, and nobody uses it. And then they just go back to Polar V and shit it up. So, you know, it's a fucking reality. Am I a libertarian? No, I'm not a libertarian. I'm a constitutionalist with conservative leanings. Have fun figuring out what that means. Uh, is Mighty Number no. 9 going... Is, I'm thinking they're saying, is Mighty Number no. 9 going to flop? I don't know. I've heard people saying they didn't like it. Wasn't there slowdown issues and people were saying it was too easy um, and they didn't like the, the engine they used for it and other shit. And it just, uh, essentially people were saying, what, it didn't feel like Mega Man? That's probably a bad sign. If you're making a Mega Man game, right, wink, wink, not titled Mega Man, but if you're making a Mega Man game for Mega Man fans <clears throat> and the biggest complaint is it doesn't feel like Mega Man, then you fucked up big time, didn't you? So I, I don't know. What the fuck's going on with that? Have I talked to, Ar what is it, Archon from The Escapist? No, I have not. 
I, I don't know why we would talk. Listen, I, I'm nobody. I just make YouTube videos. You know, I, uh, there's nothing I, I you know, I, I'm insignificant. I'm just a guy that makes YouTube videos. There's nothing special about me. I, I would talking to people about specific things wouldn't really accomplish anything. If the escapist wants to do good, create a new ethical policy and publish it. Re-examine your original piece where you went after Wizard Chan and address it, and just get your house in order and be upfront about it, and people will respect you. Do that on your own. People will respect you. People will respect the escapist if they come out and they say, you know what, moving forward, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to go look back at some of our stories and we're going to fucking say we're sorry and make it right. That's all he needs to do. That's really all he needs to do. Check my Twitter, all right? Uh... Oh, oh shit, all right, I should have refreshed. I thought nobody was asking questions. I'm just fucking retarded. You're super ignorant about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That's why I said ask somebody else. Are you going to buy Resident Evil Remake port? Will you support a return to real survival horror? I bought so many fucking Resident Evil games at this point, and they've all just fucking disappointed me. I do have hope for a Silent Hill, though. That looks like it's in good fucking hands. That looks like a series that's going to go back to being good. What state am I from? I'm not going to tell you. Take a guess. Uh, are you a Mensa member? Oh, God, no. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, what do you think of Neutral Milk Hotel? I have no idea. Do I buy gold? No, I do not. <laughs> what about walking simulators like Gone Home? Do you like it? No, I do not. I do not like Gone Home. I do not like walking simulators. But I have bought shitty games before. Uh, why do I think Hillary won't win? I don't think she has the political appeal to win the presidency. That is my opinion on that. Uh, what do you think about game jams and how the ambiguous rebel game jam could affect the industry in future game jams? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Th this whole thing is a debacle, right? The whole fucking Zoe Quinn thing, the whole conspiracy shit. It's making everybody look bad. Everybody. Indie developers look bad. Game jams look bad. Game journalism sites look bad. Journalists look bad. It needs to be addressed. It, uh, it probably has a negative effect. It probably makes people think they're all fucking scams. And until somebody addresses all this shit, it's just that's never going to go away. It has to be addressed. Somebody has to step up to the plate and do something. Uh, let's see. Why is Theodore Roosevelt the best U.S. president? Teddy? We're talking about Teddy? I'll tell you why Teddy Roosevelt is the most badass motherfucker to walk the planet. This guy went to give a speech and somebody shot him in the fucking chest. And instead of instead of crying about it or running to the doctor, he gave the fucking speech anyway, bleeding for an hour. So he gets shot in the fucking chest and he gives his speech anyway for an hour. I don't even care what his politics are at that point. I would vote for a guy like that. You're going to get shot in the chest and still give your speech? That is pretty fucking ballsy, man. That is a badass son of a bitch. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Now I just pissed off half of uh, half the internet, huh? Have I talked to Archon from the escape? He said, no, I've not. Uh, why do you kill all those children, Jim? I'm just a horrible human being, obviously. Should we weaponize Ebola for the war on terror? Yeah, no, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, what was the guy... I almost want to say he's Swedish, but I, that's probably wrong. There was some guy that kicked up a shitstorm, uh, was it a year or two ago, where he wanted to take uh, avian flu and weaponize it. And his excuse for doing that and then publishing the research, or his justification for doing that and publishing the research was, it will let us study this better and let us, I, I don't know, come up with defenses against it. But again, at the end of the day, it's a guy weaponizing the fucking bird flu and then putting out reports on how to do it. That seems really fucking dumb to me. What do I think of PAX in general? What the fuck is PAX anymore? Is it about video games? Because it sure doesn't seem like it, does it? Half the fucking panels at PAX are about being oppressed or, or being a special snowflake. I, I mean, what the fuck are you guys doing? Is that video games you're doing anymore? Because it sure doesn't seem like it, man. Uh, let's see... 
Fire sounds like bullied growing up to become bullies. Talking about the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. No, not really. Uh, go look at some of the shit they've done. It's essentially about students that, well, you know, they're being treated unfairly on campus. And it, it's just they go in and they, they do the best to defend them so they're not getting shit on when somebody wants to do something. One of their cases, if I remember right, to give you an idea, a guy was reading a book that was available in the school library. I think he was a student and he was working as a janitor, you know, like as a part-time job at the school to pay for college. Somebody on staff or somebody at the school had said he was a racist for reading the book and that it offended her. And so they threatened to throw him out of school for that. That was a case where fire stepped in and defended him and made them back down. So that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. That's that's what they deal with. Really crazy shit. Uh, what is worse, far left or far right? Um, I'd say far anything can be dangerous, but at the moment, I think what you're seeing, or what's the popular thing that's bullying people a lot, probably be the far left. What's the most common threat you get? But again, it's it's the fucking internet. What does it matter? I mean, it's just people talking shit. That's what people do. That's how the internet functions. You know, oh, we're gonna kill you, or oh, you're a faggot, that kind of shit. Uh, you know, that's that's typical. It's daily. Uh, let's see. Do you Potter the wig? Uh, no, I do not. I don't know why people are so interested in the fucking picture. It was the first image result on a Google search for aristocrat wig, if I remember right. It just looks good. It's a good picture. That's why I went with it. Opinion on that guy with the glasses? That place is a shit show. Um, that you could you could make a video series on that place. I've heard some really fucking interesting stories from certain individuals about that guy with the glasses. Though I like, um, is it Brad Jones? I like him. But as for the rest of them, you could, you could, there's a lot of shit going on there. A lot of back history. Am I 164th Cherokee? I don't know. Maybe I'm 128th or one, you know, 256th. Who knows? Let's jump back to the chat here. How long has this even been going on for? People must be bored out of their fucking minds. Holy shit. An hour and 45 minutes? Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll openly admit it. Uh, fuck that guy with the glasses. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, explain this to me, right, with that guy with the glasses. I... This makes no fucking sense. Or you know what? Let me rephrase that. Doug Walker, stop. Just please stop. It's over. It's done. Just please stop at this point. You had the nostalgia critic, and people liked that. And then you went and fucked with the formula. And you did this horrible, horribly unfunny skit show. And it was god fucking awful, man. It is the worst shit that's ever been put on the fucking internet. It was unfunny. And you just couldn't let it go. So you shit up the nostalgia critic with it. Why? Why? Do you think people want to watch you mock a movie and do your little reviews? And hey, when nostalgia critic started, I liked it. I'm, I, you know, I thought it was funny. I liked it. It was good stuff. But then you started infusing these fucking eight-minute segments of shitty skit comedy into every single nostalgia critic video. That is really unappealing. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. I know you've got people that comment on your videos that say they like it. They're lying to you. Nobody likes it. Stop. As for uh, fucking Linkara, holy shit. The, that's, those are some of the funnest threads you'll ever see on TV is when they're making fun of Linkara. If you've never been to one of those threads, I'd highly recommend it. It is fucking entertaining. Will you ever show your handsome face? My face is on the internet. Go track it down. I've got, I've got pictures on the internet. Go find them. Be a super sleuth. Thank you for your videos. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad you can stand listening to me whine for 30 minutes about inane shit. 
<laughs> There's one guy in the chat who says he likes it. You like those skits? I'm not trying to shit on you. I'm being honest. Do you really like them? I, I just, I don't find them appealing. They're not entertaining. They're not funny. The Nostalgia Critic was good, man, but those skits are fucking awful. What do you find appealing about them? I'm never going to see the answer on my it's going by too quick. Uh, what is my opinion on the Vivian threads? L listen, I mean, if there are one or two threads dedicated to something, you can skip over them. It'd be a different story if it was like fucking 45 threads all dedicated to the same thing. Then I could understand people getting annoyed, but if it's one thread or one, you know, two threads dedicated to a specific thing, fuck it. Just ignore it. There's a lot of other shit to look at. I mean, you know, I go to a bunch of different boards. There's a lot of shit I don't want to fucking go through, but I just ignore it. I go to a different thread. How do I feel about Yahtzee? I don't know. I, I Like, I, I remember watching some of his videos before and stuff, um, but I, I haven't really watched his shit recently. Again, I, I know there are a lot of, like, um, there are a lot of personalities and people who do a lot of, like, video game related shit. Like you got like Yahtzee, you've got stuff like the Game Grumps, you've got Total Biscuit, you've got all these different people, and they've got their own fan bases and people like their stuff. But I, I really don't that's not the kind of stuff I watch. Personally it's just not the kind of stuff I watch. That's not to say it's bad or it's not entertaining. It's just not the shit I watch when I'm online. I'm watching other stuff. I'm just I, I have to rewatch Legend of the Galactic Heroes, or whatever the fuck it is, for the eightieth time. Uh, let's see. How do I feel about Spoonie? Fuck Spoonie. What happened to you, Spoonie? Didn't you get your ass kicked off that guy with the glasses because of this social justice warrior shit? And now you're running around Twitter calling out people that are interested in Gamergate? What the fuck? Hey, didn't they tar and feather your ass with bullshit? And you had to deal with that? I don't know what I don't know what the fuck is going on with Spoonie. I don't know why he isn't on this. I, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't. I really don't know. What is my favorite board? Everybody knows. I, I my I, the the board I like the most is Pole. I enjoy Pole a lot. I also like V a lot. I go to Fit a lot. I go to K a lot. And those are the boards that I I frequent. SP's funny. TV's got some great shit. Uh, TG, when they do those, what is it, Humanity Fuck Yeah threads, where they put up their fiction, that's fucking really great, too. What do I watch? Just shit that interests me. Um, I, I don't know. Let me look. Let me look through the list of shit I got. I'll tell you what I watch. Or my subscriptions. Uh, let's see. Double check this guy's name. All right, uh, there's a guy I watch. Uh, where is it? Take some crime. I don't know if you ever heard of the channel. All he does is dance. That's it. That's his fucking channel. Listens to cool music and he dances. I like dancing, so. And I like his. Um, he's got like fucking eclectic tastes in music, so you can find some good shit on there. Let's see what else I watch. Uh, subscriptions. Oh, that's right. What the fuck is his... Uh, what is he calling himself now? I think he changed his name. I know he left YouTube. Uh, so, Classic Game Room. Uh, Lord Carnage. I don't know if he's on YouTube now or if he left or if he's doing his own site. I, I haven't watched it in a while, but... Um, Mark? Mark is a great guy. Like I've watched a lot of his videos. He's never pissy. He's never mean. He just he just likes video games. He just likes video games and he talks about video games. I also like watching a lot of Reno. That shit's great. That shit's fucking fantastic. I also like Japanese game shows, like the crazy ones where they do like uh, punishment challenges and stuff. Rate your skill in fighting games. I'm fucking horrible at fighting games, but I love playing them. I'm terrible at a lot of video games, but I still like playing them. 
what do I think of Sargon of this shit's going so quick. I think I know what you're talking about. I like his videos. Lord Carnage is back. Oh, he's back on YouTube? Fucking great. Yeah, like I said, I love his stuff. The classic Game Room, the old stuff when he used to have a co-host was really good too. All he does is review shit he likes. Talks about video games, loves video games. How can you not like that? Upbeat guy, watch his video, enjoy him, have a laugh. As he drinks a beer and talks about shit he enjoys. Do I play Dwarf Fortress? No, I'm too fucking stupid to be able to handle a game like that. Thoughts on AVGN? What happened with his movie? I know a couple people who were, uh, <laughs> who were talking about his movie that did, thought it turned out like shit, and I've seen some clips of it too. Was it really that bad? Did it really turn out that horrible? And weren't there stories too of actors he had on set that were making fun of him? That he got really, really upset about? Oh, that's another person I watch too, by the way. Uh, not AVGN, but Red Letter Media. Those guys are fucking amazing. Red Letter Media is probably... Yeah, I watch all their shit. Absolutely every bit of it. Red Letter Media is great. Check Twitter. All right. If I were a gun, what gun would I be? Uh, probably one that would misfire and kill you. I'm just, I'm just an idiot. Nothing special. Uh, how do you feel about feminism in general without the SJW bullshit? I don't know. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see pure ideologies battling it out in public debates with this SJW shit removed. Wouldn't you? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to see what the better argument is with these people removed? to see if there's any merit to them. That's what I'd be interested in. I think feminism, just like everything else, got hit by the same kind of people. I think everything's been shit up by this exact same kind of personality type. And I think if they get removed, people can watch fucking good debates. Why not have a feminist and, a, I don't know, a, a men's right activist and an egalitarian have a fucking debate and just argue with each other? <clears throat> but without all the shit flinging that these social justice warriors bring into it, that would be entertaining, I think. Like, again, like I said, they shit up anything they touch. Spoonie's girlfriend is an SJW. Well, there you go. That would explain it. That would explain a lot. What do I think about 4chan's weaponized minorities? How do you weaponize a minority? You strap a missile on a black guy's back? How does that work? What, what exactly are the steps involved in weaponizing a minority? These people are so retarded. Weaponized minority. That's great. That is a great fucking term. That should be a, that should be a fucking printed on a t-shirt. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. I disagree with your Steam sales video. Okay. Like I said, I, I put videos out about shit that interests me, and they're my own opinions. I mean, if you if you disagree, that's fine, man. I don't expect that you're going to agree with everything I say. I got no problem with that. Uh, I found your nudes. Pay me, or they will leak. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all I've got is seven dollars. You know, oh, just the seven dollars. Have you seen Eric Kane's new article about GamerGate? Uh, yeah, if you're referring, to, well, I don't know, unless he posted one like this evening, then no. But if you're talking about the previous one, it seemed it seemed more invested. I still don't agree with everything he said, but the more recent one that he put up, I think, is more invested. And that's what I expected. That's what I wanted from him. Uh, let's see. Why did you, what is this? Why did you, or why did you stop following the JIDF? Are you anti-Semitic goy? What are you talking about him? Oh, what the fuck? Wait, can somebody make you unfollow them on Twitter? I don't really know. I don't use the social media thing. Maybe they made me unfollow them. Is that possible? I'm going to go refollow them right now. <laughs> what the hell? It says I'm following them, but does it, it doesn't show I'm following them. 
<laughs> there's there's some fucking shenanigans afoot going on right now. I don't know what's I don't, I don't know what's going on, but some uh some sneaky shit going down. Maybe they're embarrassed. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> oh shit. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. How long has this fucking been going on? You got it. You got any good questions? Ask them now. I got, I got another ten minutes. S super salad, uh, soup. I really like uh, French onion soup. That's fucking great with like teriyaki, salmon, or something like that. It's really good. Oh, they can block you. Oh shit! All right. Bring on a guest. Bring on a guest. I feel like I'm boring the shit out of people at this point. I was going to have a couple of people come on, but um, I'm boring you, probably, more than likely. <laughs> Do I watch CinemaSins? Uh, no, I don't believe I've seen it. I'll, I'll check it out later on, see what it's like. Am I Hebrew? No, I'm not. I've told you all I'm part Irish. There are other parts, too, but none of you have guessed them. Oh, look at all this shit flagged as spam. I don't know why that does that. What are my thoughts on the Rageaholic? I watched his um, video. Somebody was linking it, talking about Gamergate. I mean, I disagreed with some of it, but I thought it was good. Something about Sam Hyde. What happened with him? Uh... Like I, I saw people talking about it on poll, and you know, uh, essentially saying like, what he was going to troll, he was trying to troll MLP or something by setting up a fake Kickstarter. But then, like people on MLP were saying what that it was him trying to scam money. I, I don't know what happened with that. Like I, I don't know the the fucking story of, of what happened exactly. I, I just remember that he had like a channel and he put out funny videos, and then it just something happened and it stopped. Uh, no, I'm not Spanish and I'm not Russian. What do I think of Ron Paul? I think Ron Paul's great. Don't agree with a lot of his politics. I don't like his isolationist approach um, to foreign issues. I mean, I, I agree that we shouldn't have our, you know, noses up everybody's ass. I definitely agree with that. But I, I think it creates a posture of weakness if you pull every troop you have outside of uh, the United States and put them back in. Um, I, I just there's certain things I disagree with. Auditing the Fed, I don't. I think that's a good idea. Why not? What is the worst board? <laughs> My opinion on what the worst board would be is lit. I did, I don't like lit. I think when lit started, I thought it was great. I I went to lit when lit started, and it was talking about books, and that was fun. But the fuck, if you say the wrong thing there, you're gone. They just, they shit all, you know, it's just, it's not a great board, in my opinion. Am I Cajun? No, I'm not Cajun. Am I Danish? No, I'm not Danish. <laughs> when I said ask your questions, you're just going to guess every fucking possibility? Is that it? God, these are going so fucking quick. What kind of cigarettes do I smoke? Camels. Do I vote Democrat? No. I don't vote any party. I, I, I said I'm a constitutionalist. Uh, you know, with conservative leanings. I believe in small government. I, I, I think certain things like the fact that certain states, what was it, Nevada, is 80% owned by the federal government is ridiculous. You can't have a strong, independent structure of a state when 80% of it is owned by the federal government. And I understand how that came about and I understand what it means, but that to me is dumb. I don't think that's good. Am I Korean? No, I'm not Korean. Angry Joe. What about Angry Joe? Somebody had uh, shown me that he was getting really pissed off on some site. Was it probably Twitter? I don't know. Getting angry at his fans, but I, I don't know what's going on. Tits or ass? Tits. Uh, let's see. African? No, I'm not African. You, you're just going to start naming continents now? Do I like Red Bull? No, I'm not a Red Bull guy.
Oh, fuck, I'm trying to pick shit out here. It's just, it, it's going quick, so it's staggering on me. Uh, something about Reddit taking shit down? It wouldn't surprise me. Again, I know a lot of people have been shadow banned. I know they still shut down certain conversations, so that would suggest to me that there are moderators there that don't want shit talked about still. But that's Reddit's own mess to clean up. I mean, if Reddit wants to deal with it, then the Reddit community needs to deal with it. Am I finished? No, I'm not finished. And no, I'm not Serbian either. And I'm not Brazilian. My thoughts on fat people? Listen, if you're fat, fine. But don't don't try to do this whole body positivity shit. Let's be realistic. If you're morbidly obese, yeah, it's bad for you. I'm not here to lecture you. I smoke. It's fucking stupid to smoke. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to start up a movement called Smoking Positivity because I'm not an idiot. I know that smoking cigarettes is bad for me. I know that it causes diseases and shortens my lifespan. What I'm doing right now is stupid, and I'm well aware it's stupid. But I'm not going to try to deflect criticism by saying it's positivity. So I, I hate that movement. Like, if you're morbidly obese, you are putting yourself at risk health-wise. It's just not good for you. And that that's fine. If you're comfortable with that, whatever. But don't try to give me this bullshit about body positivity. I don't buy it. I'm a smoker. I know when people do their stupid shit. I don't know what's going on. So I see through that. Am I forever alone? No, I'm not. Check my thin privilege. Consider it checked. Oh, Reinhard or Yang? <sighs> Reinhard, obviously. Am I a fan of a game series? Yes, I am. What do I think of Joan Rivers? I really don't know much about Joan Rivers. I mean, I, I didn't really pay attention to her. I know she passed away, but that's I, I don't really have any thoughts on it. Besides, who cares what I think? I'm just an idiot on the internet. Something about SpaceX. Space exploration and business opportunities in space is going to be the next big thing in the, you know, the next 100, 200 years. Anybody smart enough to start shit now is going to be making just loads of fucking money. Do I own any guns? No, I don't. But I'm pro-gun. Go to the firing range, grew up uh, you know, on a family farm, went hunting, did all that shit. Am I Hungarian? No, I'm not. What is my opinion on Angry Joe? I'd say Pissed Jose is very upset. That's what I'd say. Will you play ISIS Beheading Simulator 2014 when you're done? Has somebody made that a game? I, I wouldn't, you know. Sounds sounds entertaining, right? I'm sure, what is his name? Ferasi from Badass Digest? I'm sure that's his favorite fucking game, right? Piece of shit. <laughs> Alright, this is going too... It's going too quick for me. Uh, anyway... Thanks for coming out. I know I rambled. Probably didn't answer half the fucking questions people gave a shit about. But I figured I'd do a stream and just chit-chat. Why don't you ask whatever the fuck you wanted to ask. So take it easy, guys. Hope you have a uh, good weekend. Talk to you later. Okay. Uh, it should be, should be on. It's giving me the Hangout is on air thing ask somebody I know to send me a link so I know exactly when it pops up because there's some kind of weird delay. It's like a minute or two minutes so I just want to try to get this timed right so I don't start rambling on and then nobody knows what's going on anybody I should mean that's interested in listening to all this fucking shit. Just give me one sec here to double check. We'll start in a uh, minute here. Mm. 
<clears throat> All right, it looks like uh, it looks like it's going. As I said in the paste bin that I put up last night, my my voice is shit. I've got a hell of a cold going on right now, so it's gonna sound terrible, and I'm probably gonna cough a lot. And uh, keep smoking, cause I'm fucking stupid. That's what stupid people do. You know, originally I was gonna jump right into it, but I don't even think you can really start this without addressing the whole Breitbart bomb that just got fucking dropped on the head of all those all those journalists who were saying there is there's no collusion there's no forced narrative it doesn't exist you know you had people um, for the last few weeks downplaying it or putting up articles where they they mock people who are following Gamergate and say they're conspiracy theorists they're wearing tinfoil hats there's nothing there it doesn't exist and then what happens well our our little our little hero rides in and just nukes the motherfuckers and there it is in black and white. It's the people from these different various websites talking about creating a common narrative. We are going to talk about this. We're not going to talk about that. If I recall right, let me just double check the article so I'm not fucking this up. Where is it? should be right at the top. It was starting with, I believe, Kyle Orland from Ars Technica. Or he's in there somewhere. There was something that he wrote. Yeah, Orlin continued, I would love to use my platform to reproach this kind of behavior, but that would go against Quinn's valid and understandable desire not to have this personal matter publicized by the media. Maybe we should just stick to Twitter to boost the signal on this one rather than our front pages. Maybe we should get a public letter of support going around decrying these kinds of personal attacks signed by as many sympathetic journalists and developers as we can. Maybe we should just use this in his excuse to give more attention to our work. I know I've been meaning to review Depression Quest since its Steam release. And that is Orland of Ars Technica. So if you remember that uh, article that went around the, the uh, I don't even know what the fuck you want to call it. It was a letter from the community of developers and journalists and other people essentially saying that, you know, oh, we want peace and everything's fucking honky-dory and saying bad things is mean. It was a very, you know, generic and vague piece of shit. But now it looks like it was completely manufactured. I mean, if that's what I'm reading here, unless I'm reading this wrong, but <laughs> what the fuck? I, I don't understand how these people can pretend that this isn't a real issue. This is collusion. It's right there. I've already seen a few of them try to damage control this on uh, Twitter, saying it's not a big deal, or oh, who cares? It's just a Google group. You know, they're always moving those fucking goalposts, aren't they? First, it's there's no collusion happening, and then when you find evidence of it, well, that's not, that's not a big deal. That's not a lot of collusion, as if that's fucking excusable. But I think what a lot of people are missing out on uh, is one of the more important points. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. It should be at the very end of the article. Uh, this revelation echoes the 2010 journalist scandal <clears throat> in which liberal reporters were caught colluding and scheming their ideological opponents in a private mailing list set up by Ezra Klein, now the editor-in-chief of Vox.com. The exposure of journalists uh, cost Washington Post reporter David Weigel his job after Weigel was seen mocking conservative figures on whom he'd also reported in the pages of the Post. So something similar already happened that we're seeing right now, and people lost their job for it. So if you have this group of journalists that are colluding and working together, and they're getting developers to join in on that, well, how do they get those developers, those people that are working at <clears throat> uh, Sony and Microsoft, people working at EA and Activision, how did they get those people to sign it? If, they, if they're having private talks between themselves passing this list around, does that mean they're friends with the people that signed it? What is the response from corporate? I want to know what, what's going on with Sony, Microsoft, and those companies, Naughty Dog, all the others. Uh, do you support this? Your employees colluding with journalists to put out a fake narrative that is essentially the buildup to attacking gamers, your audience. As a business, how does that model work? It's, it is just mind-blowing. Um, and then, as if this wasn't, you know, proof positive enough of the shit that these people are doing, what happens immediately after the Breitbart article comes out? Kotaku releases a fucking Anita Sarkeesian article talking about a bomb threat that happened six months ago, with Stephen Titello trying to defend it, saying, no, I've been working on this since Friday, you know, and it just, just, I happen to post it five minutes after evidence of us colluding with each other and putting out bullshit narratives came out. <laughs> Golf clap, Stephen. That is brilliant. You don't look like the world's biggest fucking jackass right now. Somebody just put out evidence that you people 
are working behind the scenes to fuck with your consumer base and lie to us and collude and do all this other dirty shit. And you do exactly what that very article is talking about. But no, that's just coincidental timing. Fuck Kotaku. Yeah, at this point, parent companies need to start getting involved. Gawker Media needs to start getting involved. Vox Media needs to start getting involved. Because these lower level employees, these minute or middle management people, are completely fucking the brands up. So I, I would love to hear the official company position on this. I want to know what Nick Denton thinks, the, the owner or runner, co-founder, whatever the fuck he calls himself today, of Gawker Media. I want to know what he thinks of this kind of shit. I want his official stance on it. Because it's just ridiculous. Now, I, I know the last, I just wanted to address a Breitbart thing first. <clears throat> now I know over the last four weeks, things have been confusing. A lot of shit's happened. Lots of different little details have come out. And people are feeling a bit, I, I don't know, lost. Or they don't know exactly what to do. Or they don't know if what they're doing is even effective. You know, is mailing, uh, is emailing or writing letters to advertisers, is that working? You know, is boy or is boycotting these different sites is that doing anything? <clears throat> is confronting these people on Twitter and on different forums is that accomplishing anything? You know, it's this this sensation of doubt. What you've got to understand in the situation that we're all in right now is that it is a protracted PR battle. You are fighting against titans. These companies, these groups of individuals, these connected individuals, have money, have connections, have prestige. They have reputations, and they have contacts. And they're going to take every opportunity they can to shit on you. It's, it's black PR. It's old hat. If you can't just simply ignore something, you've got to do your best to try to destroy it. And that's really what you've been seeing the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> and I think that's what's leading to a sense of confusion. People don't know what to do because they are targeting you. So you've got, you know, all these articles, gamers are dead. You've got all these people, uh, you know, these reporters on Twitter just talking and being smug and acting like nothing can happen to them. And they're controlling the narrative and you can't do shit. And then you see things like Reddit constantly shadow banning people and shutting down threads. And now you've got 4chan doing the same thing. You can't talk about this on V, on Poll, on pretty much any board it will get deleted. I mean, there, there, people have been saying it's even get, or getting deleted on B, which is the fucking random board, which there's no reason for it to be getting deleted there. And so y it just seems like this overwhelming push just to tell us to fuck off and just walk away. I mean, that's a message a lot of people, you know, kind of observers on the sidelines have been saying, like David Jaffe, for instance, is saying, I don't see a big, dish, or a big deal here. I don't think this is a, a big issue. I'm in game development. I know people in the indie scene. And I, I've never met anybody that's had a problem with this. But we know that's not true. We've had developers come forward. We've had journalists come forward. Go look at Sawyer's video on uh, YouTube. The guy's having a fucking breakdown over this shit, talking about how you talking about his experiences doing this for the last seven years has broken him, and his, his career has sunk. So think of stuff like that when you hear people like Jaffe saying, this isn't a big deal, and just ignore it. I think one of the things a lot of people need to do is face the reality of the numbers um, when we're looking at this. If you were to take Kotaku and Polygon and combine them uh, for their traffic per month, I, I believe when I looked it up, it's around 21, 22 million visits a month. That is, that's a lot of people coming through those two sites combined. You know, and again, that includes the subsites, subdomains, whatever of Kotaku and Polygon, but 21 to 22 million people per month, you, you know, visitors. So you've got a lot of people going to these sites, and they're getting a good amount of money. So, you know, when I hear people like Jaffe say, well, I, I don't think this is a big deal, I look at it differently. I see websites like Kotaku and Polygon and Rock, Paper, Shotgun and these others that have been highlighted repeatedly, or Ars Technica, and I look at the amount of traffic they're getting to come to them. And I ask myself, if I were an indie dev, or if I were somebody that saw something in the industry I didn't like or I thought was wrong, and I went to these people, to try to get them to report on it, it could reach, you know, potentially millions of people. But if they decide to smear me, if I'm not part of their in click, they could kill my career right there. You know, 30, 40, 50 million people per month. One article, 
one article on each of those sites is enough to kill my career. It's enough to end any chance I've got at getting looked at. I, I remember talking to Jeffy uh, uh, on his video that he released, and he was saying, uh, well, look at, you know, look at the unique examples. You've got Minecraft. You've got other games that have come up, and they didn't need to rely on the media. Well, yeah, there's always going to be an outlier. You're always going to have one or two or three or four darling cases where people viral the, the game themselves, or it becomes a phenomenon on YouTube. But that isn't the reality for most indie devs. And I, I think a lot of people have started to kind of see what's going on. It's just the situation is disgusting. You've got development and journalists, and they are basically doing anything they can to make money and to shit on anybody that tries to stop them. So there's there's so many issues going on, and I, you know I, I I've been hearing people talk about what are we going to do or what should we do, uh, yeah, you know, what what's the point or what's tomorrow going to be like? And again, there are a few things uh, I want you to keep in mind going forward. One, they set the narrative. This group of people that we're dealing with have set the narrative. They have declared that we're all horrible human beings. They've told everybody this. We are all cis male oppressors. We're misogynists. Uh, we're pieces of human shit. You know, Lay Alexander and the Totillos and all those people have. They have put that message out there. Now, normally in any other situation, um, that would be the end. We'd be fucked. But it's different in this circumstance. See, we've already been painted as the horrible people. So, you know, people from the sidelines, uninformed people coming in, don't expect anything good of us. We're horrible people, remember. We've already been branded that. So every time we do something that exposes them or we, you know, support another dev or we do a charity thing, it fucks that narrative up. It makes us look good. We're the bad guys, and we're looking good. That makes people start to pay attention. Well, what's really going on here? But even more so, they've painted themselves as the respectable individuals. You know, they're the people with a career, and, you know, they do the right thing, and they're ethical, and there's nothing going on here. So every time you start to dig up through their past and you're seeing all the shit that they're doing, it's another chink in the armor. They can't, they can't just explain it away. And so you need to remember that moving forward. They set the narrative, but it works in our favor. It's pieces of shit. We've got nothing to lose. If we do something bad, it's expected. But if we do something good, they can't explain it. Where, you know, the reverse of that is they're expected to be good. So every time they fuck up, it's a big fuck up, even if it's a tiny thing. But if they do something great, well, that's expected. It's not a big deal. They've, they've boxed themselves in with that, and I don't think they really realize it just yet. So this, this Gamergate thing is weird, right? You've got people from really every different kind of perspective. We're a mishmash of fucking bizarre ideologies, really. You've got academic feminists, you've got right-wingers, you've got liberals, you've got anarchists and communists, socialists and capitalists, you've got people that are in their 20s and 30s, you've got teenagers, you've got old people, you know, you have men and women, every fucking gender and all this shit in between. It's not a normal group. It really is bizarre when you look at it. You know, what, what would bring all these people together, right? You know, they all have different goals, it would seem. And yet, we're all attracted to the same issue. And it seems that we all focus on that very same issue. It's these people are corrupt, and the shit they're doing is wrong. So when I hear somebody say something like, well, who cares? It's just unethical you know, journalism. Welcome to the real world. You know, when I had done that uh, video on Dina, uh, with Mighty Number no. 9 with Comcept, right? People had said, oh, it's just nepotism. That's how, that's how the world works. Fuck that noise. You know, it, don't tell me that you're fine with that shit. If you're saying that unethical behavior is fine, then you're, you're telling me that you just don't give a shit about ethics in the first place. So why would I even listen to your opinion? What, what would your opinion matter on this issue? You don't value ethics in the first place, so your input onto whether or not they're ethical in the first place doesn't really seem to fit, doesn't seem to matter. So, I'm sorry if I'm rambling. It's a fucking Sudafed screwing with my head and all the other medicines. But So we have a, a diverse group of people. They've all got different goals. They're all good at different things, right? And I've noticed that a lot of people are trying to moderate how everybody behaves, or they're worried. And then there's another group that's worried that this is going to turn it into some, you know, clusterfuck like Occupy Wall Street was. That in two weeks we're going to have somebody named Ketchup uh, going on the Colbert Report to talk about Gamergate or some disastrous fucking thing like that. Again, you need to realize that regardless of our different approaches. We have nothing to lose here. Absolutely 
fucking nothing to lose. They do. We don't. We've got people taking all sorts of different approaches, and that's that's really what I wanted to focus on. Like I said, I'd seen a lot of different people doing or talking about interesting things. Now, I know a lot of you out there have really great talents. You can do a lot of interesting shit, but you just haven't really maybe had the opportunity or nobody's asked you to do it. Uh, one idea I saw that was brought up, I think it was in the Escapist thread, was somebody saying, God, you know, it would be good to have a video recap each day of shit that's going on. Just something like a, a one or two minute summation so that it was easy for people to just jump on that, read it, watch it, whatever, and know what the fuck is going on so they don't get lost because information moves quickly and people want to be informed. And if somebody is coming along and they want to see what's going on, you can point them to the newest video to talk about the most recent developments. It's that kind of stuff. And it doesn't need to be one specific person. I mean, fuck, if 20 of you want to go out and do it, do it. You know, whoever's the best one at doing it will attract the most attention. People also need to realize that even with the amount of, I guess, censorship or suppression that's going on right now on different sites like Reddit or 4chan, there are places that let you talk. There are alternatives to, to 4chan. There are alternatives to Reddit. You can go on social media like Twitter or Facebook if you want. You can go to the Escapist thread. There are other uh, gaming forums that are talking about this. You can go on a fucking funny junk if that's really where you want to go. But we need, I think, to be able to share information more quickly and more cohesively with one another. And I, I think one of the more important places to start is we've had a lot of devs on Twitter talking about stuff that's going on. And the thing is, it's a fucking lonely position. When you're the journalist or the developer that comes out and says something, you're up shit creek, and it feels lonely. You're going to get you know, separated from all your colleagues and friends when you're the guy going against the grain. And one of the remedies to that is not, you know, you don't have to run out and buy their fucking game or you know, kiss their ass even, but it's basic communication. It's saying, hey, I fucking, I'm here. I see what you're doing. Don't worry about it. You know, fucking send them a tweet. Who gives a shit? Favorite the shit they're talking about. Uh, retweet it if it's something important. Uh, you know, with the Gamergate tag, we see people constantly popping stuff out, and that's great. You know, people are talking about it all the time, and it's pushing that out more and more, so more people are paying attention. But when you see something that's got a screen cap or an infograph, or it's got a link to a new article, or it's some amazing piece of information, try to retweet it. Focus on that. Make it big so more people pay attention. It, it's really just combining efforts and coordinating to do stuff. A lot of what we're seeing right now with you know, how prolonged this is and people are thinking things like, well, shit, we're pulling advertisers off. We're blacklisting their sites. What, what do we do next? How do we know we've won? The longer this goes on, right, the bigger schism, I guess, in the market you're going to see. And that's good for us because what it means is eventually somebody's going to come along and they're going to say, look at all these gaming journalism sites. Or, you know, look at Reddit or look at 4chan. You know, all the people are saying they want to talk about this or they want to discuss it or they want, you know, gaming journalism ethics or whatever the fuck it is they want. They're going to they're gonna look at all this market demand, all these people constantly talking about this, and they're going to get interested. And they're going to say, you know what, I'm going to offer an alternative to these other places. If you want to stop these people, you know, especially the sites like Kotaku and stuff, it's not enough just to advertise, you know, contact their advertisers. I, I do agree that's a great idea. Fucking email them. You know, write personalized emails. Send them actual letters. Uh, paper letters have more impact, believe it or not, than emails do. That's just shit they don't expect. So when they start getting flooded by that, it has a fucking impact. It really, really does. So, I mean, if, if that's the route you want to go, if you want to blanket the, you know, advertisers, fucking go for it. But we're, we're, what we're doing right now is creating, like I said, a schism in the market. But if we want to stop them, it has to be more than just blacklisting them and ignoring them. It has to be more than just simply uh, talking to advertisers to say, these aren't people you want to be associated with. We have to hurt their numbers. You have to siphon off the traffic they get. And as you siphon off the traffic, those advertisers that are hesitant will begin to leave. Now, one of the ways of doing that is promoting new gaming sites that come out or promoting ones that are more ethical. You need to redirect the traffic and get people to go to different places. When Kotaku puts an article out and somebody's talking about it, say, fuck that, check out this one on Game Nosh, 
or check out The Escapist, or check out Tech Raptor, or a host of other fucking sites that are available. You need to redirect their interest. You need to make these sites that are around not appealing anymore. Uh, you know, in regards to the censorship thing, I mean, I know a lot of people are pissed about that, shadow banning and threads getting cut, and uh, mods banning people left and right. Innovation. Innovate. Find a way around it. I mean, my God, <laughs> you have browsers that allow you to develop fucking add-ons for them. Go make an add-on. Make a fucking add-on that has a chat program or a fucking comment program built into it. So when you go to a website or you go to an article, you chat through that. You know, it's fucking stored through the site server. Who gives a shit? Then you can comment anywhere. It doesn't matter if the fucking people are banning shit or if they're closing comment sections. It's hosted through the goddamn fucking add-on. You, you need to think outside the box and ways of attacking these sorts of issues. Now, we're starting to see pickup. I, I know it feels like the shit has dragged on forever, and I know people are thinking it's losing momentum, but again, Breitbart just dropped a hell of an article. You've got people, you've got fucking WikiLeaks talking about this. You know, Joe Rogan is starting to show interest. More people are starting to pay attention because this is so long. They, again, they've tried everything they can do. Every single dirty PR trick that's in the book, they have fucking thrown at you, and nothing is working. Everything they've tried has absolutely failed. That's never happened before. I don't, I know it feels like you're not accomplishing much, <clears throat> but you have to understand, if this had happened in any other circumstances, whether it was Occupy Wall Street or politics or business or law, it doesn't matter. If the amount of shit that has been flung at you was flung in any of those other arenas, it would have been over in week one. You have weathered that. They tried outright attacks, censor or censorship, silence. Nothing has worked. And believe me, they are pissed off about it. So my suggestion, you know, going forward, like I said, divide your labors up. You don't have to moderate each other. Listen, if you've got a group of people that want to dig into, you know, connections with, what is it, Silverstring Media, let them go do it. Work with each other. Find other people that want to do it. You know, divide the fucking labor up so it's more effective. Have people put video summaries out there and article summaries out there giving a chronology. There are, there are sites. I mean, fucking know your name, for Christ's sake, has one of the better repositories of shit that's happened for fucking, I don't know why that is, but they do. Encyclopedia Dramatica has a ton of information up on it. There are places that you can go to start to get a chronology and put together a timeline for the uninitiated, for people that are curious about what's going on. But divide up that labor. Have a group of people that are good at writing and contact advertisers. Have a group of people that are good at writing and speaking and doing videos do the summaries. You know, have people that are good at investigating things do that and learn where these conversations are taking place that haven't been censored. Again, whatever your opinion of The Escapist is, their forum has had a massive thread on this and they've got a second thread going on it. They will let you talk there. It's not 4chan, it's not Reddit, they're not going to let you fling shit and act like an asshole, but they'll let you talk about it. So if you find something and you want a lot of people to read about it, that would be one of the places I would suggest going. If you've got something big, put it on social media. Twitter's great. Facebook is great. I hate social media myself, but if you want it, a lot of people to look at a fucking piece of information you've got, that's where you got to do it. If you're good at arguing with these idiots and making them look stupid, more power to you. Go ahead and do it. You need to use your unique talents, your abilities, and the best way that you know how to use them. And then you need to share the information, the, the fruits of that labor, with the rest of us so we know what the fuck is going on. It's, you, it, again, it's just, it's, you need to start sharing information better. You need to find this, uh, the sites that are good, compile a fucking list where you can talk about this openly, where the actual site owners say, we will let you talk about this, we are not going to ban you. And share that list at all those sites so people can mingle and go between them. Again, it's you've got to innovate. You've got to think outside the box. You've got to start dividing up the labor and uh, approaching this for the long haul. Because, again, like I said, this has never worked before. What you're seeing right now has never worked before. They've, they've attacked you as best they can. But you've got this one fucking shot, and I really want to make that clear. This is your one shot to take care of this issue. If we fuck this up, it's never coming again. When you look at something, again, like Occupy Wall Street, when it first started, it caught the financial sector and the government with their pants down. They didn't know how to react to it. You know, social media was spreading it and people were showing up all over the place. They had no idea what the fuck was going on. They got lucky that it imploded. And I'll tell you this, that's never going to happen again. There's not going to be a second Occupy Wall Street. 
because all those people in the financial sector and the government that Occupy Wall Street was angry at now know exactly how they're going to fight. So they're going to shut them down on Twitter. They're going to shut them down on social media. They're going to shut that shit down before it even gets off the ground. We are in a similar situation. We caught them with their pants down. Zoe Quinn and the initial story that started this, the catalyst moment, sparked a lot of interest, and it caught them with their pants down. And we've got this one shot to make it work. If we fuck this up, gaming is not going to be in a great state. They are going to feel like they have the authority to be 100 times worse than they are right now. We need to nail their asses to the wall. And one of the ways of doing that, and again, it's a minor suggestion, is start bringing other people into the conversation. You know, there was that really great uh, interview, was it Greg Lis or Lisby? I'm not sure. Um, that was posted a while ago. He was a ethics professor and a law professor, where he was interviewed and he was asked, you know, in this situation, it wasn't specifically talking about game journalism, but it brought up what's been happening. You know, would you pay a source? Would you have sex with a source? How friendly would you be? Would you live with a source? Lisby said, I mean, he went down the list and he said, unethical, 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 unethical. No, absolutely fucking not. We need to start bringing in people who have that kind of position. People that are familiar with the law and are familiar with journalism, different news sites, and you need to ask them point blank. Don't specifically address it if you don't want to, but ask them, would you have sex with a source? Would you live with a source? Would you financially support a source? Get them to go on the record about that, because it will make these gaming news sites look like shit. These people want to p pretend they're journalists. Start to get the opinion of actual journalists. Start to bring them in on it. Start asking other people about it. Get a fucking quote. Get an interview and spread it around. It makes them look dumb. Those are people that are in the same business they are at the end of the day, journalism. And they're point blank saying, no, it's not acceptable to do what you do. And you shouldn't be doing it. That would be my suggestion. Now I'm going to take a... Holy shit, am I sick. I'm going to take a break here and see what people are saying in the chat, if anybody's even in there. All right. All right, so let's see what you guys have to say. Well, people are talking about rating. It's, it's always fun. Uh, Gaming Nerd QQ. It's great. It's good stuff. Good times. Okay, let's see if there's any questions on Twitter here. Let's see. If you've got a specific question, if you've got an idea, now's the time to throw it out. I mean, there are, what, about 4,000 people watching this right now? I don't know how many people are commenting. But this would be the time to share an idea if you have it. That's 4,000 people that I'll echo it back to, and they can tell you what they think. People want to talk about Cracked? I'm talking about the website? I, I said to somebody earlier who sent me the link to, I'm ta I guess you're talking about the, um, the blog post by Zoe on Cracked? Or are you talking about the first one they put up? Either way, it doesn't really matter. I promised myself I'd never go back to Cracked again until they were funny, and I don't plan on breaking a four-year streak that easily. What would I recommend to indie developers in this situation? That's a great fucking question. There are people out there right now that are asking you to come forward. It, listen, if, if you're an indie developer, if you're a, even a, if you're a triple-A developer, for fuck's sake, if you're a journalist that's sick of this shit, <clears throat> there are people out there, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about people out there that are more respectable than I am, that want to help you, that want to hear your side of the story, and will work with you. Uh, I, I know everybody's already talked about Archon. I mean, people have talked about The Escapist, and they've talked about really how they've gone to bat over this. That would be one of the people I'd recommend. Was it uh, Niche Gamers was also talking about this? Let me see if I can find this. There's a little infograph that was posted before. See if I can find it. It had some information on it. I thought it was good, so I retweeted it. Uh, let's see. We need uh, game devs, artists to come forward and honestly do. If that's what it takes. Uh, all right. Okay, so contact at the niche gamer or at Archon. Uh, that's at T H E N I C H E G A M E R or at A R C H O N. Again. 
that those would be people I would go to. If you if, if you have information, if you're getting pressure, if people are shit kicking you because you want to talk about this, if you want to share your opinion, if you've known that this kind of shit's going on and you're just fucking tired of it, go to those people. They'll listen to you. They'll keep your anonymity. You can trust them. And so yeah, that was a that was a good question. Over the fuck I asked that because I went by so quick I couldn't even I couldn't even uh, check on it. Yes, Thunderfoot got banned from Twitter, which was bullshit. He already put up a video about it. Isn't that... God, again, this is so fucking weird, but like I said, you've got all these different groups that are involved in this. You've got a lot of atheists that really have come out to talk about this shit. And, you know, I've said before, putting the fedora jokes aside, they know. They went through shit like this. They understand what's going on. I mean, they really honestly fucking get it. That's why they talk about it. That's why you got people like Thunderfoot and Justin Carr and all these other people coming out and talking about it. They fucking understand. So when you see somebody like... The, again, you've got to be willing to back each other up. I get it. We all have different fucking ideologies. If you put us in a room at the end of the day when this shit's said and done with, we'd probably yell at each other for hours because we have different fucking beliefs in politics and sex and everything. We'd probably disagree till the fucking cows come home. It doesn't matter, though. Because right now, that those disagreements don't mean shit. They're out of the picture. We're dealing with something bigger than all of that, and we're focusing on one issue. So when you see stuff like that, right? Uh, Thunderfoot, for example, gets his Twitter fucking taken out from him. Talk about it. Go fucking talk to Twitter about it. I mean, you may not like atheists. You may find uh, Thunderfoot disagreeable. You may not like his videos. Who gives a shit? Again, he's one of the people that's speaking out against it, just like you, just like me, just like all of us. And so they're going to try to pick off people one by one all over the place. Don't let them. But speaking of that, you know, I, I know you got to understand, too, there are a lot of people trolling right now and just fucking about um, on Twitter. And it's funny, you know, to them. They don't give a shit. So before you get engaged in some 18-page dialogue with somebody who throws misogynist at you, go look at their fucking profile first. And if you see, like, 40 fucking random comments, maybe not engage them. There's no fucking point in doing that. You're going to get shit flung at you. You don't have to respond to all of it. You're going to save yourself a lot of fucking uh, hassle in the end. Check my Twitter. All right. Actually, it's probably easier to do it this way. All right, let's see what happens. How influential at this point do you think it'd be for Gamergate to get a hold of the blacklist? Uh, I don't know. I, again, you guys are going to have to forgive me. Uh, like I said, I, I'm really legitimately sick of shit. But I, I just felt bad. Like I said, I, there's so many people that seem to be confused and lost. And, and again, you shouldn't feel down. We are kicking their ass. It just so happens they're you know, they've got more shit in the arsenal. They've got more money in connection, so it doesn't feel like it. But we are kicking their ass. There's nothing to feel down about. I mean, yes, it's it's been four weeks. It could be another four weeks. Who fucking knows? But look at where we are now. We've established that they've had sexual relationships. I mean, even if even if you want to take Totillo's word for it with the Grayson and Quinn thing, right, and say that, um, the, the, you know, the relationship happened after the article was written, they're still admitting to it. You've got uh, people admitting they lived together and had economic situations together with each other, like Patricia Hernandez and her roommates and landlord situation, writing about fucking people again. You've got all these people donating money on a monthly basis through Patreon. They've all admitted it. They've all talked about it. Now we've got shit like fucking private groups where they're talking about coming together to put forward a narrative. I mean, shit just keeps coming out. The longer you hold on, the more information that will come out. They're going to crack, and it will happen sooner than later. It's going to wear on them. They're not used to having people up in their shit this much for this long a period of time. That's why they get so fucking hostile on Twitter. That's why they're so smug in their articles. So, I mean, going back to what I was talking about earlier, throw everything you got at them. Fucking write emails. Talk to their advertisers. Blacklist their fucking sites. Bring in people from the outside. Get them to comment on it from a purely legal or ethical standpoint in the profession of journalism or law. Who gives a shit? Get it a quote. Get a fucking quote and throw it at these assholes and let's see them try to fucking, you know, hand wave that away. 
Let's see what else we got here. Please discuss a direct attack plan. We need to focus on a target. But you don't. That's what I'm saying. You you don't need somebody to come along and tell you all, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna attack this point here. You really don't. The amount of success we've had is half, you know, is due in part, honestly, to the fact that there's no fucking leadership. There's so many people doing so many different things that have provided a lot of information. If you start trying to direct people and say, everybody do this at once, you're pulling all those people that have found information in various other ways off of what they're doing and putting them on something that might not yield any results. So, I mean, I, you know, a direct attack plan I couldn't give you. I, and if I had one, I wouldn't because it's not my place. I'm just an asshole in the crowd like you. You know, there's nobody running any of this, least of all me. Uh, what is your opinion on the leaked email uh, collusion between journalists? And the stance on Zoe on, yeah, we do that and what? My stance on that is people should be fired. Absolutely. The people in that list, the people talking about that should be gone from those fucking sites. There's just no other way around it. Every single person, fucking gone. Let them go get a job at you know, fucking Dairy Queen. I don't care. They shouldn't be journalists. Uh, Arini says, if they have less than 100 followers on Twitter and a fake name, they're just a troll, block them. Again, that, that's kind of going back to what I was saying. If you're going to engage people and have long conversations, at least make it worth your while. You're going to have a lot of people fucking with you. We know there are a lot of people doing that intentionally. There's no point in wasting your time on it. Uh, how do we stop the DIGRA narrative being pushed forward? Nobody seems to listen to us. Uh, who do we speak to? You're talking about the, the DIGRA... Um, was it the Google group thing that Archon had uh, talked about? I thought that was an interesting video. Are you talking about the whole DARPA Digger thing? Um, <laughs> so I, I put out a fucking tweet uh, mocking DARPA for giving funding to a group like that because the guy that's the head of Project Immerse, it was at UC Berkeley or whatever, who happens to be the guy, I think, who designed Facade. If you've ever played that game, you'd know him. Um, he's given keynote speeches at Digra events. And he's done research for DIGRA. So the guy running Immerse, who's getting DARPA funding from the government, is connected to DIGRA, the same group that mocks peer review in their private conversations. That's why I tweeted DARPA and made fun of them. Because if it's my fucking tax dollars going there, I don't want a bunch of asshats that think peer review is a joke and, you know, want to mismanage tax money. Fuck that shit. All right. How far will the rabbit hole go? I have no fucking clue. It's ridiculous, right? How deep does this shit go? Because really, what was the story when it started? It was Nathan Grayson and Zoe Quinn and Robert Arnott. And, you know, some favors for press. And then we started finding out about money relationships. Then we found out about other reporters doing shit. Then we had sites scrambling. Then we had an a all-out narrative attack from all these different fucking journalism sites. Then, you know, people were going outside to places like The Guardian. And writing shit, and then you know, supposedly getting fired. Maybe, maybe not. No, you know, nobody's giving an official position on that. Now you've got Google groups where they're all colluding with one another. Are you fucking kidding me? This is this just doesn't stop. That's why I'm saying it's great. The longer it goes on, the deeper it goes, and the more connections get found. And believe me, eventually it's going to reach the point where there's going to be so much shit that is dragged out of the open that nobody's going to support them. I, I'm sure marketing people. I'm sure advertisers probably know what's going on. And they're, they probably got some kind of a calculation that they put forward based on how much shit gets flung and how many revelations come to light and how much money they can afford to spend and you know be connected with these sorts of people. You just got to hold on. Because eventually it's going to become too much shit and they're just not going to want to be associated with these sites. Who would want to be? Why would Amazon want to be associated with people like this? Or Newegg? Or fucking NVIDIA? Or, or any of these companies, why would they want to advertise on any of these sites looking at how they behave, how they treat their customers, how they deride them and mock them? Again, we're the pieces of shit, remember? That's the story they put out. They're the great, respectable people. So when they throw tantrums on Twitter and write their shitty articles, when they blog, because they're really not journalists at this point, I think we've all come to the conclusion, you know, you might as well wipe your ass with the master's degree, Stephen. You're fucking not a journalist. Nobody thinks you are at this point. Um... And they, they behave like fucking tantruming children. So what company 
wants to be associated with that. It's going to start affecting the brands that are associated with them. When that happens, it's going to be bad news for all of them. Will you continue making conspiracy videos? I'm going to I'm going to do one final one. Um, I, I personally I, I thought I was done with three. Um, I have one other idea, and I'm going to put it out in detail, and then you guys can decide what you want to do with it. It's up to you. It's not something I can personally do. I don't have the time um, or really the ability to do it. So it's an idea I'm going to put forward. I think it would hurt these sites, and I think it would be good for everybody else. It's uh, a different approach, really, to dealing with this. Um, but I'm just I'm going to put the video out, talk about what's happened, put the idea out there, and then you guys can decide who you want me to hand it off to, and it's theirs, and they can do whatever they want with it. You'll understand more when I put it up, but it'll probably be in a week. But what do you think about the recent attacks on objectivity and its connection to cultural Marxism and SJW narratives? <clears throat> well, <laughs> I, I've seen people like, what is it, Jason Schreier at Kotaku talking about how objectivity isn't important. What fucking college did you graduate from? Are, are you kidding me? Or people saying that you can never be 100% objective. Of course you fucking can't. Human beings are fallible, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't fucking try. Holy fucking shit. I mean, what kind of attitude is that? We're fucking gamers. I mean, I, yeah, I can't 100% every fucking game out there, but I can try to. You know, like, what? I don't understand that mentality. If you're playing a sport, it'd be like saying, well, shit, you know, I can't putt from this distance. I can't kick that field goal. I'm not going to be able to hit a home run, so I'm, I'm not going to fucking try at all. Well, then go sit on the fucking bench and get out of the game, you fucking hack. Shrey, what are you talking about? You don't, objectivity isn't important. You're fucking pretending to be a journalist. You should at least pretend to believe in the shit they believe in, and objectivity is fucking one of them. Ridiculous. As for SJW and cultural Marxism, listen, I, I know we all have our, our terms that we like to use for what we're fighting against and the sorts of people that we're talking about. It's a rose by any other name. You know what I mean? We know what we're dealing with. We know the personality type we're dealing with and what these people are trying to do. Everybody understands that at this point. You know, it's, again, social justice warriors aren't activists. Listen, I get it, man. You, you've got shit you care about. I know there are a lot of people that have got a lot of fucking shit they believe in, right? And we all wouldn't get along. But at the end of the day, none of us are saying if you believe in something and you want to fucking go fight the good fight and make the world a better place that you're an asshole for wanting that. Because that's a genuine feeling. But social justice warriors, they're not fucking interested in that. They're egocentric people that are looking to fuck with groups and make money and profiteer off it. That's what they are. They're, they're scum, and they will destroy anything they touch. It's just, it's unbelievable. And when you hear how these people talk to each other and the shit they do, have you seen the insults these people use? Piss baby and fucking shitlord? It's like something you'd hear in kindergarten. What the fuck are they talking about? It makes them sound like fucking toddlers. It's the most ridiculous shit. You can tell who they are by listening to the shit they say. I mean, it's so fucking obvious. That goes, again, back to fucking social media. Really, if you start hearing those words, fucking tune it out. There's no point in even engaging them. Why do we need game uh, journalism? This is a good question. It's a fair question. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Why wouldn't you need it? I, I mean, that's, that seems pretty simple. When you've got... Uh, how many gamers are there? You know, or, let's talk about politics for a second, just for the fuck of it. So, one of my contentions is that there are, you know, social justice warriors putting out bullshit narratives and they're using games media to do it. And you say, well, who cares? You know, it's just game journalism. What does it matter? Or why does game journalism matter? How big of a demographic do you think gamers are? You'd probably be surprised. There are fucking a lot of them. And a lot of gamers are of voting age. So if you have people controlling gaming websites that are putting out political messages, and there's social justice bullshit, they're starting to sway a voting demographic. So, you know, again, that's why it needs to be addressed. But as to why game journalism itself needs to exist, why, you know, I want to hear what the developers have to say. I want people to go and interview them. I want to know about new games that are coming out and new hardware that's coming out. I want somebody to be able to take a press statement and expand on it and say, you know, uh, Nintendo or Sony or whatever, release a statement today about whatever the product is and compare it to other shit they've done in the past. 
it's just it's basic reporting. Why you know it, it serves a purpose, and it should be fair and reasonable and objective as best as it can be. It should be objective. And these fucking editorial and op-ed pieces, if they're going to exist, had better really have some ethical guidelines behind them because the shit that's going on is just fucking unacceptable. And besides, there's there's a demand for it. There's a market for it. People want it, so they should get it. How do you feel about V censoring the Gamergate threads, uh, saying it isn't video? I'd say there's probably more going on to that. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know. You know. There are pictures floating around of Moot talking to the VP of Gawker. Um, he was at the XOXO speech with Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, but at the same time, I have to balance that out with statements I've heard him give before at different conventions. You remember when, oh, what the hell was her name? Uh, Sherrod DeGreppo, whatever the fuck it is. The old owner of Encyclopedia Dramatica shut it down essentially and moved shop to a new site. Uh, he was at you know some place that she was talking about this shit, and he asked her if she felt that was fair to do to her user base. I mean, when you when you listen to him talk, uh, you really get a vibe that he, you know, he's not a completely apathetic asshole. So it's hard for me to believe that he would be somebody saying, "No, no, no, you can't you can't talk about any of this." But again, at the same time, there it just doesn't look good. Uh but it is video. It, we're talking about corruption in the goddamn gaming industry, in the gaming press, in the indie dev uh, community. This is going to affect what games get press, what games don't get press, what games do well, what games don't do well. It's very much video. It's, it's about as video as video can get. Uh, let's see. You don't have as many followers as insert or enter celebrity here. You're literally shit and aren't worth it. Bye. I don't care. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, let's see. A bastion of constitutional rights. 8chan is the American dream, the website. I don't know. I haven't been there before. I, again, see, that's the thing I'm talking about. I don't know. Is that a good site to go to? Will they let us talk about this? If they're going to, then, again, I know people out there, I know some of you were fucking good at compiling this shit. Get a list together and fucking spread it to all these other websites so at least we know where the fuck we can talk about it and regroup. God, my throat is killing me. I'm sorry, I'm just reading through some questions. So people are getting banned for talking to ban evaders? I don't know, it's crazy. You can't censor... What's the point? It's just going to piss people off. Here would be my suggestion. I mean, if people were saying shit like, put a sticky up, right? Put a sticky up. Let, let them all go fucking talk in that, and then you don't got to deal with it. If, if, if it's really pissing you off, if there are too many threads all over the place, put a fucking sticky up and let them have it, and that'll be the end of it. I mean, fuck. Moot had a cue board where people could go and bitch about whatever the fuck they wanted to bitch at. Why not have some board... For a fucking situation like this, if you have some big subject that multiple boards are talking about at a constant and consistent rate, have one board where it's fucking closed, all the other, you know, that it, it essentially is closed at every other time. But when a situation like this happens, it opens up and people can go there. Then you don't have it shitting up all the other boards, if that's your real concern. You've got one place they all funnel in, and it's not a fucking issue anymore. That would be my suggestion. And yes, I do know they do it for free, for free and Hot Pockets. A very delicious snack. Germany got banned? That sucks for Germany. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter earlier. What do I think of Forbes' most recent article? I couldn't tell you. Uh, I actually haven't, I haven't read it. I haven't had a chance to read it, so I don't even know at this point, what the most recent article is like. Uh, yes, dude, tell Mood how to do his job. Well, somebody fucking should at this point. Just a suggestion. Like I said, I don't know what his reasons are, but let's, let's stop playing, you know, fuck about. Yeah, he went to a convention. It doesn't mean the internet doesn't work where he is. 
He fucking knows what's going on. He's got a phone or a tablet or some other shit. He knows what's going on. I mean, if it's his opinion he doesn't want it on his site, at least just fucking say so and be done with it. There's no point in not addressing it. There's no. It doesn't make any sense unless you're just ducking it. All right, I'm just trying to find shit. Like I said, if you got an idea, put it out. Might as well fucking talk about it. Is it bad that you bought Hot Pockets for dinner? No, they are delicious. They're scolding fucking hot or ice cold. I mean, you can never get them to be just right, but pretty good. Okay. Do you think we should try to get them to disclose all people involved in the Google group? Uh, from what I understand, Breitbart has a lot more information than they've released. So, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Go, this would be another suggestion. I know some of you are really good at digging through shit, and you're good at finding accounts, and you've got the autism to sit there and read through 40,000 posts. These people are really lazy, and they're really fucking arrogant. So start creating, you know, go through their fucking social media accounts. It's public information. They're the ones broadcasting this shit everywhere. Read through it. See what they're saying, and start making connections. You know, this person's talking to this person at this time in regards to this. Fucking start compiling this shit and screen cap the fuck out of it because they're going to delete it the moment you bring it up. Uh, Leigh Alexander's a great example of that. The moment she gets called out on her bullshit, she starts deleting stuff to try to act like it never existed. Patricia Hernandez did a similar thing. Do I think new companies can come through and dethrone the ones that exist right now? Of course. I, again, they're internet companies. Really. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what Gawker or Vox is. And all the other ones that are involved in it. I mean, yeah, they've got office spaces and shit, but their product is on the internet. So, yeah, new people can come up and kick their ass all over the place. Look at Zuckerberg with Facebook. I'm sure, you know, people at MySpace were having a good fucking laugh about that before it came and stomped their shit in. The internet moves quickly. If you don't address your customers' needs, you are going to be in a bad position. And everybody associated with you is going to suffer for it. So they can be arrogant and smug all they want. Somebody's going to dethrone them eventually. I don't know what their approach is going to be. I don't know, you know, what unique or innovative thing they're going to do. But it'll happen. Holy shit, man. <clears throat> Sorry. Nothing better for a sore throat than a fucking cigarette. Some have suggested we email one advertiser at a time as a group rather than email all of them at, uh, independently. What do you think of that? That would be a great idea. Again, if you're inclined to email or write to people, Doing it in bulk will have a bigger effect. I mean, yes, eventually they'll all see them. But, you know, if you're the guy walking into the fucking office one day and you've got uh, 20 emails sitting there, you're not going to think much of it. And if that happens every day for a week, you're not going to think much of it. But if you walk into your office one day and you've got 5,000 fucking emails in your inbox all talking about the same thing, you're going to start to worry a little bit. Again, that's where that coordination comes in. You need to find sites where you can talk. You need to make a list of those sites. And then you need to find out what you're good at and start talking to people that are good at that thing as well and come up with a plan. You don't need to dictate to each other that everybody must do this. But there are a lot of people that want to do a lot of different things. So you might as well band together and do them together and make it more effective. Yes, I think if you hit an advertiser with a shit ton of emails at once or letters at once, it will have a fucking big impact.
Uh, once again, you need to tell people about the new video game journalism sources that are springing up from AMP. Make me a list. Somebody post the list on Twitter. Give me the name of the sites that are popping up that people think are worthwhile. If you want me to tell them, I got, what is, what's in the stream, 4,700 people? It's 4,700 people that'll have a new fucking website to look at. So somebody put a list out, and I'll talk about it. But I, I need names. You need to give me something. Drink some orange juice? Nah. That would be too, that would be too simple. Oh, somebody said I cut out. I don't know if I'm cutting out or not. I've got an indicator on the bottom of the Google screen thing that says it's coming through. Oh, let's see. Why is Movie Bob garbage? This is a burning question. I've already talked about why I dislike him. I... I Aside from all this shit, put that all aside. I don't like him because of the fucking thing he tried to do with the kid from England. He tried to get a fucking teenager arrested because he didn't like his fucking YouTube videos. Fuck Movie Bob. I don't even give a shit what his opinion on Gamergate is. doesn't fucking matter one bit to me. He got so ass hurt on somebody's video on the internet, he wanted them arrested. Fuck him. Whiny little bitch. Uh, somebody said one of the sites is Tech Raptor. Yeah, I've, I've already mentioned that. Tech Raptor, Game Snosh. Give me more. I, I know there are a lot of them out there. A, again, this is when you've got information, right? You need to compile it and put it into a digestible chunk so you can share it with other people. So if you've got a list of all these new sites that have popped up, put it in an infograph or put it in an image so you can post it on those sites we were talking about earlier. Will people, you know, will let you talk about this shit? Uh, these guys need uh, uh, these guys need a shout out. Gamesnosh.com. G A M E S N O S H dot com. All right, somebody uh, put this up. Good sites: 8chan, uh, The Escapist Magazine, Tech Raptor. New sites: GoodGamers dot us. I'll post more when I find them. Okay, post more when you find them. Uh, let's see. Somebody said GoodGamers dot us and evilavatar.com. All right, somebody, somebody gave me... Oh, fuck this. <laughs> there we go. Somebody gave me a picture that's made for ants, apparently. All right, so... Gamnesia, Dual Shockers, Gather Your Party, Shack News, Hardcore, hardcore Gamer? Tech Raptor, Ink Gamers, TSA, Indie, and there's Indie Juice? Wait, wait. Oh, yeah, no, Indie Juice. That would be right. Yeah, Evil Avatar, Blue News, Super Best Friends. Oh, these are YouTube ones, too. Yeah, that's hard to see. I need the URL. Or, yeah, the full URL, so I don't send them to the wrong fucking site. Funnyjunk.com. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not a gaming site, but they will let you talk about this there. They're not going to fucking shit kick you or ban you. They'll let you talk about it there. It's another site to be aware of. If every other place suddenly shuts down, for whatever reason, Funny Junk will let you talk about this. Uh, 4chan refugee options, 8chan.co slash burgers, 4chan.net, uh, v, livechan.net, chat, and gamergate.community. That's from... Three, three lewd, five me. It's a great name. It's good. Oh, what is this? Could you tweet this image out? It's sending uh, uh, all us, sending emails to a few people at a time. Okay. So, uh, again, like I said, if you're into the emailing thing, if that's a good thing you can do, if you know how to create a, a great form letter to fucking write to a company to convince them as to why what they're doing is wrong, I would retweet this, I guess. And this is one person they recommend going for. Gamergate boycott goal of the day. So if that's something you're interested in and think will work, there you go. That's what place to start. <laughs> 
I think this might be a lie. Somebody's telling me trusted sites, Kotaku, Polygon, Ars Technica, New Yorker, and Zoe Quinn's blog. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, let's see. You're very popular. Will you use this to your advantage or just continue doing what you're doing? If I was going to use this to my advantage, I would have turned on fucking ad revenue on the videos when they were doing uh, a bunch of shit. In fact, what was it? Somebody was yelling at me, it was like a week ago, and linked me to, um, let's see if I can find this fucking site. Something called Social Blade, apparently, that gives you some kind of crazy fucking metric for the amount of money that you could potentially make off your YouTube channel if you monetized it. All right now it's saying, uh, monthly estimated monthly earnings one point two thousand to nine or nine thousand dollars yearly earnings fourteen thousand to one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. So if I were going to take advantage of this, I would have I would have taken advantage of it when the videos were blowing up to eight hundred thousand fucking views. I have no interest in making money off of any of this shit or becoming e popular. I don't like it. it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, didn't you give me a list of sites that are still in our favor? It's for Gamergate. Oh, he's talking to somebody else. All right. If it helps any, our Kutaku in action is about one of the only places on Reddit where we can talk without being banned or censored. I would, that may be very well true, I don't know. But in that leaked SoundCloud interview, uh, with a you know with a, a person that knew the ins and outs of Reddit, he talked about being really suspicious of shit like that. Not because the people that open or operate it are you know want to do bad things to you, but because they want to herd you into one place where you're not talking about it and it's picking up attention anywhere else. So you know, like I said, I can't advise you one way or another on that. I know Reddit's got some really weird shit going on, and if I were a redditor, I'd be fucking pissed about it. Uh, would you be okay with someone making a song about you and the rest of Gamergate? I, a song about what? I made three videos. There's not really much to sing about. It's, it's more like a little bit of a hum, and then it's over with. Oh, we got an image. Let's see. Ah, thank you. That's much more readable. All right, so if, if you're looking for an alternative game journalism site, this is a list that it's floating out there right now. Gamnesia.com. Uh, like I said, Dual Shockers, Gather Your Party, Gamer Headlines, uh, Gamatsu. God, I can't. I'm too sick to try to pronounce half this shit. Uh, Gamesnosh.com, Attack on Gaming. And fuck it, I'm going to retweet it because then I don't have to hyperbole this, if you get what I mean. Oh, fuck me, I just lost it. It was just there a second ago. Oh, well, yeah, I know you're not looking for a plug, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Uh, Revuelabs.com, R-E-V-U-E-L-A-B-S.com. I know they're, yeah, they're fucking annoyed with the shit that's going on, too. Yeah, I saw your video, Steve. It's fucked up what happened to you and having to deal with that shit. And I know a lot of people support, <laughs> want to support you. Like I said, there are a lot of devs and people that have come forward, journalists, too, that have dealt with this shit for a long fucking time, we're not going to leave you out in the cold. Different people will support you in different ways, but we will fucking do what we can to help. Can you please send all 4chan refugees to 8chan.co slash v? I don't know. It's up to them. Go check it out. See if it's good. If it works. It got bigger. Oh, somebody added to the list. Didn't GamerHeadlines.com run that Phil Fish FBI story without checking the sources? I don't know if they did or not. 
We couldn't tell you. Besides, what happened to Phil Fish? Where the fuck is he? He sort of disappeared. Maybe the FBI have him in protective custody because people are throwing controllers at his fucking head for being such an enormous cunt on the internet. Is a revelation that senior gaming journals are collaborating the smoking gun Gamergate was looking for? No, but it's a major uh, damning piece of information that it's definitely going to hurt them. No, if I... The smoking gun would be if you can connect all this shit to a financial source. It's not just that they're colluding. I really do think money's at play somewhere in the background here. I don't know exactly how, but if it's a PR company, if it's a marketing company, somebody's fucking manipulating this. And it's for gain. I don't know what the gain is, but you just got to fucking keep, uh, you got to keep digging. Just reading through some things here. Let's see if anybody's got uh, anything good. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. I got it. Got lost. Somebody said I would not recommend Gamnesia. Again, put together a list and then use the websites that are out there where you can talk about this sort of shit to go through and vet them. So at least people can air whatever grievances they have. Want to make sure you see this. Oh, is this the, uh, yeah, I've seen the screen cap going around of the whole, the girl who attempted suicide was, uh, what is it, uh, Cassie Washington, niece of Nick Denton, and he's somehow putting pressure on Moot to shut this all down. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's probably fucking with you, man. I have no idea. Go ask Moot. I don't know where the fuck he is. See if he'll answer. Uh, we shouldn't throw all the PR we have done under the bus. Policing be, uh, may be a must when we're dealing with so many different people. There are no musts. It's a collective. You don't dictate to a collective what they do. You can ask them. You can explain your position and say, hey, could you try not to, I don't know, hurl death threats at everybody. It's making our shit a little more difficult to do. But if you, if you try to control the actions of everybody at the same time too tightly, it, it will implode and it will suck. It'll be no different than the progressive stack at Occupy Wall Street where they tried to control the input of everybody at the same time. I'm not disagreeing that, you know, trying to create a PR narrative is a bad thing, but the progress you have seen has been because so many different people tried so many different approaches and it just hit them from every direction and they don't know how to respond. Don't play their game. They want you to play the game the way they play it. They expect you to behave in a certain way. The reason they're having such a hard time crushing this is because nobody's playing by their fucking rules. Don't, don't let them trick you into thinking there is a right way to do this. There isn't a right way to do this because it hasn't been really done before. Do you think there are more groups out there like DIGRA? I don't know. That's a fantastic question. Again, people that are into research and digging through shit, look into it. There's no such thing as a bad lead. And who cares what they fucking think as to how that makes us look? Again, they've painted us all as crazy, conspiracy, racist, sexist pieces of shit. Look what they did to, uh, to Summers with her, her newest video. Did you, have you seen the shit? Polygon has printed about that video. You know, the factual feminist. And they just, it was a fucking smear piece. And that's somebody that's uh, fucking respectable, as opposed to somebody like me. And they tried to just shit on her as much as they could. They're going to shit on all of us. Um... So don't let it bother you. It's just their attempt. They're stomping their little feet. 
and throwing a fucking tantrum like a toddler. Who gives a shit? Look into what you want to look into. You know, find what you can find. Again, I, I'm sure there are a lot of loose ends out there that these lazy, arrogant, dumb fucking people haven't thought to, you know, clean up. They're just that fucking stupid. Oh, what is this? Is it true you were doxxed last week? No, it is not true. I was not doxxed last week. Yes. Uh, what was it? Somebody asked me this on Ask FM. I thought I was fucking being pretty obvious uh, with my answer to that. Where was it? Give me a second here. Uh, uh, this was the question. Is this true? Hello, everyone. My name is Jim, but you can call me James Albert Tristan. I was born in a town called Missoula, Montana, but I don't like to talk about that, so you probably shouldn't ask. I currently reside in Minnesota at two different residences. So that was the question. Uh, no, that's not me. I, I've seen what they're talking about, um, and no, those really aren't my docs. That was me fucking about. I'm the one who put that up there. They're going to an old uh, fucking channel that I used to have. I put that up there because I was fucking around with people that were in a group that I was in at the time and having a laugh. That's, that's, they found something I put out there. Those fake docs are the ones that I put there in the first place. That's why I found it so fucking amusing. Oh, uh, let's see. Somebody's saying take, what is this on a picture? Oh, they're saying take Boogie out. You're talking about Boogie 2298 or whatever it was. Listen, I, I don't know what's going on with him. I can't tell you one way or the other. Uh, I don't know if he's just fucking about playing the middle to get attention or what's going on. But I do know this. He's got 2 million subs. So if he's saying that he's getting pressure, even if it's a minimal amount or a moderate amount, that's fucked up. I mean, he's just a YouTuber, right? He's just a guy with millions of people watching him. So if he can feel pressure from somebody saying, hey, you'd better fuck off because if you don't do this, we're going to make it uncomfortable for you, that should probably clue you into that he's got shit he's dealing with. Um, I, I, can't, I can't fault him for feeling intimidated by that. But I look at somebody like Tom, or um, not Tom, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, fuck. So many names. Let's see if I can find this here. Yeah, okay. I look at somebody like Steve Sawyer, right? He doesn't have two million subs. He put a fucking video out talking about this shit. Potentially jeopardizing a fucking future and the thing that he wants to do. He doesn't have a safety net of two million subs. You know how much do you know how big of a pair of balls you have to do or to have to do something like that? That's fucking respectable. That's admirable that he would do that. That he'd be willing to talk about it, even at the fucking risk of what he's risking. Are you kidding me? So as far as Boogie goes, I can't tell you one way or the other what's going on with that. I can't fault him for feeling intimidated. But there are a lot of smaller people than him that are dealing with more pressure, and they're doing it much better. Uh, did you know that someone tried to dox you using fake information? Uh, yeah, I already, already just talked about that. They were, they were using information I put up. Uh, a long time ago when I was goofing around with some people I know. Uh, could you answer what actions can Polygon, Kotaku, and company do in order to save face? Yeah, I, I could tell you what those companies could do. Fire the editor-in-chief of each of the companies. Fire the employees that were responsible for ethical breaches. Patricia Hernandez would be one of the people that should go. Nathan Grayson should be somebody that should go. Stephen Totello should be gone. Um... Jason Schreier, maybe, for his ridiculous stance on objectivity. Kirk Hamilton, I don't know. I, I don't know really what he's done in regards to all of this. I know that he was doing Patreon support, but I haven't really heard that he's done anything outside of that, so maybe just you know, slap him on the fucking hand and tell him don't be an idiot in the future. Polygon should definitely fire anybody that was fucking involved in those conversations. 
you've got people like Kuchera, who should be gone. Uh, their editor-in-chief, Chris Grant, should be gone. Uh, again, you're looking at a situation where either the people that are in charge of keeping track of their reporters are so inept at their fucking job that the reporters are doing shit that they shouldn't be doing, or those editor-in-chiefs are allowing it to happen. Either way, they should be gone. That would be the only way they're going to save face, as you're going to have to pretty much fire fucking everybody and start fresh. Good luck. Neo Gaff is stabbing themselves with knives, trying to swat mosquitoes. It's funny, but pitiful. Oh, fuck Neo Gaff. It's a giant echo chamber hug box. I feel bad for anybody that tries to bring up a counter argument there. It's not going to work. I, I know, from what I understand, it takes like a fucking year to get an account there. So I sympathize with you if you waited a fucking year to get an account and then you get banned after telling them they're idiots for not wanting to talk about ethics and journalism. But that's reality. The guy that runs NeoGAF is a jackass. The site is shit. Um, if they support this kind of stuff, fuck them. Why would anybody in the industry want to be attached to that website? I sure as shit wouldn't want to be there. Oh, because they get the honor of having Jason Schreier post there? The same guy that doesn't give a fuck about ethics or objectivity? It's a real fucking accomplishment, NeoGAF. GG. Uh, who poisoned me? I don't know. I mean, I, I went on a trip to West Africa to, you know, enjoy the weather. When I got back, I couldn't stop bleeding from my eyeballs. So I, I don't know who poisoned me, but I'm sure somebody's responsible. Uh... Uh, just a thought, but maybe focus on retweeting nice articles from those websites, mostly to promote their existence. Are you talking about the websites that people are saying are good or are a good alternative? Yeah, I, I would say that would be something you'd want to do. Listen, again, you have to get word of mouth out there. If you want Kotaku to get kicked in the balls for being a dick like they're being, then you need to be willing to at least do some word of mouth. That doesn't mean you have to shill for shit. But if you go to one of these websites like Games Nosh or whatever, and you read an article and you actually like it, I mean, you legitimately like it, then put it out there for other people to read. They're not going to just grow overnight. You have to create enough of an interest that advertisers will say, okay, we've got people reading the articles and they're talking about it on social media, so we want to do business with them. And that's how it builds. Again, you need to siphon off the business from sites like Kotaku and Polygon and others and make it seem unprofitable to do business with them in comparison to newer sites or better sites or more ethical sites. Let's see what the YouTube stream is saying. Good luck, Ebola Chan. Good luck, yeah. There were threads about that. Did that get banned too? Did they stop letting Ebola Chan uh, threads go on? Those were funny as hell. God, why do they always shit can the great threads? I don't understand it. Do I have wigs? Uh, do I have, do I own wigs in real life? No, I don't. Are there any? Uh, that's another good question. Somebody's saying, is there any information about the metrics uh, involving these sites? Start to compile them. There there are websites that exist that will tell you traffic in a very detailed way. Again, people have a talent for that. Start writing it down. Uh, if somebody's going to do videos about updates, give it to them. Fuck. Make, make a, little, a little news brief that talks about the events of the day and talks about each of those sites and their traffic numbers. And just report on it. More information you can condense into one source to, to be able to share with other people, the better that information will uh, be. The more people it will reach. It'll be easier for everybody. Somebody saying, call Fox News. Call anybody you want. You know, I, I mean, shit, you've got sites like Breitbart, and at the same time, you've got people connected to the Young Turks talking about it. Like I said, it's, it's a weird fucking mishmash of people. So give them a call. Talk to anybody you can. There's no, there's no problem with trying to get the word out there. Uh, what is it? Somebody saying Alexa.com. I also saw, what is it, Quantcast or Quantacast? had uh, site metrics that talked about traffic 
and could give you a, you know information uh, daily, monthly, or weekly. What's going on with Joe Rogan? I don't know. Uh, I know he's kind of been looking into stuff. Uh, I don't know really if he's going to talk about it or you know what his opinion either way is. I'd like to hear from him. You know, I mean, I think he's I think he's an interesting guy. Uh, if he covered it, a lot more people would be paying attention. And I don't think he's the sort of person that would look at this and you know be like, oh, whatever, who cares? He, so he strikes me as the sort of person that'd be like, well, fuck him. You know, these if they're going to act like corrupt assholes, then fuck them all. If we fail, the gaming industry is going to die a slow death, isn't it? It will not be uh, enjoyable. I'll tell you that much. How do you feel about Jim Sterling? What is that? How do you feel about Jim Sterling on the Escapist? I've seen his tweets and his thoughts on stuff. Listen, I don't agree with what Jim Sterling has said. Uh, there are other people I don't agree with. Um, I don't think that means they should necessarily be fired. Look, you're you're dealing with a situation where you've got all these fucking journalists that are corrupt as shit, and they're really doing underhanded shit, and they're colluding with one another. That is shit they should get fired for. You know, Jim Sterling has an opinion, you don't agree with it. Great, call him an asshole, if he's being a fucking asshole. But, you know, it's I've seen people say, well, fire him for having a difference of opinion. I, again, I, I think he's missing the fucking point, and he may be being a prick about it now, I don't know, but it's not, it's different. He's, he's offering his opinion, but I haven't seen anybody point me to anything that's saying, oh, look, Jim Sterling's in this Google group, or Jim Sterling is getting money, or Jim Sterling is giving money to all these people that we've seen and all the shit going on. Uh, somebody said IGN is a joke. Hey, everybody likes Mountain Dew and Doritos. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, somebody's saying the volume is going to shit? I don't know, man. My technical setup is crap. It could very well be going to fucking crap. I don't know. And my voice is dying on me, so I'm probably going to end this soon. So just to recap as best I can, you all have, like I said, you all have fucking different abilities. You know what you're good at. Put it to use. There are websites that exist out there that you can start to go to to formulate your own plan. Get together with like-minded people and focus on whatever project it is that interests you. You know, fucking do 100 things if that's what you want to do. But at least try to make the information you find digestible and share it. And share other people's information. If you see somebody find something that's interesting and they're talking about it on some social media site, fucking blast the shit out of that. Retweet it. Draw people's attention to it. And they'll do the same for you. The more information you can spread, the more connections you can focus on, the better. Like I said, you need to hurt their business, and that's going to happen a multitude of ways. There are new sites that are popping up that are going to siphon off their audience and their advertisers. As more information comes to light, it's going to embarrass the people associated with these sites, and it's going to make people not want their brands to get tarnished by being in connection in any way to any of these people. And you're already starting to see the cracks in the facade. They don't want to do it. It's a united front. They're very, very strong about that. But... How how can you defend somebody like Lay Alexander or whatever her fucking name is? The one that's, I mean, the fucking I'm a megaphone, I'll end you shit. Get fucked, lady. <laughs> you're a megaphone. No, you're a mega bitch is what you are. And I wouldn't want to work in an industry with you because you seem like just a fucking miserable person to be around. And eventually, they're going to, like I said, they're going to turn on each other. Somebody's going to crack. More information will come to light. It is a prolonged battle. You've got this one opportunity. I really want to stress that. You have this one opportunity to make this work. If we fuck this up, it is never coming back. Ever. If we fuck this up, we're done for. So you just gotta you gotta have faith. What can I say? Good luck. I'll talk to you in a week. Alright, should be on air. Just wait for the stream to actually catch up with the fucking YouTube channel, we should be good to go. Or is it still dead on me? Let's find out. Oh, still says starting soon, please stand by. Fucking delays. Just give it a moment. 
hopefully it actually works. Unless I gave everybody the wrong link, which would be funny as shit. Well, just in case you read this, for questions, yeah, I'm reading the chat for questions. That and Twitter, too. Either room's fine. Doesn't matter to me. Uh-oh. It's Is it going on or not? Oh, shit. Okay, it's live. Yeah, the way this Google Hangout shit works is uh, confusing as all hell because it doesn't really show me the link when I go to the Google Hangout or whatever it is. And it doesn't actually let me know. It says it's on air, but it doesn't say the exact moment that it's broadcasting live. So there's always a fucking delay. All right, let's see what the sound is like. All right, sound quality is not horrible shit. So yeah, I figured I'd do a uh, a stream. I had to push the video back till Saturday. There's a lot of shit going on. And I had people dropping me information too. So it gives me a little bit of time to look into it. But uh, this is not uh, some super serious stream. So ask whatever you want. Whatever you guys want to talk about. It doesn't really matter to me. I was going to do this in three hours, but a bunch of Brit bongs were saying that uh, it, it's too late for them. So I figured, fuck it. Am I a big guy for you, uh, Oranor? For you, I am. Are you the guy in your pick? No, I'm not the guy with the wig. That's um, just a random Google image search. From what somebody tells me, it's a costume company. So I'm guessing that means that, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, there's a whole outfit out there. Everything you see, it's an, it's an entire fucking outfit. Hey, Jim, what do you think of the death of 4chan? That uh, feels, feels uh, shitty, man. I like 4chan. <clears throat> I just don't like the way... Uh, I don't like the way it's going. I don't like Moot's uh, reaction to the Gamergate thing or his crackdown in regards to a few other things. It feels like he kind of did a 180 on what his stated stance was. Because when Sherrod ended up, what, shutting down uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica to go do whatever fucking website it was, cheeseburgers or whatever the hell it is. Um, she had she'd done some presentation and Moot was in the audience. And he asked her if she felt it was right to basically, I can't remember how he phrased it, but it wasn't right to fuck over your user base. So it, again, it's just weird. I've, I've seen Moot give speeches and I've heard him talk before and his recent actions don't really line up with that very well. What's my favorite game? Everybody fucking asks that. And every time I give a different answer, I'm not consistent. There are too many good games. I, I couldn't tell you what uh, what the perfect game is, what my favorite game is. What's my opinion of 8chan? I don't know. I like what I see so far. I mean, I've gone to the V board, the poll board, and the GG board. It seems pretty good. Random board seems to get a lot of traffic, too. Did I read the EA statement? Are you talking about the one where they said that, uh, was that the fucking statement EA released saying we shouldn't rape people? Is that the EA statement you're talking about? Because that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I need a video game company to tell me not to go rape people. That's brilliant, EA. That's another bold step forward in video games. Congratulations. Uh, your thoughts on the whole X-Seed boycotting shit from the other day? I'm going to guess you were the pissed off person um, asking me on Twitter why I retweeted that. Uh, like I said in the past stream, I, you know, the whole Gamergate thing, just a bunch of different people doing different things. Uh, you know, if you want to take part in it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. Uh, I didn't actually see the whole boycott exceed thing. I actually missed that. I just thought it was male advertisers, you know, tell them what's going on, try to get them to, you know, pull ads from these different sites. Uh, but, you know, aside from that, I don't really have an opinion. I like Exceed, so I have nothing against them. Washington Post reported that Gamergate... Oh, okay. somebody's actually using Steam to ask a question. That's a new one. It's, let's see. All right, Morality124. Stream question. Uh, why do you... What? Why do you think you haven't ended up on Atheism Plus Blockbot yet? Uh, well, I'm not an atheist, so it's probably... Uh, don't they just block atheists on the the block list for Atheism Plus? And besides, I've never had any encounters with any of those people. <clears throat> I'd imagine that, what, Thunderfoot and Amazing Atheist and Justicar and 
all those guys would probably be on the block list, but they don't know who the fuck I am. So that's probably why I'm not on it. Uh, hello, aristocrat. Hello, Alex Vance. <laughs> nice, nice name. Hi, Lopeng. Uh, King of Pole confirmed child hating cyber raped shitlord. <laughs> when did he get that new title? Jim confirmed for Weeb. Yeah, I'm, I, hey, you know, I, I like uh, I like some anime. I'm not gonna lie. There's some there's some anime series that I like. Uh, fuck you, Jim. I went to get food and missed the beginning. You didn't miss much. My streams are a fucking disaster every time I do them. So it's not like it's not like you're missing anything. Uh, all right. They block misogynist Monday and Matt is on it as is Sargon. Well, I guess that means I'm not a misogynist. So thank you, Atheism Plus, for agreeing that I'm not a misogynist. <laughs> it's fucking great. That's that's a great endorsement from social justice warriors. It's fantastic. IA, are you a deist? Uh, no, I'm not. Who are you going to main in Smash? I don't have a Wii U, so I'm not going to main anybody. But I did buy a DS recently. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, fuck. A 3DS. All these fucking names are so similar. I still mix up PSP and Vita anyway, so what the fuck does it matter? I bought a uh, Nintendo 3DS XL. I had a gift card to a electronic store, and it was on sale anyway, so I ended up paying like 40 bucks and got it with... Uh, what is that fucking RPG? Mario and Luigi Dream, whatever the fuck it is. And then I bought a bunch of other games and shit. I've been having a lot of fun with it, though. What the fuck did I even pick up? Legend of Zelda, Link Between Worlds, Pokemon X, uh, Bravely Default, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And then, like, I, I got a bunch of shit used, too. Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 3DS Edition, which is probably a mistake, because I'm shit at fighting games, but whatever. Uh-oh. And the sound cut out here. Nope, it didn't. All right. Uh, then what the fuck are you, nigga? Uh, are you talking about our, our when you were asking about the DS thing? I said I'm an apatheist. It just means I don't have any fucking clue, and I don't want any part of it. I got other shit I'm more interested in. But I really do enjoy watching um, theists and atheists fling shit at each other. Listen, I find that entertaining is all hell, and that that's never going to change. Like, five or six years ago, you saw a lot of, you know, YouTube atheists really just dropping the fucking hammer on creationists on YouTube. And that was funny to watch, because people like Venom Fang X and those kind of guys, it, just watching them lose their shit was really entertaining. It kind of, it, it's flipped on its head now, where atheists are the ones getting mocked constantly with all the fedora jokes and banana jokes. You know, it, it's cyclical. It'll, it'll swing back around again. Vita has no games? Why, well, I wouldn't know. I don't own a Vita. I learned my lesson with the PSP. I bought that fucking thing and played Luminous, and that was about it. Oh, and Final Fantasy Crisis Core, but my friend's girlfriend dropped my fucking PSP on the ground and shattered it, and so after that, I, I never was able to complete the game. Hello, shitlord. Hello, Brad Childless. Oh, let's see what we got here. Opinions on Tim Schafer. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions on Tim Schafer. I like that recent Steam post he put up, though. Hey, guys, sorry we fucked you over a second time. Couldn't finish the game, but thanks for the money, you stupid fuckers. How many, how many times do you think he can pull that off? How many times do you think people are going to give him money for not completing a product before they decide, you know what, Bobby Kotick probably was right. Maybe, maybe we've been wrong about Bobby Kotick. Maybe we've been looking at it this, you know, this entire thing the wrong way. Bobby's a businessman, all right? That's what he knows. He runs businesses. He knows how to make a profit. And I'm not a huge fan of Call of Duty and a lot of the shit Activision does, but fuck me, man. At least when you go to buy a Call of Duty game, you, you get a Call of Duty game. You don't get a third of a Call of Duty game with a message at the end begging for Kickstarter money. Like, Bobby doesn't do that to you. But Tim, on the other hand, loves to do that to you. Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, I, what do you think of the IGF's old archives on the Wayback Machine getting deleted? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Listen, when Gamergate started picking up Steam, there was that screen cap of Zoe talking to somebody about contacting the Wayback, or the Internet Archives, essentially, and asking to get information removed. So 
it's not surprising. And holy shit, I'm gonna keep hearing these fucking pop ups. Sorry, morality, but I, I, and everybody else, but oh, all right. For the stream, would you care for some udon, Jim Coon? <laughs> nice, nice question. A stream question: How do you feel about Moot and GG threads being censored now? Like I said, I think it sucks, but. You know, there's other places to go. You can go to the Escapist if you want to go. You can go to 8chan if you want to go there. I mean, fuck, you can go to something awful and talk about Gamergate. How insane is that? And you know what? I'll say it again. I think Lotex, you know, probably put it best. Who? I mean, his whole thing was, who fucking cares? It's just, you know, to him, it's just shit to laugh at. You can have people flinging shit. Why does it matter one way or the other? So why would you delete it? Yeah, that that should have been the approach Moot took. I don't know why he couldn't just put up a fucking sticky or let people go to a specific board to discuss it. But he needs that he needs that uh, venture capitalist money, and to impress his you know pals at Google. Uh, what's your opinion on the mail list? Are you talking about the uh, Game Journal's Pro thing? Uh, I think Breitbart and I think uh, Milo fucking knocked it out of the park with uh, their articles talking about it. I get that I've heard people, you know, say, oh, it's not that uncommon. People who work in, you know, this industry will talk to one another or, you know, sites will have internal mailing lists. But this wasn't a website's internal mailing list <clears throat> and these weren't colleagues just shit, you know, shitting it up with each other. These were, this was essentially everybody together on a secret thing talking about this for what, four years? Fuck that. I think it's bad. I think it looks. I think it makes them look bad. Is what I think. Uh, uh, now it's going quick here. Moot does it for free and hot pockets. Yeah, he does it. For, actually, no. Moot doesn't do it for free. He so far he's done it for about what is it? Nine hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars would be the total cost or the total amount in venture capital that he's gotten. So no, he's not doing it for free. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Do I have a bucket list? No, I don't. Uh, I hey, have you ever posted, visited my posting career? Uh, nope, I don't know what that is. It's going too fast. Not anymore, bitter black. Slow down a bit. Will you hug me, I a? I don't think that's fucking possible on the internet. Uh, I, I don't. Oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm. I'm gonna guess. What are your thoughts on Emma Watson's UN speech? Why the fuck would I listen to Emma Watson give a speech in front of the UN? I don't care what Emma Watson thinks outside of the UN, let alone in front of it or inside of it. Uh, none of her opinions, really. It's not like I, I don't think, holy shit, Emma Watson said something. I need to really go pay attention to this. I need to listen and believe. So I don't know what she said exactly. I know the whole uh, marketing shit that was going on with the, uh, you know, trying to shift blame onto 4chan. I get that. I understand the background story to that, but I have no idea exactly what she said, and I don't really care. Uh, Jim, you bastard, check Twitter. All right. Well, let's check Twitter. From, pe <laughs> from Penis Weenus. All right, Dead Wing Duck. Uh, have you seen the image that reveals Depression Quest's extreme sim uh, similarities to Silver String's label maker? Hey, fuck, that sounds familiar. Didn't um, Arini, didn't he post a video like yesterday? I didn't get a chance to watch it. I saw it pop up and a couple people retweet it. Where he's like, let's play, was it Silver String's label maker? Maybe that's what that was about. I should have fucking, I should have taken a look. Then I'd have more idea what you're talking about. But I didn't get a chance to. Are you going to go more, uh, what is this, are you going to go more about 4chan, video, and internet stuff, or do you plan on talking about politics and social issues? Are you talking about for the YouTube channel? Uh, it, it's just what you see up there is what it usually is. Talking about, you know, like the Tumblrisms and Hogbox stuff, I mean, that's all about, at its core, that's all about social justice warriors. Really hypersensitive people on the internet that uh, get upset about stupid, trivial shit and usually profiteer and are the worst kind of people to have to associate with. Uh, see NeoGAF for a fucking example of that. You're probably getting spammed right now, but once again, here's the EA link. Okay, I'll take a look at that in a second. Thank you. Uh, gives me a better idea of exactly what they said. Uh, you may be an asshole, but you're my kind of asshole. Why bother with the GP? We don't fucking need them. You're talking about GP Gaming Press? 
you know, I get it. I, I get it. People are like, they're irrelevant. They're not needed. But I, I, again, well, look at EA with their dumb statement. What do you think's going on? I mean, it's not just them fucking with us, the consumer. They have the power to fuck with the companies making games. You really think EA would be releasing statements like that? Do you think Bioware would behave in the way it does if it wasn't getting information saying that this is how gamers are or this is what you know, they respond to? So, you know, it swings both ways. The gaming press needs to get their shit sorted out. And people like Kuchera need to be gone. It doesn't even look like his colleagues particularly like him. And I sure as shit know we don't like him. I don't understand how he's so entrenched. Um, the interesting thing about Kuchera was he worked at Ars Technica, right? And I believe he worked there. And the mailing list, you know, or I'm sorry, the Game Journals Pro Group started on Ars Technica. So... I, I don't know. It feels like there's more to that. It feels like there's a lot more going on to that particular thing, uh, but people haven't had a chance to really dig through it all. Let's go back to the stream chat here, see what people have to say. Uh, you literally can search on YouTube and see new games for yourself. Yes, you can, but I can't search on YouTube to you know go and uh, talk to the developers themselves. I can't you know talk to Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo themselves through YouTube. Well, maybe Nintendo Direct is trying to bridge that gap. You know, that's one interesting thing about Nintendo is they kind of, I guess, sidestepped the whole gaming press thing before anybody really was bitching about it being the issue that it is, you know, right now at the moment. They're like, fuck it. We, we don't need to do conventions. Fuck it. We don't need to really deal with the press. We'll just do Nintendo Directs. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good idea, really. Uh, 2,000 viewers, congrats. I can't really tell because every time I do one of these fucking things, it always stalls up on a number. So I really don't, I don't know what who's in here or how many or, you know, I, I can't actually see it myself. Say it to my face, Jim. All right, awful Alice, I'll say it to your face. But seriously, though, the other kin video. Yes, that will be the next. Listen, the next Tumblrisms is either going to be rape culture or um, other kins. I'd like to do other kins personally because... That's just, that's a whole level of insanity onto itself. Oh, let's see, what do we got here? Have I ever run into SJWs in real life? Yes, to a degree, yes I have. Um, but not anywhere near as bad as what you see online. I think that's because I'm so far away from San Francisco, which apparently is the fucking epicenter of this, that uh, I've got a little bit of a, a buffer in place to protect me. What's my opinion on Bongland? Love Bongland. And just as much as you probably like Clapistan. So I think we're even in terms of that. Uh, all right. Dear I, opinions on Mossad and uh, Mossad and what? There was a second part to that, but it rang by. Or it flew by quickly, so re ask it if you can. Digra DARPA, talk about a bit. Digra DARPA. Well, I know that, you know, King of Pole and Sargon and all those other guys are working on something looking through the Digra stuff. Um, where is it? I, I did for a while. Listen, again, it, it for me, at least with the DARPA funding, it comes down to letting incompetent people have access to tax money. I don't like that. That's why I tweeted to DARPA itself, if you want to waste your fucking money, go on Craigslist. Because if you're financing people and people connected to other people that are making statements like peer review is bullshit and we need to basically shove down the throats of everybody our stupid fucking beliefs, there's an issue going on. Ah, uh, fuck. And I had access to all this shit before, and now I can't find it. Um, where is it here? Oh, I think this might be it. Okay, yeah. I'm going to post this on Twitter... And you can go take a look at it there. If I post the link in, uh, if I post the link on the YouTube stream or whatever, it's just going to get buried. So uh, there we go. That is the um, so Project Immerse had uh, essentially applications that you had to fill out. If you want to kind of see the connection between Digra and DARPA, I guess if that's what you're you're looking for, that would be the link to start with. Because that particular individual, Michael Mateus, I think, that's, again, I think that's the guy that did um, Facade, if you remember playing that game. I think this is the guy who designed it. 
but he's done keynote speeches for Digra, from what I understand. He's done a lot of research for them for years and years and years. And if you, another cool thing, if you go to the website um, that he's listed on, let me see if I can find the name of it, the particular one. Uh, is it, it's not the School of Engineering. Where is it? Fuck. Oh, if you go to Center for Playable, or for Games and Playable Media, and then you look under people, and not faculty or staff, but look under students. You like this. And then scroll down to the bottom of the page. And look under uh, digital arts and new media. Look at the names listed there. And you'll see that a particular name should stand out from that leaked DIGRA conversation. And I believe that person was a student or is a student of his. So there are a lot of connections. It's interesting shit. Ebola Chan loves me. All right. <laughs> now, the funny thing about the Ebola Chan shit, didn't Ari land? Like, they got it. They picked up right away that that was a fucking joke. So, how is it a forum or a forum, an image board used in Nigeria gets that that's a fucking joke? But apparently, mainstream media thinks that there is some concerted effort to start voodoo on people in Africa using Ebola Chan. What in the fuck? Uh, camera lady wants to know if camera lady wants to know if you like indefensible or indi oh indefeasible indefeasible I'm blanking on that right now I've had a long day so my mind's kind of fucked up right now give me a second and I'll unfuck it and then answer the question uh, where do I go for news are there any reliable sources um, I've started to use different sites that are out there I mean I'll swing by Games Nosh and Tech Raptor I'll swing by um, niche gamer and that kind of stuff but generally I like other people's opinions uh, I'll talk to people I know or I'll just go on an image board like um, 8chan or 4chan or whatever and just fucking listen to how people are talking about it it seems more straightforward thoughts on 8chan's founder Hot Wheels I've, I've seen a lot of posted about him it, you know I, I Scoot seems fine by me. I don't know. I, I have no problems with Scoots. So, Jim, can we hear? Where was it? Jim, can we hear your thoughts on Eight Chan and people? Yeah, it's like the fourth time you've asked. Like I said, Eight Chan, I have no problem with. I've I've been to the V board. I've been to Poll, and I've been to GG on Eight Chan. It seems fine to me. And they let you talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. So. As compared to 4chan right now, that's way better. Oh, Indefeasible, her videos. I'm sorry, fuck. I liked the videos. I watched them. I, I know that there were a few things that they were a little off about, but listen, you know, if you want to dig through all that shit and start finding connections, why not? Seems fine to me. Uh, half the reason the majority of shit that we're even talking about and seeing right now is out is because people took the time to dig through and be obsessive and look at stuff and really track it down. I like that kind of stuff. It's interesting to watch and find out what people find. IA Steam says I can't add you. That's because I haven't paid Gabe money yet. You know, I know I got shit on for that uh, Steam video, but fuck you all, I stand by what I said. That feature, if I remember right, before they implemented the community market and they did the card system and the level systems, there wasn't a fucking cap on how many friends you could have. Or at least not a starting cap on it. It was a subtle way of basically nickel and diming people for just a little bit more and ah, I just I, I don't know it just I don't like it I guess or I'd like if you're gonna do that at least let me just pay you directly I don't want to fuck around with the community market and I know people say oh you can just play games and earn cards and go through the trading system but I can't trade cards and I can't you know earn car or money has to enter the system at some point somebody's paying for shit when they, you know, buy cards from you or when you buy cards from them, money's exchanging hands. You can't just trade your way on and on and on. It, it's not going to happen. Uh, let's see. Debate, uh, debate, Aaron. You're talking about Grongy or Grongy or I, I don't know how the fuck I say his last name, to be honest. I don't know what I debate him about. Uh, somebody had mentioned that he had wanted to do a debate before, but I ended up getting sidetracked doing something else and looking into shit was the group of people. And so I just, I didn't have the ability. I didn't have time. 
Uh, check my Twitter shitlord. All right. All right, Jim, thoughts on Rebecca Watson's GG video she released last night? I haven't even seen it. Um, so I, I don't I don't actually know what her video is about. I'll check it out later, I guess. And let me see what I think. Uh, let's see. Why you got that UKIP Leaders mug on your Steam account? Uh, because he's got a magnificent face. How can you not like that look? Look at him. He's a happy son of a bitch. That big fucking chuckle. It's a great picture. I don't know. I don't know why you don't like it. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. It used to be 300 friends. There's also hundreds of people that would give you a bunch of cards to add you. Yeah, but then uh, that's from somebody on Twitter. Yeah, but then I, I'd feel weird about doing that. I don't. I don't want to take shit from people. I don't even listen. I don't like the wish. This really pisses me off. This isn't something you know Valve did to intentionally fuck with people. It's just I wish there was another way to do this. I don't like the wish list feature on Steam. I just wish they had a bookmark feature that was private. Or maybe there is a way to do this and I just don't know. I don't want people buying me games, but I want to at least be able to mark down what games I'm interested in. So when they go on sale, I can easily check through the list and just be like, oh shit, this is 40% off or 50% off or whatever. The only problem is with a wish list, it's public. So I've had people send me games and then I, I, I fucking hate that because I feel like if I, if I refuse, it's being rude. So I accept it, but then I feel like I owe them, so I have to send them something back in exchange. So I'm just fucking myself out of money, because I'm an idiot. But yeah, I don't like taking stuff from people. Uh, cards, money, that's why I don't have ads on. That's why I don't have a Patreon or a Kickstarter or any of that shit. It just it, it feels weird to me. Uh, Jim, why is Joss Whedon such a beta male pussy? I don't know, maybe he drank the Kool-Aid. Maybe his proximity to the types of people we're fighting against in Gamergate have influenced him in a way that he can't unfuck his mind. I don't know. You'd have to ask Joss Whedon. Oh, let's see. Somebody on Steam, they just, what is this? They just implemented a follow feature. Uh, smile for me, dear. Or smile for me, dear. Jesus. What do you mean a follow feature? Ah, oh, and because of the delay, I'll hear back in about five minutes. Okay, go back over here. Oh, you can gift me uh, Team Fortress 2. Oh, well, of course. Who wouldn't want another copy of that? Uh, my opinions on Adam Sessler. You know, <laughs> before, uh, I used to like, uh, I liked Tech TV. I don't know if you guys ever watched Tech TV, like Call for Help and that kind of stuff, like Leo Laporte. Tech TV was fucking great. I really, really liked Tech TV as a channel, and I loved their fucking programming. And then the merger with G4 happened. And I thought, oh, shit. Um, you know, at first I thought, it's going to be great, right? It'll be video games and technology. How can that possibly go wrong? But, you know, as we found out, G4 instead just kind of cannibalized Tech TV and kept, what was it, X-Play, and what was the other show they kept, Attack of the Show, I think, for a little while, and they pretty much got rid of everything else. I can't remember the name of it, but there was like a late night show with the white guy and the black chick that was really fucking funny. Um, they also had like a, uh, God, I can't remember the names of half of these people or their shows, but there was also another one um, where it was like, they take questions from the phone and from online. It was two chicks, basically, that did like a weekly show or a daily show maybe even. But yeah, I really liked it. But so they kept X Play around, and I thought it was going to be good. And I liked watching X Play. I liked Adam and Morgan. But I don't know what the fuck has happened to Adam. He is. Uh, he. <laughs> I see all the cocaine and meth uh, references. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, but yeah, and now everybody's talking about uh, Tech TV. Tech TV was great, wasn't it? Tech TV was fucking amazing. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on SRS Docs List? Are you talking about the one that got posted with, like, um, what was it? Uh, Adam Baldwin, Milo, Boogie, and there were, uh, there were a couple other people on there, too. Uh, Shoe on Head, and I can't, who are the other ones? I, 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 they've all released statements, haven't they? I mean, a couple of them said the docs were inaccurate. The other one said who gives a shit, or it was just, you know, publicly available information or old information. Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. Fuck, thank you. Uh, the Return of Sack. Yeah, that was the fucking one I was thinking of. Screensavers. Yeah, that was a really good one, too. Yeah, Call for Help and Screensavers were fucking amazing. And the thing that sucks is 
the only you can find full episodes of those on YouTube, but they're like 240p, and I can't remember what happened. Uh, the guy who posted them on his channel said something to the effect of, "They're." They were like on a computer's hard drive or something, but they weren't the master tape, so the quality was just fucking awful. But he's like, well, at least it's something. But occasionally I'll go watch them again because I, I really like them. Call for Help and Screensavers, those were fucking amazing shows. And fuck G4 for what it did to Tech TV. I mean, what what did they do exactly? You have a, a network that doesn't even... it Does it even show video games anymore? Does it show technology anymore? It's The last I saw it was nothing but 11 hours of cheaters and, you know fucking 13 hours of cops that was that's what g4 has become if it even still exists didn't that go under now too i don't know uh what are your thoughts on matt clark from ign attacking milo on twitter was it matt or wasn't matt clark the one that went on like a tirade a couple nights ago and his twitter's deleted now isn't it uh, again it's like i know some of this stuff and doing the video i've been going through a lot of shit, but my mind is fried from it. That's why I had to push it back. There's there's too much shit to cover, and so I had to I needed a couple more nights, essentially. Uh where do you get skill in uh, I where do you get skill in debate, argument creation, and information gathering? Are you just asking me that generally where you do that? I have no idea. I'm shit at it. Most people are shit at it. G4 is now Esquire. Well, that's fitting. G4 is dead. I'm not gonna shed a tear for that. Fuck them. <laughs> G4 did to tech what sci-fi did to science fiction. Cops and cheaters, yeah, that's that's really what it was. It was nothing but that. G4 killed nerd programming of the network. Yeah, a again, that's bullshit. I just don't fucking understand it. And like, Tech TV had some really fucking unique shit. Like, they they showed like a two-hour anime block, um, at like midnight, and they also had this really weird show where it would just show like clips of video games and shit and other stuff. And that's all it was. There wasn't like a host or anything. Um, that was really good too. Uh, let's see. When do you think you'll go back to Sissisms? Will you mention the Homestuck fandom? Yeah, like uh, you're talking about Tumblrisms? Yeah, I, I already mentioned um, the next one will either be Rape Culture or Other Kins. And yes, I will eventually talk about Homestuck. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to jump back over to Twitter, see if they got anything they want to ask. Someone asked about your nudes. That's probably not directed at me. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I, okay, that was directed at somebody else. Fucking Twitter, man. Uh, Tech TV should be on archive.org. Uh, if that's true, I'll check it out, because I'd, I'd rewatch the shit out of their stuff. Uh, it's called Follow Games and Software. Oh, shit. Okay, I see what you're saying. So there is a way, basically, to bookmark uh, games you're interested in so it doesn't show up on wishlist. If that's the case, I'm just going to delete the wishlist then and uh, follow the games, I guess, if that's the equivalent of bookmarking it. Who do you think is behind the doxing, uh, fighting capitalist hack, Milo Needle, escapist DDoSing? Don't want this to end without knowing. If I had to guess, I'd just say it's a, a third party fucking about, more than likely. I, I don't know. Could could be a whole host of things. I think you've got, you know, you probably have groups that are on, you know, uh, fuck, I don't know how to explain this. I'm going to say it's a third party. There have been some statements that make me think I have an idea, but I, I don't know for sure. Anytime there's a shitstorm going on, there's always going to be completely unrelated parties that are drawn towards it that just want to wreak a little havoc and have some fun. That would be my guess. But I can't say for sure one way or the other. Uh, Internet uh, people like you, uh, people like you, and they're going to give you free shit because they appreciate you. They don't expect anything in return. Yeah, that, I, I, listen, I don't like the feeling of when you accept something from somebody, you're beholden to them. That's the way I look at it. And I just I don't like the feeling of owing somebody something. That's why I pay my bills on time. That's why, you know, I, I steer cr uh, clear of, like, credit cards and stuff. I don't like the feeling of owing or being indebted. And I get what you're saying, like, oh, if somebody gives you a gift, whatever. But to me, for whatever reason, it feels like I owe them. I don't know them. They just gave me something. It feels like I should reciprocate. It feels like the thing you should do. 
Oh, let's see what else we got here. Is Funny Junk actually a bastion of free speech, or is it just a bunch of hype? When this all started, it was, and it still is, really, one of the only sites you can post whatever the fuck you want on. Uh, I'd say Funny Junk is what it's saying it is and the way it's behaving, which is letting you post whatever you want. So as far as alternatives go, if you've got something you want to post related to, you know, games journalists or Gamergate or whatever, Funny Junk would be a place to go. They're not going to block you and ban you and delete your content. Oh, this one's good. Oh, uh, let's see. Am, is somebody's asking me if I'm Ken Ashcorp. No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know why. I've seen that float around a couple of times. No, I'm not. We don't sound anything alike. I have no fucking musical talent. I'm completely untalented when it comes to music or art. I'm fucking horrible at that shit. That's why it impresses me a lot. Uh, because I can't do it. So no, I'm not him. Uh, would you ever consider doing an investigation in SJWs and academia, government, science, and law? Yeah, that would be fun. I, I talked about the source and, you know, behind a lot of it. And it is academia. It's a specific part of it. Um, but yeah, it'd be fun to do a video series on that if people were interested. But I have no idea if they'd be interested or not. But I like Homestuck. Does that make me an SJW? No, it doesn't. I know there's confusion. Like people still are struggling with this idea of what a, a social justice warrior is. They're horrible people. So really, it shouldn't. You shouldn't be asking yourself, "But I'm gay, or I'm transsexual, or I like Homestuck, or I do this, or I do that." Just ask yourselves: Are you the world's biggest asshole that uses other people as a shield to fucking avoid criticism? Do you live in a hug box? Are you hypersensitive? Can you admit that you, you know, are you incapable of admitting you've done something wrong? You know, if that's the type of shit you're answering affirmative to, then yeah, you're a social justice warrior. They're terrible people. Uh, just because you, yeah, you're not one. Just because you like Homestuck. What is my opinion on illegal drugs? I don't use illegal drugs. As far as pot goes, watch the states that legalized it. I'm sure they're making a fucking ton of money. Uh, through secondary businesses and taxation. So, who knows? <laughs> Do I ever read the Tumblr in Action subreddit? Uh, I'm not, I, I've mentioned this before, I'm not a Redditor. I don't use Reddit. I have, on occasion, gone to Tumblr in Action because somebody linked me there. Um, and I have gone there twice in relation to, there was a specific Tumblr blog for one of the videos that I could not find, it basically I'd gone through and I looked at what they were saying and I forgot to screen cap it. And when I went back, it was gone. <laughs> and so the only place that actually ended up having a fucking screen cap of that was Tumblr in action. So when I did the search term for it, they popped up. I went there and got the image and I was good to go. Uh, let's see. Do you feel the Gamergate movement is slowing down at all? No. Nope. I don't think so. Uh, you look at, you know, God, there have been a ton of articles all over the fucking place. People are making videos. People are doing streams about it all over the fucking place. Uh, you know, I, I talk about it. I'll talk about it in the video on Saturday. Um, in relation to people, I'm not going to go into it now, but I'll, I, you'll hear about it on Saturday. Oh, let's see. Go back to the stream here. What's my view on porn? Everybody watches porn. I have no view on it. It's a pretty, it's a very mundane thing to ask about. Uh, somebody saying something sensitive. Uh, yeah, I like their threads where they go on about moderation. That's funny as shit. Um, if I don't know if you've ever gone there and seen the threads where they talk about uh, something awful moderators and <laughs> go go through who they are. Um, those are fucking, those are a riot to read. Let's see. Are you a horse fucker? No, yeah, I talked about this in the uh, whatever Hugbox Chronicle video it was. I don't watch MLP. There's no, I, it just doesn't appeal to me. It's not something I'm really... I, I don't know the names of the imaginary horses. I still get shit for calling uh, Molestasia. 
and then they say that's the wrong way of saying it. it. Sounds more fucking regal to me. All right, than molestia. But whatever. Neil Gaff isn't discussing pro gamergate articles or isn't discussing the pro gamergate article by TechCrunch. Of course Neil Gaff's not fucking discussing it. You can't go to Neil Gaff and post and give an honest opinion. You need to suck Evil Or's dick. You need to suck the dicks of the moderators and admins. There have been so many screen caps of the fucking ban messages from people who dared to step out of line. Look at what happened to Boogie when he went over there and tried to talk about Gamergate or anything really against the fucking groupthink mentality. He just got hammered on fucking nonstop. I know people are pissed at Boogie, always fence-sitting, and he's jumping back and forth, but he got the holy shit kicked out of him over on NeoGAF for daring to even try to bring up a counterpoint to any of their bullshit. Do you think a video crash is coming? Um, yeah, but I don't think it's related. I, 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 yes, but I don't think it's related to gaming journalism. I'm sorry if I'm going silent here for minutes at a time. I'm trying to read, or read through shit. How cringy is MLP? I don't even know. I don't fucking watch the show. Unless you're talking about like the... Are you talking about the 4chan board? I, I went by the 4chan MLP board when I did the video about um, whatever the fuck her name was, and just the crazy shit about that. I, I went into a thread and asked them in for you know for information, and they gave it to me. The board seems fine to me. You know, I walked in. They know I'm not a fucking. Uh, they know I don't watch the fucking show, and I'm not part of the whole brony shit. But they they were nice enough when I asked them for the information. What do you think of the 4chan nude hoax? I thought that was funny how quickly the mainstream press turned around on that. You talking about ranting and stuff? You know, oh god, 4chan's going after Emma Watson and ooh, and then the next day it's oh no, nope, it was a giant fucking hoax. So that was pretty entertaining to watch how quickly that turned around. Even social justice warriors hate Neil Gaff. No, they don't. Uh, they live at Neil Gaff. Is where social. You want to see what I'm talking about? Go to Neil Gaff. And try to talk about, <laughs> start a fucking thread on NeoGAF about anything to do, or go into a thread on NeoGAF about anything to do with race or sex in games. If you do not follow 100% what everybody else is posting, you will be banned. They will pick a reason out of their ass and they will ban you. That is the reality of NeoGAF. And of course they're talking about dumb shit like that in relation to video games because it's SJW Hub. You know, NeoGAF is uh, the forum version of Tumblr. What would be the leading cause of a modern video game? Wait, oh, of a modern video game crash? Well, think about it. I mean, you have oversaturation of the market. Before when it happened, you know, the first crash when it took place, it was the the hardware makers couldn't regulate who was putting software out, so they were just all this shitty, all these shitty games were flooding the market, and people were getting ripped off, and they got very angry about that. Now what we have is it's sort of the same thing. Games are coming out, but instead of you know, like a thousand shitty games, we've got maybe a hundred decent games, but they're just pumping out shitty DLC and shitty add-ons and shitty, you know, early access and shitty this and shitty that. Games have found a way, and it's genius from a business point of view, but it's only short-term and the way it's going to give them gains, not long-term. Early access, you were paying a game company to beta test their product, is really what early access is. They have they have put the cost of having people that would usually do this internally off on you as the consumer, and you happily agree to it. And then after the early access period is over, and you have your copy of the game, then you got to go buy the 48 pieces of DLC. So again, it's not like a thousand shitty games. It's just a few. You know, it's like a handful of normal games with shitty aspects to them, and that's kind of like the way it's flooding the market right now. I, I, fuck. I mean, look at fighting games are notorious for this. You've got, you know, character DLC, you've got fucking costume DLC, and it's not necessary, but it just, I don't, just put a fucking product out that's complete for once. I don't need 4,000 fucking add-ons to my game. I just want, just make a fucking complete game. Now somebody's talking about MILFs. That's always, that's always lovely. I'm going to pop back over to Twitter here. See what they got to say. 
Uh, I'm blown away by how little self-awareness the mainstream media publications show. Uh, are you talking in relation to them covering Gamergate? Or are you talking about their covering the Emma Watson thing? Um, yeah. I, I, again, <laughs> the press has issues. I agree with that. Uh, where do I join in the chat for your stream? It should be through YouTube. If you go to the YouTube link, I'm sure it's out there by now. You can comment in the chat thing, and well, if I if I see it, it goes by pretty quickly. But I'll answer if I see your question. I'm not going to dodge you. Uh, let's see. I've noticed Anita occurring favor with the SJW crowd by adding trigger warnings to her videos. What the fuck is a trigger? A trigger warning is ridiculous, is what a trigger warning is. You know, post-traumatic stress syndrome, like, that exists. If you go to a war zone, you're getting fucking shell-shocked. I mean, they're, they're taking something that was really a condition for somebody that's either been in a war zone or has been through the most horrific thing you can imagine. And later on in life, you know, like, it's a soldier returning from the battlefield and somebody, you know, during the 4th of July sets off a bottle rocket and he hears it. And it gives him a fucking horrible flashback of being in the jungles getting shot at or something like that. Uh, so a trigger warning is basically what a bunch of middle-class white suburbanite social justice warriors use to try to mimic that. Like, oh my god, I'm so triggered by the fact that you mentioned that word, and that word makes me sad. And that's the same as a fucking soldier that got shot at, not wanting to hear a bottle rocket go off behind his head. Like, fuck these people. They're so overly sensitive. And it's not realistic. The real world is not going to fucking coddle you. The thing that really pisses me off with trigger warnings is that they're trying to get them on college syllabi. Like, There's no reason trigger warning should be on that. You're going to try to tell me sh there's a problem with fucking Shakespeare? They tried to get a trigger warning on Merchant of Venice saying it was anti-Semitic and uh, other works of Shakespeare because of violence and misogyny and sexism and racism. W okay, what does a trigger warning accomplish, especially in a college setting? What are you telling me then? that you can't partake in that particular assignment or that coursework because you're too triggered to do it? What a lazy way to get a degree. Why wouldn't everybody be offended then? Oh my God, I can't do this engineering course because everything about numbers and engineering triggers me. So you're just going to have to give me an A because if you don't, I'll sue you because uh, I've got post-traumatic bullshit disorder. That's, that's what they have. Post-traumatic bullshit disorder. It's PTBD is what these fuckers have. Twitter PTSD is apparently worse than the real world PTSD. Oh, somebody's asking to play Gauntlet. I, uh, that's from Steam, by the way. I played that. Uh, he, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about Gauntlet because I'll probably get people angry if I do. I played the, um, the first four levels or the first act, however you want to define it, of Gauntlet. You know, you, you basically, you go in through one doorway and you've got three segments to it and there are four of those. So 12 levels in one act, I guess. Um, it's a good game, and it's fun with other people, but it's not fun on the same level as the older gauntlets were. It's not as arcadey as the older gauntlets were. There aren't you. You fight over what a, a crown that gives you power up or it gives you points at the end of the level, really. So you're kind of competing for score, I guess, which is a neat feature. And then you have you know abilities through what is it? Are they the relics or whatever they are? Uh, you can get potions to activate those, and that's fine. But it just it feels like it's lacking in that regard. I remember like uh, the arcade gauntlets and uh, the N64 versions, and those were fun. The NES, or the NES versions, those were fun. This, it doesn't, it doesn't, gauntlet doesn't feel gauntlet-y enough to me for some reason. And I didn't like that, at least for the first act, those first 12 levels or whatever, that every second level, so you go through the doorway, you got three levels. Every second level was the same, and I get it, you're running the gauntlet from death. But it was the same, un, you know, uh, you couldn't defeat this guy. You have to run from him. And it was just, I don't want to do a chase sequence every fucking second level. It takes the fun and surprise out of it for me. But that's minor bitching. It's a 20 buck game. Uh, you know, it's worth the money. Especially if you have friends. You'll get your, you'll get your bang for your buck, I guess. It's, it's fucking longer than God Mode was. <laughs> Christ. Why is my voice so sexy? It's not. My mic is shit. My voice is shot right now. I'm sure it's probably coming through crap quality. That's what happens when you're too poor to go out and buy decent mic equipment or get a decent fucking computer. 
uh, bring me on IA, King of Pole. Uh, how would I even do this? Uh, let's see. There should be some place that gives me a link. Oh, where is it? Oh, invite people. All right, let's try this. Oh, well, that's right. You can't send fucking private messages unless you follow somebody. Some stupid shit like that. All right, try this again. Okay. <clears throat> if that was actually King of Pole and you wanted to come on, I sent you a DM with the fucking address invite. Unless it's somebody just fucking with me, in which case the random invite just went out, so <laughs> good luck, troll. Go to your Twitter account. I gave you a link. If you click on the link, it'll directly bring you into the chat. I know that it's implemented through Google Plus and there are other ways of doing it, but I just send the link because it, it seems to work easier for me. Oh, let's see. All right, give me a second here, see if I can get this to work. He's all confused now, I bet. Three thousand people are listening right now. Again, I can't see the number of people listening. It always fucking stalls up on me. What do I think of Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft? I don't own any of the next gen systems, which is you know, I, yeah, I'm calling Wii U next gen. I know that's funny, but am I in? Am I good? Let me mute shit. I believe so. I think you're in. Oh, what's up, man? <laughs> I literally was just uh, fucking around, but I didn't really expect... Okay. How's it going? That's going fine. Uh, so, oh, God, I'm just reading your chat, man. It's going insane. Do you like Blizzard games? Uh, you know what? I'll let you continue talking. I'm going to be quiet for a moment. Uh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I like Blizzard games. play a lot of StarCraft. Brood like Wars. One. Brood Wars. Not, not this fucking StarCraft 2 shit. Um, you, uh, you was talking about the Digra stuff. I don't know if you were, uh, you said we were looking into it. We're still, we're still digging into it. We keep giving stuff to Milo, uh, and he's just, like, looking into it more so for us to verify things of what we can, and then it comes really right back to us. So, in that aspect, I, I mean, there's so much stuff coming in and out. I literally got, uh, chewed out the other day because I gave too much out, and it's like, we're trying to contain it because we keep catching shit. Right, well, my, my recommendation would be looking into Mateus. Um, that's going to oh. be your bridge bin link between the two. You're talking about Ma Mayo? You're talking about Mayo, the, the president? No, Michael Mateus, the guy who takes the applications through um, through the games program at UCSC. Yeah. Uh, his name is the guy. He's the guy running Project Immerse. He's the, he's the gatekeeper. If you want to work on Immerse, you go through him. He's also connected to Digra, and his students include Squeaky, the chick that was in the leaked Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you get a chance, go look at the president and go look at some of her articles. Yesterday, I don't know if you watched my stream yesterday. Yesterday, if you were reading one of her articles she wrote, uh, and she was talking about her, uh, it, it's just it's crazy. And she was talking about her experiences with Anita Sarkeesian, and this was back in like 2011. She wrote this article, and she was just a chairman on the board of all the Digger communities. And when we started finding out, there's actual chapters of Digger in each in each country, and there's really it's like uh, it's like it's cultish. Oh yeah, it, okay. So we found we found a uStream, uh, and I'm not going to go into where that uStream is. And they were it's it's uh, one of the chapters, and they were like you. We had to decipher because it was another language, and there was like they were dropping big names here and there, and then they were talking about like indoctrination tactics of how to bring people into this, and they and the plans that they had, like agendas that they were going to be pushing uh, to continue on whatever the hell they were doing. There was some stuff with an Australian chapter that came out, videos from there. There's not much videos out there, surprisingly. On these guys, they keep. Well, you, you need to look at stuff yeah. like um, critical theory. <laughs> you need to go look up those videos because that's got a lot of, uh, li like all these groups. Again, there's a lot of interconnectedness because the people that are parts of these different groups all communicate with one another and they all do different events with one another. But yeah, it's very cultish. Um, 
that you've got, you want to call them social justice warriors, cultural Marxists, whatever label, doesn't really matter yeah. to me, but you've got stuff like DIGRA, and if you look at XOXO Fest, which is just supposed to be this tech thing, right, out in fucking California. <laughs> you could call that a cult itself. Have you read, seen some of the things on there? It's yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Go look at the people, you know, all those pictures you're looking through? Yeah. Yeah, go look at the people who were giving those presentations and find out what they're connected to, and that's a whole fucking big world. Well, we and, yeah. and there was a lot of Gawker Media and Vox there. I mean, there was a lot of people. Oh, we, we started with Leah Alexander and Anita, obviously, and then we kind of just moved down the list. And moved, that was like where we started. And we started moving down there, and it led to like shit like Patreon, and we were looking into money laundering and like dump accounts that led to crazy ass shit. Like, we'd find like a dump account. Where they was just this blank account, but it had a Twitter, and they, Twitter was only active when money was sent out or siphoned through something. And then the only people that it was fo that followed it were like major companies, like like there was one with like Asus and another. It was really weird. It was like weird, like you you, you know I don't know. We kind of ran into a dead end with that one for a while, but just the shit that was going on with that. And then the guy who runs Patreon and the founder of Kickstarter as well. I, it's there's a really a lot of shady shit. And and if you guys oh, yeah. anybody. Anybody in the chat? Because there's like three thousand of you guys. Like you were saying before, if you guys are good at digging, better than us. Because we're just we're just fucking couple guys, just like you guys. And nothing we like me, Sargon, Rogue. All of us that were in these Skype, these public Skype calls, we were sitting down, and we were like, okay, let's start banging some shit out and spending like hours and hours just going and siphoning through things. Uh, which last night we were doing the archives thing. That was a fucking debacle. Um, well, yeah. I mean, last night I, I know you were doing a stream. I, I got a chance to check out a little bit of it, but I, I went it on Skype and then. Like, you have to manually click through a uh, contact request, so it took forever to go through yeah. them. And then I, I felt bad because I hadn't been on there for a while, so I was talking to some people. But, um, yeah, they, like, Digger XOXO, you look at... there, There's shit going on. Um, and I think that with the gaming journalist stuff that... It, it all leads into itself. But again, you have this core group of people that really are at the center of a lot of it, and I think the more you dig, you're going to start to see that picture better. When you're looking at Silver Strings and XOXO, when you're looking at Digger, when you're looking at you know Patreon even right. or Kickstarter, um, you're going to start seeing names that consistently pop up in each of those. Um, and I wouldn't put it past. I don't, I'm not saying Patreon as a service is bad. It's an interesting idea, mm -hmm. but I think the use that it's being used for right now is just nefarious. Right, and look at the owner. I would, if you ever get a chance, by any chance, I don't know if you want to look into it, but look into the owner of Patron and who he's connected to, and then it's going to lead back to a guy named John, Jonathan McIntosh. If you take the time to find out who that guy is, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, getting into a whole video about that guy. Just look in John McIntosh if you ever get a chance. That guy is really, like every, like you just said, the name that keeps going back is that fucking guy. And that's, hey, that's you're talking about... Uh... Wait, we're not talking about McIntosh. You're talking about a different guy. Not we're not talking about the one connected to Anita, are we? Yeah, yeah, that guy, that guy, the guy who's supposedly the the puppet pulling the puppet strings. Everybody keeps saying. I don't know whether or not. I'm not going to say that, but I that's it. Just says, all I'm saying is, is every time we go back, it's like Anita, and then from Anita it goes to John McIntosh, and then it's like we look at it with, the way that we were looking at it was like this guy seems to be interjected with like every piece. That kind of well, comes together. And see, that, that's the thing with sacred cows. Like, they treat Anita mm -hmm. and they treat you know people like Zoe. They treat these people like sacred cows, but then right. you can't you can't look into them. You can't you know debate them. You can't criticize them. So what perfect front? You know what I mean for doing shit that's underhanded? Because you can't go after them. So why wouldn't they be connected to it? They know they're never going to get touched. Right, right. And it's just I. I I don't know. In my, in my, like I said, I'm just a guy, and we're, there's only a few of us, like maybe like a dozen of us that have been doing this, and we've been doing it for hours and hours, and we just take the time to research it. And like I said, it's like you, Jim. It's like if you guys in chat, if you're good at that kind of stuff, you should really take the time to look into this stuff. And if you get stuff and you can, and it's credible, send it to the right people. You got Milo. Email it to these fucking people that will get stuff done. So. I think that's really where that comes into play because it's like, like I said, the stuff I'm talking about we're still looking into and it's just dropping name here as theirs, but it's there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, just yeah. Like, like I said, it's interconnected. There's a lot of shit. They, they wash each other's – one hand washes the other kind of shit. Um, yeah, that's kind of – It's and, very creepy. It, it, yeah, it's scary. We got, uh, Me and Sargon say scary. Some people said creepy because the stuff that we've started – especially with the, the Digger chapter thing, that was the scariest shit I've ever seen. Because the shit, especially if you guys ever take the time, um, go look up the Australian Digger, Digger chapter video and go take your time to watch that. And then you'll immediately be like, okay, I don't know what the fuck Digger is anymore. <laughs> right. It's, it's, not, so it's, not, weird. it's not related to gaming. Oh, I mean, I touched on this in one of the streams, but and I'll say it again because I think it bears repeating. Mm -hmm. Or no, I, I, I talked about this with Milo during his uh, radio thing. Um, 
gamers are an enormous demographic, and that has a lot of potential in elections for voting. If you can influence the way gamers think, and if you can influence the way they talk and behave, you can influence right. how they vote. So, you know, there are two ways of doing it. You can approach gamers as a business and say, you know, hey, I'm going to be up front, uh, and this is how we're going to conduct shit. Or you can try to do it underhanded and guilt trip them into behaving a certain way. And I think with Degra and stuff like that, it's guilt trip. We're going to badger you so much that you agree with our ideology, and then you vote the way we want. And I know that sounds silly, but again, it's a billion-dollar international mm -hmm. industry. With uh, look how many gamers or how many fucking PS2s and Xboxes and shit have been sold in the United States. You yeah. have a lot of people who played, you know, Super Mario Brothers when they were kids are voting age now. So right, it right. doesn't it doesn't surprise me you're going to start to see <clears throat> vultures circling that hobby. I mean, it, you that would make that makes sense in a sense if you're like comparing it to something like when the uh, the Democrats were using the illegal immigrants to kind of bring them in for uh, you know you know I'm talking about like buying votes kind of thing. Yep. Uh, but I I don't know I I want I just want to disagree because when I look at it in my perspective I, I look at it as like okay uh, the people who are definitely coming involved it's kind of like what's the words I want to use here? I'll tell you what the best quote if you want to term it. The best way you can describe it is a serendipitous conspiracy. Like people right, have ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they have this idea that like a conspiracy is a bunch of people getting together before something happens in a dark room where nobody can see them and saying, you know, how can we take over the world? But a serendipitous conspiracy is you have a bunch of really shitty people that all have shitty goals, and mm -hmm. at some point they notice each other and they're like, oh fuck, let's work together to make that happen. So. See it's happenstance that they all happen to come right. together. But, and yeah. see, the reason why I put holes in that is because we sat down and we started looking at the people who were behind a lot of the stuff that was pushing it, Matt Lee, Zoe Quinn, Anita Sarkeesian, all those kind of people that were really behind this, the Ben Kucheras and stuff. And then we started uh, – we signed up for like Ancestry.com and stuff, and we started looking up their, their family heritage and where they were coming from. And the majority of these people are what you would be calling hedge fund babies. And and, and it was just – and then our mind – like me and Sargon sitting there, and we're like, so are these kids – are these guys just kids that are like are just rich kids and this is their pet project, or is there more? to it I mean it was it was so fucking confusing as as we were looking at it, but I, it was just there it seemed like the majority of these people who had a lot of the influence were really like really rich people or had rich families and rich backgrounds to fall back on and it just seemed like hedge fund kids like it just they could just this was their thing where they just uh, of course to they're hedge funds kid like a lot of these again it goes back to the social justice warrior perspective yeah right. of course they're hedge fund kids they don't know what it's like to have a shitty life they've never struggled so they invent oppression so they can, you know, try to vicariously live through it. They don't know what it's like to live in a gutter, to have a shitty job, to live in a country where you get your ass kicked for being a certain way. So they invent all these things like micro or micro transact or aggressions, whatever the fuck they are. Um, they invent this imaginary oppression so they can feel good by feeling bad. Um, it's just they're fucking twisted people. They really, really are fucking twisted people. Yeah, and exactly. But here's the cra weirdest thing about the whole thing when we started finding about the the hedge fund, the hedge fund stuff, is that the families that we were looking at, the majority of them were people who worked in businesses like Wall Street. Like there was a guy who did analytics for Wall Street, another guy who would audit uh, the accountants who handled big business money in New York City, and they're all connected back to kind of mostly New York City and Chicago, a couple in San Francisco here and there. But the majority of them, they worked with the, the, the families. Why were like CEOs of big companies that handled finances and big stuff and and so we sat back and I was like so it, they're capitalists right so why the fuck would their kids come out and be the way they are or, or are they globalists in the sense that when they look at that you, you know what I'm saying it, it, it was like so confusing when we were looking back at how these kids were all hedge like triggered back to rich families and being hedge fund babies it just made no sense why the families are like that unless they're globalists and now in my opinion that's right uh, but I mean you find that happening a lot I mean kids generally rebel against whatever their parents are uh, but th that's the funny thing. They have no problem living off mommy and daddy's money, but they don't mm -hmm. like mommy and daddy's business. <laughs> yeah. You know, fuck daddy for being a CEO or, you know, running a bank or working on Wall Street. How terrible capitalism is bad. But I'll use his millions of dollars to sit on my fat, lazy ass and bitch about it. Right. I'll use it to make connections to fuck with other people's lives. Right. And, and that was the kind of thing we're sitting there. And so. Uh, when we were all looking at it, because I, because uh, it was obvious that most of the majority of the families, it was like, well, these people are capitalists, just the way they run things, the way they do things. It would make sense that they're capitalists in that aspect. But I was like, but unless they're globalists, because their kids are fucking running amok and playing and playing crazy. And I was like, how do these families stay out of the limelight to where they don't want to get the shit? And then, like a prime example, Zoe Quinn. I know she's irrelevant, but when we were looking into her, like her last name, her whole name doesn't even match up to what her real name is, and like she adopted the, a name from like her adopted. 
or not adopted, I'm sorry, from like her new father or whatever, and their mother got remarried. It's like, I don't know, it, it, and maybe the kids are trying to get away from it. I'm not entirely sure. It's just, it's just interesting when you look at it. It's nothing really to look there, but it's just interesting to kind of get an understanding of why these people do what they do. And it kind of ties back to some of the stupid shit they say. That and stuff like Matt Lee's talking about cultural Marxism, that's like a whole other... I don't even understand that. No, no we want Are you the talking non. Talking about the Frankfurt School, that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, but well, look, the, the, these people and like we're reading the stuff like the Mayo, the president of Digra right now, the Mayo stuff, and we're reading it out loud on my stream, and we're talking about how this stuff, the stuff they're saying was like cultural Marxism. It was stuff like we don't want. The gamers and gamers are dead. We want the non-gamers, and then it wasn't just them saying it. They're and like there was people like big companies talking about they want non-gamers. De developers talking about they want the new gaming demographic, and it's like they want these people to make the choices, the decisions for people in gaming, but they don't like games. That's like that's like saying um, uh, that's like making oh, a horror. One, one sec, somebody said, "Have I done a stream with Sargon?" No, I haven't. Uh, but if he's out there and wants to join in, have him message me on uh, Twitter. Oh, I, I'll get him right now. He's on. He's a great guy to talk to, by the way. He's a really, really smart guy. And he's no, a, yeah, I watched his videos. I like his videos. He's an indie dev, by the way, too. I didn't know that. He was keeping it. He's, uh, he's an indie dev. I didn't, had no idea. But it's very interesting. Is he working on the hit sequel, Fez 2? Did he buy Polytron? Uh, no, he's working on a game that's kind of... It's like a, it's a, He'll explain. I'll let him, if he wants to talk about his game. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm excited for it. But... Um, Hold on, let me see if I can message him real quick. I know he's on. He logged on and said hi to me. I just didn't uh, pay attention to my shit because I don't ever... Hey, there he is right there. He said, did you enjoy the Digra? You... <laughs> he's asking me about the Digra stuff. He's like, as soon as he comes on, it's the first thing he starts talking about is more Digra because we've been looking at the stuff the whole time. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I'm, I'm bleeding. Oh, put a Band-Aid on? I'm bleeding in chat, but you go ahead and do your thing. I'm I know, I know. I'm I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Don't mind me. All right. Yeah, I'll go back to chat questions here. <laughs> yeah, Donald Duck, uh, or Dolan Duck. Yeah, Shrek caused the Holocaust. He traveled back in time and was uh, solely responsible for it. Uh, what do you think about uh, the finance capitalists meeting their goal? Uh, I figured they'd raise the money and be able to move forward and design the game. It seemed like they had a lot of support, so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, speaking on, on the Finding Capitalists and the... Uh, is that what you're talking about? The the Vivian Games game? Is that what it was? Yeah, somebody was asking about uh, uh, that meeting their goal. What uh, Did anybody see Matt's response to Twitch TV banning Matt for talking about Gamergate on Twitch when he was showing off the game? Did anybody else see that when that happened? Just out of curiosity, chat, I just was wondering. I might have saw that, because I missed that, but he told me all about it. Oh, uh, no. no. I didn't see that. I do. It, it's apparently, he was streaming on Twitch TV, and he brought up Gamergate, and they banned him for that. And he was streaming, uh, talking about his game and stuff, and then he started talking about the Gamergate stuff that was going on, like we would normally do right now, or in my stream, or uh, in one of your videos or something. And then they banned him right afterwards. So I thought it was very... I, I haven't talked to him since then, but he just complained. He just bitched at me about it for a little bit. He was like, these guys are dicks. And I was like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say, you know? <laughs> Uh, hold on one quick. One, I'm, I'm going to get him in here. He wants the link, so uh, I don't... Where do I get the link? I, I'm uh, new to Twitter as well, so I have no idea how this shit works. Yeah, oh, there we on. go. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Let me check my fucking privilege here. I think... No, is that the right one? I don't know if this is right. Maybe... You know what? Just give me the link, because right now I'm linking retarded shit, and I just got, like, 22 messages in my dump box. It's oh, here. Hold on. hold on one second. Yeah, no problem. Yes, I am a shitlord. Absolutely. Uh... <laughs> All right, and then if you just want to copy and paste it, and then just send it to him via DM, there you go. It uh, should be the it should be the same link I sent you. It okay. Hold on, let me see if it's working here. Cause it, like I copied it, and they tried to give me like some Twitter thing. Maybe that's why. Let me see if I can open a new. T no. Let's see. Hold on. Hold on one sec. Um, oh, I got. I got it. I got it. I got it now. I just had to open it and then recopy it. It's just a pain in the ass. And then he's gonna come in here in a second. Sorry. Sorry. What's your opinion on SJW Andrew thing after – he's not a social justice warrior. Listen, if you listen to the whiskey stream, okay, and the guy's first thing – they brought me on there to debate this guy. And the first shit right out the gate, okay, is I'm a social justice warrior, but I'm also a Nazi party member, and uh, ISIS did better things than, than, uh, than Gamergate is doing, okay? Right off the bat, he says this, and the first thing me and whiskey ask him is, are you trolling us? And his next question response was, yes, I am trolling you. I'm trolling everyone in here. And the reason why is because I want to get by and make you guys take the bait so I can use it against you. 
and, and in different various means. As, you know, after so that, you, no you, got, in, you got trolled, is what you're saying. Andrew what? was a troll. The, the first Andrew, yeah, the Andrew guy, he uh, he came on, and that was what he said. So I immediately said, okay, that's all I need to hear. You're a troll. I mean, we just want to get rid of him. But in, but the people, there was other people in the call and the debate. There was about 2,000 people watching the stream, and it wasn't on mine. It was on Whiskey's. Uh, and they started debating this guy soon afterwards, and he started jumping to, like, Anita, Sarkeesian, and Zoe Quinn and trying to make them relevant and, like, harassment, how he's a journalist, and just trolling even more. And then he kept mentioning how he was trolling them as they were talking to him. And I and then he kept calling everybody a sociopath. Like the chat was a sociopath, we were sociopaths. So I, I stopped him. I said, "Listen, are you are do you even understand what a sociopath is? I mean, you're talking to somebody who's a psychologist." And he stops. He's like, "I don't need to explain myself to you because you're a jackass." And I was like, "Okay, so your feelings are dictating things." And then I just cut him off. I was like, "Look, I'm out, guys. You know, just this is the kind of guy you want to avoid and block him on Twitter. Move on with your life and just walk the fuck out." But they debated him for another like hour and thirty minutes right after that, and I just I I left. I couldn't do that. There's no point. Uh, did somebody join? Uh, I don't know. I see. I gave somebody, it to Sargon. Somebody joined and left. I might have been Sargon. He got bad internet. Ah. Uh, I'll give him, give him the link again. Let me see if he'll try again. All right. While I, you're trying that, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through the chat here because it looks like ahead, they have to uh, let's see. Hot, uh, hot. A hedge fund kid is a plant-based jukin that lives in the forest and steals the gold from passing merchants. <laughs> <laughs> That's good old poll. <laughs> Speaking of poll, so I, I, I got emotes on my channel. The the head, Hitbox guys gave it to me, and I had the guys vote on it. And so I asked them if it was okay. So the emotes they picked were like the angry merchant guy, absolutely disgusting. I got George Zimmerman's face in one. Uh, someone tried to do Tyrone or, or Trayvon Martin. I, you guys, Dorner's one of them. You guys are fucking ridiculous. I don't even know how you got these passed, but you guys are fucking ridiculous. Chad. Well, what were you, what were you expecting with the name? <laughs> well, they voted on it. There's a couple Ebola Chan ones in there. It's like one of her, then a heart with Ebola wrapped around it. It's fucking ridiculous. I have no idea. These guys are fucking. They're crazy. Oh wait, I got some shit popping up on Steam. Let's see what they want. Uh. Fucking Dina. Are you a fan of the TV show Elf? <laughs> Who is your favorite character? Well, yes, Elf is a fantastic show. Um, and the father character would obviously be the best character on Elf. Uh, Jim Drew. That would be my answer to that. Is 8chan pulling a PR stunt, or is 4chan really kill? Is Moot a sellout SJW faggot? Um, like I said, I think Moot is looking to earn more venture capitalist money. That would be my guess on it. And he is being influenced by the people who would provide that money, at people that attended XOXO when he was there. Uh, hi, Jim. I'm mom on the radio. Okay. Uh, yo, can you play some Gauntlet? Not right now. Uh, somebody asked you about Dina. Look, listen, I asked Dina to come on my show to explain, and same with Rebecca Watson after that sh fucking video she uploaded. That that was like a whole other thing in itself. But... um. And Dina, Dina refused outright. She blocked me right off of the bat. She did. Yeah, and then uh, Rebecca Watson DM'd me, and I ended up being called a misogynist, uh, and uh, and was blocked right afterwards. So that was my response to her. At both of them asking them nicely if they would like to come on Friday to talk to me, an internet aristocrat, uh, about uh, their standings and why why things are happening in my number nine and what's going on with that. And Rebecca Watson's. Well, in, like, in like I said, they're, they're fucking cowards. No, I, you're rarely going to get anybody to accept an invite on the it's other side. It's really hard. I, I'm not gonna lie. I got one, and that's that one guy that we're going to be coming on tomorrow. And he's he. I, I had a, it took him. I talked to him for four to five days straight, and before I at vetting him before I because I you know it's so hard. Like I, that's what I had to tell Whiskey with that one Andrew guy came on because he just brought him on just from a couple tweets. I said, look, you got to talk to these guys and really get some information and see where they're at because you, they might be just fucking with you the entire time. So it's just so hard. Like I've reached out to Matt Lees and I've reached out to Anita and, and all these other people and everybody who kind of stands to it. All the game journal pros on that list, all 150 of them reached out to, and none of them really responded. I mean, I've gotten a couple. I've gotten journalists here and there, but none of them that are anti gamer game. I think I think only one or two actually want to speak. Most of them just block you outright and call you names. So. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, I know somebody in chat was asking about Dina. Listen, I, I did a video on her back nine or ten months ago when she got the gig as a community manager and artistic designer or whatever the fuck the extra title was for designing things, but not necessarily in the game, as she said. But it, it, she openly stated she doesn't play Mega Man games. She openly stated she got the job because she knows somebody. I remember getting a bunch of shit. Oh, nepotism. is That happens everywhere. What's the big deal? 
you're, you're seeing the big deal now. She's fucking shitting over, uh, she's shitting on people that basically financially supported the game and are talking about Gamergate. It has nothing to do with Mighty Number no. 9, but she's abusing her position as a community manager to block them from the official uh, Twitter account, kicking them off forums, doing the same fucking shit she was doing when she first got the job. And, you know, what I want to know is how nobody at that at concept has any idea that she's doing this. Like, they don't check the Twitter. I, I feel like they just let her run. Or Like, I can't imagine that they just let her run with, like, a leash. I mean, she's dating one of these guys, right? Isn't she? And she's, like, friends with these fucking guys. Yeah. And she eats with them every day. So how do they not know? I mean, what is she just, like, uh, you know, maybe they, what, they don't fucking know English or something? It's so confusing. When I when I read the shit that she does and like the people raging, like that guy who got banned and he donated three hundred dollars and he was like, how how is this even irrelevant? And they won't give him a refund. It blows my mind and it really pisses me off. Um, and on a side note, Sargon said you have to add him to the hangout by looking up his name, uh, internet, which is Sar, Sar Sargon Avocado, all spaced out. So I don't know if you want me to spell it for you. Yeah, there's a chat feature. Here, let me open it up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know shit about this, man. All right, look at the Google Hangout thing. Oh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> you mean <laughs> two idiots, two idiots here who now know shit about this stuff. Oh wait, or does uh, that put that? Oh, that might. I have tried to put uh, a post. How now. do I type in this? How do I, oh, like, we, oh, I okay, like all right, all right. right. Um, <laughs> movie, yeah. Do you have the Google Hangouts window open? Um, you know what? Here we go. I got it. I got it. Hold on. No, I closed it. Now, where's the video at? Where's the the pop? Oh, pop yeah, that just, up just just DM me his name on Twitter, and I'll add him. Okay. Jesus. This is uh, I'm sorry, I'm like I'm not uh, I'm not savvy. Not savvy uh, at all. all right, let's see. Uh, concept or concepts PR knows they just don't really give a shit. Yeah, concept. Uh, listen, when that video first when I did the Dina video, I got a message from somebody who uh, essentially said, or people at Capcom had seen it and were laughing because uh, they thought it was funny. Like the idea that you know, oh, we're gonna make a spiritual spiritual successor to Mega Man, and it got fucked right out of the gates. So. It's just it's bad PR for the company. It's bad PR like it was bad PR for um, for uh, Gearbox with the way Birch is behaving. I, these people shouldn't be associated with these companies. They're hurting a brand by behaving the way they do. But it was, isn't it also that the fact that the people who actually got the beta now they're saying that it's not even a Mega Man game that it doesn't even to feel like a Mega Man game that it's too easy and casual. I mean you know yeah. you fucked up if you come out if you're trying to make a game and you're saying this game is going to be exactly like. Like a Mega Man. This is a Mega Man game, and then people are telling you the first main problem is it's not a Mega Man game. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to add him now. Okay, go ahead. I'll just uh, read. You. Look up "Never Change Japan" on YouTube. Okay. Uh, can cause be saved? I, you know what? I, I talked about this with this with the group. They were asking me psychologically, uh, how do you explain these people? And I and I had to explain to them the bar, the the psycho bar. The, the psych bar that we use, where it's like when you testing somebody, uh, somebody's wherewithal on things, you would set, you would say the most distraught thing that would set them off, and then you would go gauge it by lowering down on what you're saying to them and watching the reaction. Eventually, when they get to a point where they're comfortable, then you know that's where their comfort zone is. And and uh, in my opinion, I think that social justice warriors have almost no comfort zone or no bottom at all. And when there's no bottom at all. Uh, you're talking about people who are unhinged at that point. They're, they're some mentally unstable, and they and they don't really realize it. And most crazy people won't know that they're crazy. So that's something you nearly need to understand. Somebody who's really sick, uh, mentally un unstable at the time, and things are going on with them, they don't know for the most part because acceptance is something that it comes in with the reality of you have something wrong with you. So they won't think they're crazy, and then paranoid delusion sets in. It's, it's, it's literally a fucking... It's crazy, bro. I, oh, okay. cycle, bro. I, I, I sent him an invite, so I, I hope that okay. went So uh, it's just a little bit for you, chat. Like I blew some minds. I, I was doing what's called the t the tape uh, uh, the tap test, and the tap test is very interesting too on some people because they wanted to see what I was talking about, and I gave a prime example with that. Which, if you guys are ever are bored and you want to fuck with your friends, get a random picture, uh, just a picture. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it could be anything, um, and. Uh, Tell them to write a story or to look at the picture and tell a story about what's going on in that picture, like just with, without giving them any information. They can be whatever they want, and then do that with like two other people, and and they will never be the same story. No one has the same exact story, and the reason why is because they project the things that's going on with them, or at, at any like everybody projects a certain amount. They'll project things into these pictures and they'll do things. They'll say things that will make sense to them, and you can read the person or what kind of person they are or what they're going through with their thoughts. So it's 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 oh, one, one sec. I got some questions coming through. Uh, what happened with Pit, Pitchford on Twitter? 
uh, I I got into a discussion with him because he was somebody had asked something and Pitchford had called the guy a coward for not wanting to reveal his real name and address, and so I'd asked Pitchford if he was so brave, why not comment on what his employees were saying, which was Anthony Birch making statements that there were connections to different gaming websites. Uh, you know, he made allegations. He essentially alluded to the fact that IGN is bought and paid for. I know it's a big joke, but he publicly declared that. Um, he also made allegations that you know Gearbox games get good reviews on Destructoid because he you know his relationship with the site owner and the history he had there and the people he knows there. And so I wanted to know what Birch's response was. And Birch, his response to that was uh, essentially, "Who cares?" He said, "Who cares? Uh, what what games have you ever bought off a of false review? I don't care." is basically what his fucking response was. And then he ended up deleting all of that after he got off his never-ending fucking plane ride. Because apparently he couldn't he couldn't discuss that anymore. He was on a plane. And then he landed and, I guess, deleted all those tweets. But uh, take my advice, Gearbox. You don't want bad PR, and Birch is giving you bad PR with the fucking mouth on him. Don't be silly. He's still flying in that plane, man. Come on, now. Uh, all right, going. so do we get the right guy here? or is it, Yeah, this is, this is Saga. I think you me, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Can you hear me, guys? Yep, can you hear yep. it? Grand. How are you all doing? Good, just, man. Doing good. <clears throat> we were uh, talking about the, uh, the the Mayo thing and the Digro earlier, uh, just a little bit of it, and the and the hedge fund babies, the discussion of that one that we yeah. looked into with the ancestry <laughs> shit we were doing. Oh, my God. Yeah, a bunch of fucking rich kids. Can you believe it? <laughs> you, you, know what it you know what it reminds me of? Uh, who are those two? It was a bunch of rich kids. This is from, like, the 1920s. They were very well off. They were very affluent, and they decided they just wanted to kill somebody to see if they could get away with it. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Oh, yeah, probably. No, no, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. I... They they were like very very high, you know, standing wealthy families that were established. Um, they wore oh, fuck. There was a movie about it where they wore like owl masks and shit. Let me see if I can. Find I know it. exactly what you're talking about. These guys were one of the first. Well, they were back then. They were considered serial killers in their own sense. But when they were caught, they they had. Oh, the, Leah, Le, yeah, Leopold and Loeb, Chicago's yep. throat colors. Yep. It's looking around now. But that's that's what it reminds me of when you're talking like hedge fund babies, when you're talking about that kind of stuff. It's these rich kids that are disconnected with the real world again and want to uh, invent oppression and hate mommy and daddy, but right. will live off their money. Well, I mean, it's it's that, and then the stuff that they talk about. Like like I said, it's like this cultural Marxism stuff that they start talking about and pushing. It. That's what it seems like they talk about at least. And and then when you ask them about it, it just they don't they don't really understand what the hell they're saying. So it it makes me wonder if they even understand what they're promoting. Oh, as for my somebody's asking, what are my thoughts on uh, Thunderfoot getting banned on Twitter? I think it's bullshit. He, there's no reason he should be banned on Twitter. It's there's no fucking reason he should be. It's absolute crap. Uh, he obviously got bombed by false reports, and he never posted anything that was anywhere near being um, against the terms of service. Are they ever going to lift that, or is he still is he still locked down? Uh, I don't know. I know he did a video addressing it, but he was obviously doing other shit, so he didn't. He, he couldn't afford, uh, from what he was saying, the experiments were expensive to you know fuck about with it too much. But right. I don't know if they've lifted it yet or not. But there's no reason he should have been banned. That's complete fucking bullshit. What are your thoughts on Carmack's response to the gender gap? Uh, base Carmack, I think that he was absolutely fucking right, in my opinion. I, I agree. I, I think he stated the reality of it. It's not that they're denying women positions, it's just women aren't applying. They're looking for the best person, that's all. Why? That's. I don't get that about social justice warriors. Why do they hate the idea of merit? Why should the person who is most qualified for the job not get it, just because they're male or they're white or they're straight? Oh, you that's know? easy. <laughs> That's easy. That's because they don't have any fucking merit, and they know it. They all study gender studies and whatever, and that means they've got no practical skills, they've got no real-world applications, so now they have to whinge their way into whatever it is they're trying to do. Is, is this, uh, is this the con going to delve into that conversation where you talked to me about the bead store? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I can tell everyone about the bead store. <laughs> Go ahead. I'd love to hear I, it. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I visited uh, my, my sister, who is a, a devout feminist, uh, in Bristol. And it must, you know, must have been a lovely trip. It, no, no, no. It, 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 they, they're not, they weren't... I mean, this was like 2008, probably. In fact, it was good for years ago now. But it, well, no, no, it probably wasn't that long ago. But it was, you know, when, when, I, when, you know, when the economic crisis was happening. And I, I was at cash point, and I turned around. And in front of me, there were two shops. One was like a hardware shop or something like that. And the other one was a bead store. 
and the hardware shop had closed down because it had gone out of business, and the bead store had people coming and going in and out of it. <laughs> and I was just like, what kind of fucking town supports a bead store? That's all it sold, just beads, colored beads. Apparently they, they liked making shitty, tacky jewelry, I guess. <laughs> That's a bit popular. It just, oh, good God, what kind of economy do these people work on? Yeah. <laughs> good God. Well, to be to be fair, you really you know once you buy a hammer, you're pretty much set for life. But uh, I guess those beads are such low quality; you need to buy them every fucking day. <laughs> uh, somebody wants to know I, your thoughts on the Sarkeesian effect. Uh, yeah, people have asked me about that a bunch of times. Listen, if they want to make a documentary and dig into it, why not? Uh, they got in both. You know, uh, Jared, uh, uh, Owen, and Arini got a lot of shit for even talking about wanting to do that. Again, it was blowback. How dare you even want to look into that? Mm. Anything that's treated as a sacred cow should have its shit examined. That's my opinion on it. So when people say, oh, you can't make a documentary about Anita Sarkeesian, how dare you? But then I want to see the fucking documentary. You know what I mean? It's all the more reason to do it. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, what, what do you guys, um, did you guys want to know anything about uh, what I've found out about Digra? I'm going to be, oh, um, yes, absolutely. I'm going to be doing a video about it um, tomorrow, actually. Yeah, if you want to share, man, go ahead. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know... Um, ba basically, it was founded in, like, 2002 by people who were proper academics. You know, they weren't gender ideologues. Mm -hmm. And you can see that around 2006... Uh, it's a surprisingly old institution. And around 2006, feminists started infiltrating it and now it's dominated by feminists they they are all dyed in the wool man hating feminists see i really um, wish you had said two, or 2007 cuz that would have been the most spectacularly perfect timing well well actually i say 2006 but that was just um let me just uh, get a link up hang on let me just check something because um, if you can tie this into bazinga that's going to be fucking great I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually not familiar with what that is, but I tell you what, if you can give me some names... Oh, no, no, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, there's this little um, image macro that goes around where it's, you know, lol nerds in their video games from, like, 1986 all the way up till 2007 where women start to, like, feminists start to infiltrate gaming. And oh. in the thread, somebody was like, what happened in 2007? And somebody's like, when did Big Bang Theory start to air? And it was in 2007. So it's referring to Sheldon Cooper uh, making wow. that Bazinga joke. Right, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that that image has been around everywhere, so that's why I was saying if you could have tied it in, that would have been great. Well, it, it would probably would have made more sense in 2006. What You were saying, what, were they rap were they just getting into it in 2006? So, again, yeah. is that what you said? So, I mean, maybe in 2007, that's probably when the foothold was actually starting. You sh you're probably starting to see it. Right, it, it, so it just goes back to, again, they co-op shit. So you're yeah. saying it was started by proper academics, and so this group yeah. comes along and sees it, and they co-opt it and fucking shit it up. Yeah, I, I, I can I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. I mean, all of these people um, did things like you know they they they've they've all got their CVs online because they don't realize that there are people who think they're you know what they are, and so they, they, you know they they openly say that they studied feminism and gender studies as a minor or you know as a major and all this sort of stuff, and they've written various papers about gender and feminism and and it and it, it's all in relation to gaming. So it, it's so easy to see just what's happened and you can tell, I mean there are some fruitcakes on there as well, there are some like uh, there's this one guy who's absolutely obsessed with sustainability and everything, everything he does has the word sustainability in it and it's just like, right, okay, he's just an ideologue of another stripe, you know uh, <laughs> but uh, sorry, let me just let me just find this thing a minute and um yeah, see, exactly so, so they, they did to digger what they've done to everything else. They they fucking oh. got in and they used it as a shield for their bullshit profiteering and their bullshit philosophy. And I bet you the people that were were the people that were originally connected with it, the founders in two thousand two, have they distanced themselves from that at all? Oh yeah. The 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 way that the uh Digra board works, the executive board of Digra, it's by voting. Oh god, they got voted out of their own fucking organization. I yeah. think they may have done. So, so it's I Occupy Wall Street, is... the fucking organization, is what this I'm, is. I'm, yeah. I'm not joking, right? Yeah, Tanya Kruinska or something. Are you talking about? Is that the president Sargon that we were looking into that we talked yeah. about? We tried to contact. Well, not not well. They, they've had a couple in 2006. It was Franz Mayara or something, some guy from Finland. Um, 
and he he's he's like a gaming academic. I mean, he 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 has an article or a paper where he talks about diversity of games, and you think, oh god, you know, this guy's a he was one of them. But he's actually talking about game types, you know, like chess, Dungeons and Dragons, Quake, you know, all that sort of thing. That that to me is what you would be talking about when you're talking about diversity in games, you know. Um, but the, then he, in 2006, is voted out, and in 2007. Tanya Kruinska's in there, and she's a proper gender ideologue. She's absolutely dyed in the wool. And then you can just see, like, the numbers of them grow, and you can... Like, Esther McCallum Stewart, right? In 2007, she joins. Uh, no, sorry, in 2006, she joins. And she's just on, you know, an open seat. She's nobody. Um, 2007, she's a nobody. And then in 2010, she's the vice president, you know? And so I think, and and you can just honestly, I, I'm gonna, I'll do the video on it tomorrow, so everyone can see just exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, because I want to watch that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and then by current day, you've got Mia Consalvo, Ashley Brown, um, Anika Warren, uh, Rachel Cower, Hannah Weirman, um, Lindsay Grace, and Jessica Weber, and who are all absolute feminists, died in the feminists, and that's out of eleven people, you know, so more than half of them. So that's voting power, probably. I would so, say so. Yeah. You can, you can exactly see how these people exactly as you say they they just join something they I imagine they sweet talk their way in because these guys aren't particularly um handsome guys and I don't really <laughs> think that um I don't really think they're I I think there's definitely um they they're playing on their gender these women I think they really think they are I mean I can't prove that obviously that's entirely conjectural but right but I, I, I mean I think I've met these type of people before you know. Right, but I mean, I, th I think it plays into a common flaw with academia, is there you've got intelligent people that aren't street smart. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So they, they, they're they mm. so focused on what they're researching, and they're so focused on the ideas that they're exploring, they don't understand that they're getting fucked, essentially, and the way they're yeah. getting fucked until it's already happened. Is that is that why we have Common Core? I, please tell me. <laughs> don't, don't even get me started on that fucking apartment. <laughs> I showed Sargon the video of the guy who's like, oh my well, you guys God. have too much white privilege, so that's why we have Common Core. <laughs> Did you hear him get booed? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm so, that, was, that made me so happy. It made me feel a little bit good inside that there were still people left with, with insanity. Well, did you see the other one too? The white privilege conference they've been doing in Madison for fifteen years. What? Oh yeah, the one where they had like where they were indoctrinating like children at the age of fucking like six. Yeah, it, it was kindergarten. Straight up, straight up propaganda. It Is that the one where it uh, said if you have privilege, then you are white? Yes. 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 <laughs> have you seen that, Sargon? They like they have these kids yeah. writing stories, and then they'd stand up and they start fucking reading their stories about like white. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They're kids. Yeah. What, what's a kid gonna know about fucking gender? All, all you're all you're doing is like breeding a new type of uh, a new type of supremacist or or a uh, new type of uh, prejudice in that in that aspect. Like, these kids are gonna grow up and think that white people are bad or, or this color is better than this color. I mean, I really is that what I thought we got far out of that during the Civil Rights Act? Like, what the fuck is this? Well, you you gotta understand like how this plays into politics too. Um, look at uh, I believe if yeah if you go look it up it's from January eighth twenty fourteen go look up Obama administration guidelines that could lead to racial quotas in school discipline. Jesus Christ! No 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 this is a philosophy saying that uh, they looked at the numbers and they said why is it that we have minority uh, students getting suspended from school so much? And instead of saying that maybe it's a socioeconomic issue maybe it's just that those kids happen to be misbehaving they decided that it was racist. And so they want to create quotas so that you cannot suspend a certain amount of... It has to be equal. Equal amounts of black and white get in suspended. <laughs> God, we're one step behind Sweden, I swear. Um, get ready for it, Sweden, yes. Uh, somebody linked me this. Uh, <laughs> a new UN report on, uh, on from the, I guess, the Kutaku in Action stuff. And the UN is saying that moral fairness can be easily disposed of. I don't know. What? I haven't read this. I have no idea. I haven't read this. Somebody link it. Somebody linked it in here, and then they they tweeted it to me, you and uh, and Sargon here to say, look at this. Oh, uh, UN report on social justice, top page three. Present day believers in an absolute truth identify the virtue and justice are neither willing nor desirable companions for the defenders of social justice. Right. So they don't want to be related to truth or honesty or any of that shit. Um, too long didn't read. Raw uh, royal theories theory of justice dictates that wealth be distributed so that the, on the those on the bottom are helped the most, which doesn't imply complete equity in distribution. 
Some economists believe wealth inequality is better, while others argue that complete equality is better. And there is nothing resembling a consensus. There has been a great outcomes on equal rights, but social justice is about equality of outcomes, which means you can't treat everyone the same. You have to take opportunity. Uh, that take you have to take oh, opportunity. See, away. Fuck, fuck that shit. The quality of outcomes. It's a quality of opportunity. You give everybody a fair shot at right. achieving something. You don't guarantee them the outcome. That's nanny state bullshit. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, no, no, it's the, putting the cart before the horse. You know, and, it is. Oh. Yeah. I've got. Um, by the way, you know that they're aware of what we're doing, aren't you? Are you talking about the videos, the streams? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, they're fully aware. In fact, I, um, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the, yeah, the, there's someone called um, Torin Mortensen, a uh, Toril Mortensen, sorry. Mm -hmm. And on the 11th of September, she wrote an article on her personal uh, thing, which is uh, torilsin.blogspot.uk, right. uh, where she talks about Gamergate, and she claims that she's still a gamer and all this sort of thing. But at the end of it, she says, as a special mention. I found myself sur I find myself surrounded by Frankfurt School followers, which is a link to my video about uh, the Diagra yeah. conference, uh, you know, and the very suspicious Diagra and feminist pre feminist professors and bloggers that are out to get their games. She's being a sarcastic twat, but right, this is all true. <laughs> There's a there. Okay, so I have I've been getting emails since the beginning of this, and I've and I've been doxxed twice now, and it's and I'm assuming every time the email will come to me. The guy's claiming that they're Kotaku writers. I don't know if they are. They're claiming. They're saying it's a dump email Kotaku you're, you're, writer. You're being, you're being fucked with, again, by a third party that's out for laughs. Uh, that's just right, right. Yeah. right. So th that's that's mm -hmm. my aspect. They'll, they'll, they'll link one type of docs, and then by the end of my stream, they'll drop it in chat, right? And then one of them said they're going to write an article on me, uh, and I and then people found – when they docked me the first time, it was like some uh, old dating website that I used, and I put on there, do I want kids? No, and so everybody starts saying I hate children, right? Oh, that's then, where that came from. Okay. Yeah, that's where that's where I hate children came from because I got doxxed on my stream, and then one of the anti gamergate guys came in and doxed it, saying he was a Kutaku writer, and then he doxed me. So he drops the, the, that in there, and then that's where everybody starts saying I hate children, and um and then uh, after that somebody was asking about like Hitler and stuff like that, and like is there anywhere they can go watch stuff, and so I, I brought that up, and then I was like I got an email that same night saying well uh said uh oh, we're gonna make an article on you about not Nazism and stuff like that, and somebody I know somebody in this chat's gonna know what I'm talking about the next day. An article came out talking about Gamergate and Nazi-related tendencies immediately. <laughs> I, immediately, who's somebody find that article? It's it's out there. It's something about like Nazism and Gamergate. Somebody. It was like the next day after the stream because I uploaded the stream and everything, and I was like, okay, there, there is there, somebody's pulling my chain, or they were watching the stream, and they were talk when we ended the stream, and I was talking to them about Nazi Germany stuff, and and now and Nazism versus Gamergate-related stuff. It, it, I swear, and don't forget, I hate Australians. Thanks, guys. So, oh, oh, well, yeah, we we've established that. We all know your raging hatred for Australians. I, you know, I had one Australian on my stream, and Sargon was in that call, and that was after the debate with the Cause guy, uh, which you'll be talking to tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and uh, he was a fucking. I have to admit, he he was a a big troll. I had to remove him pretty quick. What Cause? No, no, no. The guy after him, that they, that Australian guy we brought in, that want to talk. And oh, he was yeah. Just like, I got a, <laughs> yeah, I got a thirty-five inch cock, and I'll fight all of the straight. Like immediately, that's what he comes into the the channel with, and he's like, "Fuck everyone!" And I just had to kick him out. It's it too much. See, that's why I love Aussies. They're they're great at that kind of shit. <laughs> As he came in, he's like, "Hey, my name's this, and I'm I'm this on Gamergate, and I have a thirty-five inch cock. I like long walks on the beach." I was like, "What is that timeout?" It's too silly. So, Sargon, has anybody threatened to uh, dox you yet? No, I think they're kind of scared of me, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right, man. They better there, be. There's, I, I, I'm, I'm entirely uh, funded by my YouTube channel and my patrons on Patreon, who don't just give me money per month. They give me money per fucking video so I can prove I've done some work. So when are, when are you going to start making 30-second videos every day, four or five <laughs> times a day? <laughs> Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's the thing. I don't. They, 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 they really give me a wide berth, um, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed to be honest. I don't feel like oh. I've made it until I've been doxxed. Thank you, Chad. Somebody found that article about the gamers that came out the next day with the Nazis. I'm sorry, I just had to go about it. They put it in. Was the that chat. was that actually on Kotaku? Uh, what, who was it on? I don't think it was Kotaku. Which one was it? It was one of it's uh, thoughtcatalog.com. Uh, gamers are Nazis. You need to stop hating on women. That was what. That's that's the article that came out the, immediately the next day after my stream, and it started talking about Gamergate and how it's related to Nazism. Now, I was oh, like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, the Nazis yeah. didn't hate women. 
I don't. They didn't. <laughs> they no, they didn't. absolutely didn't. They were. They were all. For, no, no, no. I'm a history guy. They. They were all for you know perfect Aryan German women who were gonna read the master. Race. Oh wait, wait. It was on thought catalog by Angus. Oh, you're getting fucked with by Miz. Why? Why? That's that's okay. Yeah, never mind. Oh. <laughs> No, 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 really, that's, yeah, don't even worry about it, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, I'm just saying, that came out right afterwards, and people started tweeting that to me, they're like, hey, remember you talking about Nazis, just thought I should just give this to you, this came out like four hours, or like, like ten hours after your, your stream, and Gamergate Nazis, you know, it's like... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just having fun, yeah, I, I don't think, and that wasn't the person that doxed you either, they're just, yeah, they're taking the piss out of you. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, and I, I think I know what you're talking about. So are you talking about why they would have the marches and they would have the women go to the camps and they'd all come back yeah. pregnant and stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, the, the Nazis were well into women. They were. They thought women were the, the, the backbone of Germany, you know, and they were, I suppose. I mean, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're way worse than the Nazis, guys. You know? Yeah, you, were, you didn't, you didn't ice, figure out that uh, thought catalog. It's Angus. And Gus? Angus? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, like, oh, it's satire? Okay, that's why. Thank you for fucking with me, guys, because that's what people were linking to me the next day. They're like, they wrote an article on you, bro, and I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's that person's put some of the funniest shit up, and if you go by the Miz board, you'll, you'll see what okay. I'm talking about. It's really good uh, stuff. Okay, I'll have to go read it. I never read the article. I just saw the title, and people said it had it had it was talking about Nazism and me hating children, and I was like, I'm done. All right, I'll walk away from that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about that sort of shit, man. It's, it's uh, a, what is this? People want to be the water, fat of taco. Um, I can bring. Oh, why short fat otaku wants on? I'm just looking through the chat. I got Who's caught up that? in the conversation. That was uh, indefeasible. That was um the oh, people okay. put that up on their channel. Um, how do I do this? What's your YouTube name? Somebody type out the YouTube name exactly as it is then. Um, Sorgan, did we did we ever get anywhere with the patron stuff? Because I left, and same with that. And did you hear about the archive stuff that was going on last night? I was investigating it with Monday and Matt. And uh, and then Rogue went on his own little tangent, and I couldn't we couldn't figure it out after that. Um, I've got an awful lot of stuff, um, so you're gonna have to be a bit more specific than that, I'm afraid. Um, okay, so the last night, uh, Rogue and was it this guy a fart a fart or was it Movie Bob or fart? I don't. And some guy missing Mr. Fart or Movie Bob, one of the two. And Rogue right. were going back in the archive stuff, and they were claiming that uh, people uh, somebody was ordering. Like well, like massive amounts of stuff from IGF and Silverstring uh, stuff from all the way back from 2009 to now were being deleted from the way way back machine on the way way back machine in big, massive bulks. Uh, really? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like we started looking into it. Me and Monday and Matt were trying to help him, and then Rogue went off on his own tangent, and like he came in the group, you know, our little group we were in before that public group, and mm. uh, was trying to get all of us into it. But it just it was like it was half confirmed, and then people would take it back saying, oh no no, it's bullshit. I'm not entirely sure what happened with it. I gave up because it was. Uh, I just felt too stupid. Yeah. Well, if we it. don't know, we don't know. But um, I know that Silverstring did remove their team page from their website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I've got that. screenshots of the original. Uh, they took the yeah, CEO off first, or CCO off first, and then they again did a second uh, update where they removed everything. Really. Yeah, and then even the existence of the team page from like the menu structure and all that sort of thing. And it's just like, well, you know, guys, if if you if we're investigating you and you guys start doing stuff like that. Then we know you're hiding something, right? <laughs> How yeah, makes stupid do you think we are? You know, <laughs> what? Why does everybody keep wanting me to talk to Movie Bob? What is? It, what's up with this guy? I don't have no idea. Oh, oh yeah. he'll try to get you arrested because he doesn't like your opinion. <laughs> like, I'm I'm not, what? What? He tried to get you arrested or something? What's going he on? He tried to get a teenage boy arrested in the UK because he made a video about trolling people in WoW, and I'm not joking. He wanted him arrested for hate speech. I mean, are you, are you serious? Is there like a link to this or something so I can? Yeah, I. I, I I argued with him. I hate it. It sounds gay even saying this, but I argued with him on Twitter. I'll give you the. I'll, I will post the picture again so you can see. Gay. I guess the person that started it was Patricia Hernandez. She picked oh on this kid. Oh my god! No, yeah, she picked on this kid who had a channel with about 200 subs. She picked on him because he was small and because she thought he'd be weak. And um, she wrote an article <laughs> saying he was the worst person in the world. And Movie Bob jumped on it and started having discussions with Jim Sterling on Twitter about getting uh, this kid arrested. Now, to his credit, Jim Sterling wasn't the one saying, let's get the kid arrested. That was fucking movie, Bob. <laughs> He's awful. He, he is so fucking awful, and he doesn't seem to realize you how know, awful he is. I, I just... I, why? What the fuck is the point? Who cares? You, you have some severe emotional damage. What the uh, fuck is wrong with you? It's a kid. There's, 
there's a quote of his going around um, that um, something like, "If high school wasn't hell for you, then you're the reason it's hell." I'm thinking, well, shit, I was just playing Dungeons and Dragons all through high school. So, <laughs> what was I doing to movie Bob? But he's he's but he was obviously bullied badly at school because he's fat and fucking useless. And okay, uh, I'm I'm posting the uh, movie Bob thing again. I put it up on Imager. So um, okay, <laughs> if you go if you look on Twitter, that'll be there. That's this is the picture. Of uh, this where, is where, this, where are you posting it at? So I it's on it. it's on Twitter. Go take okay. a look. I just okay. I literally just put it up, and it's an imager. It shows exactly what happened. Okay, all right. Let me go look in here. Um, uh, if you the the bottom's the most important part. It's movie Bob who said this. Uh, just to clarify, the discussion that took place on Twitter was less about whether or not I thought anyone or, or whether or not I thought he deserved to be arrested, and more about the fact that since the video maker in question was operating out of Europe, North Ireland specifically. His actions may actually be in violation of either local or EU laws against cyberbullying or encouraging the same. So not only did this asshole start talking... It, it, listen, he was trying to throw his weight around <laughs> to uh, scare the kid. And on top of that, he's mentioning where he lives, North Ireland specifically. How about fuck you, Bob? How about maybe not pick on a teenage boy as a big bad game journalist with Patricia Hernandez? You fucking unscrupulous piece of shit. This, this, okay, this kind of reminds me of an incident I had a long time ago. I, I have a, I have kids that um I, I have a group I game you know everybody plays games you got friends you play with games and stuff and they bring their little friends on and stuff on Teamspeak whatever you use and uh, I have a third there was like this kid that was like 13 at the time and I guess he was like trying to get away from I don't know like these gaming communities and stuff like that and something and the guy who ran it was like an ex veteran 40 year old guy and he went to 4chan on B and he docks the kid uh, because the kid asked to be unbanned I guess on his on his servers I, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So I did say something. I was just like, that's kind of messed up, man. And then the guy went back and doxed me and then called my work and said that I was a pedophile, child pedophile, uh, and then I had child porn on my computer, which entailed me to have to go into work and bring my laptop in. And I, So I've, I've dealt with something like that. Uh, it was very interesting. I, I just don't get people like that. But I don't know. Oh, I put the okay. I couldn't post it in chat. I put the movie bog or bog movie Bob uh, immigrant pick in the. It should be underneath the stream in the description. If you click on that, if chat wants to look at it, uh, there you go. Also, short Fatataka, you said you wanted to come on. I sent an invite through Google. Um, you have to get it through your YouTube channel. It should show up in notifications. Uh, I'm gonna go through my Twitter because people are linking me all this information stuff again. Um, what is this? Oh, Donkey Kong, okay. But shit, well, how old is this, by the way? Um, when did you post this? So this was January of last year. I mean, these people have been doing this shit for years. Uh, it, it just, Patricia went after this kid because he was small. Bob jumped on the bandwagon for SJW points and tries to downplay it like it's not a big deal. It right. is a big deal. Listen, I, I'm an asshole. I've done terrible shit. I, I make horrible jokes on the internet, but I'm not the guy trying to project uh, the image of being this, you know, upright, uh, upstanding person who's, you know, morally and ethically superior to everybody. I'm not the guy saying I'm a journalist. You are, Bob. Uh, so what? Well, just try to act the fucking part is what I'm guess I'm it's saying. It's the problem with progressivism, man. The ends justify the means. You know, so if they have to be complete twats to 15-year-old boys in Northern Ireland to somehow establish their progressive narrative and hegemony over whatever there is they're trying to get, then they'll do it. You know, unscrupulous. That's the problem. Oh, and you know the killer part too is. Uh, hold on, I want to. I don't want to misquote him, so I'm going to read this verbatim because it's. It, it, hold on, Bob. Where the fuck did you say this? Because okay, you remember in the uh, the thing that I posted how he said I didn't try to get him arrested. I was just talking about if you could get him arrested, right? What? He said wow. he said he went on to say this on Twitter when I was talking to him about it. Shrug. If I see someone doing something wrong and I think maybe there's a law against it, a thing I consider doing is informing the police. So he's trying to do like he's backpedaling. <laughs> he he states it outright on Twitter. Yeah, I wanted the kid to get arrested. So fuck off, Bob. Trying to play it both sides and act like that wasn't what you were doing. <laughs> You just fucking said it on September 23rd that, yeah, you thought it was illegal, and yeah, you would like to talk to the police about it. Because the kid trolled somebody in WoW. Are you fucking kidding me? It's fucking disgusting, man. It's absolutely disgusting. Well, I mean, how, how do these people react to my gut? How do these people react to any group out there that organizes trolling and fucking video games? Uh, you know, like, it ridiculous. Go ahead. Yeah, it, I mean, look at all the my gut videos, like you said. Uh, what is it? Crush a can for fucking, was it Jim or something? like? I can't remember the guy, the kid's name. 
Anybody might know what I'm talking about. They did like this thing where they go around and harass Crush the fucking women. Yeah. That's it. That's it. There we go. You got those. That kind of. I mean, they do crazy shit all the time. But they don't ever. They don't ever go after those kind of people. There was, wasn't there like a group of like, speaking WoW related? There a long time ago. There was like a WoW guild where they went and like ganked all these people who were having like a real internet fucking uh, funeral for a guy who died in real life or something. Does any, did anybody ever see that video? I, I don't know. But it's like shit like that, and they don't fuck with that, but they fuck with a kid. I don't get it. All right, uh, short fat otaku. I'm sending again. Um, oh, let's see. All right, invitation posted. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, I, it's part of what gaming is. Listen, I I get trolled all the fucking time. I I play Ace of Spades because I'm fucking autistic, and the shitty Steam version, not the good version either. And people come in all the time and spam grenades and fucking knock your shit down. That's just part of the game. Oh God. Um. Uh, what is this? Uh, your face when I is secretly a pull shit poster. I'm not secret about it. I like pull and I shit post a lot. That's part of, like, I have the V mentality and I like the pull content. It's a terrible combination. I can just see it now because I go to pull regularly. I can just see the kind of fucking posts you make now. Now that you say that, <laughs> God no. Crush a can. People are saying I already did in my first fucking live stream. Somebody said crush a can for Jay Owen and I fucking crushed one. You can hear it in the audio. I don't have a webcam, so I can't. I can't show it to you. Which hurts, by the way. It's not a fucking pleasant sensation. But I'm not going to deny a poor little kid with cancer his one dying request. I'm not an asshole. Maybe Movie Bob should crush a can for Jay Owen. Maybe if oh. he's such an upstanding guy, he should do that. You know, actually, I, never, I don't think I ever really got to ask you, uh, uh, Jim. If you did, you what did you think about the 150 journalists that came out and the whole like uh, Kyle Orland, Ben Kuchera thing coming out talking about? Oh yes, you know, we're we're proud of this fucking. Gag. Uh, Google group and and how we're running things here and you better keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about Fight Club. It, it's arrogance again. These people, like I said, look at look at the information you guys have dug up or Short Fat Attack or Camera Later right. or anybody else that's looked into it. These people are that full of themselves that they think they can't get caught and they've dragged their ass across the entirety of the internet, leaving a trail that anybody could fucking follow. Um, of course they're proud about it. They don't think they've done anything wrong. They're just they're just so fucking smug at the end of the day is what really, I think, irks me the most. I it's think like they're also not very bright people. either. What's um, that? I, d I don't think they're very bright either. Um, one of the things I've been doing in this guy, uh, Digro research is that they, they, they use such childish and infantile language. They, they don't write well. You know, they, The academics, their, their papers read like academic papers, but the ideologues, their papers read like they were written by teenagers. You know, and it's it's just like these these people don't really seem to be very intelligent. Oh, uh, one sec. Um, people are asking, do you go to 4chan or 8chan? I like Poll and V on 4chan, but with the way Moot's behaving, I've been posting and browsing 8chan. I go to 8chan's V, I go to 8chan's Poll, I go to 8chan's GG board. That's where I go. Oh, um, just... That's that's just where I'm going right now because I'm pissed off at the way Moot's behaving. Uh, speaking uh, off topic, just to talk about something poll related, what did you think about like uh, America launching all those fucking missiles at ISIS all in one day, <laughs> that, and then watching it on live stream? Did you watch that actually on the live stream? Oh, I didn't have a chance to. I've been oh, so swamped with God. obligations. It, it look. It, you remember the Baghdad thing when they invaded Baghdad? You can watch that on live stream. The, the back back when we uh, in the Iraqi war. Who was the guy that was doing PR for Iraq? Uh, what was it? Baghdad. What was his name? He I was a guy. That, he would go on TV and say, we're not being invaded as bombs are exploding behind him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't oh, know. I would... the administer of information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's the perfect parallel for fucking Gamergate. That's, that yeah. guy is Ben Kuchera. That's exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> Explosions are going on behind Ben, and he's like, everything's fine, man. Game journalism's doing great. <laughs> That's, that's, it, that's the perfect analogy. <coughs> oh, the cough is real. I've um, I've got Mia Consalvo's application to be president of Digra. Do you guys want to hear some of the stuff she's got planned for Digra? Oh, please. Has... please. Oh, wait, wait. One, one second, though. I want to see if this is true. Did Jimmy oh. Wales actually make a public statement about how shitty Wikipedia has become after they've let idiots get in control of fucking administrating it? I don't know. Is, is that is that oh, Baghdad Bob, by the way, is his name. Is that true? Um, because Jimmy Wales is, you know, it's always every year they're doing their fundraiser, keep Wikipedia alive. Well, maybe, you know, go look at their talk pages if you want to see clusterfucks of arguments <laughs> of the most biased shit from omission uh, I've ever fucking seen in my life. Oh, my God. I I'm actually going to do that right now. 
Hold on. Oh, yeah, go look at the... Um, a really good example of this is go look at uh, the Bradley slash Chelsea Manning page and look at the talk page where they're arguing about this. And then look at the people who are arguing for changing all the pronouns and stuff. Go read up on who they are. Oh, don't even know if I want to. Yeah, it's it's a clusterfuck. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Sargon. What were you saying? Oh, no, no, it's all right. It's, uh, I've just got, like, um, you know, boring Digra stuff. But um, It's not boring to me, man. I find that shit interesting. Oh, um, Mia Consalvo, her um, application to be president of Digra, uh, she lists a bunch of the things she wants to change. Um, oh, somebody's yelling at you saying it's Digra, not Digra. That's a Freudian slip on his part. He wants it to die, as do we all. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just my English accent. I, I don't pronounce <laughs> anything Digra. Um, you guys can't pronounce the word twat either, so, you know. Swing, you know. Well, I, can, I, can't, I can't pronounce anything if you've ever heard me try to say it verbally, <laughs> so I'm up shit in Greek yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, no, no hyperbole here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, basically, right, she says um, uh, she wants to change the direction Digra's going in. Um, and Sorry, I've just lost my place now. Yeah, she's like... Um, other mechanisms, such as the recent, recently launched Two Digra Journal, that can help those who need publication as a way to justify their attendance. So she's trying to get people in who aren't already in and don't qualify due to a lack of body of work. And then she says, are there other ways to make the conference valuable without double-blind peer review? Isn't that a strange thing for an academic to say? It's a very fucking strange thing for an academic to say. And it, it wow. Almost like they're not a good academic, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredible, yeah, if you can <laughs> believe it. Uh, but it, it ties in really well with, um, I can't remember, was Adrian Shaw or T.L. Taylor who said in the Playful is Political Fishbowl about um, how the peer review process is slowing them down? Uh, I think so, actually. I think, weren't we talking about that last time? Yeah, 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 I think we were. Yeah. And and that's that's the thing. All of these people that, that and and the thing is, I've seen other. I'll I'll find all this to put in the videos. But I've, mm -hmm. I've seen um. I've read their blogs, and on the Digra website, there's a forum where these idiots talk about all this stuff in public because they're idiots, and they they say things like um. In basically, in their blog posts and stuff, they go on about how they have to keep. And they're annoyed that they have to keep justifying what they do to their academic colleagues because their academic colleagues are like, why would we want to fund any of this? Oh, God, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of exactly what Sokol was bitching about in the 90s. It's exactly what he was arguing about when he said, you've got postmodernists, you've got these very left-leaning or left-leaning academics with degrees in shit like gender studies <laughs> coming into science fields and yep. bitching about the way we do stuff and running their own journals that aren't peer-reviewed. In fact, that's the whole thing. If you look up the Sokol Affair, if you go to Wikipedia and look up the Sokol Affair, he fucking, uh, S-O-K-A-L, he trolls them. He writes a fake bullshit academic article to show how shitty they are, and he puts in all these stupid SJW terms, and they publish it in one of their <laughs> biggest journals, thinking it's their greatest thing ever. And then he goes and does an interview and says, look how fucking dumb they are. That's a complete bullshit article I just released. <laughs> wasn't, that, it, wasn't an article like Gravity is Sexism or some shit like that he, at one he, point? No, he was talking about how um, basically, yeah, shit like physics wasn't yeah, real because yeah. language yeah, exactly. affects it. Yeah, oh, it was, yeah, it was some shit like that. And I was reading some of the stuff of that, and it just was like, what the fuck are they even talking? At first, I took it seriously because I was just is like, the, what is going on? Is that the one that says um, Newton's Principia Mathematica is a rape manual or something like that? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me let me see if I can get a quote from it. So I, I, I'm going to find that as well, because that's just like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's what, um, he, this is what Sokol said after this came out. He said, The results of my little experiment demonstrate, at the very least, that some fashionable sectors of the American uh, academic left have been getting intellectually lazy. The editors, or the editors of Social Text liked my article because they liked its conclusion, that the content and methodology of postmodern science provide powerful intellectual support for the progressive political project. They apparently felt no need to analyze the quality of the evidence, the cogency of the arguments, or even the relevance of the arguments and their proposed conclusion. Um, and his article was titled, Trans <laughs> this is great, Transgressing the Boundaries Towards a Transformative, Herm I can't even say this word, Humoretics of Quantum Gravity. It, it's just bullshit. It's buzzwords. He made a buzzword article to show how dumb they are, and it worked. God, you, uh, you know, this kind of reminds me of uh, of like shit like John Money and gender identity and how he's the father of gender and how these fucking people will parade him like that. Is that the guy whose kid committed suicide? 
Yeah, that's well, not his kid. He uh, no, 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 the, the boy he butchered. Yeah, the boy. Yeah, the boy he butchered. He he turned a kid into basically a, a psychological experiment by saying that a gender identity is nurture or not nature. That you if you know you're born with a penis or vagina, that you uh, choose what you want to be, uh, and you're not really a man if you have a penis, and you're not really a girl if you have boobs and a vagina. Right. So th that that was what he would state. That was his statement, and he used the kid as an example, even though. That the mother was suicidal, the father was turned into an alcoholic. That uh, the kid turned well, back into a man. Yeah, I mean, look, look what he look what he did to the kid. He made he okay. So the boy was scarred badly during circumcision. Yeah, it, decided, it, it, it was eight old. He, Yeah, and they decided to the best way to deal with this was to make him a girl. Um, and part of money's therapy was having him and his twin brother get naked and basically dry yeah. up in his office uh, on film. Oh. Yeah, it's Sargon. It's it it was wild. But the thing was. He took it to the grave, even though it was a failed experiment. He took it to the grave and saying, this proves that gender identity is nurture, not nature. But it was completely wrong, and it failed completely. But these fucking idiots will tell you, oh, no, no, John Money, that he's the guy. He's the father of gender. He's absolutely right. Gender identity linked back to John Money, and it just blows my fucking mind. I would have just thought that the um, the fact that like 99.99999% of people who just happen to then identify with the gender they're born with would kind of disprove what he's saying. Just uh, yeah, I would on say its so. own, you know, if if that were the case, you'd get a much higher percentage of people saying, you know what, I'm going to choose to be a different gender. Well, again, it goes to bad science, good science. You've got somebody like money, right? Who it's soft science. Let's be honest. Mm. There, uh, but you compare that to the stuff they've been doing recently, brain scans, right, where they're showing the difference between the female and male brain, where they're looking at stuff like epigenetic causes you know, behind maybe homosexuality. Yeah, so you've right. got real, real science, genetics, brain scans, all this really cool shit they're looking into. That's going to give you real answers. But people like money and these kind of people, they're just they're fucking taking a shot in the dark. They don't know. It's a random fucking guess. Uh, that's, well, it's ideologically driven bias, I think, is more the problem. Right, right. You know that it's. I don't even think it's a guess. I think I think they've got an agenda that they're trying to just pick, cherry pick, um, you know, examples to to create a narrative that doesn't really exist. Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, somebody that... somebody's saying movie Bob is upset about the stream. Are you upset, Bob? No. Oh, are oh. you gonna, are you trying to get me arrested now? Because I well, I'm not in uh, fucking Ireland, so it's not really gonna work. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody also said in your chat. Um, how does one get indoctrinated as an SJW, and how does that even work? I, you know, there was an experiment done a long time ago called the Stanford Prison Experiment, and that can kind of give you an idea of how easy it is, how quickly it is to change somebody's mind on things or get them indoctrinated into stuff very quickly if you're ever interested in that. Oh, oh well, let, let's see. Somebody linked me to the Jimmy Whale statements. All right. I remember a controversy at Wikipedia about a breed of dog. When I looked into it, virtually all the er, editors were activists. What eventually happened, as I recall, is that they, all the activists on all sides were topic banned to their dismay. And then the Wikipedians were able to write neutral articles with more or less satisfied everyone. With Gamergate, I see the same dynamic. Too many of the people fighting about it care nothing for Wikipedia. Both sides are guilty. Coming to Wikipedia in order to write great wrongs always ends in sadness. We will be patient with you for a while, but then... Uh, the article, as it is right now, is not uh, unfair. To, it's just badly written battleground. Uh, you know what? Hey, Jimmy Wales, uh, that's actually uh, a decent answer. Yeah, that's exactly the right position to take on it. He's he's concerned about neutrality of information. And he should absolutely be. If you want absolutely. Wikipedia to be good at what it purports to do, you need the fucking articles to be written by people that don't have a dog in the fight. It needs to be neutral. That's the whole point. Yeah. Can I just address Bob Chipman? He may yeah, go him. go for it. Knock yourself out. Oh, Bob, I, 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 I'm the one who was talking to you about conspiracies on Twitter, and I can't help but notice that you weren't on the mailing list. That must sting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And he was like, there's no, because the thing is, a week before he'd been like, that he tweeted, there's no conspiracy. That's ridiculous. That's David Icke stuff. And then it turned out there was. <laughs> it's just like, Bob, it sucks for you, mate, you know? Well, and he would be the type of person that would be jealous and upset that he wasn't invited to the social justice warrior uh, conspiracy here chat. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, he's got some tweets for you. And there's still, there are people are still sharing at Internet Aristocrats fake accusations that I tried to have a kid arrested, despite how easily it's disproven. Good job. Bob, they're on your fucking blog. What are you talking about, you lying <laughs> fuck? Oh, okay, okay, Bob, okay, Bob, Bob, let's, let's see how you disprove it. Just saying you disprove it isn't disproving it. So, come on, where's your evidence? 
I mean, Bob, it, 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 the comments are in the article you wrote on your fucking blog spot or whatever that site is. And to top it off, on Twitter, you actually stated on the 23rd, if you see something you think is illegal, you'll contact the fucking police. Well, you're talking about whether or not this kid's acts were illegal. Basically, what you're saying is, if I think this kid's doing something illegal by trolling people on the internet in video games, I'm going to call the police. Fuck off! You're a joke! What the fuck are you doing? Uh, his response is that... Uh, I don't know if this is his response. It is in a way a huge relief. I don't know what to do if I started making enemies who weren't stupid. Uh, I, I guess he's talking about you and so Oh my god, Bob, we all know that I mean, you're an erudite. Yeah, we all know how intelligent you are, Bob. It's he really goes, I mean, that sounds like work. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, am I, am I getting... It, it, it sounds like work. Yeah, it would sound like work because you wouldn't be familiar with at, what actual work is. Okay? We know what your profession is, which is, I guess, apparently trying to get teenage boys arrested on the internet. Isn't it you know, hugging you with Sarkeesian? He's the digital Batman. That's probably why he uses Bartman as a fucking picture on Twitter. He really thinks that's what he is. Uh, I wonder if this is how Superman feels about criminals in Metropolis. Wait, this one is also vulnerable to me looking at them, right? I, I don't know what that... How, what is that even supposed to entail? What the fuck are you trying... I, he's comparing that to us, but I don't know what he's talking about. No oh, you know, you know he's watching this right now. Yeah, I, mean, I know, and he's, he's tweeting. He's tweeting as I'm reading these things. He's, just, he's tweeting these as I'm reading it. This is his responses. I'm, I'm guessing he wants to come on or something, or I, I have no idea. Well, here, here's the thing I don't get, Bob. If you're so fucking intelligent and we're so dumb, why are you watching us? <laughs> oh, no, no, wouldn't the smart thing to do not to pay attention? But you're paying attention. I, I, I want to know when Bob's going to admit he's a bigot, because in one of his videos, I was going to do like a, a video sort of thing about Bob's opinions, um, because in one of them, he goes on about the, um, the sort of AAA first-person shooter industry, and... He, he literally says things like how it can be stopped, and he's like, well, I don't know if we can stop it. I don't think, I'd love to, but there's no way to do it. And I'm thinking, Bob, why the fuck would you want to? Let the people play their fucking games, you Nazi. <laughs> Jesus, you know. Why, I mean, why he is, he's tweeting about thing? feminists. Feminists are better than men and all that kind of stuff in his Twitter, now that I'm going through it, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, what, what a fucking shock. Yeah, this is a <laughs> shock been spinning. For years. Uh, it's like right under the one after he talks about you, uh, uh, Jim. He, he's like, ladies, you might want to think twice about... <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Never mind. You know what? I'll just let everybody else read. I'm not even going to fucking okay. give this guy the time no, of day. I, I've actually got the ultimate question for Bob that I think we all really want to know. Bob, has being a giant fucking mangina ever got you laid? I, I, I'm, de I'm uh, very interested in seeing his response to that. Uh, Me too. It's good to see Gamergate's origins described as what they are, a distraction from abuse women in gaming that, um, gaming, what? I can't even fucking spell, what? I can't even read the shit that you're saying, man. See, and that's the difference. Like, you know, I know people were speaking before, they were upset on the escapist, right, about Jim Sterling, because they didn't yeah. like his opinion. Here's the difference between a Jim Sterling and a movie Bob. You may not, you may not like Jim Sterling's opinion, but he's not going to try to use his position to fucking hunt down things he dislikes. He's not going to go after little people. He's not going to go after fucking kids. Movie Bob wants to use his platform, right? All you know, the social media and the site access to basically activize. You know, like what Jimmy Wales is talking about with Wikipedia. When you've got people who don't want to really do what they're supposed to do and they want to, you know, engage in activism, it shits everything up. That's what Movie Bob does. To, you know, he shits everything up. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you were watching earlier I, in Zargon. There was a guy that came on Whiskey's, and I don't. I think it was confirmed. His name was – he was also named Andrew, but he had an email about Silverstring and asking for data mining people with the hashtag Gamergate who were pro-Gamergate and wanting to get that public information. Did anybody, did anybody remember that? In the main chat, if that was confirmed or not? He's, I brought him on the show, and he lost his job the next day. Like somebody called – after that, and talking about him leaking uh, emails about people, and he lost his job, and now he's linking me his new patron and stuff about how he's why he's trying to fight getting his job back. I find that very interesting. Uh, somebody find me that link to that that email so I can show it to the, to Sargon and IA here. Oh, I, yeah, I agree with you, Tony Stark in the chat. Um, like again, uh, hold on, what was it he said exactly? Fuck, everything goes so quick, I can't. Oh, even come on, it. movie Bob. Yeah, everybody's flying in the chat. No, no, yeah, but he was saying something. Oh, yeah, he was saying um, I, he thinks Jim Sterling's cool, but he's upset with him, or he's not satisfied with the way he's been behaving as a consumer advocate. I get that. I agree with that. But again, they're worlds apart. Sterling is, it's a different fucking dynamic altogether. Bob is just 
he shouldn't be in the position he's in. I don't know what. Why is he doing what he does? I mean, what joy does he get out of it? Do you even enjoy movies and games anymore, Bob? Or do you just want to promote shitty SJW shit everywhere you go? Because that's what you're fucking doing. <laughs> I tell you, Jim Sterling, I, when he first came on The Escapist, I, I thought I was going to hate him. And then I found myself really liking him. And then this social justice bullshit happened. And I just want to say to him, look, man, just... Just come over from the dark side. You know, you don't have to be there, and we can tell you don't really want to be there. You know, he he is he he seems like the sort of guy who really is more interested in games than ideology. You know, right? And then I mean, shit. Um, well, look at the, how the escapist handled everything, right? I, I didn't like what Greg Tito had to say, but he was the only guy that fucking came out to his community and said, "This is what I did. This is how I feel about it." The only one. You've got Yahtzee who's made comments in a couple of videos. He, he hasn't really dipped his toe into it, but he, at least he talked about it. You've got Sterling, who his first comment on the whole thing was, what, I have a connection to Zoe Quinn because I might be doing voice acting with her, and so I probably should stay out of it. Yes, or It's too. a respectable fucking yeah. uh, you know, a stance. Hey, you know what, I can't, I can't really give you an opinion right now because it's, it could be tainted. Ah, actually, I've got... Um, can, can someone tweet me the link to the... Um, didn't they put a seven-page article up from... Female, um, not gamers. What the players? Uh, it was, oh, I thought it was female game developers. And yeah, I remember mm -hmm. people talking about how they thought that was disastrous because was it like devs one through four and six through nine or something? Like there were one or two they got it, but a lot of them were saying stuff that wasn't at all accurate oh. or true. They like their opinions were being shaped by something, but I don't know what it was. Yeah, that's that's actually one of them to talk about because it's it's the use of the word player that I find very interesting. Um, because, oh, you think that was going to be the new Gamer Plus? Yeah. Oh, that's what yeah, the, that's, that's exactly yeah, what yeah. I think it's going to be. Uh, I, th I think that there, there really does seem to be a move for them all to start using the word player to refer to themselves. But that, to me, that's that's very consumptive. You know, that's someone who is being t dictated to by the game. You play the game because you, you, you obey the game almost. You know, you're playing the game. Whereas well, a gamer... For me, I, I can't speak for anyone else, for, but for me, it's always been about exploiting the game, you know, doing yeah. what you can to get the advantage over the game or over the players, whatever. So it, it's, you know, one seems a lot more passive and one seems a lot more proactive. Oh, wait, the people are saying get Bob on. I don't think his ego could fit through the door, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, I'd love to. I'd love to uh, talk. Sarga, you're talking about when we were talking to Cause and how he was referring to them as they are the video game players and we are the gamers. And that we are dead because they're hardcore versus the casual and the non-gamers. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. It, it was. It's, it's very interesting that they start calling themselves that, and we're starting to see it a little bit more and more. Uh, and I find it, I, like you said, it's more passive because the way he explained it, he was like, "Look, I just want to play my games and and just take it how it is, and I want the skip button, you know, <laughs> like this shit like that." And you were talking about, like you said, more aggressive stance where you yeah, I mean, look the... into the game, go see where you want to go, get all the achievements, you know, all that kind of shit. Yeah, you're you're out doing things for yourself rather than like right. receiving the game because uh, one of the things that always comes up is these people saying stuff like, uh, they, I mean this is paraphrasing, but deliver you know, uh, exploring like the content, like um, being delivered a message, being sort of you know, being given the experience of the game, and I'm thinking, well, you know, for me the experience of the game is learning how I can you know get a good combo going or something like that rather than just having the game kind of wash over uh, me, which is the impression I got. So, I, I want to ask, ask you a question. Somebody was, uh, t uh, messaged me this about Digra stuff, and they said, have you looked into the treasurer, the treasurer Jesse Holopani and the secretary Ashley Brown and their connections with uh, other game researchers, quote-unquote, and feminists? Uh, don't, he doesn't know if it's relevant, but they have uh, a large standing in the LARPing role-playing scene and tabletop role-playing games. Right. Okay. That's that's a really interesting question, actually. Um, Juicy Hlopainen is the treasurer, and he's right. in Finland. And the founder of Digra was uh, Franz Myra, also in Finland. And the money still goes to his name. Huh. Which is interesting, given he was voted off in two thousand and six. But Juicy has been the treasurer since the start. He's been the treasurer since two thousand and three every year. Right. Um, but the thing is, I'm just gonna get um, get my notes quickly um, because. Uh, oh, I I, while, while you're doing that, somebody somebody was saying "Happy Video Game Nerd" came out as an SJW. <laughs> <laughs> the 
that's that's disappointing. I thought his videos were good. I mean, they they're still. I mean, they're not bad because he's an SJW now, but that's disappointing. Wasn't the Amazing Atheist another one that came out as an SJW as well recently or something like that? I, no, I don't know. I don't watch his stuff anymore. Uh, Amazing Atheist had um, oh god, was it? I I don't remember what his name is. The Game Investigator or whatever it is do yeah. did a video on his channel about Gamergate that was pretty damn good. Right. I'm uh, actually quite surprised how late that uh, the Amazing Amazing Atheist chimed in on all this. All right. You know, um, I would have been a bit quicker on it. Uh, back on topic with you, Sargon. So what? What? Um, yeah. I mean, do you know anything about these guys being involved with LARPing and tabletop games as well? I, I had no idea until so someone was asking. Fuck, me fuck LARPing and tabletop games, man. That's all fucking meaningless bollocks at the end of the day when it comes to this. Um, do you see? Do you, no, no. I'm not. And I'm not trying to do. You know, <laughs> I know. I, know it's just I love laugh. tabletop games, but not so much LARPing. But, um, do you see Hollow Panian or whatever? This guy who's been the treasurer for the whole time. Um, this this is from uh, game, Games and Experimental Entertainment Laboratory. Juicy worked at the Nokia Research Center for 16 years, most of his adult right. life, and as a game interaction researcher before realizing he could do something else in his life as well. See, I mean, he, he works for Nokia. Well, wait, he works for Nokia? or uh, uh, What? Nokia, Nokia, damn it. The oh, phone Nokia. people. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Nokia. Okay, so he does work for Nokia. That's what I was saying. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> So what? What I mean? What's the relevance to that? But him being Nokia, I mean, where does that? What does that have to do with him and and the Dar and Digra? I mean, well, I'm not sure to be honest. I can't. I, this is probably going to be a video that's split in several parts because there's a lot to go over. Okay, okay, I got you. So you just give me yeah. an idea. But, okay. But the the thing about this guy is that he's not an SJW. He's he's an academic. You know, he, he's a professional. Um, but I, I think that there's probably more to do with the uh, the Nokia connection there. But I just I haven't looked into that yet. Well, I'm sure this is like the same thing when we were looking at the patron stuff and we'd find these dummy accounts and they had interesting business ties. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, when we were yeah. sitting there and that was the weirdest thing ever. It was like, okay, we found this dummy account and they're 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 fought and they're paying these people but the people that they're linked to was like companies that you wouldn't expect to be linked to this stuff. So what, what you know, it was so fucking weird. I, I'm wondering. I think that might be a bit of a red herring, though. I think they might just be, um, you know, automated followbacks or something like probably, that. Probably, yeah, probably that could be that too. You never know. But um, but yeah, the the, the Digra thing. These these people are all. It, there's. I th it really seems like the academics have got their own agendas if they're not ideologues, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't think that they know what's happening, you know. Or I mean, if they do, they then they're not against the idea because uh, what was her name? Um, uh, what's her face? Uh, sorry, I don't know. The the woman who linked my video in her article. Uh, oh yeah, um, Toril Mortensen. Um, she she lit her her sarcastic end comments were, you know, uh, feminist professors and bloggers are out to get their games and they're fighting oppressive systems, criticizing structure of peer reviewing. Yep, that will really hurt the gaming industry. And I'm thinking, bitch, at this point, I'm not concerned about the gaming industry. I'm concerned about academia, <laughs> criticizing the structure of peer reviewing. What's wrong with the structure of peer reviewing? Uh, when they don't like that. They don't want a peer to review it. They just want someone to take the shit that's being fed to them. Look, they, they tell us this all the time with games. They want the non-gamers. They want the people who are the casual gamer who doesn't look and, and look into the game. They don't want the hardcore gamers that interject and want and say what they want in their games. They want somebody who will just eat the shit that's fed to them, right? That, that's what they always fucking tell us. So, And so that's why I think the player thing is so important because it really – I'll find relevant quotes where – it's very obvious what they're saying is you should sit there and be dictated to by the game rather than actively right. engage with the game and trying to beat the game. You know? Exactly. They don't want you to think. They want you to just take the shit and shovel it in your mouth. And I, and I think it goes into more money aspect than anything else, to be honest with you. And, and this might be the reason why maybe we've seen shovelware, if you want to call it that, at the same time. I, I don't know. I'm jumping at strings there, but that's just me. All right. Uh, hold on one sec. All right. Uh, short Fat Otaku, I'm going to try one last time. I guess he had to activate his Google Plus thing. <laughs> Also, somebody was asking or commented uh, towards us, be aware there are some actual academic SJWs. They are fucking evil. Uh, no, I'm well aware. Um, there are too many. <laughs> believe many. me. Believe me. I, I've looked into a lot of that shit. And um, they seem to, a lot of them seem to be sociologists, uh, I'll be honest. Um, that's, just, that's honest to God, that's the truth. And there's a history behind it, which is pretty fucking interesting, but it's a topic for another day. 
Jim, uh, what is your take on EA's "It's not uh, it's on us" GamerGate stance? Yeah, like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, in case you missed it, um, it's ridiculous. You're t- oh, wait, are you talking about the anti-rape thing that EA released, where they said uh, we're yeah, not- the anti-rape thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. So. I don't know. He said the EA's gotten hashtag GamerGate stance, not it's on us as well. I guess maybe he wanted both. I don't know. Well, no. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, Electronic Arts, what the fuck are you doing? You make video games. I don't need to be told not to rape people. Guess why? I'm not a fucking rapist. Uh, what? Like, I, it's the weirdest fucking thing to see a video game company even engage in talking about. Mm. And it's easy PR. How about um, how about EA's next campaign? Uh, let's not ma- you know murder babies. Why hasn't EA made what? a campaign about? Yeah, no, EA, let's not kill babies. That's a they, bad thing to do. Why aren't they doing that campaign? Do they like to kill babies? EA, are you saying you like to kill babies? <laughs> Of course they do. What are you talking about? If they're siding with the feminists, they're pro-abortion. They, well, no, no, what I mean feminists... is they, they made a statement saying they don't like rape. So if they haven't made a statement saying they don't like killing <laughs> babies, they must like killing babies. EA, you need to get on that. <laughs> I know. Listen, they're probably going to listen to the stream now, and they're going to start putting crazy shit out there. You better calm that shit down, Internet. <laughs> Holy shit, man. These people are crazy. I I don't understand why game companies... Make video games. That's all you have to fucking do. That's all we want. It's the easiest thing in the world. Make video games. You'd think it would be that easy. Someone said invite Leia Alexander. Get her on. Oh, uh, yeah. It, I, I would love to see her come in here. Her, uh, she'd probably be drunk. Yeah, I can't do that. I'm wearing headphones. And because she's a megaphone, it would blow my eardrums out. <laughs> that, that, and she'd probably be drunk by the time she got on. Didn't she, like, walk around with a drink 24-7? I, I don't know. Every video I've seen her in, she's got a fucking drink in her hand. So, and you tell me. Everything I've seen her in, it, she just seems like she's gone mad with power. Yeah, um, that too. I want to explain to the lady, you don't really have very much power to go mad with. You know, it, it, she, she seems crazy. Uh, Sargon, are you... Fuck, man, this chat, I can't even see how you follow this. Um, are any of you aware of Aaron Gojari's GoFundMe for legal defense against ZQ, or literally who, and where did it, where did it go? Never heard of it. Did you hear about that, Internet? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading this up because somebody said it's a White House campaign. Um, it's on us to help prevent sexual assault. EA is proud to stand with the White House today and uh, uh, its launch of It's On Us, a new public awareness account hey. aimed at uh, changing how people think of sexual assault. You know, because we all find it so entertaining. We need to change our opinions on this. Okay. Since you mentioned the White House, I've actually got something for that. Um, Gamer Sutra, Chris Totten wrote an article about a White House game jam that they did, mm-hmm. where they went to the White House and did a game jam. Wait, really? They, they did a game jam I'll, at I'll the tweet White House. that shit, man. I'll tweet that shit. Seriously, I'm not joking. It's... What? Yeah, and um, speaking of game yeah. jam, does anybody ever get a hold of Matty Lesson? After your video, that was like the biggest thing I really hope someone did. Was get Somebody a hold needs of. to. Um, I, sw- I swear. How, where is he? How does he? I mean, there's too much shit going on. This well, guy. He, not here's know. the thing. He got fired um, because of because of what uh, because of that failed game jam. And Zoe right. Quinn, Jared Rosen, and Nathan Grayson played a part in that. They played a part in creating that narrative. Go. You, you know, I spent like a couple days looking into this, but it's really interesting looking in the timing of that failed game jam, and Disney's buyout of Maker Studios, who hosted it. Um, their buyout offer was affected by the failure of that game jam, and I so. There's some interesting shit going on with that and the people involved. I just involved. don't understand how, out of all the stuff, that nobody has gotten a hold of this guy to get him saying this. Cause well, it, uh, he's I, probably I, well off to begin with. I mean, he's probably on a beach drinking a Mai Tai, thinking fuck's oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sargon, I'm sorry to catch you off. I know you were looking for your... Uh, you're looking yeah, no, I've got it. Um, I just tweeted it out. Um, basically, oh, Obama in 2011 it. said, I'm calling for investments in educational technology that will ha- help create digital tutors. As, as, that are as effective as personal tutors, educational software as compelling as the best video game. And, um, yeah, and Christopher Totten, uh, I, I think he, he actually got an invite to this game jam. Uh, he literally says, the White House is holding a game jam and, jam and we got an invitation. Wow, look at these uh, pictures. They're actually standing there at the podium. Yeah, where they, he's, he's, he is, he's fuck? With, um, yeah, yeah. Look at the cupcakes. They got cupcakes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Jamming with a purpose, you know, that's, it, it, it's all... Well, this would make sense in Obama's, if, if Obama administration, this would make sense in the White House. I mean, they're socialist Democrats, for one. Okay, that's that's the consensus of that party. So yeah, that would make sense they would bring these people on here. They like that kind of stuff. I mean, if they're talking about cultural Marxism, at least, socialists will, like, eat that shit up for fucking breakfast any day. So, I mean, maybe they probably bring them on for that. I have no idea. Well, don't don't forget, too, I mean, Obama's administration has made comments in the past, so is Holder, about social justice. 
So, yeah. well, no, I mean, they made more than more than just no, no, that. No, no, but I mean, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, when when you have academics, business people, and people in politics all talking about the same thing and all kind of knowing each other, it's probably a good idea to pay attention. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you have seen the video, but he did a he, Obama standing there and he did a stand up about uh, the Holocaust and he used terms like ableist. Sexist. Wait, wait. When you say what? he did a stand up, do you mean like a Robin Williams fucking? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean he stood up in front of his podium and he talked about the Holocaust and, and something I can't remember. Can Somebody find this. There's a video on YouTube of it and he's he uses the words ableist, sexist. Ageists. Uh, <laughs> I swear to God, he says this. I, somebody gave this to me a while ago. This was all in poll a while back, and they were like, they're like Obama saying crazy ass shit 101, and, and they and you could just click on it. You know how in four in four chan, I, I, I that they, they put the videos. You just click on it, and you just like, and we're watching it. And I was like, holy shit, what is going on? Hold on. Well, and again, I think it points to, I mean, why do you think you have, uh, as this Gamergate thing has been going on, why do you think you've seen, uh, you know, conservative people paying attention to it? It's probably because they've dealt with this shit in politics for a while now. Mm -hmm. I think they get it. I honestly do. I think they get the other side, and they've probably seen it. And I think, you know, people like Sokol and academics got it, too. And now as gamers, right. we're seeing the same thing, and we're starting to get it. Yeah, um, I, I, think it, I think it really is just a pattern of behavior. Yeah. Um, from the from the extreme left, and what what annoys me the most about it is that they think they're so superior, and they think they're so su superior that they will just openly mock the 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 other side, no matter how no matter how far right or to central center they are, and and even some like center left, you know, if they're not far enough to the left, then they they uh -oh. just deride them absolutely no respect. Well, yeah, I mean, look what happened with Silverglade. I mean. Here's a guy who started uh, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, right? Which is like an ACLU-ish kind of organization. But I mean, Silverglade had always said stuff like, "Oh, well, you know, I'm a classic liberal, uh, you know, and I fought in the '60s. I was on the college campuses when we were trying to get free speech from the conservative academia at the time." But he said, "What he found out is once these leftists took powerful positions as deans and professors, they weren't fighting for free speech; they were fighting for their speech." And essentially did the exact same thing they had protested against. Um, uh -huh. and go ahead, so go he, ahead. but I mean, it, it helps to highlight that. I mean, here's a guy who identifies as a classic liberal, you know, a classic left-leaning uh, political philosophy, saying the people you see nowadays aren't anything like what they used to be. It's a completely different fucking breed. Um, I tweeted out to you and Sarg on that video, Sarg. It's only two minutes, but he stands up and he was denouncing. This is in 2012, where. President Barack Obama denounces Holocaust denial, but he starts using he uses sexism, racism, and xenophobia, homophobia, ageism, ableism, and like uh, all these fucking terms all in one go uh, for uh, people who deny the Holocaust. Which I don't care if you believe it happened or not, but it's just interesting that he uses those fucking words to begin with. Yeah, here's what I don't get um, with the whole Holocaust denial thing. You have all these different Jewish rights organizations saying that they they're seeing a rise in anti-Semitism in Europe, right? Right. And you have you, but at the same time, you have all these restrictive laws saying you can't talk or deny the Holocaust. They don't see that those are correlated. That when you try to, you know, suppress speech, even if the idea you may disagree with or think is crazy, that it makes people start to think, oh, they're hiding something. So, like, you get arrested in Germany for being against it. You get sued in France or Britain for being. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. it's fucking crazy. Uh, That's well, why it's, it's on the rise. I, I hate that more than anything. Honestly, I I want people to come out and say, well, you know, I deny the Holocaust or whatever. So their research can be proven to be fallacious. Right, because at least fucking let the debate go on. I, I don't yeah, understand why you won't let debate go on. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, the thing is that begs questions, doesn't it? If, if you can't stand to have their, their obviously faulty evidence presented, analyzed, and proven to be false, then is there something more that we need to know? <laughs> you know? Right, well, and that's, I think, what's, again, that's, yeah. I think, why censorship or suppressing uh, somebody's free speech is right. dangerous. It what is. you do is you sway moderates, you, you sway independents who don't think one way or the other on anything, but they see the actions that are taking place and they think, oh shit, these guys are up to something. You know right. What I mean? it, yeah, right. But I mean, you, you're talking about the EU here, right? And you have to understand that these are the same fucking people that let that vote in people secretly without like anybody taking a vote. And people like uh, you know Farage will come out and fucking call on him. what was it like Juncker? He recently called out for being voted in secretly, and he was like, why is this not public? Why why would we do this secretly, but yet we're going to talk about being a democratic republic? You know, and make no fucking sense. <laughs> Remember the 500 grillion? Okay, oh my we're, god. Uh, everybody's, like, everybody's retweeting my video talking about anti-Semitism. Oh, oy vey. 
Yeah, great. <laughs> Shut it down. Aggravating my asthma. Yeah. Everybody's like, but so many guys like so many isms, I can't contain it. But it's just interesting that Obama would use words that we see in shit, like isms that we see in fucking Tumblr. Uh, on, and, and anything in general, just it's. It, I find it interesting. Well, I mean, again, his his opinions, I think, are being. Um, this is why, like this academic angle. When I was talking about the source, like with the Tumblrism shit, it, it really is academics. It, honest to God, really is. And they influence politics and they influence uh, industries. That's that's your fucking source. If you want to look it up and see the people involved, those are the people that are, you know, influencing political advisors right. that are influencing presidents, or they're the people that are influencing corporations and newspapers. And well, I mean, you could look back uh, how this all came about, like during the Cold War, and you're talking about stuff like when the Communist Party USA was still around before they got dismantled, and who was involved in those people, like the names that were in that 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 whole group, and then from there to where the whole idea of the what was it the the, the national test, and then it became statewide test, like the FCAT. I don't know where you, I know I don't know if you have a test. You should have a test, but you take in gym at, at your where you live at in the states, where yeah. like everybody gets. And now and they started. And when I was going in high school and middle school and, and elementary school, we were learning basic what we needed to learn, and then it started transitioning from that into okay, you're learning how to pass pass the FCAT or the the CAT test, this new test that the state has put out for you. And it was to raise the demographic of uh, minorities scoring statistics to that of uh, people with high scores. I think it was like Asians and Caucasians at the mm -hmm. time. I, I don't know if that's still the case now. I don't know what the statistics are now. I haven't looked at it. I, I was telling Sargon about this, and I said, and over time, it just kept failing all the programs that they were trying to do. And then the, the problem was is that the schools were more focused on it because the, the government changed it to where, okay, if your county – your, your school in this county does not get uh, this score. Like the school doesn't score at A or B, and I know you know what I'm talking about when I say this. Yeah, you're talking about the standardized testing being – Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and money that, that, yeah, and a money bag. So if your school scores a C, then you're not going to get funding, but the school scores an A, they're going to get all the funding in the fucking world. And so the schools would have to focus on that instead of actually teaching them what they need to know, and they'll come out and go into college, and they have no fucking idea what they're doing. And so, and then, and the same thing would happen. And, and the people going to college are just fucking retards or, or idiots. And they'll come out, and they'll have no idea what the fuck they're supposed to do, at least in their field. And then it comes into employers being hesitant on hiring people with master degrees because they don't know if they really know the material or not. It's it's mind blowing how the system really works that way nowadays. It's crumbling. The the American educational system is crumbling. I'm glad you're getting out. I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. I don't want to be here when shit starts bursting. I'm going, in I'm going to Germany in like four years. Once I'm done, I'm gone. I, I'm just getting the hell out. Either that or UK. I'm telling you, Europe's going very much the same way. Yeah. No, I'm, well, going, I'm going to Asia. That's where the money markets are going to be. Mm. Good luck to all of you, though. <laughs> I'm I'm either going to Germany or the UK, depending on if if UKIP wins. That's all I care about. That's my that's my that's my go-to. I'm going to win shit. Hey 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 now hey now don't don't kill my dream. Hey okay. now, trust me, I'm telling you, let it go, man. <laughs> I know, I know. They, they, they only won, yeah, they only won seats in the, uh, it's, it's not the fucking local elections, it's not uh, the UK, they, they won seats for fucking the EU, it's a different thing. The thing is, basically, um, the, the British public votes for the, our MEPs, and yep. we, we, we send the most anti-European people to the European Parliament. Which I, I love. Think, I fucking you know, love. I, I, me too. Me too. I fucking. Have you, do you know who Daniel Hannan is? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, uh, Jim, no, I, I haven't heard the name. No. Oh, I will. I will. I will tweet you a link. The guy. He is a master orator. He's he is, fucking great. He, he's he's a fundamental believer in the virtues of English justice as well. You know, and the parliamentary system, and, and just the he he's such a traditional sort of. Um, he he's the sort of person you'd have expect to have been produced by the school system like a hundred years ago. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I, I, so I, wait, is he is he similar to what was the guy? Um, I remember somebody saying if you really want to piss off when I made that Euro skepticism video, they're like if you really want to piss off people in the comments, tell them Enoch was right. So is he kind of like Enoch, or am I saying that name right? The politician who, who had said in Britain, uh, if you're not careful with your immigration policy, when you're walking down the streets of London, it's not going to look like London anymore in 30 years. Uh, I don't think he said that, but he, I, think he, I think he's similar. Um, I'm just going to tweet it. Just um, out, out there, so you guys... Th this is um, a video of him berating Gordon Brown in the uh, EU Parliament, and he is just 
he is based as fuck. That if you want, if 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 there's a guy who deserves the term based, it's this guy. He's standing up in front of li- you know literally all of Europe and just telling Gordon Brown that he was a tosser. <laughs> In oh, here, here, here we go. Yeah, it was Enoch Powell, uh, 1968, oh, Powell. the uh, River of Blood speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was right as well. <laughs> well, yeah, if you look at the demographics, I mean, especially, yeah. is it, uh, London especially is very uh, fucking different than what it was. He was. He's slandered to anything. You, you yeah. know, his his name, in, in respectable circles, his name is Mud um, because he was being honest. Um, you know, he, wasn't, he wasn't towing the line. He wasn't following the narrative. And this was yeah decades ago, you know, this was fifty years ago or something. Uh, let me let me. I want to ask you some, Sargon, because since you're over there, I know you you probably follow the uh, the political movements in the EU in general. So I would assume you do. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure on that. Do you? Uh, yeah, to, to okay. a certain degree. Yeah. Okay, I I just want to know, and I, maybe you could touch up on this too, uh, IA, because what was going on with Sweden when their fucking president said, okay, we're gonna have more immigrants and we can't afford it, but you guys need to pay for it anyways. When he came out with that statement. And uh, and then just before what was it elections? Did he even rewin that? Um, I'm not sure. I don't actually recall that statement, but that sounds exactly like the sort of thing I'd expect from the. He president. okay, I'll find the video. It's like a five minute thing, but he comes out like uh, about what was it like? I think about a couple of weeks before uh, the elections in Sweden, and he was like, okay. So we ran into some problems. We have way too many immigrants, and but and we're planning on having more immigrants. Uh, and we can't afford it, so we're going to increase your taxes uh, for the taxpayers because so, you guys need to pay for this because we're not going to stop it. That was basically like he what, what he was saying. Uh, I'm sure that the chat will fucking find this video because it was like all over poll for for quite some time, and people were just like Sweden, yes, all over the place. I love that Sweden has become the cuck capital of the fucking world. <laughs> and <everyone's been> <laughs> like that's the image that people have. You know, I remember there was a documentary. There's a video on YouTube. I'll see if I can find it. Where it was this, um, this, 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 like this very tiny, fragile-looking black chick that came from Mo- I think it was Mogadishu or something, and she got a job as a reporter in Sweden, and she wrote a paper that the, um, the SJWs didn't like. And she basically left. She went back to the, the fucking Mogadishu and she was like, yeah, I feel safer walking down the streets there than I do in fucking Stockholm. Yeah, well, that's actually the um, the great sort of underground, untouchable elephant in the room in Europe. Is um, And, uh, you know, I, I've, I'm going to preface this with I, I don't hate Muslims, but Muslim immigration is almost entirely responsible for the dramatic spike in rapes in Europe. Well, Sweden's number two on the list. If you look yeah. at the world rape statistics, Sweden's like number two, and the other four are uh, African nations. Yeah, and uh, in Britain, we've got some um, rape crisis centers. Uh, uh, wait, you tell me that that India is not on the rape statistics nope. at Sweden all? Is, no. was, nope, Sweden's way higher than really? any other country. Like it's higher than India, it's higher than America, it's higher than fucking any other country in Europe. And they won't talk really? about it. You, you know they have a rape festival in India, right? I just just to, like and one of these tribes have like a traditional old rape festival in one of their old villages, and some guy did a paper on it, and then India came out. Well, uh, saying they wanted it removed, like from the website. The, oh, the hey, hey, here we go from the International Business Times. Uh, here are the top five countries with rape: um, Lesotho. Or how do you say this? I'm probably wrong. L e s o t h o. Never heard of it. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's Snowden. Um, okay, uh, Sweden's number two has the <laughs> highest rate of rape in Europe, with the UN reporting 69 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in 2011. In 2010, Swedish police recorded the highest number of offenses. About uh, again, this in so yeah, it goes up every year, 63 in 100,000. Um, according to the rape crisis advocates in Sweden, one third or one third of Swedish women have been sexually assaulted by the time they leave their teens. According to a study in 2003 and later studies in 2009, Sweden has the highest sexual assault rape in Europe and amongst the lowest conviction rates. See, wow. this this is exactly the problem we're having in Europe. Um, if you look at Britain and you, you, you go to, um, the, the, I think it's rapecrisis.org or something, and it will give you a map of all the rape crisis centers in England. Mm-hmm. And then if you just go for, if you just Wikipedia, Muslim immigration into England... It's exactly the same map. Oh Everyone, fuck! Did the did the, uh, uh, did the chat? I'm, I'm sorry. Did the chat? I think, break? Yeah, I think chat broke. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not even kidding. There's like, and to the point where like 
there's there's the odd sort of enclave uh, just north of Kent or something, and they've got a, a rape crisis centre, you know, all the way over there, miles away from any of the other ones, which are the sort of the centre of England, which are where all the main Muslim immigrations happen. And it's and in in the papers, it's it's Orwellian. They will never name the people who are take who the, every every other month, say you you hear this new grooming gang, where it's you know a, a group of men have started you know grooming teenage girls and taking advantage, raping them, doing all various nasty things, and they won't name the people in the gang because the names are always Ahmed something, Mohammed something, you know, and and they, they in the BBC they just don't name the people anymore because it is so obviously a Muslim rape gang. And oh, Lesotho, that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm just I got the chat to work okay. again. People are trying to tell me how to say the name of that country. Um, was it wasn't it the uh, wasn't it the, the the head was it Joyce Thacker? Who recently just retired because, or just quit quit her job because she knew about like the rape allegation that was going on in in uh, what was it in Rothingham? Isn't that isn't that something that happened over there too? Like it's like fourteen hundred kids. Oh wait, right. are you talking about yeah. the one where they wouldn't convict them because they didn't want to seem racist? Yes, yes. And then so she just quit. Like the police commission commissioner stepped down, <laughs> and then the actual child service um, commission uh, person, uh, Joyce Thacker, was like, "Yes, I knew about it. We were taking like UKIP families away." I read that in the Huffington Post, mind you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's fucking insane, right? But the thing is, what what annoys me about this is that <clears throat> this this entirely plays into their narrative. If they can actually have ridiculously high rape stats, then there is all the more reason for feminism. Right. You know, all the more reason to give these people more power, more influence, more credibility. They're saying, hey, the rape stats are off the charts. We need to do something about it. And it's like, yeah, but they're off the charts because you guys were going on about how great unlimited immigration is from Muslim countries. You know, it, you've created the problem that you think you are the solution to, and I'm—I don't know if it's on purpose. I can't believe it's on purpose because, you know, why would you, you wouldn't want to? But it—it—it's it, feeding itself. And the—the the thing is, the only other option is that they're such fucking monumental morons that they can't see this. Uh, it just it blows my mind, but at, at the same time, it, it, this all stems back to like what the EU and their fucking sloppy ass open border policies and oh. telling people, yes, we're gonna have multiculturalism and we're gonna have immigration whether you like it or not, and, and, and shit like that, or where uh, Germany is stepping in to control Greece and stuff like that, and, and yeah. it's just it's. It's really an EU thing, and and to be honest with you, I think there needs to be a reform. I think when when I like when you did your your skepticism uh, video, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, comparing the EU to the Pan American Union, uh, absolutely, it's it's fucking insane that how much they involve themselves into things and all the fucking back dealings that goes on between there. One it, one thing it, it is crazy, yeah. One thing that really bothers bothers me about the EU, and I've 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 got a personal dislike for the EU because it's just so anti-Western values. It really does my head in. But the the current uh, Prime Minister of Italy was a, is a technocrat appointed by an EU board. He, he's not democratically right. elected. That's yeah, what that I'm talking about. about. They were arguing about, yeah, I mean, I, I remember, I think it was Farage was talking about that. Um, yeah. Was yelling at them, saying that, they, you know, you're doing your own little elections. It's not even democratic. That, and yeah. and he did, they just did that again with Yonker, a British guy, uh, uh, just recently. Go look up on UKIP's... Uh, YouTube channel, and it's about uh, I think what what like about three weeks old. And I was watching it because I, I go there and watch all the stuff all the time, and they, he was doing one about talking about the same thing where they were doing basically setting up for Yonker to come in and do the same exact thing. They wanted this whole secret fucking voting and just push this guy in, and, and he was like, "Listen, you know, he's a good guy, but you need to uh, sit back and you need to make this public." I thought we were a dem democracy. What what are we doing here? Like, let the people fucking vote. Why why do you just decide that you're just going to be the only ones who vote on it and then move on from there? The right way. People, right, people exactly. My way, that's the problem. And they, they've got an agenda. They've they've got Barroso is a snake. Fuck Barroso, so, man. Yeah, he's he's the most he's the least trustworthy man I've ever seen. And he's I, such I, a smug motherfucker. I guess he is. That's why I said fuck Barroso. I can't stand that guy. I can't stand him. And he, he he's again. The, I I think I think I, I and I hate to sound all conspiratorial, but I think they're globalists. You know that I think well, that, that makes sense. I, I think that they're trying to erase European identities by opening all the borders and trying to encourage. They they use terms like the free flow of people and say, yeah, but what right. does that mean? You yeah. know, that that means people coming from very poor areas to rich areas, making the rich areas very poor. 
Well, look, I could pull up articles of these people from the EU coming out and say, and like I said, basically saying, like they told France, they told France when France was getting pissed off about it that they that they were like, well, you're going to have multiculturalism whether you like it or not. You're going to accept the fact that we're going to and we're going to basically get, invite these people into your country whether you fucking want it or not. Oh, and that's, um, and that's, wait, that's, wait, 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 guys. Uh, so somebody was linking this in chat, uh, and I'm going to have to wrap up here soon too. But yeah, uh, yeah. Too, too, uh, right. What is it? it, it uh, somebody was linking to Kotaku in action. EA director comments on Gamergate. Uh, oh, Chris Mansell says, uh, let's see, uh, the group of gamers are angry, pissed. I don't think this incident with Miss Quinn and the media are the direct cause of this exclusively, but rather a spark that blew up smoldering issues that have been building for years. The level of anger and commitment by these gamers is intense, and it's growing. Something is wrong here. This is abnormal. My uh, opinion, it's not about social justice warriors. That has always been a strong influence in gaming. Uh, something uh, sometimes it's annoying, sure, but it can also be a positive force as well. A much needed uh, conscience, a reminder to us all to consider the ways we cr uh, what we create says. Uh, I'm just trying to read through it because it's a bit of a long statement. Uh, okay, I think the real problem here is alienation, not a values that's misguided. It's not liberal conservative values, politics, or worldview. It's fear of being meaningless. It's about our loss of connection between ordinary gamers and the game industry. We are losing our connection with people. I think our industry has been drifting further and further away from our fans. As our business gets larger and our global reach broadens, this lack of a relationship or mutual feedback of a personal connection between ourselves and the audience is really the true culprit of the most deep-seated anger here. There is no connection with us, no trust, not even understanding. Yet gamers depend more and more on us for their primary entertainment, and we absolutely depend on them as customers. Yet our relationship is increasingly one-sided, they, uh, uh, they being the unit sale, the converted uh, percentage on the acquisition funnel or the revenue target, not the person, not the player, not the gamer who is or was exactly like us all. We need them, and they know we need them. They need us too, but we've forgotten that. Do we sometimes feel uh, we don't really need them? This alienation and dependency brings about the epic rage. The think, uh, okay, think banks, uh, cellular providers, airlines, cable companies, and the hate those relationships generate with customers who need that service but get treated like beasts. That's our future. Some would say our present. And in the environment, a backhanded slap to a mass group of gamers who are mass labeled misogynists, rapists, gamers are dead, games ashamed are just fighting words yelled by a distant, contemptuous, unconnected gaming entity that is part of the establishment elite. And this same recipe, the exact same spark of every single race political uh, protest riot, the world over from the beginning of time. And like every protest, there are those who support the activists and those who support law and order and the establishment. But the root cause of this event is usually not what they are yelling and fighting about, but something much deeper and harder to explain. Usually being oppressed, insulted, or generally, uh, generally being abused and invisible. And in this outburst of anger, some of the media turned and fired into the gamer protesters, which then became a riot. Both sides now dehumanize the other, making it easier to escalate. I wish I knew how to f defuse this. Your friend, Chris. Hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I can agree. I absolutely agree. I don't see anything else to say on that one. That's surprisingly astute, yeah. yeah I think that uh, they, at least now we know where EA stands, and I hope to God they stick to it. Well, like I'm I said, thinking. just just make games. That's that's what we want. That's what everybody fucking wants. We want video games. That's really easy. I don't need the gaming press to scream at us and tell us how terrible we are and write opinion pieces and shit up the relationship. And I, I hope I hope that sentiment is shared at EA and other gaming companies. I really do. It, it's a fucking mutually ben or beneficial relationship. It's symbiotic. We support you as customers. We buy your products, and in return, you fucking value that relationship and don't shit on us. Right. I I, I definitely agree. I mean, I, there's I don't really want. I, there's nothing I can really say to that except it's just I agree completely. I it, like I mean, there's nothing wrong. He he addressed everything that I really wanted to hear. That this is fucked up. This is wrong. And. And, uh, and that we don't condone it and that we need to get more in touch with uh, our side, that we've forgotten that. Well, yeah, well, somebody explained to me what – I feel like I took a drug at some point and my mind has gone fucking crazy. So EA is the good, is making the good fucking statements as a business. <laughs> uh, Moot is turned into a social justice traitor and fucked up 4chan, but low tax of something awful is allowing free speech. What the fuck is happening on the Internet? Black well, is white now, man. And it really fucking is. Down. Cats are living with dogs. The world's gone mad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what the establishment response to this is going to be. Uh, what what are the what are the gaming press going to say to this? Um, they, I, he's go going to get hammered. He's going to be. He's going to yeah. for putting that that statement out, which is a reasonably neutral statement. He's going to get fucking hammered. That's what I'm, I'm expecting. So. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to turn on him and just slam him in the ground. 
Yeah, they they are. They're they're gonna absolutely go after this guy. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sergeant. If that's like, um, I mean, is that how much uh, does that statement represent EA as an organization? <laughs> if EA is smart and they want to turn around the bad press they've gotten off of Origin and other decisions they've made, they would back his fucking statement to the hilt. Uh, they would absolutely happened. back it. Now, what what sort of um what sort of difficulty would come up for the for the gaming press or the, not the gaming press? Jeez, why am I calling them that? Um, the social justice press uh, who are going to slam this guy for saying that. What kind of pressure is that going to put on them if EA uh, becoming uncooperative with them? EA should become uncooperative with them. All these large companies should. I, again, the I gaming don't... press doesn't hold any power. They're not the ones buying your games. We are. And we're not demanding anything of you. Just make fucking video games and stop letting these assholes shit up the relationship. That's really reasonable on our part. Right, and, and to really answer your question, Sargon, I, they really can't do much. I think that if if EA was just to stop working with these guys, you would see less of these fucking people at E3. You would see less of these people being invited to go test out their fucking games and do writing articles on it, and they would just dwindle into fucking nothing. I mean, that that's really, if you're talking about... That, well, that, that's, that's what I was expecting. Um, oh, oh, God, yeah, and Bobby Kotick is right. What the fuck is going on? Like, Bobby Kotick was the devil four years ago on the internet, and now everybody's like, oh, shit, he was completely right. Tim Schafer's an asshole who can't run a budget. <laughs> EA is now the good guy. His websites are switching back and forth. It's just, it's really weird. It's like a fucking Twilight Zone episode is playing itself out on the internet in real time. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, what, 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 thing is, the, if, if EA can make the... Um, the lives of these these uh, these bloggers really difficult. Then surely they can't just go directly after this guy, uh, Chris. You know, surely surely they can't. And so... <laughs> they, oh, they absolutely will. They'll they'll say that. Uh, I, I I can think of a couple angles they'll take at it. Um, it'll be oh um, well. He's misinformed, or they'll try the misogynist angle on him, or they'll try to stonewall him. Yeah. It, it could be a hundred different fucking approaches. And I, I you know, I, again. I, I disagree with some of the stuff he said. I do think there's uh, SJW shit is influencing a lot of it. But f as as far as like a business standpoint, it's a brilliant fucking statement. Mm. It's just saying, hey, um, maybe not shit on the customers. You know, maybe <laughs> maybe try to have a relationship with them where it's a little more open. It's fucking yeah. brilliant business wise. I, you know, if they actually were to start stonewalling this guy and just slamming him in the ground, I, I'm I'm seeing that as a really that be I think that'd be what would start the the end to their uh, their their fucking reign, I would want to say, because I don't see EA putting up with that shit. If they're the way, if the way they treat their develop their dev teams, I, I just don't see them putting up with the, the fucking gaming journalists stonewalling them. I just don't see that happening at all. Yeah, uh, well, I, I'd love to continue this, but I, I've got to I got to cut this short. I've got about five minutes. I'm going to answer a few chat questions, and then I got okay, I got to jump for the evening. No uh, thanks okay. for coming on, the, the guys. I like talking about the Digger stuff. I think that's interesting. I'll look forward to the video tomorrow. Sorry, God. Definitely. Uh, yeah, thank no you for us. I'll, uh, I'll make sure it's tweeted to everyone. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having uh, me on. Yeah, not a problem. Now I've got to see how the fuck does this work. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to try this. I, I don't think this bans you. I think this just takes you out of the... Oh, you yeah, left? Yeah, I think it takes oh, no, you out of the call. I'm going I'm to hop out of here, too. Thank you for having me, man. I'll all see right, you tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow at 6. I'll see you with the guy. Looking forward to the debate. It should be good. Oh, God. <laughs> all right, man. Let's see you. All right, take it easy. Okay. All right, uh, chat. Well, I got like five minutes here. Um, yeah, about five minutes. So I'll answer a couple questions if you guys got anything. And then I'm calling it a night because I'm lazy. And the whole EA thing is blowing my fucking mind. So I, I don't really know what to say in relation to that statement by one of their people. Uh, let's see. Where's the Kotick evidence? Uh, somebody's asking. Well, no, Bobby Kotick, just, he made one statement a while ago saying that Tim Schafer couldn't, you know, uh, meet his deadlines, couldn't stay in budget, and that the game he was working on the t at the time was a bad game. Uh, and he turned out to be right, because we've seen uh, Schafer have difficulties running a budget and meeting milestones and delivering the content he says he's going to deliver. He doesn't do it. Uh, shout out Operation Disrespectful Nod. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kirk or Picard? Um, I, I used to say Picard, but uh, I, I saw some uh, statements that uh, good old Kirk's been making on Twitter, and it's some funny shit. So I think I might I might change my opinion on that. I tried, guys. I, I know some people are saying bring on Short Fat Otaku. I sent out like eight invites. I'm not sure why that's not working. I really I have no idea. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Have I installed Gentoo? Uh, no, I haven't yet. 
what's your oh, fuck this is going quick gawker getting banned from reddit that would be fantastic gawker should be banned from everywhere fuck gawker oh let's see are we losing no i would say we are not losing Uh, again, uh, uh, people are saying mention disre or disrespectful nod. I'm mentioning it, so I don't know if that's coming through or not. I would hope so. What do you think of Slow Beef disliking you? I've answered that on Ask FM. I liked Red Supre when it first came out. I thought they were funny videos. Uh, if he dislikes me, whatever. Doesn't mean I'm not going to think those were funny videos. They were funny videos. Uh, let's see what else. This is going fucking quickly here. I'm, I'm trying to keep up and read something before it disappears. Actually, I'll, I'll go to Twitter for a minute and answer a few questions on there if there are any. And then pop back in a chat and call it a day. Oh, let's see. Achan's angry you aren't mentioning Operation Disrespectful Nod. I've mentioned it like three times. Everybody can look it up. Just go to 8chan and check out Operation Disrespectful Nod or look at it on Twitter if you're interested. Uh, okay, let's see. Talk about Gawker getting banned from uh, subreddit. Oh, our wow. Kotaku may no longer be submitted. That's fantastic. I don't know how long that'll stand. Um, again, because of the, some of the revelations regarding Reddit and then the behind-the-scenes stuff, but good for that uh, subdomain. Or subreddit or whatever the fuck they call it. A good decision. Fuck Kotaku. Uh, let's see. We got one from uh, Brandon Morse. Am I saying your name right? Every company should. It's a fact they cave into uh, psychotic minorities that we get into these positions. <clears throat> I'm a big believer in free market. I, I think businesses do best when they um, address their customers' needs. And there shouldn't be third parties getting in between that. It makes everybody unhappy, and it hurts business. A smart business decision uh, and position to take is making your customer happy. And that doesn't mean you have to bend over backwards for it. It just means providing the service you set out to provide. So I really do hope EA... <clears throat> sorry, my throat's going to shit. I really, really do hope EA takes a stance that Chris put out there of trying to you know, uh, rebuild the uh, uh, lines of communication and cut out these people that are poisoning the entire dialogue. And just run it like a fucking business. Again, all we want are video games. It's really simple. It's a very simple demand. Don't let these people influence how you do business. Stop listening to them. And as far as a game journalist, clean your shit up. You're, you're making yourselves look ridiculous by letting these individuals make your profession look like a joke. And you're doing no favors to any other journalists online. It's just terrible. Uh, is it cool to friend me on Steam? Uh, yeah, go ahead. But uh, I've got like, I, I'm out of slots. I don't have the money to pay Gabe <laughs> right now. But there should be a group um, listed on my Steam profile if you want to go in there. I'm, I'm going to try to run events from that because people rec are recommending it. So hopefully that turns out all right. All right, uh, a couple more questions. I'll go back to the YouTube chat and then that's that. Do I believe in fish people? <laughs> what? I don't, know. I don't know how to respond on that. What is my favorite Pokemon? I have no idea. I, like, I, I picked up the game for the DS because people said it's a good game. I, I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not a guy that goes on VP or whatever the fuck it is. How was Moot converted to SJWism? Like I said, I don't think he bought... I, I don't think Moot is drinking the Kool-Aid. I just happen to think that the people that support his ventures, like the stuff you see at XOXO, the venture capitalists that go down there, I think he's trying to appeal to what he thinks they want. And I think they have relationships with people who really are SJWs. And so he's taking a stance to help maybe on a future project he's got? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, okay, I'm going to answer a few more and then jump. That guy with the glasses is against Gamergate. That would not fucking surprise me. I really would not be... I could picture uh, Mr. I've Never Been to New York, uh, Linkara, being very against this. That doesn't surprise me one bit. 
All right, last question. Let's uh, let's get a good one. <laughs> and right as I say that, everybody asks really shit questions. <laughs> Thank you, chat. That's good. Uh, fuck. I'm trying to pick something different or uh, different or good. You know what? Let's let's close it on on this. What is my opinion on Phil Fish, uh, which should already be pretty evident, but. I don't like Phil Fish. I think he's a dick. I asked for his game, Fez. It didn't really appeal to me. That's not to say it's a bad game. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. But he sure puts on entertaining meltdowns on the internet. I'll give him that. So I'm going to call it a night, guys. Thanks for coming out. Sorry again about not getting the video up, but there's a lot of content to cover, and so I pushed it back until Saturday. Hopefully the stream makes up for that a little bit, make amends as best I can. So take it easy, guys, and I will see you later. Sex for favors, secrets, cover-ups, corruption. I've heard things that'll blow your mind. Who cut the power off? Wait, what do you mean we've been cancelled? I'll have you know I was the governor of Minnesota. We're being replaced by who? Oh, look at me. I'm Jesse Ventura. My show got cancelled. <laughs> we all know whose government you're working for, Jesse. It's time the real truth came out. By the power of water filters, I will destroy corruption. No more sex for secrets. No more cover-ups. It's time for Gamergate. Welcome to Bizarro Land. It's the sort of place where electronics arts employees make reasonable statements where Bobby Kotick is once again proven to have keen business intuition when it comes to certain individuals and their ability to manage projects and handle money. It's the sort of Twilight Zone-esque reality where site owners who've had positions in the past have seemingly swapped them, a la some digital version of Freaky Friday. Why, even Hot Pockets has responded, saying that the janitorial staff from 4chan is doing an excellent job. In fact, they deserve a reward, and what better reward than the hot, creamy goodness of a nuked Hot Pocket burning and scolding your throat as it explodes in your stomach. It has been a wild ride. It's been a month now since the last video I put up talking about Gamergate and the issues that were popping up, and by God, a lot of shit has happened since then, and I want to try to condense it down and give you a, a sort of chronological retelling of some of the key events that have played out over the last four weeks. To do that, I'm going to have to breeze through some of these, but I'll provide plenty of links in the description. So if you want to go and check this out yourself, the links will be listed to different articles and screen caps, so you can go check it out and see what you think. So with that out of the way, let's jump back to September 1st and see what's happened over the last month. Well, the first week of September was just chock full of interesting events. In fact, news came from PAX about Zoe Quinn's panel. Literally tens of people showed up for it. As you can see from this non-packed picture of all those not existing people sitting in those empty chairs. In fact, I heard one of the staff members at this event had told people to be careful with their pocket change in case they accidentally dropped something and the reverberations of it created an echo so loud it was like a, a sound cone that would deafen people walking by the building. Luckily for Quinn, of course, Dashcon members happened to be in attendance, and they had the solution that she needed. And it didn't even cost her $17,000. What a lucky day for Zoe Quinn. Now, right on the heels of that, we had two articles drop. One pro-Gamergate, one anti-Gamergate. And we're going to look at the anti one first. That was from Jen Frank for The Guardian. Now, Jen ran into a little bit of trouble. You know, apparently when you write an article and you have financial ties to the people you're talking about, that's kind of an issue in real journalism, and Jen apparently walked away from being a journalist for a little while in relation to this, because there was money coming from Quinn to her, and from her going to Maya Kramer, who had a relationship with Zoe Quinn as well. It did not look too good for Jen Frank, and people were a little pissed off, to put it lightly. Image macros were circulating, people were talking to The Guardian. Now, Frank had released a statement essentially saying that she had wanted to put a disclaimer in there, but The Guardian told her, no, don't do that. A little incredulous about that, but doesn't really matter because we had a new challenger approach. Milo Papadopoulos, famous television actor from Webster, and also body double for Phoenix Wright. Now, he began to tweet out at the very 
beginning of September that he was going to start to cover Gamergate. He was going to look into some things. And his first article really caught people's attention because he wasn't tepid or timid in how he handled the subject. In fact, he wasn't afraid of these corrupt journalists or their little buddies in the indie game development scene. His article, Feminist Bullies Tearing the Video Game Industry Apart, was well received. It got a lot of buzz online because it was the first real article to take the other position, to actually look into it. Now, Milo doesn't have any investment in the gaming industry. He's not a gamer. In fact, he had to learn how to play video games. He did a couple of live streams about them, just to get an idea of what the experience was like and what the gaming demographic was like. In fact, it would seem the very first week of September had a lot to do with news articles being released in news websites. Take the gaming website TechRaptor, for instance. Not only did their site host pull their support from them, sending them to talk about it publicly, saying, hey, you know, we've got an issue to deal with. We're, we're going to have to look for a new server. You can see this in the screen cap. This is the conversation that was taking place about this. But it would seem that after that got resolved, they were shadow banned from Reddit. And on top of it, they had their website attacked in some manner that took them a few days to even be able to address it and fix the issue. Now, as a side note, I'm going to put a link to their website in the description because they were one of the very first websites to really even try to talk about this. They're a smaller website. And they, they tried to go to bat for gamers. They tried to talk about the issue because everybody else was being quiet about it. Nobody wanted to cover the issue. And as a response, they got harassed. They had their site taken down. They got banned from websites where they could promote or talk about their work. And that's unfair. It's unfair to the little guy trying to make a name for themselves in the industry. So if you're interested in gaming news, check it out. Give them, give them a look. I'll also have Games Nosh down there as well because they were another site that really tried to at least talk about it. Both those sites really stick out in my mind from the very beginning of all these things that have happened until this point today. Of course, not wanting to look like less of a prick than their gaming journalist peers, GamerRanks decided to fire a few shots off at the fine young capitalists saying that they don't have an excuse to be safe from scrutiny. And their hit piece, GamerRanks went after them and picked apart at what the fine young capitalists were about, and they were very brave too by closing the comment section down so they didn't have to hear any feedback. Now, that doesn't surprise me, considering this is a website associated with Ian Miles Chong, former white supremacist. In fact, he might be the only Asian white supremacist I've ever heard of. That is, that is one hell of an accomplishment, Ian. You can see from this screen cap that floated around shortly after this, that Ayn has one hell of a history and some very unique viewpoints. Now, he's gone onto Twitter afterwards to say he's a changed individual. Now, instead of being a white supremacist, he's just an asshole in general, using social justice to beat up on people he doesn't like. Seems like a, a brand new leaf. He's really, he's really turned it around. Uh, give him a golf clap if you can. Now, for those of you not familiar with who Ayn Miles Chong is, he is a self-described turbo-feminist. He was also working at the site and defending it during the KSI incident, where... He had gone up to people at a convention and motorboated a few chicks. Ian had gone to Twitter to say how terrible this was and had articles on GamerRank saying how horrible this was until the very woman that was motorboated by KSI in that video went on Twitter herself and told Miles he needs to get fucking laid and stop putting his nose in other people's business. Apparently that advice did not stick. And closing out that first week of September, we had a bit of a bombshell drop, especially in relation to what was going on at Reddit. Now, if you recall, a lot of people were getting uh, comments deleted, especially in that Total Biscuit thread that had upwards of, I think, 25 to 30,000 comments, and tens of thousands of those comments were deleted. Threads were being taken down at a uh, majority of subreddits. People were getting shadow banned. And even more recently, you know, we were just talking about uh, TechRaptor having their account shadow banned. Well, this was a leaked interview between a moderator or former moderator at Reddit that helped to highlight some of the issues that are going on with the administration of the website. And it covered a lot of things, talking about hidden code, bannable word lists, uh, allowing certain people to be doxxed because the administration didn't like them, people being threatened with being labeled a pedophile for trying to provide security for users on the website, as well as their attitude about shadow banning and deleting topics. Now, that audio interview is up on SoundCloud. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to go listen to it. It's about 40 or 50 minutes long, but it, it really gives some insight into what the hell's going on over there. If you've been shadow banned, if you've felt some weird things are going on behind the scenes, it really helps to explain exactly why you're not crazy and probably what you're thinking is happening is actually happening. Now, not to be outdone by week one, week two was right out of the gates. It started off with its own bang. That was a Lord Cat stream on Twitch TV in which he was talking to some people about an upcoming video that was going to be released. That video, Indefeasible, was put up by Camera Lady and Short Fat Otaku. That was the channel on YouTube that it appeared on. In the video, there were quite a few allegations about IndieCade and the Independent Games Festival and talking about the relationships these people had 
and information that had come to light after the Polytron hack that took place about two or three weeks prior. Now, the video was taken down, and there's been some debate as to the exact reason why. There, are some, there seems to be some sort of legal issue about the information that's in the video itself. I don't really know. I haven't had a chance to talk to either of the individuals that put the video up. I know they've made some statements, and I know that they were talking about re-editing it and having a lawyer vet it so it was good to go. But I do know that they are releasing a third video that's coming up in the next couple of days, and it's going to focus on Silver String Media. So hopefully they can get those re-edited videos up, and they can get that new one out. Now, if you're curious about some of the information they talked about in the first couple of videos, you can go check out this Games Nosh article, I'll have a link in the description as well, that goes over some of the information they talked about. Again, it's not the video itself, but it does touch on what they were talking about. Now, up until this point, we had seen a couple of things. We'd seen Kotaku and we'd seen Polygon make some statements in regards to allegations that had come out. Uh, Kotaku released statements about Nathan Grayson and his relationship with Zoe Quinn. Stephen Titello had gone on record saying that they were going to adjust Kotaku's guidelines in reference to Patreon and being able to donate to people in the industry on a monthly basis. Uh, Polygon as well did a article talking about uh, their stance on Patreon, but they didn't take the same route that Kotaku did. Instead, deciding that, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, we don't see an issue. Uh, it's not it's not a uh, ethical concern. Well, we finally got a real response, the first website to really step up to the plate. Now, the escapists had allowed conversation about this up until this point in their discussion forum, but there hadn't been an official policy or response. Uh, many people were still upset about the Zoe Quinn story from months and months and months ago that had blamed uh, her harassment on a website called Wizard Chan. Well, there was a publisher's note put up, and it addressed quite a lot of things. In that publisher's note, and it's five pages long, again, the link will be in the description, they go over a few things, but one of the main things, and I think the most important thing, is they apologize. They apologize for not trying to get the other side of the story. They also set out a new set of standards, what their policy is in regards to authors recusing themselves from covering certain subjects, about Patreon and financial donation, and a whole host of other things. But The Escapist was really the first one to do this. Even though Kotaku and Polygon had addressed some concerns, they didn't come forward and actually try to talk to their community about it. Also this week, we had Milo releasing another article talking to games journalists directly and telling them that he thought they were reacting poorly to the concerns of gamers and those that felt that there were issues going on in the industry. Another piece of news that came out during this time, uh, because people were starting to talk about corruption on all levels in the journalism industry and in gaming itself, was this post that showed up on subreddit Kotaku in Action. This was posted by somebody who said he worked in the Australian gaming journalism business. Now, he had a lot of things to say, but one of the more interesting things that he had put up was that there had been a hack of forums that uh, 40,000 accounts had been put in danger and that EA had not responded and the gaming press had not responded because they had relationships with each other. Well, two days later, Cinema Blend put up an article. And in fact, EA admits 40,000 users were hacked after a whistleblower steps forward. Let that sink in for a moment. Here you have somebody posting and saying, hey, because of the relationship between this video game company and journalists, this was a story that was not reported on. 40,000 people, their passwords, their usernames, potentially their emails and personal identifying information were put at risk. But this story was not going to be covered because of close relationships between the gaming press and the industry they cover. And this isn't just smoke being blown up your ass. Somebody actually looked into this. And sure enough, it turns out that actually fucking happened. This is another clear-cut example of the problem when you have too close a relationship with the industry you're covering. The first of which would have been the fine young capitalists not being able to get anybody to cover their story. And of course, up until this point, right now, we're in the middle of the second week of September, that's still happening. Here's Jason Schreier of Kotaku saying, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to cover the fine young capitalist story. It's too messy for me. And I don't think it's, uh, you know, interesting enough, or I don't think there's enough... Uh, valid points. I don't know what exactly his deflection was. You can read it here. It's in a uh, post that he had put up. Not that it really mattered, though, because the Fine Young Capitalist, on September 11th, hit their fundraising goal. In fact, they didn't just hit it, they surpassed it. So all the people that had donated had succeeded in helping them reach that goal and push that game development process further ahead. Now you may be wondering, with all these things that are happening, you've got Reddit mods coming forward and saying that people are trying to hush up uh, conversation about this. You have evidence that moderators are talking to Zoe Quinn and suppressing conversation. People are coming forward from fucking Australia saying EA accounts have been put in danger but nobody will cover it because the journalists are friends with the people at EA. 
you've got the escapist coming forward and saying, hey, we fucked up, we're going to address it, and we're going to reform our policies. You have the fine young capitalists hitting their fundraising goal. And yet, still, at this point, no other sites are talking about any of this. The Gamers Are Dead articles had come out, and that was really it. So you would think it would be weird that Jason Schreier would say, there's not a story here. Well, you're going to find out exactly why nobody was covering any of these things. You'll find out why Jason Schreier didn't think this was of interest. Because in week three, a fucking nuclear bomb is dropped on the heads of these shitty corrupt game journalists that help to highlight exactly what the fuck is going on. Now, I want to preface week three before we get into it, because there, there are a couple of things. I'm trying to give you a short and dirty uh, chronology to what's going on. But a lot of things happen, and the timeline in which they happen is kind of important. It's going to be important later on, specifically when I'm talking about 4chan and Moot, when I'm talking about uh, XLXO Fest, when I'm talking about all these things. So I'm going to try to lay it out as it happened, but I want you to pay attention to the dates that these happen on. Now, at the start of week three, we got introduced to the Kool-Aid drinking crazies of XOXO Fest. In fact, people started doing image edits of pictures that were coming from this particular convention. The one you're looking at right now is a pretty good descriptor of the vibe you get when you're looking at XOXO. You see a lot of the same type of person. 20 to 30 year old, white suburbanite, educated, entrepreneurial, hipster fucks would be the best way really to describe that crowd. And then mix in a little bit of venture capitalism, and that's pretty much pretty much what you have. But a lot of the people who attended this have been related either directly or tangentially to Gamergate itself. You had people like Leigh Alexander from Gama Sutra who was there. Anita Sarkeesian was there. And as we'll find out in just a little bit, Moot, or Christopher Poole from 4chan, was also there. Now, on the 16th, based mom, Christina Summers, released a video, a factual feminist video, asking, are video games sexist? And she looked at the issue and she came to the conclusion that no, gamers are not a demographic of horribly racist, sexist people that are out to hurt others. They're just devoted to their hobby. They like video games. And at the end of the day, that's what they want, just good video games. People liked the video. They responded quite well to it. Of course, the game journalists didn't. We got a lot of articles after that video came out attacking Christina Summers. They were up on Polygon and other websites and they tried every avenue of attack. She's a conservative. She's not an actual feminist. She's suffering from internalized misogyny. Anything but addressing the points the video raised. Now, beginning around the release of this video, and up until about the 19th, so in the span of three days, people started to notice something happening on 4chan, specifically on the V-board, and even later on on Poll. They noticed mods were doing it for free much more than they usually did. The frequency of them fucking with users was increasing exponentially every day. Now, we would find out exactly why that was in just a little bit. But first, that bombshell. Now, Milo had hinted that something big was coming out. He had said, you guys aren't going to fucking believe this. All those talks that you've had, all the speculation about there being some kind of coordinated attack, especially when you consider that the Gamers Are Dead article seemed to be a coordinated attack. You had 12 to 14 articles in a 24-hour period of time with the exact same spin, the exact same narrative, all yelling at gamers who were upset that video game journalism might be corrupt. And to gamers, that looked like there was something going on, like there was a secret group coordinating what was happening. Well, the bombshell hit. There was a secret group, Game Journos Pro. Now, the list had been established about four years previously by Kyle Orland of Ars Technica. And among the members, you will find prominent figures from nearly every video game journalism website. People like Jason Schreier. You remember Jason, who just a week before the article had come out had said, I don't want to cover the fine young capitalist. There's no reason to do it. I don't see a story here. Well, now we know why he didn't want to cover it. He is a member of Game Journals Pro. And what did they talk about on Game Journals Pro? Well, this very first article had touched on one of the threads and one of those email chains. And one of those email chains was about Zoe Quinn. How they were going to handle the story, how they were going to handle the fallout of it. And you can notice, and I, I highly encourage you to go read the article that Milo put out because he has snippets up of exactly what they said and in fact later on he'll release even more information about this particular group but you will see they keep each other in line people like Ben Kuchera would yell at others 
and tell them that he was going to stop talking to him at that exact moment because he wanted to remain civil. Greg Tito of The Escapist was on this particular group, and he had said, we have a conversation going on at The Escapist. I don't necessarily agree with what's being said, but I don't see a problem with it. And he was bombarded for daring to allow open conversation. Ryan Smith had mentioned, why is it that we cover one sort of topic, but we won't cover the other? Why will people run pieces like Max Temkin? But when it comes to Zoe Quinn, which is pretty much the exact same kind of issue, we will not cover it. And he was bombarded with hate for even asking that question. People in this specific group knew Zoe Quinn. They had a personal relationship with her. One particular individual talked about having conversations about his relationship with her and specifically mentioning the feel better gift that was proposed in this group itself. If you remember the developer letter that was circulating around that was signed by people in different video game companies uh, saying that they wanted peace and you know give peace a chance and everybody should love one another and hold hands, you will see the predecessor of that discussed by games journalists weeks before that letter ever materialized. They wanted to do the exact same thing but with game journalists and the idea was shot down because it would look too suspicious. So how fucking convenient then that after that was proposed in this secret group of game journalists who were stifling conversation about Zoe Quinn and about gaming journalism corruption, how, you know, how convenient is it that their proposal is put a halt to and then all of a sudden game developers decide to do it? It's almost like, it's almost like they used their connections and personal relationships to get game developers to do it instead. Remember, in week two, we had the story about somebody saying games journalists wouldn't cover a story about a forum being hacked because they were friends with people at a video game company with the developers. So it's clear that there is an incestuous relationship going on here, that there's collusion taking place here. This was a damning article. Now, they tried to deflect and they tried to act like this wasn't a big deal. However, reading through the conversations, you can see that it's complete bullshit from their part. Now, going back to our timeline, as I said, the week started and we had all these weird pictures coming out of XOXO Fest. And then we had Summers release her factual feminist video. And then came the bombshell, as I said, Milo released the Game Journals Pro article, his first article about it. Well, during those, you know, those couple of days, people had noticed the heavy moderation taking place on 4chan, and they wanted a direct answer. They tried asking mods, and mods had told them to go fuck themselves. Well, finally, Moot steps in. And of course, he comes to save the day, right? This is, this is Moodles. This is Christopher Poole. This is Mr. Free Speech. Well, you would be dead wrong. He posts this. Gamergate discussions will no longer be allowed, and pretty much go fuck yourself. If you read that last line, I know the screen cap might be a little blurry, I apologize for it, but he essentially takes a parting jab at people interested in Gamergate and tries to tell them to fuck off and that they're no different really than Guy Fox wearing, Guy Fox mask wearing idiots. That, that is a level of respect he has for Gamergate, and the fact he's using Anonymous as an insult means he doesn't give a shit about them either. Now, I'm not going to go too much into depth right now. Like I said, I just want to give you a basic timeline. But be aware, at this convention, Moot was at, along with people like Leigh Alexander and Anita Sarkeesian, were venture capitalists. Venture capitalists who he had previous relationships with, who funded projects he worked on. And we would also come to find out, and again, this will be covered more in depth later on, that he had relationships with people working directly at Gawker. Gawker is the parent company of Kotak. Now, it's around this exact same time that the Greg Lisby interview is starting to circulate a little bit more. Now, this was somebody who was interviewed. Uh, he wasn't specifically briefed on every aspect of Gamergate. He was just asked certain questions in regards to journalism ethics. He is somebody who taught law and journalism ethics. So he would be somebody you would want to talk to about. Now, the raw, unedited interview is up on YouTube. Again, the link will be in the description. You can go watch it yourself. But some of the key points he touches on, and what I find to be really damning when you look at the game journalist, is he's asked, what about people being financially connected to the industry they cover? Absolutely not, he says. That is an ethical problem. What about people having romantic relationships or landlord and tenant relationships with people in an industry they cover? Absolutely not. That is an ethical problem. He even goes so far as to state that though you may develop friendships or you may have a cordial relationship with people in an industry that you cover, it is an extremely tenuous line that you're walking and that a good journalist should always be hyper vigilant in regards to something like that. And as this Game Journals Pro article that Milo had put out shows, games journalists are anything but vigilant. They are lazy, ego-centered assholes. Now, I don't want to make this sound like I'm applying this as a blanket statement to every games journalist. Now we've seen a lot of them step up and say either I have problems with this 
and you'll see that in the leaked emails that's up on the Breitbart article. Some people in that uh, email chain said, hey, you know what? This is wrong. I don't want any part of it. There is a wall that should be put up between uh, myself and a subject, and this is a breach of professional ethics. Other people would come out later and say, I didn't like it, or I wanted no part of it. People directly questioned it. So there are good games journalists, but there seems to be an atmosphere or an attitude in this particular industry where those people are suppressed and not really allowed to talk about it. I mean, my God, look how they treat each other in private. It's no wonder the majority of them don't want to say anything in public. They're going to get shit on in such a way that their careers will be over. Now, if you thought week three was already over with, you'd better hold on to your asses because when you look at the entire month of September in review, from the period of the 14th to the 21st was a massive amount of activity. From articles being posted to public stances being taken from different individuals inside and outside of the industry. Take this Niche Gamer article from an Xbox dev. One of the people who worked on the Xbox design team weighed in on Gamergate. Again, it's a fantastic article and it gives you an inside perspective on how they view these issues. But of course, Milo wasn't done either. After releasing that first Game Journals Pro article, he had one more to pop out. And this one has to be read to be believed. The emails that prove video games journalism must be reformed, and even looking at that title quote, who here hasn't slept with a PR person or game developer, am I right, helps to highlight one of the issues with games journalism. It is a two-faced nature of them telling their audience that they're misogynist and racist and sexist and horrible, yet behind closed doors they will make jokes about sex and jokes about unethical behavior and there's no, there's no consequence to it whatsoever. It's fine for them to do it, but not okay for us to do it. They're going to chide us and profiteer off telling the core audience that they're flawed and that there's something wrong with them. And that little voice most people have in the back of their head telling them not to be insufferable pricks 24 hours a day seems to be missing from a lot of these people. Just take a look at the deluge of articles I had mentioned against Summers for her video. Now one interesting thing about the social justice warrior mentality found in a lot of these gaming journalists who are at the core of the problem we're dealing with is they can dish it but they can't take it. This quote is from the Polygon article about Summers video. Summers is also fond of insults. She tweeted that I am a mansplainer and invited me to address what she describes as her ideas. Others added that because I question the views of one woman I must be a misogynist. One person compared me to Napoleon. The pig, not the emperor. I am not the first person to face the wrath of video game sexism deniers. Well, I think the person who wrote this article needs to listen and believe, you mansplaining misogynist. It is yet just another example of how they can fling shit, but they cannot handle it being flung back at them. If you read the email chains that they have between themselves, you'll see how they laud the idea of closing down and heavily regulating comments. They cannot stand when people give them criticism. They cannot stand having to answer for their actions or their statements. It's also by this point in September that we start to see that the people who have been writing and mass emailing advertisers are finally having an effect. Now there were few that already had come out and said we're going to pull advertising from these different game journalism sites or we're not going to associate with them because it's bad PR. But then we see something like this from Rock Paper Shotgun, essentially begging for money. Rock Paper Shotgun is now running the equivalent of a Patreon account asking you to directly pay them money for merely existing and writing terrible articles. And yet, still there's even more in this third week. The admin of Funny Junk takes a moment to shit on Moot's head and laugh at the fact that he can't handle people talking about something that personally might offend him. In fact, the admin of Funny Junk invites people to come and mock him. And this is just a reminder that Funny Junk is one of the only places that has allowed free discussion about this. Up there with The Escapist and a few other image boards and websites. But Funny Junk has had that position from the very beginning. You can talk about whatever you want, put up the content you want to, and we're not going to interfere in any way. Now, most people have probably noticed by this point that NeoGAF had refused to really allow any discussion about this. People have been banned from the forums. Conversations had been shut down repeatedly. Well, it starts to come out that maybe NeoGAF had a reason for that. This article that was put up on the Ralph Retort talks about NeoGAF and the site owner allegedly illegally selling content to Kotaku for a profit. Now they had done this action and then if you look back at the timeline of these events had changed their terms of service agreement to allow them to do it. But the fact of the matter is this article points out a timeline in which they had sold the information and then altered the uh, terms of service to make it allowable. Well bravo NeoGAF. And of course 
Who could forget about Dina? God bless Mighty Number no. 9. You know, banning people that are financial backers to a project because they're talking about something unrelated to that project at different locations on the internet. And then saying, I don't like what you're saying, so I'm going to block you from the forums and from the official Comcept Twitter account. This is extra ridiculous when you take into account the fact that one of the backer rewards for donating to the project was forum access. So by banning people from the forums, you are rescinding their reward. Now, people began to ask for refunds. They wanted to do chargebacks, and they were told they couldn't. Well, that's a, that's a great job from a really good PR manager. Obviously, she got the job because she was the most qualified, not because she knew people at the company or was dating somebody who worked there. That would be insane. And if you're interested in reading more about how the Mighty Number no. 9 shitfest is now continuing into Gamergate, feel free to read the Ralph Retort because they have an article up about that as well. And this all, of course, brings us up to the current week, week four, or the very end of it. And this week has been slow compared to the third week, but then again, with the amount of activity that happened from the 14th to the 21st, it's understandable, especially when you look at it all put together. A lot of things have happened. Well, what happened this last week? Quite a few things, actually. You had the Investigamer come on to the Amazing Atheist channel to do a video about Gamergate. In fact, a lot of prominent atheists have spoken about this, and it's understandable because I think at the core of it, they see a similar thing happening right now. Now, I was able to do a live stream about two or three days ago with King of Pole, and he had somebody on named Koss, and Koss had mentioned something that we had joked about all the way back around the time of PAX, and that was the idea that they were going to introduce the term Gamer Plus. Now, atheists know what that means. They dealt with it with Atheism Plus, when social justice warriors come into a community and shit it up. Well, Koss actually said that he personally views the use of the term player as a more apt title. So essentially, instead of Gamer Plus, it would be player. So perhaps those rumors back during PAX about Gamers Plus being introduced weren't so far off if they're if the other side is already looking at trying to change and find a new term. Well, it wasn't just Amazing Atheists. You've had people like Thunderfoot make quite a few videos. In fact, he suffered because of it. He put up videos criticizing Anita Sarkeesian onto his Twitter account. And because he dared to do that, his Twitter was put on a blockbot list, and it was taken off of Twitter itself. He had his account shut down. Now, you can look through his posting history. People have screen caps of the last handful of posts that he put up and nothing about them violates the terms of service. He was bullied off for daring to speak out, for daring to have another opinion. So you have people like the Amazing Atheist and Thunderfoot stepping in and talking about this. You have people like Justicar stepping in and talking about this. And these aren't necessarily positions of people who are gamers themselves, just bystanders who recognize something that's happening to the gaming community that they already went through. You have other signs that Gamers are sick of game journalism and they're sick of SJWs in their hobby. One good example of this would be the Steam Curator list. If you go to take a look, who's the top curator? It's not Kotaku, it's not Polygon, it's not Rock Paper Shotgun or PC Gamer or any of them. Who is it? Total Biscuit. A, a top spot for a top hat. And it's interesting too that he has the number one spot because if you go and read those Breitbart articles about the Game Journal Pro mailing list, you will quickly see that they dislike Total Biscuit. In fact, they should talk a lot of YouTubers. They do not like the idea of somebody else coming in and fulfilling the role that they have. Because if somebody else brings competition into the marketplace, they can't be corrupt assholes. They actually have to have standards then so they can compete. How fucking crazy is that? Now, maybe you're wondering exactly who's on that game journal's pro list. I mean, after all, the previous couple of articles had talked about certain emails, but we never got a complete list. Well, Milo's got you covered because his most recent article actually lists every single one of them. So if you're curious who is working at what website and is a part of this, go check out the article because it will have their name listed and where they work. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Sarkeesian Effect documentary. That is still up on Patreon. Right now it's sitting at $6,600 a month. That is $6,600 of people's money that they're willing to put forward towards this project because they want to hear a different viewpoint. They're so sick, so absolutely tired of games journalists creating an atmosphere where people can't criticize or bring up other points of view. I mean, look what happened to Thunderfoot. 
he tried to use a social media service to air his opinions, and he was cut off at the fucking knees for it. So it's not a surprise that people would go and try to fund their own documentary to bring up an opposing viewpoint, because God knows where else are they going to go at this point. But every day this goes on, every single day it continues, it builds momentum, even during the slow days, even during the slow weeks. Hell, just take a look at the hashtags for Gamergate or Not Your Shield. This week, Gamergate surpassed a million tweets, and Not Your Shield is well over 100,000. Now, those numbers on their own are impressive, but when you consider the fact that multiple sites have refused to allow people to comment from NeoGAF to 4chan, TV Tropes, and others, it is a remarkable thing that this has any momentum to it at all. But it shows the fact that gamers are sick of being talked down to. They are sick of corrupt people trying to act as if they don't have to have ethical standards. They are sick of people acting like the indie scene and games in general don't have issues to them. These past four weeks have highlighted that. And it has been one thing after another, momentum building upon momentum, bombshell after bombshell after bombshell. And when you sit back and you really take in the full picture, it is quite fucking remarkable.